Kia. <laughs> so because we didn't really get a chance to talk about Stuttering John on the most recent episode, we did do some updating on the bonus episode I did with the guys from Who Gives a Shit. But a lot has happened in the Stuttering John. I mean, a lot of episodes have been put out. A lot is going on. I don't know if you guys are up to date on what's happening with Stuttering John. Maybe you follow Dabblers Anonymous. Just check in every once in a while, but I yeah. can't wait to uh, find out what he's been up to. First off, let's talk about Dabblers Anonymous. Yes. The photoshopping that's going on in there is fan-fucking-tastic. <laughs> I love it. I've seen some of the movie posters. And yes. They're terrific. Yeah. yeah, it's really good stuff. So I, that's, a, that's a fun Reddit to get into. All right. So John was visiting his family in Long Island, staying with his mom over Christmas time. And he's telling the story about how he went over to his brother's house to watch football on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the day after Christmas we're talking about. And when he got home, he didn't feel well. I, you know, I drink a big um, diet, um, uh, a Red Bull, like a diet one. Why? <clears throat> Hang out my brother. I try to eat a veal parmesan hero. I get through like half. I get home. I had, I was up from 1 o'clock to like 8 in the morning with the worst headache I've ever had. I've never had a migraine. This was worse. Wait, what? Well, how would I know I never had it? But yeah. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so bad. I go through my mom's pantry. She's got no aspirin. That's I'm going bad. crazy now. So I just take, I start drinking her, her, uh, I don't know, cough, so whatever, you know, cough and cold. For a headache? Dicks or whatever. <laughs> Why? Chugging the then I go man. upstairs, I stop popping some of the aspirin, you know, or that's only supposed to be my low-dose aspirin, you know, f for my um, strokes. Oh. <laughs> then I take a Klonopin. Oh. <laughs> I take a Klonopin. And my head is killing me. I'm going, this has got to be the energy drinks. Because you don't think you have COVID. <laughs> so he drank a Red Bull before bed, got a headache, and then proceeded to put every single table of medicine in the house down his gullet. Yeah. And he's like, I don't know why I didn't feel good. It was the veal palm. Yeah. <laughs> that stupid hero. I got to ask uh, Dr. Steve about that regimen to treat a headache. I've never heard of such a thing. God, his fucking breathing in that clip. He's so... Short with his sentences and very long on his breaths. So the next day is Monday, guys. Follow me. Okay. On Monday night, there's also a football game. Mm -hmm. Back to the brother's house. Now, remember, he didn't sleep well the night before. He wasn't feeling good. Uh... That night, I went over to my brother's to watch some more of the football. First, I go to the pizza coat, Pop Pilato's pizza coat. <laughs> I grab a slice of pizza, and I start feeling like shit again, like... Dizzy, like I'm walking. I just, I'm like, you know, I might, I might just go, I might just go back to my mom's. Then I have a change of thought. You know, I don't get to hang my brother that often. Now, keep in mind, I don't even think this is COVID. I just think it's, it's, it's me being wacky or something. You know, because you never think of it. You never think of COVID. That's all you think about. That yeah. night, same thing. Cannot sleep. Could not sleep. No headache anymore, but could not sleep. Mine was wandering like the wild geese in the west. Whoa. All right. So on Tuesday, he did a show from one of the bedrooms, probably his childhood bedroom, from his mom's house. And I didn't pull clips of it because it's more of a visual thing, yeah. but he's sweating his ass off. He's mm -hmm. constantly wiping his face down, and he keeps saying, actually, there's a, a pretty good super clip of it in the uh, Dabblers Anonymous. He keeps saying, I'm real sweaty. I just got out of the shower. I always sweat a lot when I get out of the shower. Uh, I'm like, what does he ever clean then? <laughs> it's <getting> so <laughs> gross. Yeah. Takes a shower, then gets all sweaty. He's self-cleaning. <laughs> oh. But anyway, Sunday night doesn't feel good. Monday Feels like shit. Tuesday does the show, is sweating the whole time, and then comes Wednesday. Turns out my niece had it. And I know I had it. And before you go, well, I shouldn't have flew. I took the test. 
my mom was so kind. Stuart's our, our local pharmacy brought me a COVID test. And I took the test and I was negative. So I got on a plane. Okay. So he's convinced that he's sick. His niece is sick. Yeah. She definitely has COVID. She's tested positive. He was hanging out over at the house yeah. two days during this. He's not feeling well, but he gets on an airplane. Okay. But I know I had it. And my brother took the test positive. Of course, I got I got it, I got it a lot quicker than he did, and it dissipated. Felt great uh, yesterday, and I feel great now. But when I was doing that show, my friends... I was still getting over it. That's why I was sweating so much. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you were sweating so much. And now, Croge, you would think that if you have COVID and you go ahead and you still broadcast, even when you have COVID, like I did twice, and you, you're still able to do that, don't you deserve something in return for doing that? I did the show on Tuesday, which, by the way, in my opinion, was one of my best shows. While I had COVID with Ron Filipowski, the man who found out who Jared Schmuck was, and Hal Sparks, and we essentially did a three-hour show. I only got two or three Super Chats. Let me tell you something. Huh. You should be ashamed. You should be ashamed yeah, right. of yourself for not giving him more money. That's a good deflection. <laughs> <laughs> While he's out there podcasting with COVID. So now people start giving him shit for getting on an airplane. Yeah. Well, he sounds like <laughs> patient zero. He was at a pizza joint, an airport, multiple airports, an airplane. I mean. Hanging out with his mom who's like 80 years and old. And he knew he felt like shit. And he knew he was exposed to someone who was COVID positive, And he was still fucking just going on because he's important and no one else is. Yeah. And he kept saying. And you wouldn't think that it would be COVID. Yeah. Why not? Everyone would. has COVID. What are you yeah, talking about? What the fuck, That's dude. the first thing you would think. Uh, Good Lord. See, I knew Jack Meehoffer. You think you had it and you still flew, dummy? No, I took the test and I was negative. You fucking asshole. Oh, give me a break. This is what I knew. A guy like that, I already said I took the test before I went on the airport. <laughs> and I was negative. I think I still have the damn thing. Negative. Negative. But I know I had it. I was watching Mersh on Nightwave play this clip, and he's just crazy. He goes, so John's doing well. Yeah. yeah. The guy had the negative test in his pocket. He's like, I still have it. See, here it is. Who keeps their COVID test with them for days? He feels a little guilty, I think, about oh having COVID and getting out of the airplane. As he should. As, as he should. And I played this on the bonus show, but he even sang this really cheesy song, and he recorded it in the airport about having COVID. So this guy, Jack Meehoffer, continues to give him shit about that. Jack Meehoffer, you sang a song about it, having it while at the airport. Yeah, I had it. I didn't have it. And my best buddy has it. And my niece has it. And my brother has it. Hence, the COVID Christmas song, you freaking idiot. All right, enough of Jack me off. Goodbye. You don't listen. Now you're gone. Sounds like a troll. If you don't listen, then you, you know, there's nothing I can do. I took the, that. I can still sing about. Um, have yourself a COVID little Christmas. What? I'm not allowed to sing about something I had? What? I can't say I had a stroke either. I can't do a song about having a stroke. You fucking moron. That's a weird flex. <laughs> this is how he's going to go down. You think I'm just unhealthy because of COVID? Uh, uh, <laughs> you know what? Do you know how bad shape I'm in, you asshole? <laughs> okay. Oh, he's got you there. <laughs> Shot. Holy shit. It's fucking great. And the, the funny thing is, is that he's his most entertaining self when he's not trying to be. Yeah. Here he is blocking Jack Meoffer, who's making his show incredible right now. Yeah. Now, now that's over, man. Yeah. Unfortunately. Speaking of uh, trolls, someone named 
Corel Heberger huh. was uh, giving him super chats for some reason. Uh, good as gold. How are you, baby? Kinky Streets, Carol Heberger. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And Adam Thoreau sent me uh, a bunch of clips of him um, giving me shout outs and things like that. He also put together some other fun segments from his show. So that was the link to donate. Feel free to super chat. It's got a very wet mouth on oh. <laughs> this particular episode. Oh. Uh, he put together a nice little super cut for us, too. Um, uh, 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 um, um, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, um. All right. So I have to once again give a shout out to this guy, Joe Namath NYJ. Mm. From the Dabblers Anonymous subreddit. A hero. Listen, I don't care if it's not even the real Joe Namath. Yeah. I still think this guy is also a hero. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. And uh, (laughs) he called this, John has show prep 19, a virus that prevents you from figuring out how to play a video. (laughs) Oh, wait. Oh, here it is. Uh, Hold on. Let me see how I can get this uh, link here, my man. Hold on. How do I get that? Uh, Hey, let's see if I can get it here. How do I get this link here? Damn it. I got to click on that somehow. I got it. Oh, what the hell? Why wouldn't let me cut and paste this David Golden? I can't seem to cut and paste. I don't know why I can't do that. Let me see. No, I don't want to delete it. I want to... uh, it won't let me cut and paste it. Damn it! Damn it! I wanted to cut and paste this. Uh, I don't know why it won't let me do that here. All right. Anyway, well, we'll, we'll you know, I'll I'll play it for you next time. I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> old old gravy, Greg. Goes, he's talking to his right click menu right now. <laughs> no, I don't want to delete it. <laughs> don't give me that option. <laughs> yeah, leave me alone. <laughs> so this is great, Cross. This is from a totally different episode. Yeah. But it shows you why John's so ill prepared to run his show when he does run his show. It's 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 unbelievable. You know, I'm just pulling something up. Uh okay. Well, first we'll start with this one. I want to just show you this and then uh, I have to get the links. You know, I always bookmark on Safari, even though I do the show on Google Chrome. But it's, I don't know, it's just because I use Safari. So I don't know why. Uh, let me put that one out. Uh, put this one. Uh, there we go. Okay. Let me share that. So you see that yet? No, no. Hold on. Okay. Let me share it. Well, this is the first one, but I, I you know, you know, I, it's so funny, you know, I'm sure you do too, Cliff, but we do work hard on, you know, on prepping and getting stuff what? all set up. <laughs> so he he bookmarks what God. he wants to show on the show using Safari yeah. and then opens up Chrome and does the show. Do you know why he does that, Groj? I have a theory. Go for it. I think it's because Safari is the default browser. Yeah. And so when John clicks links, it automatically opens in Safari. Yeah. So people send him links. And then he bookmarks it, and then he's like, oh, shit, but I use StreamYard, which only works in Chrome. So he doesn't realize that you can actually change what the default browser is on your computer. Uh, And why would you figure it out? Why would you ever want to figure that Uh, out? My advice is do all your browsing on a Mac, but do your show from a PC. (laughs) Why not? Yeah. It really just simplifies everything. All right. I apologize. I just have a lot to catch up on. We're yeah. going to bang through these. This is Richard Ojeda's on the show, along with Benny Loco, Hey-o. who is a dynamic personality, I just have to say. And they have a new theory that I think is interesting. Hold on. Roderick <laughs> Gary says, hold on. He, thanks for the five bucks there. Uh, he says, rumor is that somebody is paying these trolls to do that to you, Richard, Hal, and me. Just letting you know, I already yeah, sent a complaint to them totally, for you. That's yeah, no, totally no. something that they do. It totally I believe is. that. You know, somebody's been sending me some pictures that these people are making of me and you and Hal. So he's talking about these photoshops. People are sending those over to Richard to see that. So their theory is that someone's paying the trolls to do this. And I just want to say, like, let's pretend that's me. 
Let's pretend I'm your George Soros. I'm funding this entire operation against you guys. I was right? going to say, I've got it narrowed down to either Soros or producer Chris. It's <laughs> one of the two. <laughs> Producer Chris has been broke lately. Are you yeah. paying? Are you paying the trolls? That's why I'm broke. <laughs> Is that what's going on? <laughs> I knew it. Now it's not just the trolls who are fucking over John and ruining his show. It's also Spectrum. Oh my God, Spectrum! I'm gonna kill you. Video and audio is poor. They're screwing me again. <laughs> you have to be freaking kidding me. Hold on. I'm just gonna do <laughs> uh, me a speed test here. Spectrum hates my politics. You have to be kidding me. Spectrum, I am getting so sick of you. Let's see. Yeah, let's do a speed test, yeah. Let's do the speed test. Yeah, let's see what's going on here. I'll help you diagnose. Here we go. Here. All right. Yeah, that one's good. It's the other one I'm worried about. What do you mean? Wait, what? Let's see. Upload speed's fast. Okay. It is? All right. Sounds good. That's well over 400. No. Download speed. No, your upload would not be over 400. The download speed is non-existent. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Spectrum. You're fucking me again. <laughs> I think he has the two things mixed up there. Yeah. You wouldn't have a really fast upload and a slow download, especially if you're frozen while you're uploading your video. It, it certainly wouldn't sound like that. <laughs> it certainly um, wouldn't look and sound oh, the way that it did, but, but fucking Spectrum's fucking him again, Crush. Yeah. <laughs> I love, yeah, just boomers diagnosing tech issues on the air. It's Someone just... taught him how to do a speed test. I'm sure Hale did. Yeah. And now he's like, because well, people were telling him, like, John, you look like shit. We can't hear you. What's going on? Yeah. Okay. I'll do a speed test. Well, and I'll, I'll get to the bottom of this. When you only know the one thing, it's the solution to every problem. You right. Know what I mean? Not like, I don't know, rebooting oh, the modem or something that? like that. Yeah, I don't know. I'll just, just throw it out there as a, something else you could try. But no, Spectrum's fucking me. He, he went on to, the guest comes on, and he goes, and I'm paying over $100 a month for this. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Righteous bucks. All right, so then, um, so he has this guest on right after he has the problem with Spectrum. And this is uh, Sherry Jacobus, who is a political pundit out of Washington, D.C. Now, John gives us an update on his plans to go to D.C. Mm. And you'll never believe how he ends this. And I'm coming out there probably in February or March to interview somebody. You know, I'm going to do the Stuttering John 2.0 thing and try and get some politicians and, <laughs> you know, and, you know, and ask them some poignant, but a lot of dumb, you know, ridiculous questions just, to, you know, just to really, you know, lampoon them. But, uh, you know, let's have a drink. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Terry. Uh, <laughs> Let's have a drink. Of course. That was subtle. Of course he asked her out for a drink. What else is he going to do? Is this guy a freaking moron or what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would say he is. All right. So in this next little clip that we have, John, John is deciding that he's going to goof on Donald Trump Jr. Now, what Donald Trump Jr. did is he put out a video goofing on President Biden for agreeing with that caller, let's go, Brandon. You guys remember when this happened before Christmas? Sure. He was doing a live show, and a guy goes, let's go, Brandon. He goes, yeah, I agree, let's go, Brandon. And, of course, the conservatives jumped all over this, and were like, oh, what an idiot. He doesn't even know that means fuck you, Biden. So um, this is John playing Donald Trump Jr. and goofing on him. And then he looks up. I mean, he's looking all over for notes. This guy can't even improvise. He can't even speak from the hip. I do three hours a day speaking from the hip. This moron can't do it without notes for a three-minute rumble video. All right, a couple of things going on here. First off. You don't speak from the hip. You shoot from the yeah, hip. You yeah. speak from the heart. Yeah. He always does is like chewing the shit. He always gets <laughs> yeah. his metaphors fucked up with that. Oh. And then he goes on to say, <laughs> I'm able to improvise for three hours a day. John, you stare blankly at your guest as they utter nonsense. Yeah. And then you explain that somehow that's going to take down the GQP. All right. Oh. And you're not a guy who can just talk for three hours and be compelling. You stare at the chat and respond to people. Yeah, he can't even string two minutes together of coherent <laughs> thought. Even when, like that, he was trying to explain clearly 
I'm going to go to Washington, D.C. and interview politicians. He's like, yeah. you know, you know, you know, you know, and, and, you know. You know. I, I, what, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll have some pointed questions, but then I'll also have a, like a joke question in there. But the, what's going to happen? Do you want to get a drink? Yeah. <laughs> Lampooning makes me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> do they have any balls in D.C.? <laughs> All right. So this is great because John's trying to goof on Donald Trump Jr., but he's not good at it. This is not something that John's good at. No. So he brings up Hale Sparks. And he knows that Hale Sparks has already goofed on this video on his show. Listen to how John, first off, you're going to hear a little bit of the Donald Trump Jr. video. And then John's brilliant analysis and drop-ins. And then uh, we get Hale involved. Joe Biden, the president of the United States, the man sitting on our nuclear codes, has no idea what the biggest meme Perhaps ever, certainly the biggest sporting tradition of the last half a century, the newest one, going all over the country. He <laughs> Hell, have you seen this? I already did it on my show. Of course I've seen it. <laughs> I, I, I knew you had because I'm, cause I had the Army Major and I'm like, I know Hal probably has it because I couldn't find it. Yeah, but oh come on, Hal! Just yeah. I, you know, I know you already did, but give us, you know, give us your genius commentary as I play this thing. <laughs> so John is nothing. He pauses the video and starts laughing out loud at what I don't know. It wasn't that funny. I mean, I don't want to get into the politics of it, but John has nothing. He's like, oh, watch me goof on. Uh, this idiot, Donald Trump Jr. And then he goes, all right, hell no, you you couple us the yeah. jokes for this. Just do the thing you did on your show that was funny. Do yep. that on my show now. Yep, exactly. The other thing that's going on in John's world, well, a couple of things. He had Michael Popak on, the great. The great. Michael Popak. <laughs> because, and I, I had these clips, and it was just too long and boring. I'll just explain what happened here. He says, we have some really good news on the lawsuit with Sirius XM. Oh. And I was like, oh, I didn't think that was going anywhere. All right, yeah. what, what is this good news? Michael Popak comes on to explain that the, it will go to the three-judge panel where they'll get a chance to make their case for this. The other thing that would have happened is it would have been thrown out. So he's excited that it didn't get thrown out, which I thought that the whole appeal process was that they knew that they were in the right, now all of a sudden it sounded like this is more of a long shot that they let on yeah. early on because all of a sudden he's like, yeah, so I mean, they didn't tell us to go fuck ourselves, so that's cool. It's yeah. still going. You know, we still got a shot at this. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I thought that was funny. The other thing that's going on in John's world is he needs to figure out his schedule because he has a new gig. Oh. And it's a writing gig. And he tells us about it. Now, could someone let me know what time... Pacific time, does Army Major Ojeda and Hal Sparks broadcast? Because I have that writing gig again for three weeks, starting on Monday. So I'm going to have to figure out times to do the show on Tuesday and Thursday. It's for, you know what, I don't even care. It's, it's, well, I'm not going to mention the name of It's for an app. You know, I'm too old to write uh, for any late night uh, shows at this point. But, you know, I write... I write a bunch of stuff for a phone app. It's like a trivia, a bunch of questions, but they pay me well. Anyway, I thank my agent for that. He's writing trivia questions for a phone app. For three weeks at a time? For three weeks. It pays really good, but for some reason, it also has like specific hours that he has to now juggle in order to do this. Is he like punching a clock or something? This, Does this make any sense? This is a temp job. It's a he temp got, job. He's got a temp job. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I mean, God bless him. You got to pay those bills, but I wouldn't call that a writing gig necessarily. I would love to know when he says it pays really well. I'd love to know what that means. I'd love to know that. Yeah. That's a weird one. Yeah. That, yeah. That, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. Well, he I needs gotta... the gig, Croge, because as you know, he's got the Invisaligns now oh. to fix his teeth. Oh, boy. And uh, un that's what's wrong with him. <laughs> Unfortunate, <laughs> unfortunately, that's fucking up some of his major talents. Court's closing in on Dickhead Jr. and Becky. Yep, that's the big news. 
I can't do with oh, these freaking no. Invisaligns on. Don't worry, you got the point. <laughs> <laughs> he can't do his famous trumpet sound anymore. Oh, he's nothing without his sound effects. <laughs> Are you talking about me? <laughs> All right. So John has an advertiser on again, this this betonline.ag. Oh, boy. And he's using that CLNS50 code. Yeah, that same fucking code. No, so I reached out to those guys. Yeah. Because they've been in contact with having WATP be on their platform. So I just decided to shoot him an email and be like, is, is John reading these? And I'm not trying to get him in trouble yeah, or anything. I'm just yeah, yeah, curious because I, I heard from an insider that they haven't been working with him for years. Yeah. So I think it's bullshit. I think he's just pretending to yeah, do it. Absolutely. He's also the worst at doing these ad reads. He sounds so put off by it. Yeah. But he knows all the right radio lingo for going into an ad read crush. But first, let me just pay the bills, if you will. As you know, uh, that's a, you know, that is a radio term. So uh, let's see. Here we are. BetOnline.ag has you covered all season. More props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues to march to the playoffs. God, I wish he would kick the bucket, which is radio terms for kill yourself. (laughs) I gotta pay the bills, which is a radio term. (laughs) I don't actually pay the bills. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good point. Not literally pay bills. I would never do that. Yeah, Uh, (laughs) That's hilarious. All right, just a few more things out here. Uh, I want to remind everyone that John does not go to troll sites. He cannot be bothered with going to troll sites. He has on this guest Nina G. Nina G is a female stuttering comedian. Oh, boy. And John asked the question he likes to ask of all the guests that he has on the show for Uh some reason. Uh Like You know, that's the thing. Like, I don't ever go on these troll sites, so I don't, you know. Like, who cares what these fucking losers think? Do you get a lot of people that hate on you? Oh, yeah, yeah. On occasion, yeah. Yeah. In my YouTube, you know. But I got jo- jokes about it. Like, the most offensive one was somebody said that um, that that seeing me do stand-up was the bravest thing they ever saw. Which, like, <laughs> what kind of bullshit is that? Her version of trolls is someone says that her trying to do stand-up as a stutterer is the most brave thing anyone's ever seen. Wow. This is very different from what John's talking yeah. about. So, oh, did they Photoshop that? No, they just said it was really brave. Like, me t- telling dick jokes is not brave. There's lots others who risk their lives every day. It's not me. <laughs> no, but it is, it is funny. Like, how much time an effort these people put into hating on you. You know what I mean? Like it, I mean, I mean, do you get heckled on like a lot? Oh <laughs> it doesn't sound like John's listening, does it? No, not at all. I don't think he's listening or paying attention. And I can prove that he never does because later on in this interview, he says this. Well, you have been charming Nina. I've enjoyed this conversation. Uh, I didn't know what to expect because this is the first time that we've ever talked. No, no, I I was on your show a few <laughs> years back. Were you? Yeah. Get the fuck out. Of Wait a second. <laughs> Wait oh, a second. was I with Royce then? I think there was another guy. Yeah. Oh wow. And it wasn't a video thing. It was about four years. It was probably 2019. And what was it? You know, and, and was the subject all about? You know, stuttering? <laughs> yes! Oh. She's a stuttering comic! Of course, that's why you had her on two years ago, you moron. <laughs> well, in his defense, it's hard to remember things when you're blackout drunk. Correct. That is that is very true. I like yeah. that somebody wrote, uh, Nita, do people dress up like cockroaches and taunt you on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just me? Okay. Just curious. <laughs> so then... It's, John is obviously embarrassed by this. <laughs> no, I didn't even know that we've ever talked before. I swear to God. I yeah. just saw you were on my Instagram. This is going great. <laughs> Good Lord. He's amazing. Let's get a drink. <laughs> he, is, he is my hero. Now, the one thing that we can say about liberal Democrats like Stuttering John is they have a lot of empathy. And that's where the term bleeding heart liberal comes from. That's why they want to help out those who are less fortunate and they want everyone to get along. 
if you're going to refuse to get vaccinated and refuse to wear masks, then you deserve to die. Sorry. (laughs) You deserve it. (laughs) If you don't live the life, wait, that I tell you to live, then die. Wow. Now, this gets a lot funnier. Tell me, Columbia, am I boosted? It's very, it's a good question. And I'm going to tell you something about that. <clears throat> now that I got the Omni, I definitely had Omnicron or whatever Omnicron. it is. Omnicron? What's that? <laughs> so, so do I have to get boosted anymore? I don't know. I got to ask my doctor. I don't know. Because now that the other two stopped Delta and the other one, so now do I even need to get boosted? <laughs> If you don't get vaccinated, you deserve to die. Did you get boosted, John? I don't think I'm going to. Oh. I'm not planning on it. <laughs> what a fucking hypocritical douche oh. this guy is. He truly is stupid. Oh. He truly is dumb. Oh. And unlikable in every single way. Unlikable in every single way. Um, this is the last clip that I have. And this is just to confuse everybody. Richard Ojeda tries to talk to John about his children. Uh-huh. And John has to correct him. All right, just sit back and listen and see if you can make sense of this. Because, like I said, when you sit down with your daughter, well, well, your daughter, yeah, and and and, and no, she my told, son. <laughs> yeah, but you have a your son. Okay, Richard, let me explain to you. You gotta educate me. Well, you're, you, you, I have three born. kids. Okay. I have three kids. Okay. My oldest was my daughter. Okay. Then she came out as gay first in high school. Okay. Then a year after high school told me that he then, was transgender and that wow. he always felt like a uh, a boy a trapped boy. in a, a girl's boy. body. Okay. So okay. he is he is my son. He's your son. He's your son. But see that's the thing. Yes, following this, she was my daughter, but he is my son. With how many people are we talking about here? I'm very confused by it. You know what we didn't bring up with, with and I, I can't believe I glossed over this, this Pat Oswalt thing. I was hoping the newest episode he would address this Dave Chappelle controversy, oh, right. which I don't. I think they recorded it before that, yeah, because uh, it seems like it takes a little time for them to put these terribly produced podcasts out. But the reason why I want to bring this up is because Patton took a, a photo with Dave Chappelle. Dave was nice enough to invite him on to his show in an arena down the street from where Patton was performing, I think in Seattle, on New Year's Eve. So Patton went, and they've been friends for over 30 years. He went up, did 10 minutes at this arena gig with Dave. They took a photo backstage. He posted it to Instagram. He got a little bit of shit from people who don't like Dave Chappelle yeah. because of Dave's recent Netflix special, which, again, I don't even know how it's offensive. If, if you actually watch the special, Dave... Rips on everyone. I mean, the Jews should be most upset with Dave Chappelle after that special. It's pretty anti-Semitic if, if you're taking everything he's saying seriously. But you shouldn't. It's a fucking comedy. It's a joke. But anyway, so then Patton, after getting some blowback, posted a photo on Instagram. Have you seen what the photo is? He's like penning in his notepad. And he, he, he puts underneath that this huge caption that explains why he posted that photo and how sorry he is for doing that. And in it, he wrote, we also 100% disagree about transgender rights and representation. I support trans people's rights, anyone's rights, to live safely in the world as their fullest selves. Does Dave Chappelle want trans people dead? What is he talking about? 100% disagree about transgender rights and representation. Why would he say that? Have they been vaccinated? (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. If these trans people aren't fully vaxxed, they deserve to die. That's just well, my opinion. I, I just I hate the idea that you can't do a comedy show with people that have awful views. I mean, I come to Carl's house like twice a month. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, guilty by association, my friend. Oh, fuck. Yeah, anyway, Patton has become patently unfunny. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with that guy. He, he also talks about in that thing about how he's not friends with people anymore because they have different political views than him. What, what is this? Why does anyone care about that sort of thing? It's bizarre. Yeah. But they, they think that they're so correct about everything that everyone else must be wrong if they think a different way. It's like, well, people have different opinions. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. All right. I want to talk about the controversy from our show 
first, and I oh, didn't actually. Oh no! Wait, what? I didn't actually prepare this, so now I have to figure out which clip it is. There's controversy. Yeah. So. Oh, something I said. No, no, it's actually something. Oh, good. That, something that I said. Oh, because good. Okay, John well, starts talking. <laughs> John starts talking about his early childhood. Uh, and oh. I thought for sure that he was lying about this. I'm going to play the clip, and I'll, I'll tell you what my thought process was, and I'll, I'll, I'll have a little uh, dispute with the people who think I'm wrong. Anyway, here I am asking my dad to help me with my homework. But he was busy on his bed, engineering papers strewn out across the duvet. He was busy. How dare I interrupt? I asked him for help. He said he was busy. I asked again, angrier. He said he was busy. I knew that if I asked again, I was getting beat. And that if I didn't ask, I would survive unscathed. Unfortunately, I chose the former. Why? I mean, I knew it was going to lead to my ass getting kicked. Well, because I felt guilty that only my sisters got the beatings. I mean, who was I to avoid them? My sisters already abused me enough calling me mama's boy, and this was my way of proving that I was one of them. Dad, can you please beat the shit out of me? I mean, help me with my homework. Bam, slap, game over. My trust in Dad, gone. From there on out, it was a confused love I felt for him. Now, I called out bullshit that the reason why he got beat was because he was asking for help with his homework. <laughs> Never in the history of people getting beat is it because they wanted help with their homework. <laughs> well, also, unless he's just annoying. But the thing is that what I took issue with was him making himself the hero of that, that he yeah. He, yeah. he he did it on purpose so that he would get beat instead of his sisters. Correct. Correct. Also. I went to school with Puerto Ricans. They're not showing up with their homework done. So this is an unbelievable story oh <laughs> from start to finish. But this idea that is dead. So people are like, Carl, I believe that John got beat up for no good reason. I'm like, I do too. I, that part I totally believe. I just don't believe the part where he's, where he's you know, this poor little six-year-old or seven-year-old stuttery John is just asking for some help with his homework from his dad. He's like, fuck you, asshole, and beats him. So, right. Someone in the subreddit said, how, how is it that you can do the creep off and deal with constant child abuse every week uh, and then deny that Stuttering John was abused <laughs> as a child? There, there, is a, there is a disconnect there. Well, I think people misunderstood what I was saying. I, I believe John was beat and should have been beat more. <laughs> That's my he stance. He wasn't on hurt it. enough. He needed more punishment. All right. Let's get into the, the bit here. The reason uh, that I want to talk to you today, Dr. Steve, is because I meant to bring this up on the bonus show, and I totally forgot. I spaced okay. on it. So I'm going to play you a clip. You've probably already heard it, but this is, and, and have me pause if you want. This is Stuttering John talking about when he got COVID when he was in New York and what he did to cure his COVID. I just wanted to get your take on that. <laughs> okay. I, you know, I drink a big um, diet. Um, uh, a Red Bull, like a diet one. <clears throat> Hang out with my brother. I try to eat a veal parmesan hero. I get through like half. All right. Is that an important part of this? How much of the <laughs> veal parmesan hero he's able to eat? I haven't read about that as far as uh, symptoms yeah. of COVID, but okay. No, I, I th <laughs> when I heard first heard this, I assumed he was talking about, hey, that's you know, I was feeling crummy, so I tried to make myself feel better yeah. by drinking a Red Bull. <laughs> um, and does he say that he? <laughs> okay. I, yeah. I anyway, so there's no there's no home. answer for it. I was up from one o'clock to like eight in the morning with the worst headache. I've ever had. I've never had a migraine. This was worse. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so I decided to eat some king dongs. He's never had one, but that was worse. Than he what? does catch himself on that. Well, how oh, would I know I never had it? But you know what I'm saying. So bad. I go through my mom's pantry. <laughs> John doesn't get migraines. He gives them. Thanks, Fuchiko. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. She's got no aspirin. I'm going crazy now. So I just take, I start drinking her, her, uh, I don't know, cough, so whatever. You know, cough and cold. Medicine? Or whatever. 
<laughs> Vicks or whatever. Now, cough and cold, whatever. You know, just, that stuff, uh, 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 uh Elixir. <laughs> Dr. Steve, when you have a headache, is that a good thing to do to drink Vicks cough and cold medicine? <laughs> no, well, it, it may have uh, Tylenol in it. Yeah, okay. I, I wondered if he was drinking, uh, you know, before he said that, I, I assumed he was drinking like codeine cough syrup or something. <laughs> And just drinking it, that's, that's, you're supposed to take 30 mLs of that. You don't, you know, but maybe that's what he meant. You don't think he like put a, it on rocks and uh, <laughs> yeah. sipped it for a couple hours? Just, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. myself a f- fruity triaminic drink. <laughs> All right, it gets better. Here we go. Then I go upstairs, I start popping some of the aspirin, you know, that's only supposed to be low-dose aspirin, you know, for, for my um, strokes. Then I take a Klonopin, oh. and my head is <laughs> killing me. All right, so I have not seen this, and I haven't seen all of the studies that have been done. So Klonopin, low-dose aspirin, cough syrup. Will that cure COVID, Dr. Steve? <laughs> I, I haven't seen any data on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I would no. <laughs> But I would say probably not. Uh, I He was just... Uh, taking whatever it sounds like. And the, <laughs> yeah, the, I was the, shoveling everything into my face I could find. Yeah. <laughs> the 81 milligram aspirin is the one thing that might have actually helped him. Uh, those 81 milligram enterocoded aspirins are for uh, secondary uh, prevention of right. cardi- uh, you know heart heart attacks and strokes and stuff like that, and uh, pr- even primary pr- prevention in some people. And uh, if you take enough of them, you can get up to the regular dose of a, of a regular aspirin. So uh, I was thinking yeah. the same thing. I'm like, I, he's looking for aspirin from his mom, but he has his own aspirin, but it's the low dose kind. You know how dosing works, John. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're pretty familiar <laughs> with this. Well, he was so mad that his mom didn't have any aspirin, too. If you run that <laughs> he's just yelling, she didn't have any aspirins. How pathetic is it that he's screaming at his old mom for not having the medicine he wants? Right. right. Okay. Oh, what? what am I supposed to eat this, Ben Gay? <laughs> That's why you got to love him. He's just so ridiculous. <laughs> he's, he's a ridiculous person. And he didn't do any shows this week because he has this writing gig. You know, he's writing questions for an app that he can't tell us about. So there were no uh, political shows. He did hmm. do a beer on the balcony, and I have a couple of quick clips that I think you guys might enjoy as he's talking about that new hot girlfriend that he met on Bumble or Babble or whatever that <laughs> app is that he's Dabble. on. Don't <laughs> he act. Dab- 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 <laughs> Dabbling dating. <laughs> and so this, this woman used to be a science teacher, and this is the one where he goes, I hit a home run. Intercourse was achieved, or whatever the fuck he said. It was so ridiculous. <laughs> so he's talking about how he's uh, going out with her again. This girl has one of the best bodies I've ever seen. Ugh. Natural C cups. Oh, fucking one hell of an ass. Oh, you know, flat stomach, smart. Retired smart. science wow, that is teacher. Very interesting. Please tell he's, me more. He's smart. <laughs> I like that he finally got around to smart. Yeah. He's explaining <laughs> everything about her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, she's intelligent. It's going to hang out with her tonight. That's why I didn't jerk off this morning. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't want to, you know. Thanks for the information. You know, I don't, you know, I don't want to run off a batch and you know, and, and then oh. not have as, as much to give. Oh. Yes, we already had sex. Coitus. How, how, what kind of what kind of old man talks like that? <laughs> I know it. I know it. This is this wanna, is like child molester type of talk. I want to give this her a is... full batch. Ugh. <laughs> so gross. It's so disgusting. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I want to you know, give just, her a f- full batch. And that the batch is just yellow and congealed. You just oh, know yeah. it is. It just it comes out in chunks. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, Judd, you just sneezed on my chest. Oh, nope. I'm actually done. <laughs> that was my batch. Wow. 
<laughs> How disgusting. Happy what intercourse. <laughs> I'll be talking about this on the show tomorrow. Thank you very much. Could you imagine if this woman watched this thing? Well, if she if she was real, which she's not, so that's the only reason why he's able to pull this off. She's, this isn't a this isn't a real person. I want him to t- tell us whether or not he jerked off every episode. That's how we should start every episode every day. Did you jerk off yet today, Chad? Oh, What's going on with the jerk off? off update? <laughs> Give me a second. I actually uh, did jerk off because I will probably never get laid again. Thank you for asking. No, this woman is is certainly real because. He brought her to the pub that he hangs out at. Oh. And this is a fun story. Of course, all the other ladies get real jealous. John's got such a hot piece of ass. <laughs> oh, no. This is the best about women. I got to say. Well, I don't want to generalize, of course. This is the best about some women. There are two other girls, you know, at the pub who, who you know, we've been talking about dating, whatever, you know, fucking. And, what? you know, but it hasn't happened. Well, I, yeah, I did go on one date, one of the girls. But she was there last night, and I had this hottie next to me making out with me. Ugh. You know. Oh, in the Got pub. my hand on her ass and everything. And then Ugh. suddenly all those girls like, whoa. And, and, like, suddenly I become more attractive. No, you don't. <laughs> this is a lie. lie. This is a lie. <laughs> I mean, I hope it's a lie because... This is not behavior that 50-somethings have. They're making, making out with this chick at the bar, grabbing her ass. What are you doing? Why? And, and the idea that he thinks that this discussion is what people want to hear is one of the most pathetic things oh, that I've ever heard He doesn't heard in my care life. if you want to hear or not. He just wants to brag about it. I mean, he's literally Ugh. just bragging that he's got this hot chick and uh, the other girls who didn't go out with him are all jealous. No, they want to go out with him because he's so hot. The the inability uh, the inability of him to be aware of of what people think is worth listening to or <laughs> or not grossed out by is so distorted in this fucking idiot's brain. Yeah, uh, Doctor Steve has a pretty good idea about trolling John on uh, YouTube, <laughs> creating accounts with uh, with fun names that he probably would understand, but we would like Dunning Kruger. Would be a uh, a fun yeah, name. And then to if you have. do a if you do a super chat with that, he will read your name. Right. <laughs> I regret life. <laughs> yeah, right. <I> regret life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, actually, uh, Dr. Steve had a really funny one. Do you want to tell him? What, uh, Vinny Stitz? <laughs> Vinny Stitz. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Somebody, I got Vinny's uh, approval on that one. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, somebody I, did uh, come on as Coral Heberger and asked about <laughs> Gagia. He did, a, he did a super chat with them. Uh, thank you, Carol Heberger, for the $2. Gagia! <laughs> you know what? Because you um, donated the two bucks, uh, I'll just tell you where Gagia came from. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right, no thanks. We, we've heard that yeah. story before. It's really boring. Yeah, he's already done. That. It's really not exciting. I like uh, Enoch in the Discord writes. Uh, uh, I was making out with this chick at the bar, and I, I, I hit the jukebox with my elbow <laughs> and started playing Rock Around the Clock. <laughs> <laughs> and then we broke out a dance number. I was pretty amazing. Someone handed me you a saxophone. Have... <laughs> you should have seen me. See me at the sock hop. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey. Is this guy a freaking moron or what? All right, last thing. Uh, Dr. Steve's going on Elisa Giordana's show tomorrow. That That's true. That's true. I, I don't know what to expect. Um, I like Elisa. I think she's, she's great. Uh, pretty pretty cool. And, and, uh, she'll after, let you do whatever uh, you want. I'll be she's following great. Cardiff. And I guess we're going to be talking about the attack on his, uh, on his studio. Oh, by I, a I rival, uh, by a rival podcast. I don't. I have no idea. So it, it's uh, that that one's going to be fun. Um, since you mentioned, can I? I, I uh, Cardiff on my Twitch. He's constantly trying to get me to send my audience to his show in a raid. It's a feature to get more people uh, sharing audience members. Sure. And uh, I did that, and um, he was because he wears a mask. I don't know if you know that. I do. Um, okay, good. And then he had the mask off. What? And so I saw his face, and so did my audience. 
only about 30 people went over there because I don't have a ton of people listen on Twitch or watch. But they went over there, and I, I'm trying to screenshot it. And then he realizes he's on live. He puts his hand over the fucking thing, and gets a stupid mask, and puts it on. But I, I saw his face. No shit. Yeah, I sure did. No one I has sure a screen did. capture of it? I did not get a screen capture, but I did see his face. And, never, and on my audience, like, oh, my God, there he is. Uh, it, I kind of caught him off guard. So uh, good luck on the show tomorrow with uh, Elisa. And I know that yeah, you, were, be fun. you were interested in putting out some dog whistles while you were on the show. Yes. For uh, some WATP dog whistles. Obviously, you know, you can talk about how you dabble in medicine. Might be fun, but uh, <laughs> okay. that's a good one. <laughs> but uh, what, I mean, what else could we? Uh, could we I mean, I'm probably glory days should come up a few times. Just you know, I think mentioning that's your favorite song by Bruce Springsteen for no reason. Well, I'm definitely going to uh, say something about uh, how I didn't force her to have dinner with me before I came on her show. Yeah, right. <laughs> and anything you could do to uh, reference the okay. great stuttering John, I'm sure people will have some good ideas for you in our. Uh, discord so okay yeah sounds good anybody has any ideas they can email them to me at drsteve202 at gmail.com so i mentioned this when i was on drew and mike earlier this week but stuttering john didn't do any shows the week before we didn't have a lot to talk about with him and then he did a beer on the balcony that someone shared with me sweet it should really be a video cast i don't know what's going on with john's fingers his fingernails are so long, and there's so much shit underneath them. Oh, God. And like, it might literally be shit. I don't know. And and the one finger has, like, crusty yellow shit on the he's, nail and the he's skin. He's turning into a monster. He, he really is. He, he looks terrible. Yeah. He's not long for this world. That is for damn sure. Dude, get your fucking kidneys checked. It's going to be like <laughs> kidney failure. I think so. Oh, my it God. It sucks, because I wanted to live forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are we gonna do? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The saddest I've ever seen, Carl. <laughs> so he goes out and does an hour long show by himself, and I have way too many clips. If we if this goes too long, somebody just stop me, and we'll just use the clips another time because there's just so much to fucking talk I can about do this on all here. day. All right, so the last time we checked in on Stuttering John, he was talking about how hot his chick was. You remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's got the C cups, the flat stomach, the nice ass. A hell of an ass. Retired science teacher. Mm -hmm. So she's in her late 50s, 60s, whatever. whatever. You know, I'm not judging. I'm not an ageist person, but. Um... Good. <laughs> <laughs> Is he looking at me? <laughs> All right, let's see what's going on here. Let's get an update. What's been going on in my life? I was dating this chick for a while, and I, you know, I was shagging her. That's gross. <laughs> Who says that? I was shagging her. For a while implies they're not together anymore. Uh, sounds like it's not going so well. Um, but, um, so I'm dating this girl, and everything was, you know, fine. Sweet girl. She was actually an ex-science teacher. Ex-science teacher. And, uh... <laughs> And then, uh, listen to him thinking. Yeah. <laughs> but she's needy. Oh, she's the and then she start like, you know, you didn't text me today. You didn't call me today. It's like, uh, I, I don't, I don't really, you know, that's not, I, you know, I'm busy right now. You know, I got a, I got an audition. I got to edit. You know, I got kids. I'm, you know, I'm trying to see my youngest son for dinner. I got this and that. I'm not like I don't like talking on the phone, nor do I like texting all the time. It's not I so so sure enough, uh I got a text from her today. I called you last night and you didn't answer. It's cause I was sleeping. It's because I'm passed out by seven. I started drinking at three. What do you want from me? She was needy. She needed to sleep in a bed that wasn't the human equivalent of a litter box. <laughs> I, I just love the fact that he's talking about this girl he's been dating for three weeks, who he's bragging about how she's hot and he's fucking her. 
And then he goes, but I can't text her every day. What do you mean? <laughs> you can't text your girlfriend every day? It's not that difficult. <laughs> I think we all would reply to text messages of our, our new girlfriend yeah. every day. That, I mean, that doesn't make any fucking sense. He's making this up. You can yeah, tell by right. the length of time it took him to be like, the thing is that, um, the thing is that the thing is she's needy. Right. She's needy. Yeah. She's needy. That's what it is. She needed it, me to be not disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> she needed me to bathe. Someone in the discord pointed out. It's the only time he still stutters is when he's about to lie. It's true. <laughs> that is true. There's a towel. Yeah. He's got a towel. That's a good point. And she goes, you know, and, I don't know if you want to respond, but you know, I can't have, I can't be in a relationship like this. And, and I'm like, all right, well, so fine. I just, I just texted him back. I go, look, if you need a guy to text and call you every single day, then I'm not your guy. <laughs> oh, so John is the one who broke up. Isn't that funny how it started with, she dumped him via tax, and then he's like, oh, yeah? Well, don't let the door hit you on the way out, bitch. <laughs> yeah, right. I got other things going on in my life. The way it always goes. Oh, my God. I um, Dr. Steve was on Anthony Cumia's show, Okay. and I was just watching live, and I wasn't going to call in, and then they started feeling bad for stuttering John. Yeah, yeah. So I called in, oh. and I have some clips from – actually, why don't I play that now? I have some clips <laughs> from that. But it's funny because even Anthony Cumia was like, when he was talking about making out with a chick in a bar, who the fuck does that? And he he had a great an, uh, analysis of it. He goes, you know, like when you see a movie and they're trying to show that you're in like a really white trash bar and you'll see like people in the background. They're not like in focus, but they're like making out. And that's how you know that you're like in a really trashy establishment. Yeah. Like that's like what Pickwick Pub is. Yeah. John's in there making out with his girlfriend. He's 56 years old. And he's in there making out with his girlfriend. So fucking funny. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I called in um, because Dr. Steve was on there talking about uh, WATP. Steve, uh, your your show is amazing. People love it, and uh, I hear I hear from people all the time that hey, they thanks, uh, they love your program, and I adore you on Who Are These Podcasts. <laughs> um, Carl and company of them uh, do such a great job over there. They do. Aren't you uh, like you're a, a radio guy? You're a fan of radio and a, a student of radio, if you will. I'm a student. Yeah, uh, I'm a fan. I'm not a radio guy. W- but don't they uh, don't they seem to have really picked up the ball with with the radio thing? It's a great yeah. mix of radio and podcast. They do production. They have yeah. like the uh, the sound effects and uh, and bumpers and promos, but they're kind of funny and used in a almost tongue in cheek kind of way. You know what I miss, Pete? Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm so entertained by the show. And you were really good on it, talking about, of course, the inimitable stuttering John Malin. <laughs> Never heard of him. <laughs> no. That's Gino. That Someone too? tried no, to warn you about him, but yeah. go on with your thing. Yeah, no, you did a uh, you did a bang up job there on uh, on stuttering John. I'm amazed yeah, that they was can... on the Patreon side. the The Patreon one yeah. was a good hour and a half long, and then uh, the next week, just to promo that, he had me on for a couple of minutes to talk about whether it's okay to drink heavily and then take Clonopin and then. <laughs> Do uh, 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 Beal Parmesan heroes and cough syrup for COVID. And we did appreciate Dr. Steve's analysis on that. Mm. Now, the reason why I wanted to point this out is because I know that Anthony's listens to the show and he keeps up on Stuttering John with that, but he's going beyond that because I have not brought up the fact that Stuttering John and Hale Sparks had a comedy show that was booked and promoted and has now been canceled. (laughs) And there's a lot of speculation about this. And uh, Anthony brought that up. He, yeah. I guess his gig was canceled with uh, Hal Sparks. He, he he professes to be very close friends with Hal Sparks. Okay. And they had a, a mutual gig. Uh, I guess John was opening for him. Or if you talk to John, he was uh, uh, Hal Sparks was, was opening for John. Begging him, probably begging uh, Oh, yeah. And then the gig got canceled for some reason. No one really knows why. And then Hal booked another gig in a bigger venue in San Francisco without, without John. Shocker. So oh, now it's ooh. like, it's so, like anyone can read that and know exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> On air. On air with Carl Hamburger. Carl Hamburger. Yummy, yummy. Hamburger. All right, let's get back to the stuttering John stuff. So he starts off this beer on the balcony, he plays his theme song, and the theme song is like three minutes long. And he has all this dead air. The theme song ends. There's nothing going on. And he finally gets in front of the microphone. 
Listen closely, Andy. Yeah. Everyone, welcome to Beer on the Balcony. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that, John? He comes out, he's chewing his food. He's got a, a giant mouthful of food that he's trying to chew down as fast as possible. He's grabbing for his beard and yeah. to wash it down. And I think we need an explanation as to why that happened. We have to understand. <clears throat> I start the song. I take a piss. Run downstairs. <clears throat> I'm like half a ham sandwich. I wolf it down. Because I haven't eaten. And I need energy. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> Did you hear the end of that? What did he just say? <laughs> and I need energy. And I need energy. And I need energy? Yeah, that's what he and said. And I need energy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I think he's like, I need energy, but that, energy. he's saying I E N G. I need NG. <laughs> and this is before he gets drunk. This is the beginning of the show. Yeah. He pounds four beers during the show. That's an hour long. Yeah. Even by my standards. That seems excessive. <laughs> um, all right. So somebody he's responding to the chat like he always does, which is great. And somebody tells him that Howard Stern's playing clips of Betty White interviews. Where Suttering John was interviewing Betty White, but they cut out Suttering John and just played Betty White's answers. <laughs> I'm really curious if they cut John's voice out of the Betty White tribute on Howard. They played her answer to the question, but no one asking her the question. It didn't make any sense out of context. Did they really? Well, that's because of the lawsuit. See, now they know, although I don't even know if they're allowed to play that. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so I mean... Yeah, now, now suddenly do, they, they are, are, you know, I guess we were wrong. Thank you for say, telling me that, CB. That's an admittance. I got to talk to Popak about it. That's an admittance that they know that what they're doing is wrong. No, they're admitting that they don't care if you're on the show in any way. They yeah, just they're admitting that you're not helping their station in any <laughs> single way. No one's signing up for serious because they hear stuttering John's voice. Also, the admittance is that John didn't bring a lawsuit for 15 years. He's been on Sirius XM since 2005, playing best of shows all this time. And now finally John goes, oh, you can't do that. Well, why didn't you care for 15 years while you were making a steady paycheck? Yeah. Now all of a sudden you care. Yeah. That's the admittance of guilt. Oh, you can't do that. I don't, you can't use my shit. Okay, fine. We'll cut all your shit out. <laughs> yeah, I know. And not think twice about it. Exactly. All right. So let's talk about what's going on on the hater sites and all the gossip. Yeah. You know, somebody told me, somebody went on, on the Reddit site, you know, and I don't go on. And I always tell people, don't tell me anything on there because I don't want to know. You know, in the old days, like, if I would talk to people, you know, I would tell them different things, but just one. Like, like if I'm talking, like, it's people that I don't really know and I'm just getting, I'll tell them one or two things. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, and then I'll see if it ever shows up. And then I'll know who, if the person says some of the things that I said, or one of the things, I'll know who that person is. Fucking creep. Are you guys following this strategy? <laughs> yeah. So John goes around lying to people to see if they're haters or not. There's this one guy, you know, thinking, I guess he, I guess he, he, I guess he tweeted or however you call it, like on Reddit that I'm a, uh, I'm I'm a school teacher now or something. But I mean, first of all, you know, I'd have to go to college to become a different college, so well, two years of college to become a school teacher. But it is something I told this person. 
can you pause it real quick? Yeah, no. Sorry. Didn't he tell everybody that he was going to be a substitute teacher at some point? I, you know what? I can't remember. Back when, in the Royce days. Yeah, I thought he did say that. Yeah. And so, being a substitute teacher, you don't need a degree for. No. You can be a substitute. Yeah, it's pathetic. <laughs> it's, it's not a good gig. <laughs> it's not a good... Well, I'm just bang, saying, God. like, he heard the same shit everybody heard. Knowing that it was horseshit, but just, just, just seeing, because I had my doubts... And sure enough, it shows up. Yeah. Jen's pretending he's playing 4D chess. There's yeah. no way he would remember what he told someone. Yeah. There's no fucking way. He doesn't remember anything that's going on in his yeah, life. Yeah, he doesn't remember. He thinks he's Tyrion Lannister on Game of Thrones. That's <laughs> a fucking Tyrion thing. And he told everybody this on his own show. And this He doesn't is... remember all his own lies. No, he, of course not. And this is hilarious, too, because when you're telling people lies to figure out if they're the ones going on Reddit or not, you would say good things about yourself. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yes. Would that make a lot of sense? Yes. Now, I don't remember if I ever said that to this person, which is another bullshit. I just seeing if it ever would show up. I have never ever in my life have had to have supervised visitation. But this idiot fell for it. And apparently he goes on these sites and says it. Why would you tell someone that you just met, you have supervised visitation with your children? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got you. Now there's a rumor about it. Everyone's <laughs> talking about it. Like, you started that rumor, John? Yeah. Why? What were you thinking? Why, why would you do that? I, I told this guy that I'm a premature ejaculator. And sure enough, there it is on Reddit. Yeah. <laughs> I told the guy I ran out of toilet paper, and that's why there's all this shit under my fingernails. And there it is, on the hater sites. Gotcha. <laughs> now I know. You busted. Now I know you're a troll. And now we're not friends anymore. <laughs> Unless you want to buy me a pint. <laughs> you really could just be friends with John. No matter what you do with him, you just offer to buy him a quarter's like, All right, we're yeah. cool. It's all, it's all good. Curly, you're the guy who's been goofing on me for the last four years, and I wanted to sue. Yeah, but I'll buy you a pint. Oh, all right. Yeah, cool. We're good. All right, this is, uh, this is some strategy he's got. And then as soon as I know it showed up somewhere, then I know who it is. Because I tell him I tell him each a separate thing. Oh, I'm going to say this to this one. I'll say this to that one. And then we'll see which one is going to betray me and think, you know, and say it, even though it's not a betrayal because it was all horse shit to begin with. And then it'll come up and then boom, I know that they were trolls all along. And I think it's funny because he starts off by saying, I don't go on these sites. So someone later on brings this up to him that his strategy doesn't even make sense. John, if you don't go on Reddit, how do you know if the lies show up? Right. I do not go on Reddit, dummy. I do not. I refuse. Okay. I do, though, happen to have a friend Here come the lies get yeah, ready right. who every once in a while will tell me something cuz he goes on there but not just, just not just for me he just goes on there but every once in a while he does just and he'll tell me and he'll say oh you know this is what they're saying and cuz I say I always say I don't want to know but he goes oh but this is too far me and then he'll tell me one. I go, what? Is he talking about Cardiff? <laughs> None of this makes any sense. He goes, I tell people why. It's just to see if they're trolls or not. But I never follow up on that to find out if they're actually posting those things. And a guy who's a friend of mine tells me these things. I tell him not to, but he does anyway. And then I go, what? They're saying that? <laughs> like, but John, your strategy is that you would know that what they're going to yeah, say. How, and how are you keeping track of all these lies? He's not. Yeah. There's no way that, there's no way, what is he like writing it down? Like I told this guy this thing and I told this guy that thing and I told this guy that thing and I have all these lines in the water and we're going to see who bites. Yeah. Who's a troll. According to him, that's what's going on, yeah. except for the fact that he doesn't go on those sites. Yeah. And he can't keep track of that. Of course not. And also, he sounds more and more like Hank the Angry Dwarf. <laughs> he's just like, oh, blah, blah, blah. go on sex with You're your right. mother. You're right. He's, he's a less entertaining version of Hank the Angry Dwarf. Oh, boy. And then he's talking about radio gunk. And, um, oh, wait, no, before I get to that, let's get more into how he doesn't go on these hater sites. But I I swear I don't go on there. I refuse to go on there. 
There's my friends. <laughs> what friends? Uh -oh. What are you talking about? I pitch I mean, out you know, the... I'm not lying to you. Oh, that's and why your somebody, voice went up when, when you said it. When somebody says, ask my friends if I go on Reddit, ask my friends. I tell them the same lie. <laughs> I tell everyone. Ask my mom. She knows I don't go on Reddit. I told her that last week. <clears throat> why would I want to? That's what they want. And that's the funny thing. They want me to go on there. Because they want, look, look, John's reading what we were. That's how obsessed they are with me. I'm not going to give them that satisfaction. I'm not going to go on there. The Can lie it? there was that he has friends. I know. Ask my friends. <laughs> uh, present one, yeah. and I'll be happy to ask that person. I'd rather hang out here with you guys chewing the shit <laughs> than fucking going on some site that's dedicated to just hate, lies, and abuse. You mean jokes and photoshops? <laughs> what is he talking about? I love this thing where he's like, these people are all hate-filled. Like we're all like laughing our asses off at funny photoshops of you and hell having gay sex. What do you well hell's hell's not a man. But what do you mean that, that it's all haters and lies? I, I love that he's like, these people are all lying about me, but you're the one who told them to say that lie. Yeah. Remember, John? That was your master strategy. You can't like you were saying you can't have it both ways. Can't Dr. Steve or Anthony or sh even like Shuli get Hell Sparks on their show just like under the guise of promoting whatever? And just get something out of him about why he's yeah. fucking with, like, why he's paying attention to Stuttering John in any single way. Well, Hell Sparks is uh, extremely left leaning, so he's not going on <laughs> Anthony Cumia's show oh, anytime right. soon. Um, <laughs> Dr. I mean, Steve. Come Dr. On. Steve, maybe, maybe o the Opster Dr. could have him on. I think the Opster and I are going to join forces pretty soon. This is a call to Dr. Steve. You could pull it off. All right. Um, you know, AJ Benza was on his show. Mm hmm. And uh, John's even trying this strategy with him. I mean, even guys like AJ Benz, I would tell him bullshit stories because I just want to see if he'd ever fucking, you know, come out and betray me, which he did. <laughs> which he did. Which he did. By the way, AJ Benza is on my short list. We might get him on WATP, oh, cool. which would be a lot of fun because I want to talk to him about his relationship with uh, this <laughs> stuttering retard. <laughs> I think that'd be fun. All right, so now he's talking about uh, Radio Gunk. Now, if you guys aren't familiar... Radio Gunk is a website that's run by Monique. It's now a podcast as well, but it started off as like a messaging board. People talked about radio shows, primarily Howard Stern. And they talk about, there's a lot of places you can go if you want to laugh at Stuttering John. <laughs> radio Gunk is one of those places. <laughs> uh, uh, you need to go on Radio Gunk. It's a great group, great show when you were on. I like Monique. I've been on her show. I don't go on a website, though. Again, same losers as it is on Reddit. Just dedicated to hate and nonsense. All right, so John says, I do not go on that website. Fast forward about 30 minutes, and someone calls him out on this. And listen again, when John has to make up a lie, how long it takes him to think about it. Maniac Zaniac. Couldn't come up with a better name this time, huh? Um, John, you logged into your radio gun account on December 13th. It shows in your profile. <laughs> Suffer Den told me. I logged into my radio gunk account on December 13th. This is where there's a gift somebody made in one of the subreddits where he's like looking all around like, oh, what do you mean? He's like trying to think of a line. He's just making all these weird faces and shit. I logged into a website in December. What? All right, let's see what he has to say about that. Well, first of all, that's over a month ago. Okay. And second of all, if I did, if I did. it was probably because Monique had just asked me to do the show, which I think would exactly correspond to the time that Monique asked me to come on the show. Okay. But I didn't even, I wasn't able to log on, so that's a load of shit. I could never get on it anyway, mm -hmm. even when I used to try. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so his response is, I'm too stupid to log into my account. There's no way I did that. That's the most believable thing you've said that's, so that's far. That's the only believable thing. I can't remember my p p p password. <laughs> I love that this guy goes, John, we know that you logged in. Yeah, but that was over a month ago. You just said you never, never go yeah. on these sites. Never. I never go on the sites unless it's been a month ago. Yeah. Then I go on all the sites. Unless I was too drunk to remember. <laughs> it's so great. 
I, like with people that are so deprived of love in their life that they feel the need to just hate on somebody on a nonstop basis. It is to me a disease. It's like, it's something like, like I don't wake up every morning and go, Oh, like who am I pissed at today? I wish you weren't a liar. Yes, he does. <laughs> That's literally what he does. He's talking about how these people hate him. Honestly, John, we don't hate you. We love everything you do. It's one of the funniest things in my life right now. Yeah. So to say that we hate you is ridiculous. But John literally does hate people. So that's why when he rips on Don Jr.'s video, it's not funny. Because he literally hates the guy. Right. He, he isn't having fun with shit. Like, he hates Trump. He hates Republicans. He hates 50% of the population of the United States. He hates them. <laughs> yeah, Fucking right. hates them. Says it all the time. Tweets at them. All this shit. And he's going, I can't believe people hate people. I, I just don't get it. <laughs> right. I don't understand how that works. <laughs> yeah. These losers who have shows dedicated, and they have guests on. Yep, that's me. Loser guests. <laughs> that's and, me. <laughs> you know, some might call them pedof- pedophiles. That's, Whoa. No, so I played huh? this on, on the Drew and Mike show, and we were talking about it. It's like, pedophiles? Does he just think that's like a, ba- a, a negative word? Like a just... Oh, you're a loser and a pedophile, you know, just a derogatory term or something. Like, do so you know what that, that means? All, like, right leaning people are interested in pedophilia. What? Pedophiles. <laughs> and the guest, you know, who just, it, like, you know, trash me all the time. I mean, how much hate can you, how much hate can you have for somebody? Well, you just, you just called the person a pedophile. <laughs> like, we make jokes about it. We're like, well, I got a lot of shit underneath your fingernails. And he goes, you're a pedophile. Yeah. Whoa, dude. <laughs> that's, a, that's very different, sir. <laughs> you asshole. Just because you're dating a, some 50-year-old slob that's a science teacher <laughs> and not somebody that's half your age. So now, speaking of him hating people, he brings up Joe Rogan. Who he hates. He tweets about it all the time. But he has a good reason for it. I'll shit on Joe Rogan. We know. But I met Joe Rogan. I did Celebrity Fear Factor. So he's allowed to shit on Joe Rogan because he met Joe Rogan 20 years ago. Yeah. That makes sense, right? Listen, I hate people, but I met them once. Okay, fair enough. But some of these losers, I mean... I mean, that's all, it's like all this anger towards me. But again, I consider it a compliment. (laughs) Obviously. (laughs) And all of these, you know, they haven't achieved an ounce of success. (laughs) Not an ounce? (laughs) Not an ounce of success. A half ounce. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All these losers who are goofy on you haven't achieved an ounce of success. Every time I post a video of us goofing on Centering John... It gets three times as many views on YouTube as John's shows do. Not an ounce of success. All right. Fair enough. You know, I'm doing well. I'm here on my balcony, a beautiful balcony. You're really not. Oh, the clouds don't move. But I'm fine. I'm fine with money. Am I fucking a billionaire? No. But I'm fine. But I don't really put that that much importance in money. So, you know, if Sean Hanley is a multimillionaire, who cares? I don't personally care. John doesn't really care about money, guys. And you can tell that when he shames people for not super chatting him. Yeah, right. I did the <laughs> show on Tuesday, which, by the way, in my opinion, was one of my best shows with Ron Filipowski, Good guy. the man who found out who Jared Schmuck was, and Hal Sparks. And we essentially did a three-hour show. I only got two or three super chats. Let me tell you something. You should be ashamed. This is a guy who doesn't care about money. Yeah. Shaming his audience for not giving him enough money during an episode he did with Ron Filipowski. Is that the, <laughs> the kicker for the Eagles? The fuck is that? Never heard of him. So this is weird because now this takes... This bizarre turn where John starts talking about making money and how money isn't important, but he has to brag about how much money he made. It's a weird, weird. I find it almost odd. (laughs) Odd. 
that money is that, that insanely important to somebody's life. And if it is, there's got to be something wrong with you. That has to be. Look, I, look. I made my first million when I was about, hmm, about 30, maybe. Oh, stop it. 31. Uh, 32. <laughs> I was trying to play it off like, I don't know, I made a million dollars. I was in my early 30s. I don't yeah. know who, knew, who even knows anymore. Yeah. And how old were you when you got divorced and your wife took it all? I want to know why you'd brag about having a million dollars when you're begging for super chats. You know, Opie does the same shit where he like celebrates getting five bucks. You can't be both like, hey, I'm fine. I got tons of money and asking people on the internet for their money. And then out of a third corner of your mouth saying that money being obsessed about it is stupid. Yeah, I don't understand these people who want money. Yeah. Well, I can understand that. Yeah. Money is like how you buy stuff. And right? fuck you for not giving it to me. <laughs> <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. But he's got a theory as to why people need money so badly. Now, I would say shelter, clothing, food, you know, mm -hmm. necessities <laughs> would be a good reason, a good place to start. But there is an illness. Like, you have people like Howard Stern. Like, they have to have money. You have a guy like Rupert Murdoch. He's got to have money. Jeff Bezos. He's got to have money. And you know why? Because he got a little dick. He got a little dick like Joe Rogan. He's got a little <laughs> dick. Whoa, you got butt slam. <laughs> uh, projecting much there, John? <laughs> Anyone with money has a little penis, according to John. I'd love to see Joe Rogan and John fight. It'd be a lot different than uh, <laughs> crazy cabby. He's calling him out. But uh, there's a reason why John is comfortable calling people out. But that's the thing. So it's small dick syndrome. I got a decent sized dick. I don't really give a fuck. He's got a decent sized dick. Decent. <laughs> Who would ever say that? <laughs> hey, how big is your dick? Decent size. <laughs> it's decent size. It's not embarrassingly small. <laughs> <laughs> I had a girl tell me it was big once. I don't know. <laughs> All these we... people with money are doing shit that, that people will give them money for. Correct. You're doing nothing that well, nobody wants anything to do with. Well, he's bitching about Howard, and Howard's a fucking sellout. I mean, well, Howard I... fucking lost his mind. I don't know what he's up to. So I, I understand that part of it. But if you're Jeff Bezos or Rupert Murdoch, like, yeah, you made a lot of money because you're really successful and good at what you do. That's yeah. how you. That's how money comes to you. What do you? What's the alternative? Like not working hard, not trying to be good at stuff. I mean, that I guess that's what John's doing. <laughs> He's proving how much he doesn't care about money by putting on the worst podcast possible. When John was young, he asked himself, would I rather be rich or famous? You know, like we all do. When I was a little kid, for some reason, like, you know, when you're thinking in bed, I go, all right, if I had a choice for being rich or being famous, which one would it be? And I said, I'd rather be famous. Well, I got my wish. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing to brag about ever. That, well, I don't have any money, but at least people know who I am. Yeah. <laughs> that should turn into you getting money. Right. Rich. It's called rich and famous, not rich or famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, one, no one ever says, are you rich or famous? <laughs> you fucking idiots. <laughs> well, I might be the internet's punching bag. But at least they know who Stuttering John Melendez is. At least is. I have a decent dick. <laughs> and I have a decent size dick. Uh, and then John starts talking about his old house that he used to have when he made a lot of money on The Tonight Show, a job he was wildly unqualified for. It was a goof. John, you're not an announcer. You're a stutterer. It's a goof. It was a goof. Jay Leno's a comedian. It's funny, <laughs> you idiot. But he got paid a lot of money. And John's talking about what a huge mansion he had in L.A. Did I need a closet that was the size of most master bedrooms? No. Uh. I wonder if John ever looks back at these videos and sees what he did, what he put out on the internet. Of course he doesn't. He, he doesn't. Never, never looks back. He would never put in the time to like, right. sift through and edit anything. So let's talk more about John's old mansion that he didn't even need. I don't even. I don't. I don't care about money. I don't even need all that. I bought it. I lived there, but I didn't need it. Well, that place, Frank and Smithbury, like the second one I had in the Oaks, 
that was 6,400 square feet or 6,800 square feet on a half acre lot. It's when Artie and Baba Booey came to. I mean, I had a football field as a backyard looking over, you know, looking over the mountains. I had a view lot, half acre. It was like, you know, you know, yeah, we'd run races in the back. I mean, I had a big fucking pool with an automatic pool cover and all that. This is where we used to live. Well, let's see my glory days. This is so pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> Just talking about where he used to live. Now he lives in a shitty apartment. He's in a shitty building next to a Home Depot, and he's sitting there going, yeah, I used to have a lot of money. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't care about that. You know, most people who used to have that lifestyle maintain it. Yeah. That's kind of the goal of getting to that point in your life, that you can then maintain that lifestyle. But John knew all along that wasn't going to happen. Like I said, it wasn't because I felt the need to look rich. No. I did it as... You know what I thought would be an investment. Yeah, and I put a handball court there for my kids. He lived in this mansion because he thought that was going to be an investment. Yeah. He didn't want to live in a giant mansion and have a luxurious lifestyle. I learned from the financial feminist: there's only two things you can invest in: <laughs> stocks and bonds. Yeah, right. Not real estate. It was an investment because when your wife left you and you needed to give her a lot of money, (laughs) you could sell that house. You sold the house and gave her all the money. So right after he talks about how he had this giant house, multiple living rooms, they never used them. He didn't need it. He says this. Howard Stern lives with Beth and that's it. Does he mean a 12,000 square foot house? Or whatever it is. I'm guessing 12000 It's probably more. Okay. What the fuck is he going to do with it? I ask you. What is he going to do with it? Uh, maybe it's an investment, John. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy talking about his mansion. And then he goes, this guy has a bigger mansion. Why the fuck is he living in a bigger mansion? What do you need that for? What a fucking idiot. This, it's unbelievable that somebody would say these things out loud and not catch themselves and go, oh my gosh, I sound like <laughs> such an idiot. I, I, I don't know what I'm thinking right now. I apologize. But then John goes on to explain that he doesn't need money. He could live anywhere. It's like, you know, if I moved to Florida, which I was thinking about doing, everyone's like, well, you're going to be happy. To... Dude, I could live anywhere. I could live in any state in this country. I could live in any country. I don't really need, you know, if I had the internet, watch TV, go to the local pub, have a few pints, make a few friends, find a girl, get laid, and call it a day. John's just a simple man, guys. He can live in any state, any country. Do you know there's uh, many countries that don't allow alcohol? To be sold anywhere, John, are you familiar with this? <laughs> what? There's no local pub? Okay, I take that back. I can't live anywhere. <laughs> Fucking idiot. I was going to buy drinks for everyone. <laughs> and now no one's getting anything. <laughs> Most people don't move from sunny California to Florida. And they're both nice. It's, it's Florida yeah, is like I know. the California <laughs> of the East Coast. I know. I can live anywhere. Florida, uh, California, anywhere. <laughs> Fucking idiot. All right, uh, after he's going off on all these rants about haters and trolls and there's pedophiles on my show, (laughs) he's going through all this, he says this. Don't you guys love these beer on the balconies? Isn't it like a a fun time to just chill out? (laughs) Chill out? (laughs) What are you talking about, John? You're an angry guy. You're You're angry at everything. You're screaming at the clouds (laughs) about Howard Stern's mansion. So then (laughs) I love that people are giving him shit. John's got white shit all over his shirt. It's probably dandruff. Yeah. John, what's all Voya, your shirt? Voer. I believe he meant to write over. All right, whatever. He's typing and then I look down, and I don't know what he's talking about. The only thing I could think of is lint or maybe cat hair. Do I give a shit? No. You should, John. You're on the internet broadcasting. It's the only thing you do for a living. You should care how you look. You should try to like wash a shirt before you go and chew. Stop chewing your fucking sandwich. <laughs> care a little bit, John. Chewing your words. 
He's chewing the shit. He's so <laughs> stupid. He thinks everyone has the same amount of hate. Anyone who's famous just has haters. You ask people all the time, do you have haters like I do? No, Judd, you do. Because yeah. you suck at what you do. You know you're going to be on camera. <laughs> you presentable. Suck at this, John. Oh, my God. I tuned in. To, uh, tuned in. I, I clipped on the uh, YouTube for the one that he did on Martin Luther King Day. And it looked oh, like he literally that, yeah. just got out of the shower. He looked like Squiggy from Laverne and Shirley. He had like <laughs> yeah. his spit curl hanging down. And he just looked like he was sweating. I, he looks f- so bizarre. You, what are you, Gilbert Godfrey? You just pulled a reference out from the 70s. <laughs> so I have not watched an episode yet because I had way too much to do. And I didn't want to start watching that because it fucked me up because there's just too many clips already. And we're already going too long on this. But I heard that's an amazing episode. Yeah. His, I, his MLK. Hmm episode i'm looking forward to that so john this guy you know what's all over your shirt and he put the o and the v in the wrong order so now john goes off on this rant about people having bad grammar <laughs> this is this is ridiculous i had a greenfield i love when you correct grammar it drives me nuts if i hear one more person say i'm i'm so frustrated i am frustrated with people who say frustrated it's a pet peeve of mine. Can you please pronounce frustrated with an R? I've never heard someone say frustrated. Yeah, I've never either. heard that. It's not a thing. Not even a little kid. And, yeah. and John, he, he's at his wit's end. <laughs> he can't take it anymore. What's he talking about? All these people leaving out the R in frustrated? What? I don't know. But wait, now we're going to get into some spicy talk. You guys know that the word your can be spelled two different ways. <laughs> if you say this is your beer, that's why all you are. This is your beer. If you say you're an idiot, that's why all you apostrophe R-E. Check out the big brain on Brad. You're a smart motherfucker. That's right. I was surprised he got that right. This is the guy who still has his Long Island accent. Yeah, he right. pronounces words incorrectly all the time. He sounds like a yeah. fucking moron. He's lived out in California for two decades, and he still can't pronounce words correctly. Yeah. This <laughs> loser troll told me that I should suck your own dick, and he spelled <laughs> you a rock. <laughs> Just so you know, when I used to be married to Susanna, I see you're drinking beer. Could I have some of your beer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it the right way. <laughs> well, even better than the your talk is the their talk. You guys ready for this? Jesus. I don't know. I can't. I have, maybe he is a teacher because he really knows a lot about grammar <laughs> and spelling. There's so many of them. I'm trying to think. Or oh, there is always misused. Jesus Christ. Oh, he's making this show. I'm going to go now. there. T H E R E. Don't go there. Well, that's their shirt. T H E I R. I can't believe he's doing this. Yeah. They're cool. T H E A T H E Y apostrophe R E. I don't know. Doesn't seem like brain science. <laughs> <laughs> what a drunk idiot. <laughs> it's not rocket surgery, <laughs> brain science. <laughs> It doesn't take that much thinking of your noodle to understand how these things are spelled. Now, you guys might know, I've definitely spelled there incorrectly sure. from time to time. Sometimes you're typing faster than you think. Yeah, mm-hmm. or, or you, whatever. John's perfect, as we all know. And look, occasionally, even I'll make a mistake if I'm fucking you... half in a bag. <laughs> you know, and I'll just be tweeting on a phone or something. Half. Occasionally. Occasionally, yeah. every episode is a mistake, John. Every episode you put out is a mistake. What do you mean occasionally? It's a clinic of mistakes. <laughs> it's all mistakes all the time. It's to the point where my show is fucking three hours long because there's so many mistakes just from one episode. Yeah. Just one episode. I can't get through it. <sighs> I'm sorry. I got a blast through. I have like five more clips here. Cool. But we, we absolutely have to blast through this. There's definitely someone who's in there who is a troll because they bring this up when he's talking about grammar. Uh, Mark P. Picture is a baseball play or something you pull a look good from. Picture is a photo you can take using a camera on your smartphone. 
Someone mispronounces picture? What? <laughs> is Mark P a WATP listener? I'm starting to think maybe he is, because why else would you bring that up? All right, so now John is drinking his uh, fourth and final beer. So it's almost time to uh, finish things up. All right, last sip. I only do four beers on this uh, beer on the balcony. Stage dog. John, you're quick to bust balls, but when we try it with you, you call us shows. Never was, never will be. I love you. Stage dog. What? I didn't call you a troll. What are you talking about? John doesn't remember anything. Because this guy, <laughs> stage dog, is like, no, you accuse me of being a troll. Like, you're busting people's balls. We're busting your balls. But as soon as someone busts your balls, you freak out. And John doesn't realize that this is actually a real big problem in his life. He freaks out on anyone. According to John... I'm perplexed. <laughs> I'm perplexed. So the advice that he gives Stage Dog here, because remember, Stage Dog says, there was a time when I was just trying to bust your balls. You called me a troll. You called me out. I'm a fan. I don't know why you did that. John's got some really good advice. Stage Dog, long ago. Come on. Can, you know, can we just get rid of the past, there, Stage Dog? <laughs> <laughs> John telling people to get rid of the past. That's the only place he lives. That's the only, that's the only world he knows is the past. It's What's water, he talking about? It's water under the bridge until the next time you bust my balls. Then you're a troll and a pedophile. <laughs> like I say, uh, live and let live. <laughs> and I know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even clip the part where he was telling these people he knew what their names were. He's like, I know your real name. You know, he's, he just threatens people all the time, which is why I called in to Anthony's show to tell them, don't feel bad for stuttering John. The first thing he did when he, we heard we were making fun of him is he said, I know where you live, and I know people who will break your legs, is what he said to me. It's like, well, I don't feel bad for people like that. Mm -hmm. He's an asshole. Um, so I do want to talk about what's going on with our friend stuttering John, and I want to start off with a new masterpiece that came over from Doug from the Jingles Department. And I, it sounds like he put some work into this one. <laughs> and with that, I'd like to announce we are doing, um, it's been years, we are going to do another Stuttering John song parody contest. So all of our, our listeners and uh, people of the Jingles Department, <clears throat> PJ, uh, I'd love everyone to get on that. Start sending in your Stuttering John parody songs. It can be uh, a lot of work in production or it could be almost none like this one. <laughs> Which is still the best one ever. Yep. Did Did you just play a new stinger intro for this segment and then the old one too? Yes, I did. Do you remember how people complained about how all your theme songs are too long? <laughs> yep, I sure do. <laughs> do it again. This is why. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fair enough. If I can make a suggestion, though, I yes. think what you should do with this contest is... Put those all together, release them as an album, and see if you can get a billboard charting. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea. You're on. So, so more copies than uh, the Stuttering John Band or whatever the fuck that was called? All right. Exactly. I love it. Exactly. That's a, that's a good idea. <laughs> see, he comes out as a co-host. He thinks he can goof on his fellow co-host. See, a guest wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, right. Obviously. Now, John was working for that app again this past week. So there weren't any new episodes. But it's interesting because I had a guy reach out to me who was part of a uh, controversial episode that happened back in November of 2018. So we're going to go back in time when Stuttering John could speak a little bit, had a co-host, Royce, and actually broadcast it out of a studio. It's going to sound very different to you, 
It's going to sound like maybe it wasn't actually a show back then. And he's talking about how his book had just come out. Easy for you to say. And there were people who were goofing at him in the reviews on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. If you guys think like this troll thing is a new thing, new phenomenon, it, it is not. It's hmm. been going on for a while. So John devised a plan in order to counter that strike. I started getting, I, I've gotten mostly positive reviews on my book on, you know, on Amazon.com mm -hmm. from verified purchases, people who have actually bought the book and, you know, and I've read it. They obviously know the stories I'm talking about, but then you get, you know, either the Anthony haters or maybe some of the Stern haters give it one star and say, I'd rather read a coloring book, which means they never bought the book. And this is the flaw with Amazon. Right. How could they allow someone to... <laughs> to write a review if they never bought the book. It, it's, it's just bullshit. So it brought my five-star rating down to a four, having these idiots. Yeah, it's still a great rating, though, by the way. No, it is, but then I wrote nice. to a few <laughs> of my friends on Twitter. I said, hey, could you... Could you write a positive review to thwart the haters? Sure. And it, was, oh. it wasn't a lot of people. It was a few. It was like, God, I don't know. It was like... Uh, 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 ben Ratner, who was a Cumbia guy. Less than 12. Yeah. All right, so... He was messaging people, hey, please give me a positive review, you know, because he's the victim. He's always the victim. So he said, they didn't even read the book, and they're giving me a negative review. If you're not busy coloring. <laughs> you didn't even read the book. There are no coloring pages. Ugh. Also, I It's all words. I just want to throw it out there that before I ever listened to a second of the audio version of this book, I knew it was going to suck. So you don't have to read the book to give it a negative review. You can still know that it's going to be terrible. <laughs> so the reason why I'm playing this for you, and I, and I realize that we're going back a few years now, is because I received these DMs. Someone sent them to me. Actually, uh, Chris Baldassano sent these to me, and you'll hear him talk about this in this next clip. Again, this is, this is on his podcast in November 2018. One of them happened to be this guy, Chris Baldassano. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know Chris Baldassano had an Anthony Cumia connection. And I, because in the, in, the, in the text of him... On the Twitter, it was just, he was saying, you know, hey, I love you. I've always been a big fan. So I thought it was a guy um, that would want to see me get an honest assessment mm -hmm. of my book as opposed to these idiots, you know, who will say, you know, I'd rather read Anthony Cumia's book, right. One Star. I mean, basically what happened was Chris gets this DM. And I'm looking at it right now. It, it just says, from Suttering John, can you write a review on Amazon to thwart the haters who never read it? And then there's a link to his book. Okay. That's the entire message. Because we're going to hear John kind of elaborate on what he wrote. None of it's true. The response from Chris is, hey, John, congrats on the book. Hope all is well. You actually unblocked me on Twitter to ask me this? <laughs> hey, what's up or how you doing would have been nice just your first, bro. I never had any ill will with you and have always been cordial, in my opinion. And then John writes, no, you've been unblocked for quite some time. I didn't even know we had a beef. He's the one who blocked him. <laughs> and, he, he went, and so Chris writes back, we didn't. We never did, as far as I know. But you blocked me for some reason, probably uh, when I was talking about something with Ant. At any specific time, I was only concerned about saying I thought your drinking was getting out of control when all that malarkey went down between you and Ant, etc. And then John says, oh, that's cool. I was just sensitive at the time. My apologies. All right. <laughs> What happened, though, is that Chris forwarded this DM to his friend Dennis Farrell, and Dennis decided to post this on the internet, which is why John's even bringing it up on his show, that he asked people to give him positive reviews. You know, we always got along. There was no problem. But when Anthony and I got into our Twitter war, Dennis Farrell started posting pictures of my kids goofing on them. <laughs> and and one's a minor. I mean, I could throw these fucking guys in jail because you can't right. do that to a minor. I mean, you know, I talked to my attorney. I mean, you know, he sent that Anthony a cease and desist. Right. I could do the same to this fat fuck Dennis Farrell. You can't throw Dennis Farrell in jail because he tweeted a photo of your kids. That's not true. Why does he think that? I, it, that's John's solution to everything is that like <laughs> yeah. the law needs to get involved and they're going to just take his side. And I think as we've seen with the serious lawsuit, he is completely wrong. I'm, I'm the little guy. I'm the, <laughs> you're picking on the little guy. 
and it's that it's that permanent victim complex. I mean, I assume that's what I haven't listened to the bonus episodes where he reads his book, but I'm sure they're all about how he's the underdog and then he becomes a big success. Oh yeah, he also gives everybody all the advice they could ever need to live their lives great and everyone loved him. Yeah, it's it's Step insane. One, find a very famous person and ride the coattails. Ugh. Then get off and on other coattails. All right, so this is where John starts lying about this interaction that I was just reading to everyone. But Dennis then, you know, he he says, you know, like he tweets out since John asked asked, asked my friend to to write an on, you know, a review even without you know reading the book, I'm going to write one that, Without even reading it, and he trashes me, gives me one star. But that's not what you asked, but go ahead. No, I did not ask. I did not say don't read the book. Right. I, I put the link there to buy the book. I said, you know, if you can, buy the book or whatever. Or, or right. I just put the link. I mean, I'm not saying just write a good review without reading it. Right. But just, you know, buy the book. It's 15 bucks. You know, and, and then fucking, you know, and give me a fair assessment. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, to thwart these assholes who just want to hate on me. John did not say any of those things. He unblocked this guy and wrote, can you write a review on Amazon to thwart the haters who never read it? He didn't say, hey, if you don't mind buying it, it's just 15 bucks and then read it and then give me a fair assessment of it on Amazon. <laughs> when you get it. He didn't say any of those things. Buy me a beer. <laughs> I don't lie. I don't like to lie. All right. <laughs> Have you ever sent one of those text messages where you say, send just one word, and then you hit enter, and it sends, and you got to send the rest later? Well, that's what I thought that I did. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was going to finish the sentence. Don't worry about it if you don't enjoy the book, but if you could buy it and read it and enjoy it. <laughs> I thought that was going to be the autofill. <laughs> All right, so this is John now threatening this Dennis guy. Yeah. Oh, and th- <laughs> let me read this to you first, because this is in the DM thread. So now this happened where... Chris forwarded this to Dennis. Dennis posted on the internet, then gave him a a negative review and posted that. Dude, what's with Dennis Farrell? Why the betrayal? Of course I wanted you to read it first. Why the betrayal? And geez, man, I'm all good with Kumia. Tell Farrell to relax. Dude, I thought we were cool. Why the hate? Whatever, Chris. So this is all John over an hour and a half's time because he's not getting responses from this. Oh. So he goes, he goes, whoa, dude, I'm just seeing this. I have zero issues, bro. I'm eating dinner with my family. Oh, Sorry I didn't reply till now. Be easy, John. The only issue I per se, and it's not my issue, is when you went nuts after Aunt Cho. Anne's a good friend of mine, but that was between you and him. Had nothing to do with me. I have no issue and always consider you both friends. My only wish is that you both would become friends again. I'm all about good times, bro. Never make waves. I never badmouth anyone. So then John says, yeah, but you sent my text to Dennis. That was very scummy. You could have been my loyal friend. (laughs) That was my friend is on you. (laughs) He's the best. But this is four years ago, right? This is November 10th, 2018. Yeah. So he had a lot more energy. That's true. Yeah. So then this is where it gets interesting. So then he says, uh, just let Dennis know whatever happens to him, it's out of my hands. I tried to stop it. I have very powerful friends. And then <laughs> 30 minutes later, the blood's on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> the shit's under my nails, but the blood's on your hands. All right. So very threatening things that he's, he's sending to Chris. And then four hours later, no response to that. Four hours later. I'm just messing around, LOL. I've been hanging around with Gotti too much. Wow. All right, let's listen to him explain this on his podcast. You know, then I get, you know, I saw the kid in the round, like, in, in, like, because I've, I've hung out with John Gotti Jr. way too many times. And I said, and, uh, and, you know, and, you know, uh, you know, it's out of my hands, you know, whatever happens to Dennis. You know, just know, Chris, the blood's on your hands. You know, I did something like that. And then I thought about it. I go, you know, I can't threaten anybody. And I said, I'm only messing around. So did he just admit that he was threatening him? Yeah. And then thought about it went, oh, and so I said, I'm messing around. I just pretended I was messing around. Took him four hours to figure that out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whoops. And he sent that threat before noon. <laughs> It's not like it oh, so was... So he hadn't gone to bed yet. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, very, very uh, stuttering John-like behavior. Um, and then 
this is, of course, he's talking about this Dennis guy, and he doesn't understand why Dennis would have any issue with him because John's so pleasant to be around. And I don't know why Dennis has so much hate for me. I made that guy laugh his ass off in Anthony's basement. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that guy has a problem with me. I'd fucking kill him. <laughs> I'll hunt you down and murder your own fucking family. I don't know what your fucking problem is. Uh, a couple other uh, retro clips, and then we'll get into new stuff. But someone, I think it was this was on the Dabblers subreddit, was finding some old episodes. This is from January of 2020 when John was talking about how bad he smells and how shitty his hygiene is. You know, my daughter and I, Lily, have been talking about going to the uh, to see Star Wars again. We both saw it once, but uh, she was like, come on, let's go tonight, Dad. And I'm like, I can't, sweetie. I didn't shower today, and I smell like ass. <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> she didn't want to go near me after that. To jump in the shower. <laughs> what, 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 what kind of excuse is that? Somewhere? That's a good question. I, it must have been a phone call, but what kind of excuse is that? Do you want to go do something with me, Dad? Oh, I I didn't even shower today. Well, you could jump in the shower now, I guess, if you yeah. want to. I'm thinking if it's a day where, you know, it's a Sunday, you don't have anything going on, I don't wake up and shower immediately, and then I'm on the phone and someone says, hey, you want to go see a movie or, you know, go go get dinner? Like, yeah, uh, give me 30 minutes, let me shower, get yeah. dressed, and then I'll meet you over there. Especially when it's his daughter, who he loves spending time with. He loves Star Wars. He loves his daughter. He smelled so bad that he's like, I, I can't do any of this. I fucking reeked high heaven. And I just cannot do it. Just watch Almost Famous again. (laughs) All right, so this is an interesting clip, an older clip as well, where he admits that asking crazy questions of celebrity is not something that him or Howard Stern invented. Al Allison, have you considered reworking your old red carpet Q&As as part of the podcast or another project? Do you think Stern considered this taking his idea? No. Howard wasn't the first person to do this. Steve Allen was doing it way before that. So, you know, I don't I don't know how you could say that Howard was the first person to do that. Oh, so when it's talking about Howard, it wasn't original, but when it's Sasha Baron Cohen, then he ripped off Stuttering John. Is that what he's trying to say? Not following and, his logic. And, and the answer is yes, he has thought about doing that. He's gonna be going to DC in uh no more <laughs> July. <laughs> yeah. And he's gonna be asking all just sticking to the Republicans. I haven't heard an update on that in a little while, to be honest with you. I haven't gotten enough super chats, Carl. Yeah, <laughs> still saving up the super chats. <laughs> Send those super chats so we can go stick it to the Trump Tard. Dotard. We're gonna go back in pa- in the past even further now. This is going back to when John was in his early 20s, maybe mid-20s, on the Channel 9 show with Howard Stern. Howard Stern had a TV show that was in select markets on Saturday nights. And this is an interesting back and forth considering how this all played out. People well. constantly say to me, Howard, does John realize he will never have a career in anything else after what he does? I am getting a little nervous for John because John is now 26 years old. And really, John has prepared for no kind yes. of future. Like, he could go out and lay brick or something, but he'll be the most famous bricklayer in the country. <laughs> and that's not the most happening thing no. to be. But uh, really, Don't what... Don't you worry about this sometimes? All the time. What happens if the show goes off the air or something happens to me? What do you do? Seriously, what would you do? Well but, well, but then I hope to have a record contract. But let's say, let, let's say a record contract is a tough thing to get, okay? You'll yeah. admit that. As much talent as you have, as much natural uh, talent as you have. <laughs> let's say that never happens. Uh-huh. And it looks like it never is going to happen. You're 26 and you're on television. I mean, I haven't seen anybody give you a record contract. Okay. What do you do if something happens to me? Cry. <laughs> no, really. What do you do? What is, your, what is your career path in that case? Um... I don't know. I haven't really given them a, a, given it too much thought. Maybe I'll take up acting. I don't know, but that's another career. That, in other words, you have to have you know you have to have something to. I want to be. I want to be in the entertainment industry. You know. Right. I mean, that's what I've always wanted to do. So. All right. So you're in it. Okay. I understand your point. Well. Okay. I love that he's like, well, I'll either get a record deal or I'll become a famous actor. What's your point? Yeah. <laughs> Chad's always thought this way. Yeah. Uh, One or the other. Yeah. Right. Dummy. Yeah. I, I got lots of options. <laughs> If I can't do that, I'll become a spaceman. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking either like astronaut or brain surgeon. I don't know. A lot of options out there. So then um, later on, not much longer after this, you can tell that Jackie wrote this joke and gave it to Howard because Howard stops what he's doing, 
reads the joke, and then you hear Jackie laughing in the background. He's not on the show, by the way. You don't see Jackie, but you know he wrote this joke. All right, let's take a look at what Stuttering John's been up to, everybody. I love to look at Stuttering John's work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he wants to be in show business, and the only job he's really qualified for show business is to sweep up elephant duty at the circus. <laughs> you hear Jackie explode with that. Now, that's based on a very old joke that I'm sure everybody knows. Well, based on his fingers, I think that's what he's doing when <laughs> he, he says might, he's writing he for this app. He be doing that. Could be any animal. <laughs> they got camels, peacocks. <clears throat> Anyway, that's a pretty funny uh, back and forth from back in the day. But let's fast forward to just last weekend when Stuttering John had a beer on the balcony and he had a guest on there, Carlos Elizaraki. And this guy is famous from Reno 911 and also known to do a lot of voiceover work, including, John was very excited about this, the Taco Bell Chihuahua. <laughs> John was like, they're going through his list of credits, and it's like cartoons that have been on the air for years and years. And he's got a photo of one of the, of the cartoons that he voices in the, behind him. And then John goes, whoa, you're the Taco Bell Chihuahua? See. <laughs> How did you fit in the costume? <laughs> <laughs> you seem like a big guy. I don't know how you became such a tiny dog. <laughs> Speaking of dogs, that Triumph, the insult comic dog, not a fan. <laughs> of all the famous dogs, he's my least favorite one. No, this show starts <laughs> off, I kid you not, you will think I'm playing the clip that I played last week when he was chewing food to start the show. I am not. This is how his show starts off. All righty. Sorry about that. <laughs> mm. I have to eat, peeps. I have to eat. In between shows, I got to whoop down a half sandwich. I have to. I need my energy. <laughs> Just ate a bologna sandwich. If there's energy in bologna. Benny Loco, how are you? Is that becoming his new catchphrase? <laughs> what an energy! Uh, you know, the thing about stuffing food down your face between shows is that it comes after you stop recording and before you hit record again. Yeah, that's the between shows part of it. Right. The between yeah. part, yeah. You're eating on a show, you fat, drunk <laughs> jackass. He also creates his own schedule and then bitches about how, oh, back-to-back -back shows here, people. You got to give me a second. Makes it sound like a telethon. <laughs> right, yeah. It's like, John, you could be off the air for 10, 15 minutes. It's fine. I I don't think anyone's going to complain about it. There's a it. ham sandwich over here. By the way, he's eating bologna. An adult. When's the last time you saw an adult eating bologna on purpose? Not since I had a uh, pickle this is, loaf. <laughs> this is going to get really, really dark, but um, my uncle uh -oh. drank himself to death, uh -huh. and we cleaned out his house because we lived the closest to him by, you know, we and by that we just lived a couple hours away as opposed to half the country away, and his house was disgusting. It was piled high with beer cans in the room where he lived and watched TV. And the food that was in the house for him was bologna and eggs. And then just cases and cases of some light beer. I don't remember what it was. It might have been Coors Light for all I fucking remember. But I see, the, I see John and I'm just... I, I'm like, that looks like my uncle. He's telling these stories about him smelling so bad because he just doesn't shower. <laughs> yep. He sounds exactly like my uncle who lost his fucking mind and drank himself to death. And that, that's exactly what I wanted to know because I don't know anyone who, who would own bologna. I don't know anyone who would have bologna in their house unless there's children involved. And I guess it's just like dying alcoholics. <laughs> you make it sound it, like a weapon. I love it. <laughs> every every dollar you're not spending on food, you can spend on one more beer. <laughs> That's right. I know. Get the cheapest possible thing to put in the sandwich. So he brings this guy on, Carlos. And Carlos does the Stephanie Miller show every Wednesday morning. He calls in and does an hour. He, he even says, this guy is out there. He's like, I'm not ready to go in yet. You know, I'm still not ready for that, but I zoom into the show. So he's still, like, very afraid of COVID. And um, this is great because John, we were talking about how Artie Lang's not good at interviewing people. John's way, way worse. What <laughs> happens here is Carlos starts doing his Fauci impression that he does on the Stephanie Miller show. And John interrupts his Fauci impression to ask him to do his Fauci impression. For, for me, I got the two kids at home. 
they're vaxxed, but uh, I, I'm staying home for a little bit. But yeah, I drop in Wednesday morning. I do my Fauci, whatever, whatever voice they need me to do. Uh, I'm Let me hear your thing. Fauci. Did, did we <laughs> are in a crisis? He was doing it, John. He was doing it. He had to yell and interrupt to get him to do that. And you got to love John. Never lacking confidence for some reason. He should be. But he's got this guy who's doing all these characters, and he's, he's got these great impressions and things. And John goes, well, hold on a second. got to show you I actually do an impression to a uh, pretty good at. Uh... I'll tell you, Carl, the only impression which I, is not good, but the only one I can do is is Columbo. Let me just ask you one more question. Let me just, if, you know, if I could ask you one more thing. <laughs> the only... <laughs> You're right in the pocket. <laughs> You're right in the pocket. You're beautiful. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Crystal. The only way that could be more embarrassing is if, uh, you know, it's like if you were on a podcast and you had a host who did voices, and every time he did a voice, you also tried to do the voice but poorly. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Tab's gone to the back catalog, I see. That was hilarious. Who was that supposed to be? I'm very nearly finished. Oh, man. Yeah, I couldn't help myself when Kevin starts doing a voice. Like, I want to do a uh, voice, too. <laughs> you know what's really, really funny? Two Cobra Commanders. <laughs> what is going what on What is here? going on? <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Uh, I want to talk about this Carlos guy because, Tab, not to get political, but I think you and I have something in common. We both prefer uh, liberty to tyranny. You yes. say that's probably something we have in common. All right. Absolutely fair. Well, this Carlos guy loves government authority. So I do it because I want to work. It's not a big deal. It's not tyranny or authoritarianism. <laughs> it's not even close. You no. have a choice. You can get vaccinated. You can test or not work. What happens is you just don't like the consequence of your choice. I just want to point out to Carlos that um, not working is not a choice. Communists are like, hey, you can do what we say, or you can starve to death. That's not a choice. That's not how choices work. Look, it's it's really, really simple. You can uh, do what we say, or you can drop dead. Yeah. You could yeah. either do what we tell you to do, even though it's not based on science and there's really no reason for it, or you can uh, not provide for your family. See? There's yeah. a choice. I mean, we're still living in a, a free country. We're all rocking in the free world. And then he explains that his wife got COVID on Christmas. John's excited because he did, too. <laughs> And this is retarded. I got a Christmas too. Yeah. How were your symptoms? Headaches, no fever, just okay. headaches and dizziness. Yeah. I got COVID, and the worst side effect was the trolls. <laughs> Interesting. And insomnia. Yeah. Not, pretty much the same. Headaches, sore throat, a little bit of insomnia. She was fine after three days. We quarantined for 12. And she was fine after three days. They quarantined for 12. Why are you an idiot? What does he mean by that? Did he make her like live in another part of the house yes. for 12 days? Yes. Cause he didn't catch it and his kids didn't catch it. So Holy they, shit. they make, they isolated her for 12 days. Why not 24 days? What do you want people to die? Carlos, what's your problem? Why only 12 days? What an yeah, asshole. Follow the science, Carlos. <laughs> what, what an asshole. Yo, Cairo science. Have you been following the Bill Maher show at all lately, Tab? Uh, I have been actively not following the Bill Maher show for the better part of forever. Sure. So <laughs> Bill Maher recently started up again, and he had Barry Weiss on. And Barry Weiss used to be a columnist for the New York Times, very much left-leaning person. Well, she came on and criticized CRT and COVID restrictions. And because of that, they've decided that Bill Maher is no longer one of them. And he's purposely <laughs> putting in these right-leaning ideas on his show in order to gain viewership. Because you know Bill Maher, he's all about the ratings. That's, yeah. that's one thing we know about this guy. It's just words, Bill, right? Critical race theory? And they're not even going to teach it in elementary school. It's just words, right, Bill? Yeah. He, he's so... Trying I'm, to you know what? come off as this independent thinker, but it's so glaringly obvious he's trying to reach to the right to stay relevant. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to come off as an independent thinker, so he doesn't believe every single thing you believe, and you're like, well, he's obviously just pretending to be an independent thinker. No, that's what, what independent thinkers actually do. They have different opinions of the, the rest of their party. 
that 100% well, also, of board. What's the problem? Like, he, Bill Maher is not on there saying we shouldn't teach critical race theory. He's just allowing it because his, his show is a panel debate right. thing. Yes. He's just allowing a conversation to happen, and then the viewer gets to you know, hear all the different perspectives and decide for themselves. Shut it down! Uh, Shut it down! He's not allowed to say that! Why would you be annoyed with Bill Maher for that? I understand I understand if you disagree with whoever he brings on to voice the opinion that's different than yours and saying that person is literally Hitler. But right. but why why Bill Maher? These people are so dumb that John in the show before this show was playing a clip of Tucker Carlson talking about Howard Stern. And Tucker Carlson has Jimmy Dore on his show to react to these things that Howard Stern is saying. I will give you my honest assessment of the situation. Who says honest assessment? But first, implied. let me play the clip of Tucker Carlson and the idiotic Jimmy Dore. This guy deserves a smack upside the head. <laughs> Why? Because you disagree <laughs> with him? How dare you? <laughs> this is on his earlier show. He says Jimmy Dore deserves a smack upside the head. So then Carlos brings up Jimmy Dore, and John explains that, oh yeah, he's already taken that guy down. What a dick! And that Jimmy Dore goes on his show. Oh, shit, yeah, oh, I trashed Jimmy Dore big time today. I said if I ever saw you, I would. I'd love to smack you in the face. <laughs> I trashed him earlier. <laughs> I said I would attack him physically with violence. <laughs> Way to trash someone, John. If I ever saw you in smack, you checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> he goes on to call Jimmy Dore a couple names. Uh, one that I think you're going to find uh, fun here, Chris. You fucking sycophant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then he uh, repeats that again. You and your freaking idiot sycophant Jimmy Dore, you despicable twit. And then my favorite <laughs> of all of the Jimmy Dore put downs. What a dick. <laughs> Jimmy Dore, you are a dick. So I went ahead and put together a little thing that is a uh, hate hypocrisy supercut. Because as we know, John thinks that haters have a disease. How could you get up and just hate someone? What's wrong with you? I, like with people that are so deprived of love in their life that they feel the need to just hate on somebody. The idiotic Jimmy Dore. It is, to me, a disease. This guy deserves a smack upside the head. Like, I don't wake up every morning and go, oh, like, who am I pissed at today? Yeah, oh, I trashed Jimmy Dore big time today. I said, if I ever saw you, I would, I'd love to smack you in the face. You fucking sycophant. So deprived of love in their life. You're a freaking idiot sycophant, Jimmy Dore. You despicable twit. It is, to me, a disease. Jimmy Dore, you are a dick. All right, so, Tab, if you're taking notes at home, it's not cool to hate on someone unless you disagree with them politically. Then you can threaten violence. You got that? I got to tip my hat to you. That was an amazing compilation. Well, because that was all those clips really, are, really well done. All those clips were from just last week when he was talking about yeah. the haters. I can't believe people hate people. Why would you do that? All I do is love people. Uh, and then the very next week, he's like, this fucking guy, I'm going to punch him in the face. Sycophant. I like how he says, I don't wake up with like thinking of all the people I'm going to hate. It's like, I don't wake up thinking of everyone I'm going to hate. I'm just, I just, you know, hate everybody that I see. <laughs> yeah, I ruminate about <laughs> it all day. Yeah. <laughs> Get a good hate going. <laughs> uh, when I wake up, I'm trying to figure out what day it is. So I, I don't spend any time hating on anyone. All right. I want to get into this thing with Howard Stern because Howard's fucking lost his mind and Tucker Carlson's playing clips on his show. When are we going to stop putting up with the idiots in this country and just say you now ha it's mandatory to get vaccinated? F them, f their freedom. I want my freedom to live. I want to get out of the house already. I, I, I want to go next door and play chess. I want to go take some pictures. This is bull****. All right, so that's Howard Stern. So fucking go, Howard, you <laughs> fucking weird no Howie shit. Mandel want to be <laughs> shut in. You fuck you. I know. It's so weird. It was funny. They were calling him Coward Stern. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty funny. He can't leave uh. his house because there's unvaccinated people out there. Oh, my God. I can't leave my house. This is crazy. So... This is Stuttering John's brilliant take on that. And I wish I could make this up. 
that John would be this bad at riffing on audio. He would never be able to do our job, that's for sure. Now, I agree with Howard that people should get vaccinated. Shocking. But he wants to get out of the house to play chess (laughs) and take pictures. What? (laughs) What? (laughs) Are you fucking kidding me, Howie? You want to get out of the house so you can play chess and take pictures. Yep. Oh, Lord. Oh. (laughs) This is the thing that we always make fun of (laughs) when we play a clip and then we just go, I mean, (laughs) can you believe it? (laughs) Jeez. I mean, what? What was that all about, huh? Play clip, play, play clip eleven. Uh, can can you believe this? Can you that's, believe that's this? crazy. So, so Wild John's stuff. hot take is Howard Stern wants to leave his house to do his hobbies, and that's dumb because because Howard likes playing chess and he's a photographer, so those are like his hobbies that he has. And John goes, "Well, that's dumb reason to want to leave the house." And then John tells us what the right reasons are for wanting to leave the house. Maybe the you want to get out of the house. To hang out with some friends, have a few drinks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Maybe you want to get out of the house to go to a ball game or go to a movie. So those are John's hobbies. John, John goes, I think the right reason for people to get vaccinated are the things that I enjoy doing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Elementary. Uh, what a fucking idiot. You know who? Uh, you know who's going out without being vaccinated and doing all of his hobbies? What's that? Man cow. Just want to say that. You know. <laughs> Man cow. <laughs> he is. Uh, uh, is he still on YouTube? Or is he? Is he still worried about getting kicked off of there? Oh, I don't know. I, I haven't watched since the last episode we yeah. did. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Was that the last time you were on? Was when I was broadcasting from the comedy club and there was no internet connection. That is correct. It turns out because Vinny uh, worked with Spectrum, the company over there. They were getting internet speeds that are unacceptable to businesses. They're no longer offered. And Vinny called them up and he's like, yeah, I'm testing these speeds. They're like this low. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that should have been upgraded years ago. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so it's better now, but sorry about that. Uh, they're like, they're, they're just, they just, Spectrum's just, oh, yeah, that, that should be way faster than that is. Okay, can you fix it? Nah, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the same thing happened to me. Where I was paying this this level, and I was checking my speed, so I go on their website to see what I should be paying, and the speeds I was getting already been listed on their website, so I called them up, like, what's going on? They're like, oh, yeah, with, with the modem that you have? I'm like, I'm renting it from you. <laughs> Why don't I have a better modem? What? This is this is on you, not on me. All right. Um, so, oh, this is funny, because John has someone in the chat, or no, I think it was someone on his Instagram said that John also said people who don't get vaccinated should die. Some guy on Instagram said I said that everybody who's not vaccinated should die. I never said if I said that I did not it was taken out of context. <laughs> if I said it's taken out of context. Hey Tam, someone on Twitter yes. said that I said Hitler was right. And look, I did say that, but it's that's taken out of context. <laughs> Uh, see, now I'm going to get canceled because now I'm on your show. You said Hitler was right. So, of course, I have to also believe that. Well, you just said Hitler was right. <laughs> now that could get pulled out. Yeah, that is true. That is the rule. Yeah. If, if you hear someone say something offensive and you don't immediately respond to it or hang up and leave, <laughs> you will be canceled. Guilty by association. Are you guys ready to hear? And I never use this word to describe someone talking, but the juiciest Yes, you've ever heard. Oh, please, no. This reminds me of people who think that they would be a great parent that don't have kids. Yes. Yes. Right? Oh, God. <laughs> He's so damp. <laughs> it's, so, it's, it's, like a, it's like a thick wet. There's something yeah. like thick about it. It's not even. It's like a fresh batch. <laughs> <laughs> so much pulp. Another day where Carl has to think about John's batch. <laughs> That's right. I know. Can't get away from it. <laughs> One more clip on this Carlos guy because he's a fucking moron. He makes fun of people who disagree with the narrative, you know, the, the mainstream narrative. 
and then gives us where he gets good information from. Uh, somebody had a great uh, image. I don't know what they call them. I'm an old guy, but it was a, a meme. Our research, you know, it showed scientists with fucking charts and peer reviewed and their research, a girl on the toilet looking at her phone. You know, <laughs> I've researched this. No, you haven't. You've researched an opinion that agrees with your own. There's so, TikTok is actually a really good source of uh, information regarding COVID and doctors. There's a lot of. <laughs> How do you say <laughs> these idiots are just looking at what their phone the... and finding something that agrees with them? But you know where you can get great information is TikTok. <laughs> what? Yeah, their he's, memes are accurate. <laughs> they want to pretend that their research is like going into a lab and reading stuff, but they're just looking at memes and charts that are provided by the people they already agree with. Like you, you're both assholes. Yes. You just disagree with the one people and pretend like you're some kind of enlightened moron. You're not. Shut the fuck up. Oh, my gosh. Bill Maher says one thing that isn't 100% part of the Democratic company line, and they go, well, he's obviously just doing He doesn't believe that. No one would ever believe that. He's just doing that to get more viewers to his show. It's like, holy shit, guys. Uh, and then Ugh. this is the last clip with uh, John talking about how Howard Stern thinks that the unvaxxed should just go home and die. And, of course, John agrees with that. I don't think anybody should go home and die. But I do agree <laughs> that why should the unvaccinated who won't believe in science take up beds for people who are actually vaccinated and who are actually sick and dying? Why should they stop others? They're not. It's, that's not happening at all. From getting medical attention. You're making that up. Why? It doesn't happen. If you don't think that's wrong, then you're an idiot. It is wrong. <laughs> you, if you don't think that's wrong, the thing I just made up, then you're an idiot. He goes, I don't think people who are unvaccinated should just go home and die unless there are people who have a higher priority. Then those people should probably just go home and die to let the people I don't think they priority. should go home and die. I just don't think they should be allowed to stay out and live. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you have a you have a choice here. Yeah. You, <laughs> you, you can option. either die can... slowly or quickly. Those are, those are your choices. It's a free country. I wonder. I wonder if, if there are clips of Stuttering John talking about how healthcare should be a right too. Oh, I'm sh oh, I'm sure. You yeah. fucking sycophant. <laughs> I don't even think he knows what that word means. I, I think, think he got so like either. an insult word of the day calendar, and he like was really good about it for until January fourth, and it's just been on sycophant since January fourth. <laughs> and he looks over and sees you're a sycophant. You're you're those you sycophant me. I can't believe it's still the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> now, last week on the show, I announced that we have a Stuttering John parody song contest All right. that's running and we have some submissions Yay. Hey. Hey. <laughs> is this guy a freaking moron or what Kind of. All right, starting with uh, Cardiff Electric's submission for us here. Haters, Fuck you. if you've ever wondered, Losers. wondered whatever became of John, white supremacist asshole, he's living on the air in Rochester. Really, dickhead? Rochester, W-A-T-P. What a fucking third. PayPal.me slash John Melendez, Inc. All right, I get it. Boy, that was something. I get it. All right. How about uh, you like the Beatles, Croge? I've been known to spin a platter or two. I'm a loser. <laughs> I'm a loser. And I'm exactly what I appear to be. <laughs> I'm always drunk. And I hydrate with c c c coals. Yeah. I have bacteria under my nails because my hygiene is p p p poor. I'm OCD <laughs> and I live like a slob. Keep sending me those super chats because I don't have a job. I'm a loser. <laughs> I'm a grown ass man that eats baloney. I wolf him down cause I need a gene I met a girl 
She's a real p p p penguin fall. <laughs> nice tits and ass. I could not ask for more. I didn't masturbate this morning. I'd hate to ruin a good batch. Where's my blue chew? So I can get inside that snatch. I'm a loser. Why do women go out for drinks with me? I'm a loser. I've got roaches to keep me company. Hey, John, this sounds exactly like a song by the Beatles. Uh, 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 the Beatles? Where? Uh, that, that's a fallacy. Uh, uh, that's libel and slander. You'll be hearing from my lawyer, the great Michael Papa Papa Very soon, a lawsuit is coming down the pike. Bravo. Very well I done. I like that one. Ray from North Carolina oh. sent in. I'm a loser. Nicely done. All right. And then. Oh, batch and snatch as a rhyme is Oof. so gross. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <You> like that? <laughs> it's really disgusting. And then uh, another submission here. And this one was on the subreddit, the, the Dabblers Anonymous subreddit, from Roach with the Badge. This is uh, just a dabbler. Just a dabbler, and everywhere I go, people know the lies I'm telling. Pay me super jets, my apartment might have rats. That's why they're spraying. There were glory days, but my youth has passed away. What will they say about me? When the end comes, I know I was just a dabbler. Life goes on without me. I'm just a dabbler, and everywhere I go, which is really just a liquid pub. <laughs> Buy me a couple pints. If you bust my balls, I want to fight. Sure, but I do stand up. There were glory days, but the pelicans flown away. What will they say about me? When the end comes, I know I was just a dabbler. Life goes on without me, cuz. <laughs> Nobody cares for me, not even Hal and Noel. They all left Royce. Wait, at Royce. Come, come back, Royce. <laughs> Somebody give me super chess, Benny Loco with the badge. Kicking streets, kicking streets. Ma, ma in the chat. Give me super chats. We're taking on the dope, so hard. Gonna be in Washington any, any day now. As soon as I, as soon as I figure out how Congress works. <laughs> Hockey puck, I'm sorry. Please, please come back. <laughs> I really don't. There's nobody left. I've run everyone off. I'm a good guy. Oh, why, God, don't you end my misery? Mama Monkey is living a great life. And I'm, I'm here again with Lances, living in a storage unit. Doesn't Howard remember the time I made him laugh? It was, it was during Clinton's first term. <laughs> Why is no one sending super jets? <laughs> Very well done. Oh, wow. Bravo. Please keep the submissions coming yes. um, because uh, the winner will win merchandise and, and uh, other prizes. So. Keep those coming in. Uh, we, we're going to do this for probably a couple more weeks. Yeah, that's some stiff competition. Those, uh, that's some, those were good. That's some really good stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, it still makes me laugh every time Andy's reaction to what he looks like. Now he's like, he's turning into a monster. Yeah. It's bad. <laughs> it makes me laugh so hard because it was so sincere. Yeah. But I don't think it's from the drinking, I think it's menopause. <laughs> John, looks, John looks like he's post menopause at this point. I think <laughs> at least one of his organs is shut down. I just can't figure out which one. <laughs> which one? Which one stopped working? Yeah.
In today's Dabbler News, Stuttering John that he is following the lead of other has-beens and wannabes such as Neil Young and Joni Mitchell and is removing his podcast from Spotify. He is quoted as stating I too stand in solidarity with them and have removed my stream from Spotify in protest of Joe Rogan's misinformation and utter lies about COVID that has probably caused many unnecessary deaths in this country. While Spotify has not yet commented on the situation, experts believe they do not give a single shit. We will keep you updated on any changes in this story. Reporting live from Dabblers Anonymous, I'm Joe, Dabbler 100 News. That is from Joe Gotta Reddit in the uh, Dabblers subreddit. So John tweeted out that in solidarity with Neil Young and Joni Mitchell, he's saying this about Spotify. And that's already hilarious, obviously. Yeah. The, the comments that people wrote underneath that, that whole thread is so fucking funny. Drew Lane was going through all of them on, on his show this past week. And um, when people went to go check to see what was going on, all of his stuff is still there. <laughs> so someone someone called about it. Yeah, you're looking at it right now. Uh, well, ugh, I hate to be the, the, the bear of bad news. The uh-huh. podcast is not on here, uh-huh. but his amazing artist feed is. And the, the and, best part is someone took a screen grab of that and it said four monthly listeners. Yeah, it's... It's how oh. many people have... And, and one of them's John. It's, yeah, it's not great. <laughs> it's, it's not, not great. great. But so someone called him out and he, and he, he wrote back to them. He's like, I, I told them no, no new content. I won't be putting any new content. And so right before we started the show, uh, Anthony Kumi just sent me a note. So this is a tweet that John just put out. I have emailed at Spotify requesting that they remove all of my content because of at Joe Rogan's dangerous anti-vaxxer rhetoric, but it still remains up there. Again, at Spotify, at Spotify, revolve, this is all caps and spelled wrong, revolve both my podcast and my music from your platform now. Ooh. I removed my podcast from being there. Oh, no, I removed any future podcast from being there. I, I can't fucking believe this guy isn't embarrassed. Wouldn't you be so embarrassed if you posted something that stupid? Like, yeah, just like Neil Young, I'm also going to take away my amazing content from you. It's like, Jen, you're not Neil Young. What are you doing? One of the, one of the, he has a lot of things he's not self aware about, yeah. but he doesn't know how, like, bad his whole internet tough guy thing comes off like yeah. he did that whole show where he was yelling at the cable uh yes. custom yes. service representative and it's like i know you think you look like a badass but everyone watching thinks you're like cringeworthy and awful and like just not good you know what i mean like a dick yeah and it's like a bad person yeah it's not good you're not showing a side of yourself that's fantastic here yeah it's uh fucking hilarious yeah. I, I love this guy <laughs> yeah all right so the big news from this last weekend was a two hundred dollar super chat. Whoa! Oh uh, yeah, oh. and um, and thank you, Snake Finger. And oh my God, this is the biggest super chat ever. <laughs> oh. Colleen Martin, thanks for the two hundred dollars, Glenn. How can government take? All right, so then she's got a question for his his guest down there. Two hundred dollars, and he's all excited about it. And then after his guests leave, he's reading the chat. Shorty one, John. She donated accidentally. She didn't mean to give that much. Oh, is that true? Uh, I didn't know that. Well, I, are you sure about that? Uh, well, anyway, guys, because <laughs> uh, a lot of you have donated two hundred, you know, over the years. But no, in one no. shot, that was amazing. Oh, good luck <laughs> ever seeing that again, man. All right, yeah. So, I guess it was accidental, and of course, John doesn't want to believe that. So he did his show, and then he goes on beer on the balcony immediately after that. And this woman, Carlene, is still in the chat, and she's kind of upset about it. She was telling everybody, she's like, "I need that money." Like, that's a lot of money to her, and she needs it for rent and stuff. Carleen Martin, sorry that you uh, mis-donated. I think you could could reverse it, like, in the first five minutes or something, or the first couple of hours. I'm pretty sure, Carleen. But if not, I'll, you know, as soon as I get the, they'll take uh, probably $60 of it, so then I'll send you the rest. No, how, (laughs) how fucking funny is that? Whoa. This is his solution to this problem. Is that as soon as he gets that money, yeah. he has to wait till he gets the money. Oh. He'll give her back a portion of oh. it. Hey, Carl, I found your wallet, but it's empty. <laughs> I, I don't know how that happened. Yeah. So crazy. So weird. Carly Martin, there's got to be a way you could just um, cancel the charge. Uh, this sweet, sweet woman tried to give me a super chat on my last show. And... It was for $199.99. And 
And I was like, wrong. <laughs> and I was taken aback by it. And then it turned out that that it was a mistake. You know, like she only meant to give like 99 cents. Something happened. So I, I don't know how to <laughs> undo that. You know, I don't get paid and I don't get paid from YouTube till the 21st. So I don't even know. But I mean, I told her I, I would send. Uh, now she's saying she doesn't use PayPal. Well, I, like I said, Carlene, I'll send you to 140 because they because they take 30 percent out of it. Steve, I don't even get that. I, I, I don't. I don't uh, try to rape my fans. Not that I have any. Oh. That's, that's Steve Carillo. No, no, no. I, it's, it's I, not I, I, I know. I know. There's a Patreon thing, and I don't. Uh, I just feel awkward. You know, I, I haven't done my show in a while because I've been working a lot. Yeah. I I, I told you, and I I, I don't know. If oh, I, no, no, no. But it, that, you know, that's not the that's not the right terminology. I don't I don't choose to rape my fan. I'm not raping anyone. It, it's called a joke, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Great joke. <laughs> well, it's not a great joke, but John is so sensitive. And do you remember when he was going on and on about how he doesn't need money, doesn't care about money, people who want money are assholes, money's not a problem for him? Well, I when he's not chowing down uh, baloney yeah, every day, right. he's a mansion living millionaire. Why doesn't he just shoot her, come on her box and not worry about it? I mean, it? he could just give her the $200, I you know. would think. One of his two pensions would surely cover that. You would think so, yeah. He that. also what? said he, he was taken aback by it. But he had just said that it happens all the time. He gets two hundred bucks. Whoa! Oh, which two, is it? He goes, "Whoa, two hundred dollars." I'm I'm used to that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's par for the course. Two hundred dollar donation. I'm very likable. But anyway, so now I don't know how. I'm pretty sure if she contacts YouTube, they'll reverse the charges. Um, Carly Martin, I can see the page on YouTube for a refund. Kinky Streets. Can you get in touch with Carlene Martin and make that happen? Because that's the last thing I would ever want to see happen to anybody. Believe it or not, Grillo, I have a heart. No, I know you have a heart, Johnny Mel. And you used to tell me I was like your big brother. Oh <laughs> Segways that into what an amazing person he is. Only John could do that. <laughs> I promise there's an Edmund dashboard, and he is one click away from refunding that instantly. I promise. Of like I don't know that, but I guarantee it's fucking there. He could solve this instantly, but he'd have to, like, open a menu and click something. Well, I mean, maybe Benny Loco or Kinky Streets can find it for him so they can figure that out. This poor person is freaking out, by the way. I know, and... She's uh, freaking out about giving $200 to John, which I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I gave him 200 bucks. Yeah, really? (laughs) Even though Dr. Steve was going to give him, like, 1400 I think, to... Yeah, that's like... That's a lot of bologna lunches. He's made of money, though, with that Dr. Steve. He sure is. (laughs) Um, So he has... Steve Grillo on his Beer on the Balcony show. And Grillo is a guy who worked on the Howard Stern show with John. That's how they know each other. And what I love about the dynamic between the two of them is Grillo's the one guy that John shits all over all the time like he's better than Grillo. Mm. And I'm not saying Grillo is all that talented or interesting, but John is not better than him. That I know for a fact. Okay, not only does Grillo work and pay rent and shit. Right. Grillo works in, like, New York City restaurants. I would pay money to see a reality show where John tries to do two weeks in a New York City restaurant. Just, doing, show, just show up on time. Doing any job. I don't think I don't, he'd be able to do that. I don't think he could mop the fucking floor. I don't think so either. I really don't. Yeah, and also, when Grillo comes on, he's in a soundproof area. He's got his headphones on. He's got a microphone. Like, you can tell he knows how to do this. Yeah. John doesn't know how to do any of it. This is a great way to bring on your guest when you explain that you tried to get a ton of other people on your show and they all turned you down, <laughs> and then you bring out your guest. Now, I did try to get Bobby Brown on today, the uh, cherry pie girl who was also a comedian. I had her on my show once before. I did try to get Modi, one of my f- favorite Stuttering John and Friends comedy tour mates. And I did call Adam Hunter, couldn't get a hold of him, and I did... Instagram, Heath Harmison, another comic. But I had no luck. But I was talking to this gentleman the other day. He told me a funny story. I, I, I can't remember it, but I said, come on. How are you, Steve? What's up, buddy? Good to see you, pal. Good to see you. He invited some guy who just told him a funny story. He's yeah. like, I, I don't have anyone on. I'm, fuck, I got gorilla. All right, well. He's saying it all smugly, too. Yeah, what I know. What's it's insane. And poor Grillo. I mean, this is a waste of even Grillo's time to be on Beer on the Balcony. Yeah. Nobody's watching this shit. 
Um, Andy has to talk to John. Well, guess what they talk about? You'll be shocked to know that John wants to talk about the trolls. <laughs> Grillo, do you get trolls? <laughs> how many trolls do you have, Grillo? <laughs> All right, so this is John talking about how he has outsmarted the trolls Ooh. we've heard this before but it never gets old <laughs> it is a brand new mercedes and it and and i own it oh oh look another troll hey hey you know here's the funny thing i know the troll's name i i have three trolls but they like go on the different names but i know who they are because i know how they write you know and it is so funny because I know who they are, but they don't know that I know who they are. But, and I know who they are because I actually got a forensic uh, private investigator okay. oh, who yeah. goes by like algorithms <laughs> and, and, is, and is able to tell me their exact names, where they're from. You know all this shit, so I know who I know what name this person is. It's algorithm. It, it's so funny to me, but they keep trying. Oh. I know what name this person is. Stuttering Sherlock is on the case. Crouch, I know that you work at a gas station. Yes, but I do. Can you use algorithms to figure out the exact name of somebody? Well, uh, uh, is that how they work? I just want to let you know I am actually an algorithmic forensic accountant. <laughs> okay. And uh, for two hundred bucks, I will tell you the name that they are. Okay. Just, uh, I'll give you my PayPal after the show. Perfect. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, you can super chat me later. So, to what end is John thinking that he's going to go over on these people? He's like, "Yep, yeah, that's their screen name, not the real name." Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to know that too, you dummy. First of all, that person is paying for my Patreon because this is for all only Patreon and YouTube. I'm going to pause it real quick. When he does his beer on the balcony, he's so stupid that you can watch it live regardless of whether you're a subscriber or not because he does not know how to put it on just for subscribers. Mm. So tons of people go on there and troll him Yeah, because he does it like 3 o'clock on Saturday or something like that. So tons of people go on there and troll him, and he thinks like, oh, yeah, well, I'm getting over because you guys have to subscribe. Now, they have to give an email. That email can be traced. Yeah. So I know which ones are the trolls. It's, they're so stupid. They don't understand that. <laughs> they're stupid? John, do you know how easy it is to have an email address? Do you know how many email addresses I have? I have dozens of email addresses. It's not a difficult thing to do. I know who they are because their name is in their email address. Look at it. It's, this guy's an asshole at Gmail. Look, I, I don't want to boast. But I can get you an email for free. Come, come see me after the show. I can I can help you out. I know a guy. You fucking sycophant. Oh, come on. That's not fair. Uh, I'm trying I, to help. Now, Vinny, I'm not hurt. I'm excited because it's time to get back into the Stuttering John parody song contest. Ooh. There's some doozies. And I've decided that this is our stinger for that. Um, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um. <laughs> I like that minor chord at the end. Yeah, that's nice. Doug from the Jingles Department made that for us. And all right, let's go through these. Starting off with Lidocaine sent in this one for us. It is a uh, a Ween song that's kind of a B-side, so I'm excited about it. But if you don't know this Ween, ween tune, you might not know exactly what's going on. You're just a chorus light to me. I'd like to get to know you better. Pay super chats across my screen. Just don't libel and slander me. You're just a loser, dotard. And I am the hydrator. Why sit on a balcony? 
Don't always come when you pop a blue chew. You're just a coarse light. I'm gonna clear my fingernails. Just kidding, it's the way I like it. But I've got my to hike with me You're just a Coors Light to me I need a little energy Don't post my stand-up <laughs> You're just a Coors Light to me All right, thank you very much for that. That was beautiful. Very yeah. beautiful. You know, I didn't get to tell you this. Yeah. But I was sitting next to my wife on the couch when I saw the picture of Stuttering John's Fingerdale. Oh, God. And she was like, what? Who is that? (laughs) And I had to explain to her. I was like, honey, it looks like he was trying to scrape the last bit of shit out of the corner of the litter box with his finger. (laughs) Like, it's just disgusting. I've never seen anything like that. All right, here's another submission. This is from Dave from Canada. He picks a very fun, Can upbeat, I tell you, upbeat tune. That's my dude. That's my Dave sleeper Canada? pick. That's my okay. sleeper pick. All right. Well, I will say this. We're going to do another week of submissions, so keep making these. And then on episode 300, we're going to choose our favorite and the winner who's going to win fabulous prizes. So you'll be part of that, Vinny. Cause, yeah, all I really want is cause. And in the morning it's cause. Then in the evening it's cause. My house is filled with bugs. I like a chick with nice jugs. You need to send more super chats to buy more litter for my cats. My body's covered in stink. Invite my guest out for a drink. Jay Leno once laughed at my joke. I think I'll have another stroke. Planning lawsuits with Popak. I I need Viagra for my cock. Sometimes I stutter my words. Green screen is covered in cat turds. Carl had better watch his back. I got a weird growth on my sack. In third grade, I played the horn. Howard gave me some popcorn. The puppet triumph sold my bit. Girl says that my breath smells just like shit. Have OCD, can't clean my room. Can you come help me set up Zoom? Susanna getting a handy from Adam Sandler in college. On the balcony, who was in the cat dish, who was in the hamper, who was blocking my door, who was. And the trolls, they were saying things about my kids. And I just talked to Popak, and we are going to have ourselves a lawsuit. the super chat <laughs> i i didn't listen to that whole thing i listened to the first couple seconds i'm like yeah. okay that, this was definitely going to the board bro that's Howard awesome gave me some popcorn <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah should be yeah. the name of his second book I thought, <laughs> <laughs> dude i i thought for sure he was gonna go with porn which is why that was so great oh i thought he was set up a porn every joke. last line was the winner yeah man. that was very very well put together. oh dave from canada he's in the lead right now it seems like i don't know the discord very much enjoyed that. Uh, Anthony just sent me a note saying that that was a winner. So <laughs> very, very well done. All right. We got some more to get through. Now, this one's interesting because this person took an isotope song, Monin, 
which is actually a jazz tune, Art Blakely and the Jazz Messengers. But uh, Brian DeWald put Stuttering John's song for Howard on top of our music, and it's actually quite brilliant. Now, if you don't know what this is, as we're reviewing Stuttering John's audiobook, he actually sings the theme song he wrote for Howard Stern back when he was an intern, and it's embarrassingly yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. Here's a story about a Jew's success. He grew up with blacks. His mind was a mess. Oh, a little Jew boy thought he was a coon. After dancing the horror, he had nowhere to go. Howard, Howard Stern. I mean, let's face it, Scott Muni's throat is a mess. Soupy sells needs an enema, and Scott Shannon wears a dress. Who would have thought he'd be king of radio? Hell to King Howard. Howard is the king. Well, Howard said we see ya to NBC. It seemed they got jealous of his popularity. That's that was awful. a song recorded in my friend Carol Hamburger's basement. <laughs> he wrote the worst, most racist song. No, I was talking about the guitar. Say, hey, hey, oh, hey. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> the fact that he decided to recreate that by singing it out of his audiobook still astounds me. Yeah. Thought that was uh, pretty fun. And well done. That, by like, Brian. That was, do you know what the, the worst part about that? <laughs> what? Is that is at the height of his like creativity. Oh, yeah. That's because, what he was trying hard. Exactly right. That's yeah. what he was really trying to make it. Yeah. He was hungry, not just for baloney. <laughs> and in, in case anybody was wondering <laughs> how to make it with Howard back then, is just suck his dick. Correct. Wow. It's also how to win around here, too, guys. Yeah, I mean. I mean, a little bit wouldn't hurt, you know? It applies to many facets of life. (laughs) All right, here's another submission from Cardiff Electric, who's now, this is his second submission for this contest. Nicholas. Coors Light. Coors Light. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. All right. Uh, This one came in from... Major Dick, and it's called We Don't Talk About Stuck Joe. We don't talk about Stuck Joe, no, no, no. We don't talk about Stuck Joe. But it was 2012. Stuck Joe's at the roaster, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Stuck Joe walks in with an autistic grin. Stud up! He proceeds to bomb. Stuck Joe has a broken brain. Speech impediment claim to fame. The liquor stores know him by name. And we don't talk about Stuck Joe. No, no, no. We don't talk about Stud Joe. Severely obese frame, cockroaches on his back. If you watch me around the balcony, best the super chat. He passes out every night, getting bombed on Coors Light. We don't talk about Stud Joe. No, no, no. We don't talk about Stud Joe. He told me PJ would die the next day, dead. He told me Cardiff Electric's a loser, just like he said. He told me someone will make me disappear, now I can't feel my legs. Your fate is sealed when your super chat is red. All right. Well done. Very well done, sir. This next entry is a little fun with real audio. This is the Dabbler remix from... I see priority 1297 in Dabblers Anonymous. Let's go! I promised you I'm going to DC. Well, guess what? The fight's booked. Lies, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I decided to drink on this one. Cloudy day. Why not? I, I, like, it's so weird. Like, people always think I'm some kind of alcohol. Yeah, do I drink some pints at the pub? Yeah, but I'm not like, you know, I'm not some fucking you know, crazy drunk that's fucking, 
know what I mean? When John, when John was doing his podcast here, he was supposed to, you know, maybe take care of the staff, was the understanding of the studio for free, oh. and maybe leave a couple beers in the refrigerator, but apparently the guy said John drank all the beer and then walked out, and, you oh. know, give a reach to the guys. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, you know? I'm sorry, I'm used to the, the fucking Tonight Show, Chief, where they have all the beer and they don't expect tips. No, we, we do what have all the, the beer, we just maybe you don't just drink it all, I, I don't know. Pop in Woodland Hills? I gotta leave a tip when I get a fucking beer? Get the fuck out of here. That's fun. Yeah, Fudgical, I agree. I, the one note I would give to everyone is the mix. You got to bring the vocals much higher than the music so we can hear the jokes. That was quite wonderful. But that actually. was great. That was fun. I like you that know what would be the worst thing that could ever happen? What's that? Actually, you know what? Never mind. It might be a new career for John. If he just gets sober. Oh. Like becomes completely sober. John. What if he was a motivational speaker? <laughs> that that would be a, a fun skit. We should do that in our next deep fake video. <laughs> sober John. Yeah, right there. But down. don't you don't you think that like <laughs> I was once on Dabula in comedy, like all of you. <laughs> but don't you think that he would be like equally as funny if he was yes. like super serious and sober? Oh yeah, he's a moron. He's funny no matter what's going on. Yeah, For no sure. matter the mental state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that he killed off so many brain cells, it'd be really funny to see him sober. Now, I have two more submissions. I don't even know if they count because they're just voicemails that came in and people just sang in the voicemail. So I think it's the same person both times. This is another Ween song. This is uh, a parody of Piss Up a Rope. They're, they're really pulling some deep pulls of Ween songs. What was the name of the first one? You said it was a deep... You're uh, just an object to me or object. And that was a B-side or a well, it's, bonus track? No, it's on a regular album, but it's not one they play live a lot or anything like that. Which album? It is on La Cucaracha. Oh, do you think the cockroach. That... Yes, very good. It was the cockroach album. Makes do, sense. Do you think that they were able to generate 1099 insurance forms for uh, the cockroach <laughs> for La Cucaracha? Drinking Coors Light and watching TV. If you ever wonder what it's like to be me, I spent all my money and now that I'm broke, I do a podcast and I live with a roach. I'm sitting outside drinking beer in a can. If you mention Carla, then you'll get a ban. My stutter's a pick. <laughs> Suck my dick. If you want to fight, then meet me at Pickwick. <laughs> oh, shit. That's good. I can see Stuttering John actually singing that going down the street <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in like a robe of boxer shorts <laughs> yeah. on. Just dancing. Strutting. Just like jumping up and doing a spin on the uh, on the light post. I still got it. <laughs> All right. People are pointing out that this... I got a silver bullet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, write that down. Sorry, John, musical. <laughs> a redemption arc. <laughs> Holy shit, that's funny. Let's stop podcasting and just work on this musical. You guys want yeah. that? Hey, you guys yeah. want to win? Do that parody. <laughs> I got a silver bullet. It's So people are pointing out that these people are purposely choosing Ween songs and Beatles songs. They know those are my favorite bands. Well, here's another example of someone picking a uh, Beatles song. I think it's the same guy as the last one. When I find myself in times of hunger, ham sandwich comes to me. Gotta eat my sandwich, energy. <laughs> Too much diction. Gotta eat it before the roaches come around to share with me. <laughs> Gotta eat my sandwich, energy, energy. <laughs> Energy, 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 energy. Gotta eat a sandwich. Be on the balcony. All right. Susanna won't talk to me. <laughs> so, are, is production value a part of our scoring? I don't think it is, oh, right? Uh, you should have put that in the Somebody rules helped weeks the, ago. I, I Somebody so. help that kid out and just slap that on a karaoke track and let's go. That's good yeah. shit. Holy shit. Amazing. All right. That leads us to uh, this segment most people like to fast forward through. Gagia. Now, 
John's in a feud with Hale Sparks. Is it about their show being canceled? Yes. And Hal Sparks still doing the show, but just without John? What happened was they had a comedy show booked for February 25th and 26th that all of a sudden was no longer being promoted online. Because the booker looked at the bill and went, what the fuck is this? Yeah, who booked this? <laughs> Joe T? Yeah, who booked this? I, I want to do Funniest Local Comic that night. <laughs> <laughs> we got the open mic. <laughs> yeah, can't we do an open mic instead? <laughs> So they actually booked Todd Youngman. <laughs> <laughs> no one's that dumb. Come on. Oh, stop it. All right. So Hale gets on his show and explains that John's mad at him. This is Hale's side of the story. Stuttering John is on now. Okay. Well, I'll send you guys over to him, even though he won't have me on anymore. He's mad at me because we were going to do a gig and he never gave me a date. And um, my agents came up with one at Cobbs and I had to fill in last minute and they have a rule about, within driving distance and i was like i want we were going to push the date to march because we hadn't settled on it and then there you go anyways i wanted to move the date but i don't know if it happened so he's mad i guess okay hasn't invited me on since he hasn't like i haven't heard from him since so so john's not even communicating with hell sparks the guy who was on his show every single week for the last two years not just on the show but helped him with oh everything driven from vegas to la to get him set up and show him how to plug an ethernet cable into his fucking computer this guy's done everything. What for him. is this Zoom, Hal? <laughs> so John gets on his show because somebody sent him, obviously, Hal talking about this. And John decides he's going to pull up the text conversation to show that he's right about this. And oh, when no. he does that, he doxes a bunch of his friends because all the phone numbers show up. <laughs> so listen to John pull this up and then freak out and pull it down. That I had never confirmed with him. And that's maybe he doesn't remember. And I'm just going to just show something just because i don't you know it's not i mean i did confirm with him and he i don't know why but he could have forgot how's a busy guy and i understand that but i did so i just because the club i mean look the club said they'll never book me again so uh so i just wanted to i don't know why this thing keeps doing that but it does but it, uh, I don't know what the heck is going on here. It's giving out everything here. All of a sudden, I can't seem to get it. It's giving out all these numbers. Hold on. I'm going to get rid of the screen. Anyway, I, I don't, I don't want to show it. <laughs> uh, in it's... fact, uh, you know what? I got to end this. Mike, I'm going to send you a different link. So he actually shut down his stream. He's like, oh, shit. I got to get this off the internet. I just doxed a bunch of my friends. Thank God people are recording everything he does now. <laughs> Can someone please get me the uh, the drop of the club will never book me again. <laughs> <laughs> the club will never book me again. I need that one. I need that drop. So John then starts up another stream so that he can tell his side of the Hell Spark saga. So I did confirm the gig. All right, let me start over. So it's just... That's not what Hell Spark okay. said. Uh, I hope everybody comes back in this room. This is this is the new room for the podcast. Uh, because I, I screwed up and when I was trying to blow up the screen, it, it showed some phone numbers. So I didn't want to give out anybody's phone number. So I immediately, uh, like this one, uh, took it down. <laughs> <laughs> so he's obviously struggling with how to present his case on this. Th- this is my favorite clip of this whole, uh, saga. So a lot of people are speculating if a man at house sparks. Because we were supposed to have a gig, and and then and then Hal canceled. Okay, I am not mad at Hal Sparks. Hal Sparks has done so many great things for me. He will always be a good friend, and I am not mad at him. Am I disappointed? Yes, but am I mad? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. He just gave him the I'm not mad, just disappointed talk. He just gave that to Hell Sparks. So like it's a nine year old. What Hell described there is a common thing that happens. Yes. Dates get moved because clubs do have rules about, you know, appearing within the same town or the same well, city. Well, his agent does. Time. Yeah, and the, the club too, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to have someone who's booked in Buffalo playing in Batavia Buffalo again the next, the next week. Yeah. <laughs> right. It makes no sense because you're not going to draw people. And I don't know why I'm using Buffalo and Batavia as examples. If anyone knows what the fuck I'm talking about, it's because we're Rochester. <laughs> They're trash. places in Canada. All right. Just yeah. take my word for it. <laughs> They're close by. The one thing somebody played me how on the show yesterday where he was saying that um, I'm not mad. 
I'm just drunk. <laughs> That's Enoch F in the Discord. The one thing somebody played me how on the show yesterday, where he was saying that um, that we never confirm. And and it's that's not exactly true. And maybe Hal just forgot that we did. But uh, I mean, I I'll read you just because I, I don't know how to show you. But probably better I don't show you anyway. I don't want to I don't want to piss Hal off. But I said, uh, uh, in, in, let's see. I'm going to find the text right now. It was on December. <laughs> Two of ready to go. It's fine. Take and I wrote, um, and said. Um, uh, Duh. we're all set. This is at 11:34 a.m. We're all set for February 25th, 26th. This is pretty cool. I think it's going to be a blast. Then, um, on January 7th, the 22nd at 6:30 p.m., Hal texted me, "Hey, uh, comma, I have to punt the Alameda show. Just book Cobbs for the January 21st and the 22nd. Sorry about that. I could do late March in Alameda." I wrote back, dude, seriously, we confirmed this. And then Hal wrote back to me, yes, sorry, agent's orders too close. With a frown, um, you know, the two dots and then a slanted line. Hal always says, don't talk to me about it. Talk to my agent. My agent is the one who books all my shows and has my calendar. Because Hal is a professional. He doesn't do his own booking. So John does his own booking because he's got that. You've worked with John's agent before. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, I've had some chats with him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the guy's not a real agent. He's a killer. That John, let me tell you, he's a killer. Rod Jeremy, he's a killer, too. <laughs> he's, like, a no, he's a serial rapist, so you have this all wrong. <laughs> oh, my God. We should revisit that. So Vinny reached out to try to get. It was Rod Jeremy was the host. Yep. With Stuttering John. And Brian Dunkelman. And Brian Dunkelman. Now, here's the thing. The Dunk. Yep. Is actually kind of funny, and sure. he's a good guy. Yeah. So Mark knows him. Mark, the manager of Carlson, knows Brian. And when I saw that the three of them were to tour together, I brought it to Mark. He goes, well, go get a number. Go call yeah. the manager. So I sent an email, and I got this call. And this guy was trying to sell him, sell me so hard. I wish I could remember off the top of my head. I know. It was a while ago he now. He was quoting the jokes to me. Yeah. Like, when well, Jeremy comes up, and he says. Yeah. 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 And he goes up there and says, hey, my cock is as... Huge is your hearts for having me here. Or something yeah. stupid. Right. He always gets a big laugh. He's telling you how the yeah. audience responds. All he did was just try to sell the show so hard. It was like, buddy, I know this is terrible. I want to book it as a joke. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a goof. <laughs> this is a goof, sir. <laughs> so anyway, the point is, is that John will never understand that he can't text Hale hey, I got these dates booked for us. He needs to have his agent talk to Hale's agent or he can talk to Hale's agent. But that's how this has to happen. So what Hale does is a good friend. But he doesn't return my calls. <laughs> but what Hale does as a good friend is he goes, oh, shit, I never got that booked. So I booked another gig that's nearby. And what he said was, let's reschedule it for March. Right. Let's Get make it a month later. Another gig for him. And John responds with, what the fuck? And then ends communication with him. They haven't talked for a month now because of this. Good job, John. How is his show even been on the air? Good job. Like, without Hal helping Well, it's it. not anymore. He doesn't do uh, a daily show anymore. John's down to just Saturdays. Wow. Yeah, he's got, like, some kind of gig or something. He's doing something. He's writing. Maybe. Maybe he's writing for that uh, app, the trivia app. That's what I was thinking. I mean, that's what he said Preparing he was doing. those lawsuits. Well, that's what he said he was doing. But then he also talks about how he's constantly lying to everyone all the time. With everything that he says. He's talking here to Major Ojeda. And I don't know why he thinks that this is clever or that he's getting over on people. Then this guy, Kinky Streets, goes, you have a brand new a Mercedes. You're self-declared multimillionaire. I'm like, dude, I don't. When it comes to my private finances, I'm not going to tell you exactly what I have and what I don't have because I know the trolls are listening. But I you know, need for more. all you guys know, I for all you know, I'm driving around in a Tesla. For all you know, you know, I'm driving around in a freaking uh, Kia. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to tell you what I'm driving around in, nor am I going to tell you how much money I have in a bank. And and first off, why is it such a big deal? It it's, it's not, but she. Look, look, I'm honest about everything, but what? there's certain things that I have to protect myself, and I'm, you 
can't say I'm honest about everything after saying I lie all the time. He told us he has a Mercedes. He's like, you don't know that. I might have a Tesla. I'm not going to let people know what car I'm driving. I'm not going to let them know how much money I have in the bank. But I'm I'll not going to do Pickwick that. Pub. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, just right. It, because it's none so of their can business. Buy me a drink. So this idiot, you said on your show that you're a multimillionaire. It's like, yeah, so what? It doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I saw something the other day where somebody was like, Richard Ojeda's net value is worth $1.5 million. And I went and actually Googled that, and it showed it. It said $1.5 million. They say I'm worth $5 million. I'll tell you this. I'm not worth $5 million. I ain't worth $1.5 million. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, finally, not a lie. What do you know? Yeah, you're right. What a weird <laughs> a thing point. to say. He's been telling us about his Mercedes for months now. And then he goes, you don't know. I could be driving a Tesla. Or a he, Kia. Yeah, or a Kia. He says, I don't want to tell people what I have or don't have. <laughs> right. We know what you don't have. <laughs> you don't have a girlfriend. Dignity. <laughs> a boner. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is really funny because Kinky Streets. How many times have you heard him talk about Kinky Streets on the show? A few. Longtime supporter of the Stuttering John show. Well, turns out all along Kinky Streets... Was a troll. <laughs> Before I bring the army major, let me just address something, okay? I gotta tell you, Kinky Streets will no longer be in this chat room, as at least with his name. This guy is an absolute lunatic. He was a Patreon member and nonstop. I don't even want to show you. Just constantly emailing me about how bad Ford is and how how he. Tesla's the way to go and EV. Then he started writing paragraphs and paragraphs about flat screen TVs and like 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 Daryl Lee, thanks for the five dollar uh, super sticker on um on on super chat uh uh Saturday. Yeah, Marco V what ninety three. It turns out Kinky Streets was just a troll. Cause at some point he emails me. Oh, Sean, it wasn't funny that Carleen Martin accidentally donated to you too much money. I said, when did I think it was funny? I felt bad. I told her I'd give her back the money as soon as I get paid. Like, and then he's like, well, you're just an L.A. Democrat, a money-centric fool or something. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? First of all, I'm a New York Democrat. <laughs> Missing the point. <laughs> I've always and been a New York Democrat. Might I add, I wouldn't use the term money-centric to describe money centric. Centric. <laughs> Democrat. And as far as being money-centric, I go, you're the twit who keeps on freaking emailing me every day about your puts and your calls. Then he starts emailing me on my private email and starts trashing me. And then saying, you don't know who my boss is. Well, guess what? I know your name. <laughs> you know, I, I have your email, but I don't care about Frank you. Frank Hughes. Just, just go away. <laughs> so he will no longer be a part of this chat, and I will no longer allow him so to be it. But this person's been donating to Stuttering John for a very long time. Definitely not a troll. This is the type of person John attracts. I know. I've talked to Heather W. This is a John audience member i feel like maybe the problem that john has is that he's digressed to the level of his actual fans correct like that's all he's been communicating with and he's drunk all the time yes so he has literally become stupider through osmosis <laughs> i just love that he's he's decided this person to troll because the person who who knows what the fuck's going on in this person's head but kinky streets is like hey man why didn't you give the money back to carly martin blocked blocked like john calm down Turns out he was a troll. <laughs> Turns out he was a troll all along. <laughs> I solved the mystery. Time for a course. <laughs> you know, I can't, I was even debating Army Major to call out some of these people by name. But I just, because I know, I know their names. But I'm not going to do it. Because I don't want to give them anything that, you know, they're going to jerk off to. So what's the point of this? He keeps talking about how he knows their names. He's not going to say their names. He's not going to use it for anything. Then why are you bragging about knowing their names? Who cares? What is he trying to do with the names? 
I've never understood that either. It Kinky is a streets. weird thing. I know, I, know, I know your name. So? It's not my fucking social security <laughs> yeah, number. I know. Asshole. What are you going to do my All my friends name? know my name, too. Who cares? <laughs> Everyone I've ever met in my fucking life <laughs> yeah. knows my name, John. When what I meet a problem? stranger, I introduce myself with my name. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> what the fuck? What is wrong with this guy? I, I, I know I your name. Understand. I can pronounce it sometimes. All right, so now John's talking about how Artie put out that post saying that he's not going to do the podcast. He's going to take some time to work on his mental health. And so, as we all know, Stuttering John loves Artie. And they used to be BFFs. And in this clip, John pretends to not know who Anthony Cumia is. He pretends to forget who that is. Artie Lang and I had a bunch of Twitter wars. It went over to his podcast with me and him. and went over to that, you know... The Artie and, you know, whatever the other guy's name is on the show. <laughs> the Artie and whatever the other guy's name Honestly, is Honestly, that, that, that's probably legit. He is that slow. <laughs> you think he really did yeah, just forget? Yeah, I think he just probably point? forgot. Well, it's funny. But... I'm not going to call Stuttering John a liar. Well, it's kind of funny, though, because then he's talking to his friend, Richard. I guess it's Ojeda. I guess that's Ojeda. Ojeda. Well, he just pronounced it Ojeda. Well, Ojeda. Oh, you, you. I was just listening to you him. You go by his pronunciation, <laughs> do you? <laughs> I know his name. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I know his name. But it's funny when he's talking to uh, Richard about it, all of a sudden he remembers who Anthony Cumia is. Did I really want Artie to die? No. But was I pissed off at him? Yes. And Artie was saying horrible things about me. He was on a show with that fucking asshole Cumia who was fucking trashing my kids. Well... Miners. <laughs> Who cares what they do for a living? <laughs> Why keeps bringing that up? So this he's referring to the fact that he tweeted at Artie that he, Artie should try to commit suicide again, but actually be successful this time. And he brings this up. And he would say horrible things about me, and I would tweet horrible things about him. In fact, once I tweeted out, Artie, you know, you know, kill yourself and be successful this time. Did I really mean it? No. Did, do I feel bad about it? No. Because he was saying horrible crap about me, and he was part of a show that was trashing my kids. So he doesn't regret it. That's Artie, interesting. I tweeted terrible things to him. He tweeted terrible things to me. I tweeted terrible things back. Not as well. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't funny in any single way. So now John's talking to Mike Buschetti. He has Mike Buschetti on his Beer Ooh. on the Balcony show. Yeah, good guy. <laughs> Maybe he could have Mike Buschetti call Hal Sparks' his manager. That's a good idea. That guy might be better than... He's what? a better communicator than John, John is. Dante the comic? Is that who his agent is? Yeah. If your agent has something the comic is his name, he's not an agent. <laughs> the T-H-A. <laughs> yeah. The comic. <laughs> All right, so now he's talking to Mike Buschetti about this. You and I worked with uh, uh, so many great comics. Sorry, I got a troll in the room. I'm just going to block these trolls who put down my kids, you know. I mean, you know. And, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm this, I'm 99% sure I know who it is, you know, like who like decides that it's better to trash my children. But you know, Mike, this motherfucker will never say that to my face because I'll put my fist through his head. I know. But he's never going to do that because he's a fucking coward. He's a pussy. Well. You, you, and, like, I will literally put my fist through your fucking heart. I know. If you ever insulted my kid in front of me. Wait a second. John is saying that he will literally murder someone for goofing on his kids. What's so fucked up about his kids that he feels this way? If they were well-adjusted kids, he wouldn't be that upset about it. I'm starting to think these kids are retarded. I don't like talking about his kids, but he keeps talking about his kids. I'm not even trying to. I will not interject into a conversation about Mr. Melendez's children on the grounds that I don't want to be a witness in the fucking trial when it does happen. <laughs> I can only imagine the day that I end up having to sit there in front of a fucking judge and say, well, Carl was just kidding. Doesn't that seem odd, though? That he would go on there and he's talking about his kids. Not, this is all from one day. He's talking about his kids nonstop, bringing up shit that happened five years ago on the internet. Did he's, I tell you we saw Almost Famous? <laughs> you got to stop playing the fucking kids card, John. It's so old. I have a theory that his kids are trolling him in the chat. <laughs> Maybe it's his kids who are trolling him. No, Dad, really, I am a tranny. <laughs> Shut up. Look at me. 
<laughs> but <laughs> but guys, I have really good news. All of John's actions where he threatens people and tells them to kill themselves, not his fault. Look, when Howard Stern would go to war with people, he would pray that they die of cancer. Maybe I learned a little of that fight from Howard. This is everybody's fault but mine. <laughs> what a fucking horrible thing to say. He can't even take ownership of it. He doesn't regret it, but he also is not going to take ownership of it. I bet you Sutter and John's kids are actually pretty great. I'm sure they're wonderful. I find most people have like dysfunctional parents to be the coolest people to be around because they're just like, yeah, life's fucked well, that, up. That's actually what I mean, though, Vinny. When I say, like, why does he get so upset about people? If the, if the kids are well-adjusted and doing fine, you just be like, you don't even know my kids, whatever. Right? Yeah. Isn't that how you would be? Like, I, I well, wouldn't be like, oh, my God, I'll throw my fist through your heart if I see you in... <laughs> like, what? I, you know what Rats. I would do, though? Well, what I would Valentine's do. Day. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what I would do is just ignore the faceless people on the internet who are throwing loose change at me. <laughs> and just, you know, maybe... So he is money-centric. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I mean, that's really what this is. He's a fucking freak show out of quarter that people are throwing loose change at. Correct. Correct. Occasional beer. He's no lobster boy. <laughs> but he is a freak show. And all the shows that dedicate their time to hating me, keep keep it up. Keep on making me relevant. <laughs> what do I care? You know, if you're going to donate, dedicate your show to tr trashing me, I, you know, I, I doubt they have that many viewers or listeners, but, hey, get my name out there. Yeah, hey, you Fine. Got, you, keep yeah, on, you. keep on trashing. That's right. That's right. I'll, I'll, keep on, I'll, keep I'll, it on. He's finally learned that this is a good thing. That we bring him up every single fucking week. He's finally figured that out. I would have ne put money on that. I would never have heard that out of his I mouth. know. That's why I clicked. I was like, holy shit. He, he's finally figured it out. He, of course, he had to throw in the, oh, but nobody listens to their show. Well, come on. <laughs> he had to throw that come in on. there. He has a much bigger audience than we do. But we are helping him. We are. Has anybody ever been turned to his show? I'm just wondering. Is there anybody who like listens to it now just because they like it? You mean like scared straight kind of thing? Or? Yeah. There was, there was kinky streets. Yeah. yeah. He's no longer allowed. Yeah, he's no longer. <laughs> now he's kinky streets one in the chat. He's just fucking bad. <laughs> Who's this? Prude Avenue. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat. All right. <laughs> You're the king of the zingers. Yeah, that was pretty good. You're the zing king around right. here, Chris. I like a good pun. All right. Uh, so they're talking about... Uh, Joe Rogan and all this Joe Rogan stuff that's going on and Spotify should cancel him and he's a racist and this is a little bit of a hyperbole I would say. I am making a political statement in 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 holding solidarity with the Neil Youngs and the Joni Mitchells and the Mary Trumps to say you know I, I don't want to be part of a network that allows Joe Rogan to kill people. Talk about retarded. Talk about <laughs> retarded. No, he's just connecting these dots and Joe Rogan's just killing people. Free speech kills he's people. He's running now. through the streets. <laughs> what a fucking retard. Um what he, what his that, sta the statement he's making is look at me. Yes, correct. I would think that Fauci literally funding the Wuhan lab could be said that like that's someone who's killing people. But Joe Rogan having doctors on his show and having conversations statements like that are why we have to move the creep off to rumble <laughs> yes we are moving to rumble with the creep off i'm excited for that that'll be good I, I, like it's so weird like people always think i'm some kind of alcoholic yeah do i drink some pints at the pub yeah but i'm not like you know i'm not some fucking you know crazy drunk that's fucking you know what i mean i mean you know i I've held down steady jobs for fucking 30 years. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, how the fuck can you do that if you're a fucking drunk? You know what I mean? No. He held down steady jobs years ago. Yeah, the government check comes <laughs> steadily. <laughs> if you have to explain to Mike Bashetti that you're not a drunk, you might have a problem. <laughs> All right. This... I like Mike because Mike would be the guy who's like, John, maybe you should settle down with your drinking just a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, right. Now. Like, Mike's the guy who would try to talk him down. And I didn't pull this clip, but it was so funny. At one point, Mike Buschetti gets really bored of the conversation. He goes, like, All right, I got to go. I'm going to grab some food. And John goes, You can't go. 
What do you mean you got to get some food? You can't go right now. You got to stay on. He's like, okay. It's so easy to bully Mike. He's like, okay, I'll stay on. Just tell him you need energy. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. He needs energy. Are you getting baloney? All right. I want to thank a voicemailer for tipping me off to this. This is from the Howard Stern Show in 2006. Artie Lang, they had just had a vacation. Shocking. Artie Lang <laughs> was out in L.A. and visited Stuttering John in his mansion. The one that John talks about in the book a lot, that was the huge mansion with the amazing backyard and the amazing location in L.A. Howard Stern makes a prediction that is spot on. Listen closely. And these gorgeous, breathtaking L.A. mountains. Wow. Wow. It's just, and it's all sacred ground, the mountains. So they so can't build can there. Yeah, so it'll never be uh, ruined. Uh, they, 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 I could just hear it, John. Now. Yeah. They, 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 they never could build here. Right. Never. Right. It really is. It's gorgeous. It's, it's gorgeous. They never, they, they're never going to be allowed to build here. See, see that spot over there? That's where the hillside strangle and dumped his last body. And, uh, and Suzanne and the kids are, are very happy there. And, you know. Howard, right. it's the kind of view. Like, I saw it at night. I was there at night. <laughs> it's the kind of view when they do a movie and they show the Hollywood Hills. This is the view. The like it's, it's shot from John's backyard. I wow. say something's got to be wrong. Either he's in a bad school district no. or something. Oh, there's got to be something bad there. Can I just tell you? There's got to be something bad. He goes, I don't know. It just seems, it just there's, seems no, there's nothing wrong. Like, uh, like when I went up there, he goes, um, that's um, where Michelle Branch lives. You know, like, uh, he's in the I he's in say, hood. I still say he'll screw up. Oh, yeah. Uh, He'll screw up. He might, but I'm telling you, well he's going to nah, be destined for, for oh, yeah. some kind of screw up. Put it this you know, way. Like, like he'll get divorced. You know, like, half, like the house was gone. Oh, his house? The house to something, divorce. yeah. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <And> nailed it. <laughs> Howard's like, this is not reality. This is not the world I live in. We're so just famous and wealthy. And he was right. You know the really funny part here is that Michelle Branch has an apartment in the same complex <laughs> as John now, too. He's, he's the building manager for Michelle Branch. <laughs> oh, Michelle, I hear you. Your, 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 your shit is clogged. <laughs> <laughs> that was just amazing somebody found that on a video on youtube that's 12 hours long it's three hours into it i was like holy shit that's a really good find that's exactly spot on i mentioned on the show chris looks scared i mentioned on the show not too long ago that stuttering john went on sirius to do this stuttering john stern spotlight special it was something that aired for days did he mention his own kids no, nobody. <laughs> nobody. He mentions his movie, which is really funny. This is April 15th, 2008. And this will blow up the Sirius XM case that he has with the great Michael Popak. Someone should send this to Michael Popak because this is John admitting that he's happy that they're replaying him on Sirius back in 2008. <laughs> You know, the Stern fans have been so loyal to me, and I'm so grateful to them for supporting me and, you know, all my stand-up gigs and, you know, all the great emails they've sent me and, you know, the people I meet have always liked big fans, and I love talking about the show. They always want to ask me questions about the Stern show, and it's always been great. And, you know, I mean, hopefully, you know, hopefully they'll come out and see this movie, too, as well. And uh, so that's what I'm doing now. And, I mean, I, you know, it's just uh, it's, it's been a great ride. And, you know, and, again, I appreciate the Stern show and everything that, you know, I learned there and how you know it gave me my start and I'll forever be grateful to that and uh, you know thanks for you know, having me do this and that's about it thanks for having me on and uh, you know I wish the best to everybody thanks for having me on and thanks for having me do this he said to Sirius on Sirius yeah in 2008 whoopsie daisy I was I was <laughs> I was under duress <laughs> Tim Sabian Sabian had my kids <laughs> it's honestly it's 20 hours worth of the best of Stuttering John stuff that they put together for the Stern Spotlight special. And they had other people featured in this too. And Stuttering John was fine with it because he was employed. Because he had a steady paycheck, so he didn't care. Now, all of a sudden, this is a travesty. I was trying to promote my movie. Well, yeah, listen to this plug. This is great. But uh, besides that, I mean, you know, I wrote a script seven years ago. I wrote the script when I was on the Stern Show, and I star in it. We got, uh, you know, a really good cast with Jeffrey Ross, and uh, Jim J. Bullock plays my psychologist, you know. So I made the movie, and I showed it to only four places, and uh, I got three offers on it, and one was National Lampoon. And so they they offered to buy the movie, which they did, and, you know, it's coming out uh, April 15th, and uh, it's called National Lampoon Presents 1, 2, many it's a romantic comedy about a guy who can't deal with monogamy so he wants to find the girl that'll be willing to sleep with other women with him <laughs> so it's based on a true fantasy 
So he did this to promote his movie. It's at the time. based on a uh, true fantasy. Yeah, I get it. It's brilliant. It's brilliant joke. God, that movie is such a piece of shit. Um, John never talks about that movie anymore. It's pretty funny. He's pretty embarrassed by it now. I think that's probably for the best. Jeff Ross should be embarrassed by it, too. Jim J. Bullock should be embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and he did a show with that Tammy Faye Baker for 10 years. <laughs> All right, the last clip from this uh, stern spotlight, Robin Quivers actually makes a funny here, which I've never said that before. John is is the biggest success story. (laughs) This show has ever seen outside of Howard Stern. Not true. It's Billy West. Yeah. Billy West is much more successful. Yeah, Billy West's house is much bigger. (laughs) Yes, correct. So, I mean, it's it's and funny, though. From what I understand, Billy West still owns it. So, good. Right. Yes. Uh, I do want to say that Sale D was on Cardiff Electric show. I didn't pull any clips of it. Uh, I thought it was interesting. I'll tell you what I pulled from it. Did you listen to that episode? I did listen to it. So, Sale admits that he was a fan until John started hitting up for money. And then when John said no, he blocked Sale. Well, can I say that I want it was a little deeper than that. No, oh, there's a lot. There's a lot. There was on. a lot of context there, and what he was trying to say was that he wanted to invest in the firebrand that is the. Uh, he wanted to help him with his show, right? John he, he was giving them suggestions show. on how to make the show better, and John didn't want to put any effort into the show. He just wanted the money. Yeah, right. That's what Sal was talking about. Now I don't know if Sal could have helped him on his show or not. I have no idea. But he also claims that him and Hockey Puck have John recorded saying things that could get him in a lot of trouble, and he's very excited to someday release these things. But he's working with his attorney. I bet you those are insanely stupid things that they have him recorded say. Like, yeah, like he he has it's him John going. He has a list of names. He has a list of names. You see, he's doing things. <laughs> yeah. Well, he he hints that John was pretty drunk when he said the things that Hockey Puck recorded him saying. So I don't know. Who knows? But the big takeaway I had from it was how he kept telling uh, Cardiff Electric or Cartilage Electricity that I want him to sue me. I hope that he sues me. I would love to take this guy to court. So that was pretty funny. I, liked I do sales. think that's funny. I liked Sales' attitude on it, which is, uh, was a lot of fun. It sounds like that dude's a lawyer, right? Is that what he was trying to hint at? I don't know if he's a lawyer. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. He seemed to know a lot about the law. He was very excited to get the law involved. Because he goes, he goes, I would tell John all the time, you got to stop threatening to sue everybody because someone might sue you. And then you're going to be fucked because <laughs> you don't have a case. Right. So I thought that was uh, that was a lot of uh, that he's was interesting. A, he's a troll. <laughs> he's a troll. John just turns off everybody who likes him. He turns them all off. It's amazing. It's amazing he still has people watching his show. Let's talk about our friend stuttering John. Starting off with this cameo that some wise guy hired John to record. Hey, Hamburger, what's up? It's Stuttering John. (laughs) Hey, listen, I want to tell you something. You're nothing but a club-footed chicken. The Bills suck. They lost again. (laughs) Four in a row of Super Bowls. Last one to the Giants. Hey, I got three words for you, you dumbass. Scott Norwood. Anyway, uh, you're such a loser, all right? So do me a favor, all right? Go fuck yourself, with you? Yeah, just go fuck yourself. Me and Harizo, Harizo, say go fuck yourself, okay, you little prick? Don't ever let me catch you in my club if I'm performing. I'll roast your ass even worse. Only kidding, my man. Have a great Super Bowl Sunday. Stuttering John saying, <laughs> Kiki, yeah. Oh, man. Fucking burned me good there. Holy shit. That's a, that's a big difference between your audience and, and our audience on who's right. Is Yours has cameos from Stuttering John. I got one from Chris Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, uh, that makes a lot of sense, actually. So we were talking about <laughs> Stuttering John's autobiography when Chris and I were doing the bonus show this past week. And he was talking about this game, knock, knock, runaway. And we both said it's ding dong ditch. Sure. 
Now, people were telling me that it's called different things in different areas of the country. That's fine. And so people have different names for it. But it's interesting. Jackie Marlowe sent me a note that he goes, um, Knock Knock Runaway is not what it's called anywhere. If you Google that, it doesn't show up anywhere. And uh, he thinks, because Suttering John once admitted that he and his friends referred to certain fireworks as N-word chasers when he was on the Stern show. He thinks they were playing a game called N-word knocking is what they called it. So he changed the name for his book. Oh. <laughs> so I, I thought yeah, that, that was an interesting observation. That's what we called it when we were kids was Nastric really? knocking. No shit. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Yeah, and a broken a broken bottle was a nastric knife, and uh, all right, all right, bottle rocket <laughs> bottle rocket without the stick was a nastric chaser. Let route. me bring on this asterisk to give you more details. Because <laughs> <laughs> knock knock runaway is a fucking stupid name. Well, someone told him the rules, and he's like, "Oh, so it's knock knock runaway then?" <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, whatever, John. <laughs> what are the three things you do? <laughs> All right, so John went on this other guy's show, this, like, burnout show called What the Spliff. And it's, it's this YouTube video with the host, Josh, who's the blazing blasphemer. Cardiff Watcher had him on his podcast this past week, of course, because Cardiff's all over this. So this happened this past Saturday night. John is wasted. He just came from these two dogs got married. And he went to a reception. I'm not making this up. Mm-hmm. And they were doing shots. And he comes home. And he's wasted. And he does this show. And it starts off really just perfectly. Josh, did you hear me? Yes, yes John, John, I can, I hear, can you. hear you. But everything's in <laughs> echo form. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's because my headphones head just took a shit on me. No need to bring up bad okay, okay. words. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, the echo should be gone on, now. let's do it all right what you're hearing here is two idiots who are using zoom without headphones on and everything's bouncing around and echoing now to josh's credit he puts headphones on and stops the echoing john never does so whenever josh is talking it's echoing like a motherfucker and then when john's talking it sounds decent but John can't figure out whatever system they're using because he wants to turn his green screen on, but he doesn't know how to use his green screen because it's not the usual system that he uses, and he complains about that. But in front of a green screen, I, like, I thought I could make it look nice. <laughs> That's a very drug person. <laughs> when the word nice is 3.7 seconds. <laughs> That's a very drug person right there. <laughs> All right, so here we go with the, uh, the echo problems. Well, I don't know. All right, how's that? Is the echo is the echo gone? Nope. I don't hear any echo. But oh, now I can't hear John. <laughs> it really is brilliant. This whole thing. Here's more. Sounds like if Ozzy was to do a podcast. I, I, I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, here's the thing. I have my microphone. So. Oh my god. But but there's nothing on this site that will tell me how to like just just just, just, just use a different use a different, 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 different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tripping my ass off. <laughs> it's so sweet that one a little bit. <laughs> I have to be honest with you. So John didn't realize that this was a marijuana show. And he goes, Oh, hold on, give me a minute. I'll go get a joint I just bought, and I'll come back. So there's all this dead air, and then uh, John comes back, and he says this. Just bought this There it goes. goes. Oh. 14 bucks. Is it an infused, it an infused joint? joint? 14 bucks for sativa. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Nice. nice. But I like the sativa. It's like the poor man's cocaine. <laughs> I thought crack was the poor man's cocaine. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one. I, I think it's described as the poor man's sativa. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. All right. This is a this is a fun little clip I pulled. Dude, you're getting a very special stuttering John Melendez. Because in my show, I don't drink, I don't fucking smoke, or anything else. I wish you weren't a liar. He doesn't drink on his show. What is he talking about? He is two seconds away from saying, I love you, microphone. <laughs> <laughs> he weakly drinks heavily on his show. 
Isn't it called Beer on the Balcony? Yes, our friend Kaya actually put together an amazing animated gift that just loops forever. Him chugging beers and grabbing another one that's on our subreddit. Uh, the idea that he's like, you guys will never see this again. I'm fucked up on the internet. I don't know. You know this is a, a rare occurrence where I'm totally fucking hammered on the internet. All right, this is the best part of the show. Let's get into it. So John grabs his phone, and he's talking to this chick. Marissa calls him. Now, this is over four minutes long. This poor guy's trying to interview him. John's ignoring him and just talking to this girl. I cut it down. Do they talk about, do they talk about runaway autistic kids? <laughs> <laughs> Not that, Marissa. <laughs> I did think about that, though. No, so he, he he's talking to this chick, Marissa, and this is so telling of how John operates. I have to admit that I listened to your phone phone call call to the White House, House, and that was some some amazing amazing stuff. stuff. So what what made you do do it? it? Hold on. This is the chick I want to share. Uh, Hey, Marissa, you coming over? (laughs) I'm doing a a podcast. That's why I came back home. I thought you were going to come to the wedding. Come on over, will you? No, 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 no. Make sure she brings the blunt wraps. wraps. All right. And if you want, like, wine, I don't have it. I just have beer. No, so just grab some wine. Come on. All right. Well, I think I got got a bottle, but I don't know. It's a little old. Just go to (laughs) 7-Eleven. Grab yourself a bottle of wine. Come on over, will you? (laughs) Nobody wants old wine. (laughs) That would suck. It goes bad. (laughs) I'll pay for it. Don't worry. Well, I'm on, well, okay, I'll text it to you. Well, you know, I'm on the air right now with this podcast that I've never heard of, but, you know. <laughs> All right, get your fucking what cute asshole. ass over here, will you? Yes, I will. It's in Canoga Park. Just get there. All right, um, hold on. Hold on, all right? I'm sorry. All right. All right, I'll see you soon, sweetie. All right, bring some wine. I got the weed. Don't worry. About it. <laughs> well, you got to bring the wine. She's arguing with him. Wait. All right. You know, we'll, you know, we'll talk about this when you get it. <laughs> She's refusing to make, bring her own wine to his disgusting apartment for some reason. Why does he introduce? Well, he doesn't introduce her, but he says, oh, this is the chick I want to shag. He hangs out at a British pub. He talks about shagging chicks. Does he think he's British? Who talks like that? You you should have uh, somebody in your audience fill in the other half of that conversation. Oh my gosh, that's a great idea! Yeah, stuttering John Mad Libs. That could be the next contest after we do the song parody contest. We can go with the funniest conversation between because I, I cut a bunch out. It, it goes a lot longer than that. There's a there's a lot of back and forth. I have a, I'm assuming that Marissa is a prostitute and is probably also hammered at eight o'clock at night on a Saturday. And that's why that was such a difficult conversation. She's like, well, where do you live? He's like, I'm on a, I'm on a show. I'll just go to Canoga Park. I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> just go to Canoga Park and uh, I'll be around. I'll be the guy in the building. Follow your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Follow your nose. <laughs> oh, all right. People on the internet are speculating that he was pretending to get a phone call. Yeah. And that he wasn't talking to anyone. I don't think that's true because there wouldn't have been so much back and forth about buying the wine. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like he yeah. would have just lied about it. It's like, oh yeah, I got the best wine. You'll yeah, have to drink right. over here. Yeah, you Money's know. no object. Right. <laughs> it's like, you go to 7-Eleven, pick up wine, and I'll pay you back. It's literally what he says to this woman. That has to be a real conversation. Where, when is there wine at 7-Eleven? It's, it's California. Oh, okay. Cool. I guess they do that. Yeah. I know. Us assholes in New York have to go to two stores. Two? <laughs> John realizes about 45 minutes into this conversation that the trolls are going to really enjoy this. Hey, we're having a good time, aren't we, Josh? Like, you know, oh, we, we are. are. So, so, um, oh, this is golden for all my trolls. Oh, Stutter and John got stoned and drunk. If I were you, I'd post this and go, hey, look, I got Stutter and John all <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> So what's interesting is that this video was made private on Monday. So he must have told this guy, he must have told Josh, you got to take this video down 
because he saw it and realized that he was wasted and that this is going to be embarrassing for him. And fucking Cardiff had this guy in his show and didn't ask him the question if John reached out to him and told him to take the, the show down. Cardiff, you dropped the ball on that. That's the question to ask. That's what I want to know. Instead, the only thing Cardiff asked him was whether or not he had to pay to get John on the show. And Josh's answer was, oh, I, I can't tell you. I can't tell so you. That, yes. that was the one thing <laughs> I, I'm not allowed to tell you. But yeah, but during the show, he's, John says this. It's it's at it's night. It's night, quiet. It's I don't quiet, have to do with a lot of people. So how the fuck were you able to afford me to come on your show? <laughs> <laughs> he even says, how were you able to afford me? So he obviously did this for a fee. And I don't know why Josh couldn't just explain to him what that cost. Because on the next show, on Tuesday's show, John says this. He paid me good bucks to do the show, and, and then he started drinking. I was drinking. He started smoking weed. I started smoking weed. It's legal in California. So it was a fun show. I had a great time. And Josh is a fucking loser. I'm just going to say it because <laughs> Chad goes, so there's like three people watching us right now. Is this like your regular job, and you got like another job or something? Whoa, punching down. I know. <laughs> yeah, he really does fuck with them. And then Josh doesn't want to say, so he presses him on it. No, no, no. I'm what do you do for a living? Because it's obviously not this. You got three people here. Oh um, no, I'm uh, yeah, I, yeah. This, this isn't, isn't yeah. I have a I have another full time job. So this is which something. is uh, I push him off on a broom at the moment. moment. Be honest. No, I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a night time custodian. The guy's a fucking janitor. <laughs> no, you can't do that. No, the same seriously, time. Mop seriously, what do you do? <laughs> mop and a broom. <laughs> that wouldn't even clean it properly. <laughs> you got to pick one or the other. <laughs> I'm saving up. It's so insulting. Uh, it's fucking funny. And fuck Josh, because Josh is all excited to fucking pay stuttering John to have him on his show. And then he asked him questions like, what was it like pranking the president? Oh, fuck me. Right. And then he told the story about writing a song with Joe Walsh. And this is funny because he's, he's all excited. Oh, yeah, I got to write a song with Joe Walsh. And Atlantic Records made it happen. He set him up because he said, I want to write a song with Joe Walsh. So they got together, they wrote this song. And everyone asked, like, well, where is the song? Can I hear it? It wasn't good enough to go on his album. The third fucking album from the Stuttering John Band, the song with Joe Walsh wasn't good enough for. Her. That's how bad this song is. But the story's great, The right? story sucks. <laughs> and by the way, even if you wanted to hear any of that album, it's not on Spotify, so good luck. Right. It's gone. That's right. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> it's really punishing all of us. He's the most unfunniest person in the world. Yes, you are, John. That is correct. So Josh explains that he was in the military, and John's question to him is so ridiculous. So I was, uh, I, was, uh, I, was I was in the military for a little bit. Moved around, moved around quite a bit. So, 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 yeah. So, yeah. That's, 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 why, that's why I'm also why a fan I'm also of Richard O'Jenna. Yeah. So. yeah. So what did you get, a dishonorable discharge? <laughs> no, no, I uh, did 14 and a half fuck? years. What kind of question is that? <laughs> it, that's John for you. He just assumes the worst of everyone. Well, he smelled blood. He's like, this guy might be a bigger loser than me. Right, yeah. I'm just going to go for it. Would you get a dishonorable discharge or something like that? It's like yeah. no joke or anything. Because just... I'm having one right now. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see my bench? <laughs> Well, even even John realizes that if somebody is going to pay him to come on, they are worthless. Yep. And yes. he, he, Good. he can do whatever he wants to. <laughs> Good point. That's, that's correct. And I happen to know how much John charges for these, fee for these uh, appearances because someone I know has been in negotiations with him to do their show, and it's $300 hmm. to do the show. If anybody else wants to get John on their show, if you have 300 bucks. You can make it happen. So at the end of this conversation, drunk John decides that he likes Josh. Josh is a great guy. No, I actually like you. If you're ever in L.A., you come. If you're ever here, I'll take you out for a few pints. <laughs> he wants to take everyone out for pints. <laughs> <laughs> he really is amazing. All right. With that, we got to get into... Uh, 
<laughs> all right. We're going to go through all the submissions, recent submissions to the Southern John song parody. I don't know how this is going to sound on the Discord. So if it sounds like shit, listen to the regular show afterwards because it's going to sound good on there. Some of these are way too long. Producer Chris. Yes. If you get bored, I want you to just put, put up your hand like, or, or do like the um, thumbs down thing. Okay. From Gladiator. And I'll know just to kill it if, okay. if these songs go on too long because there's a lot <laughs> so, going on. But before you get started, I'd like to place a bet that the uh, Beastie Boys girls parody yeah. is going to be the winner. Uh, that one is so funny. It is great. Man. I will tell you that there's one in this batch, <laughs> no pun intended, that I think is a contender. I honestly think it's a contender to that, but I agree with you. That one was, yeah, so was far, fantastic. Coors is leading the pack. Now, what's funny is when we were stranded in Chicago because our, our flight was canceled, it was myself, Jen from the Jingles Department, and Vinny Paulino, and we were hanging out for an extra day, and we started brainstorming on songs that John would sing. And one of our ideas was, oh, Susanna. Yeah, sure. And sure enough, a voicemailer came in with that. <laughs> Well, he used to work on Stern Show just to act like a buffoon. And he met a lovely lady, yeah, he was over the moon. Made a lot of money, and he moved to Hollywood. Bought a pretty mansion now just because he could. Oh, Susanna, it must have been so hard to leave a man who lives on beer and talks like a retard. Oh, Susanna, you could have had it all. A man covered in cat shit and smells like alcohol. Woo! All right, so it's fun. Not bad. Not exactly how the song goes. <laughs> no, not quite. Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> Had some issues. The other thing we thought would be funny <laughs> is, uh, or at least I thought was funny at the time because <laughs> 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 that was some trip. But at the time, I thought it would be really funny to do like my way. But do a parody on that. And someone came in, came in with that as well. This is uh, Mr. Magenta. And now the end is here. Who could have guessed the roses of the liver? <coughs> I had so many plans. To fly to D.C. and make Republicans quiver. I was totally gonna do that. I lived <laughs> a life that's charmed. And I drove drunk on each and every highway. And more, much more than this, I did it my way. I'm not bitter. Fuck you. I don't have any regrets. <laughs> oh, da, uh, thanks for the two bucks. I regret life. I regret life. I made Howard Stern laugh. I announced for The Tonight Show. I wrote a song with Joe Walsh. I released an album with Atlantic Records. My album got a positive review in Rolling Stone. I gave birth to three beautiful children. I made people think I did all that <laughs> without talent. That's easy for you to say Cause I know I know, no, no, no That I did it my way <coughs> For what is a stuttering fuckface? What does he got? If not super chance Then he has not
so gone. <laughs> All right, I don't know if there's anything else in that, but that's that's funny. All right, that was fun. Very good. I, I've only got two thumbs. I don't know how many more you need me to put down. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Patrick's Lonely Baby. Sent this one in. Hold on, this is a chick I want to share. Can you hear me? Hello. Hey, Mercy, coming over? It's me. I thought you were going to come to the wedding. I was wondering yeah, there was a wedding, you know, two dogs got married. No, 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 two dogs. Scare! Go over. No, no, no. I'm on the air right now. I'm doing a, a podcast. Sugar tits. Shut the fuck up. Can you hear me? Hello. I told them that I left the dog wedding just so I can come here and come on over, will you? You know I'm in California. It's in Canoga Park. Just get there. All right, come on over. I didn't jerk off this morning. I don't want to run off a batch. And if you want, like, wine, I don't have it. I just have beer. I think I got, I got a bottle, but I don't know. It's a little old. Just go to 7-Eleven. Grab yourself a bottle. All right. Uh, producer Chris killed that one, but it was fun. It was fun. When I first heard it, I didn't hear that episode. I'm like, where the fuck did you get this audio from? He's hitting on a chick. It's like, oh, okay. He did that on YouTube. Sorry, it took so long. That makes sense. I ran out of judgmentalism on the first part of our show. (laughs) All right, let's do a short one to break things up. This one is fun. It comes in from Huij on the Discord. I've never seen a cockroach here. You trash my fucking kids. I'm a D-list celebrity. And I smell like gas. I never pay child support. Pretty good. Yeah. I like that. That worked out well. Give him credit. Now, remember that song, I'm a Bitch? It was a big hit by Meredith Brooks. No. All right. I was thinking Meredith Baxter Bernie, but I knew that wasn't right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this is uh, a parody song from that called It's My Batch. John had a bumble date. She's so smoking, not that jerking off can wait. Take her home and light those Coors Light scented candles. And now it's time for fun. The dick pills are now kicking in. John, tell her what she's won. It's my batch. It's my full load. It's my cum. I'm in sperm mode. It's my jism. Check my taint. These androids make me faint. Now clean up, then go home. I won't pick up the phone, cause bitch, I don't have time to text you once a day. (laughs) Siri, call Richard Fajitas. I need him to help you with this whole whole part of the swamp. That is perfect right there. Yeah. In and out, yep. verse, chorus, call it a day. Very well done. Good joke at the end. Good joke at the end. Very good. All right. The next song I'm going to play is Pickwick Pub Blues. This came in from Billzard Buffalo. I said the lawsuit coming. It's coming around the pike. But I ain't seen a cent since the judge said take your hike. So I'm drinking at Pickwick Pub, and time keeps speeding up. Cause these beers keep appearing, for I can down my cup. When I was just an intern, Howard told me, son, Christ sakes, clean yourself up, nobody likes a bum. Now I've lost my wife and children to some other guy. And when I hear they like him better, I start to drink and whine. All right, the Discord is calling this one. <laughs> All right, but very, very fun, though. Uh, Bill Zard Buffalo, thank you so much for uh, submitting that one. Always appreciate it. This one is the longest one. I definitely will not get all the way through it. This is, came in from uh, Cardiff Electric. Uh, 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 
And then I just started serial dating. You know, you know I'm kind of getting sick of the taking girls out to dinner. It's so fucking expensive. You know, you know, and then driving to Orange County for a date. And, uh, oh, happy wedding anniversary, Dad Betty Love Girl. <laughs> the one I met at the pub, I mean, you know, we were at the pub and you know, we have lunch. Cause, 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 Pickwick Pub in Woodland Hills. Uh, cause, cause, cause the Scotland Yard, a great uh, pub here, out here. All right, so it's cores, cores, cores instead of. Girls, girls, girls. But so I know I'm just a guest and I won't be back for a bit. But can I make a rule for your parody contest? Yes, please, please. please. If if they're just pulling somebody's audio of them talking and then putting it over a bed of music, just throw it in the fucking garbage. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I think that's probably a pretty good rule. So I will say that this one coming in from Adam Thoreau is pretty creative. Now Adam popped on his show on Tuesday and gave him a super chat. This is the super chat that he got. Uh, Adam Thoreau with the first super chat of the day. Have I told you lately that I love you? Thanks for the $2, brother. I appreciate it. All right, so he got him to sing that, and then he turned that into his submission. Adam Thoreau with the first super chat of the day. Thanks for the $2, brother. Have I told you lately I was the head writer at the Kareem Abdul Jabbar Rose. Have I told you? I learned how to read music in second grade. The, uh, um. You fill my heart with beers. Uh, my mom is here. I do not go on Reddit. Yes, you do. Have I told you lately? My oven's broke. Have I told you? I don't want to run off a batch and, you know, and, and, and not have as, as much to give. Bald fat loses, but I don't really give a fuck. Matthew Lewinsky, thanks for the five bucks. I didn't shower today and I smell like ass. That is true. Have I told you lately? There's energy in baloney. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thoreau, very well done. That's a creative way right. to use actual audio. I was just going to say I take back my previous statement. Just do it like that one. Yes. You have to pay $2 to John in order to get, uh, get him to say the right things. All right. This is called Hey There, Stut John. And this one comes in from Peter Pod. Hey there, Stut John, why'd you leave New York City? You had a cushy job and Howard kept you busy, you know it's true. Now Howard doesn't want you, what will you do? Hey there, Stut John, you left to work for Leno and every time we thought of you, we said Jake and fucking have not close your eyes. Your wife who left and life passed you by Have a Coors Light Oh, I can Coors be free Oh, if only Coors were free No, I can Coors be free Oh, if only Coors were free Then John would drink for free Hey there, Stat John, it looks like times are hard Your kids don't want to know you Because you act like a retard for super chats You know your trolls are all you have It's fucking sad Hey there, Stat John, please now don't try to sue me Just because no one loves you And your podcast is pretty shitty as it should All right, I'm going to kill that one it's good. You did a nice job with it. Yes. But it's about four minutes long, which is too long for this contest. I should have told people. Um, also, it's like a bummer song. <laughs> like parody songs are, are more fun when they're like upbeat. Right. You know? Yeah. 
people in the Discord are feeling bad for John. After right, that no, that's not the <laughs> point. Everyone's like, man, poor John. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> that's not what we're trying to get across here. What we're trying to get across here is how ridiculous this man is. And I think this next one does a very good job of uh, capturing that. Who lives with the roaches in California? Stuttering John Melendez. Liberal and drunk and bloated is he? Stuttering John Melendez. He can't land a Hollywood job. Stuttering John Melendez. Cause he's a big fat retarded slob. Stuttering John Melendez. 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 Have you seen my dick pills? <laughs> All right, that was good. Uh, Lewis from NC, thank you, buddy. The other one you sent in, I'm not familiar with that meatloaf song, so I didn't understand it at all, so I'm not going to play that one. But thank you very much for sending that in. That was fun. Um, so I decided to do one. I wanted to get in on the action here. Fucking Carl. Can't help himself. <laughs> Can't help myself. So this is one that uh, that I did. use Mercedes down Canoga Avenue. It's time that I start drinking pints. Uh, it's three in the afternoon. Swerving to the left from the shakes and swerving to the right. Ain't got no job. Ain't got no friends. And now I want to fight. At the Pickwick Pub. Drinking in daylight. Pickwick Pub. I'm in on a dike. Pickwick Pub. I'm in a shouting match. Pickwick Pub. And I'm saving my batch. I'm dirty, mean, fingernails unclean, an unhealthy man. I have so many trolls, I don't. Understand. My son and my daughter live with my ex-wife. My liver is failing even worse than my life. The cause lights that await. I only drink to hydrate. <laughs> At the Pickwick Pub. Just chewing the shit. <laughs> Pickwick Pub. Argue politics. Pickwick Pub. I'm Blacked out by five. Tick Wix Pub. How am I still alive? Tick Wix Pub. Tick Wix Pub. All right, you get the point on that one. <laughs> Thanks for humoring Did me, everybody. Did you submit that so you wouldn't have to give somebody else a win? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get my own merchandise <laughs> <laughs> from this. Well, Doug, it gets worse than that because the Jiggles department got in on the action... This is producer Chris and the Jingles Department with this submission. I, I, like, it's so weird. Like, people always think I'm some kind of alcoholic. Yeah, do I drink some pints at the pub? Yeah. But I'm not, like, you know, I'm not some fucking, you know, crazy drunk that's fucking, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, I've, I've held down steady jobs for fucking 30 years. I mean, I once was getting laid. I was satisfied. You know, kept thinking I would always be right by Jay Leto's side. But then I spent so many nights drinking and smoking bombs and all along. I lived my life completely wrong. You know, Susanna left. I lost my place. Now in a condo where I stream and drink Coos Light by the case. I tell my dates BYOB, sometimes intercourse is achieved. I wish I hadn't burned bridges with celebrities. Now watch my stream, chug in my coors. Steve Grillo is my guest. Hell Sparks, not welcome anymore. My skin is turning yellow, vital organs shutting down. My date from Bumble. Might find me on the floor face down because I 
I won't survive. Oh, as long as I get super chats, I'll drink until I die. I've got all this cooze to chug, mixed with colada pin and drugs. I won't survive. I won't survive. I don't have enough energy. Where's my baloney? <laughs> All right. That, now, <laughs> people are speculating that I was saying that there is a uh, contestant that's almost as good as the Beastie Boys one. It's not either of those. I promise you that. In fact, this is the one that I think is going to give uh, Coors a run for its money. This is brilliantly done. And let me just find out who did it before I play it so I can give them credit. This is Tony Muskrat. Welcome to John's house. Here's a box. Have a seat. Have a seat. The Wi-Fi password is Rodriguez3. If you're hungry, there's baloney to eat. <laughs> it's not expired. That's the smell of my feet. I got chicken. I got beer. I got cans. My seasoning cabinet's full of blue chew. I got chicken. It's expired. I got beer. I got cans. You have a problem. I got even more beer. <laughs> He's got beer, can, chicken, bologna, ham, ram, and dog. Ham, ram, and dog. John's got OCD, that's why he's a slob. He's gross, he's, he's got gross. beer, can, chicken, bologna, ham, ram, and dog. Ham, ram, and dog. John's got OCD, that's why he's a slob. <laughs> Wolf down my sandwich, cause I need energy. Do me a favor and write me jokes for DC. I'm gonna go and take down the GQP. He's such a loser. But first, I'm blocking Kumia so he can't see. I've got fungus. I've got lice. Burning in one mind. I've got dandruff. <laughs> I've got some jackaloon obsessed with me. A foot odor. I've got trolls. I mean losers. Thousands of people. My moles will find out your name and where you He's live. Got debt, delusion, despair, gout, and his dick doesn't work. John's got ED. So when his batch is wasted, John goes berserk. Oh, I'm trying. He eats mice, rotting toenails, and he's running out of friends. I'd bet my life on it that he wears the pens. I don't know if you saw my tweet, but you know, I, did, I, you know, I got over 10,000 likes and a bunch of I think a thousand uh, uh, retweets. I removed all my podcasts from Spotify as well, and yeah, I did because because you know why? I don't. I mean, he's killing people. Joe Rogan, just just like you said, he's killing people. I don't want to be on that network that he's going to be out there killing people. <laughs> Frankie Four Fingers, winner, winner, expired chicken dinner. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that is an amazing one. Yeah, wow. It's going to be hard to compete with. I have a couple more that I'm going to save for next week. Episode 300, we're going to crown a winner of this contest. But overall, guys, very well done. Yeah. These are a lot of fun to go through. And poor Doug has to sit here and pretend he's on the show. Doug, are you still there? (laughs) Oh, I I was just going to ask you if you could go ahead and play one more. (laughs) I've really got to (laughs) piss. You know what? Me too. And since uh, you said that, let's, let's do that. So dedicated to all the beautiful people in chat, I can feel the love. All right, everybody, let's have a good show today. Let's go! Oh, oh, look, another troll. I I have three trolls, but they, like, go on the different names. Uh... Sit down, you fuck! <laughs> you know, we're not offending anybody. Uh... They have no sense of humor. Uh... I'm on stage, every joke, this guy, right in the front. You suck! Every joke. You suck! So... Uh... I feel pain. Uh... You guys are loyal followers of John. Uh... And his fucking children are, are, are the spawn of Satan. Uh... So I mean, there you have it. Talk about a fucking hypocrite. It's all lies. Uh, you could also super chat on Super Chat Saturday. 
as long as you're paying and the money clears. Good key. <laughs> but they think that's their little world. They're gonna, you know, post their anger and hate. Who gets the last laugh there, Richard? <laughs> Uh, uh. That was the beautiful trolls coming in from Dennis Michaels. It's time for us to finalize the Southern John parody song contest. But before we do that, I have to play you from Forrest Schoenrock. He actually did the thing that Kaya suggested he do. Or no, Doug suggested this. On the last episode, a very drunk Southern John took a phone call from a chick who he told to come over to his house yeah. and pick up wine on the way. At the 7-Eleven, yeah. 7-Eleven. Classy broad. And Doug... From who's right goes, oh, you should get a listener to record the other side of that conversation and put that together. And so thank you very much to Forrest for doing Hello. just that. <laughs> Hold on. This is the chick I want to share. Uh, hey, Mercy, coming over? Stay on this phone and don't hang up for me. I can. I have plenty of energy to drive over there. I'm doing a, a podcast. That's why I came back home. I thought you were going to come to the wedding. And I will. Come on over, will you? You make me want to smoke. You fucked my day up. You care about yourself. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, right. And if you want, like, wine, I don't have that. I ain't talking to you. You don't care. You don't care. Nah, so just grab some wine. Come on. What? What? <laughs> All right. Well, I think I got, I got a bottle, but I don't know. It's a little old. Yeah. Just go to 7-Eleven, <laughs> grab yourself a bottle of wine, come on over, will you? What are you hoping to accomplish with that? What, are you going to pay me back? I'll pay for it, don't worry about it. I don't like it, I don't, I don't want you. I don't believe you anymore. I don't trust you, I don't love you, I don't want you, okay? Well, I'm on, well, okay, I'll text it to you. Well, you know, I'm on the air right now with this podcast that I've never heard of. <laughs> Don't you dare hang up on me. Get your fucking <laughs> cute asshole. ass over here, will you? You should just fucking smile and blow me! Because I deserve it! Yes, I will. It's in Canoga <laughs> Park. Just get there. I'm coming to my house. You're in my house, honey. All right, um, hold on. I'm threatening. I'll put you in a fucking rose garden, you cunt. Hold on, all right? I'm sorry. I apologize because right. you know you're wrong. All right, I'll see you soon. You're soon. a pain in my ass! All right, bring some wine. I got the weed. Don't worry. I don't need any medication. You need a fucking bat in the side of the head. Well, you got to bring the wine. All right? How about that? You need a fucking doctor. You need a fucking brain transplant. You need a fucking... You need a fucking soul. Wait. All right, you know, we'll, you know, we'll talk about this for you. You're a pain in my ass. Nothing but... <laughs> That's so well done. Bravo. Nice. Yeah, nice. Nice. <laughs> you can't go wrong with angry Mel Gibson tits. No. They're always yeah. funny, and they actually worked that in very well. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do today. John's a charmer. <laughs> he really is. We have some new submissions, some last-minute submissions, and then I have the songs that we decided were the best that we've already listened to. I want to pull at least one of the new submissions into the finals with these ones that we've already decided are great. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to figure out what's the cream of the crop from the latest batch <laughs> of Stuttering John parody songs. <laughs> and uh, let's see, where, where to start? Oh, here's where I'm going to start. This is called uh, Super Chats by Jim Betts. Now, there was a claymation video that goes along with this. 
It's in the Dabblers Anonymous subreddit. It's amazing. The song, not great, but the claymation that goes along with it deserves something at least. I'm a very famous guy, but sometimes I can't pay my gas bill. Uh, I even pulled my stuff from Spotify, but Neil Young won't call me back. Those guys in D.C. will talk to me. There's just one thing I need. It's the Super Chats, Super Chats, (laughs) I'm super needin'. Super chats, super chats, I'm freaking pleading. Super chats, 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 chats. So you gotta see this because there's a roach playing the bass. The roach is playing the bass part, <laughs> and he's standing there in front of like a city, and then his green screen falls out, and it's all claymation, and it's so well done. Obviously, this person doesn't have expertise in video or uh, audio editing, but the uh, yeah, someone just posted it in the Discord. If uh, if anyone wants to check that out, nice. fucking very well done, sir. I enjoyed that quite a bit. All right, uh, here is, so there's this guy, Myrtle Manus, maybe you know who he is. He's kind of a weirdo, but he did pick a good song for this. Now, this is coming off of a 78, so you're going to hear a little bit of record static and stuff like that. He's got to bear with it here. Wow. <laughs> Something wow. else. That's, that's wow. All right. Here's a, a quick one from Paul Klassen that I enjoyed. Just be careful who you get medical advice from people. <laughs> yes. That was Dr. Steve who put that together. <laughs> <laughs> Clock, I just woke up, had to pick quick pup. After some pints, get in the fight, I will fuck you up. Don't talk about my kid, my daughter that became my son. It's because of this. I drink cool's light for hydration. <laughs> Oh, short that's and sweet. short and sweet. Yeah. Some good jokes in there. <laughs> that that was very well done. Um, all right, this is one, I believe this is uh, an R.E.M. song that we're doing. This came in from uh, Detlef. This one goes out to the Pickwick pub. This one goes out to retired Spanish teachers buying wine at 7-Eleven. Simple thoughts that occupy my mind. This one goes out to the Pickwick pub. Cause life. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Super chat. Energy. <laughs> oh, God. Beer on the balcony. When the chorus of a song is one word, it's hard to make a good parody. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I give them uh, credit for trying. Yeah. That. that was fun. All right. I have two that came in from Dylan Vance, and they're both fantastic, in my opinion. Here's uh... <laughs> Shut up and donate to me. <laughs> I am a relevant, the size of an elephant, and I smell of shit. So shut up and donate to me. Broads are repulsed and afraid of me. So 
<laughs> Shut up and donate to me. I only ever casually drink. Ignore all the beer cans in my sink. My doctor says I'm on the brink of major liver failure, but I still gotta tell ya. I talked to Jay. He says he don't remember. He don't remember me. <laughs> I am a major lush. Don't know how to use a toothbrush. My toilet needs a flush. So shut up and donate to me. <laughs> Bravo. It worked in the unflushed toilet yeah. reference. Oh, Haven't heard shit. that one in the song yet. Very good. Oh, and this one, I have to say, same guy, even better. Well, the south side of Canoga is the grossest part of town. <laughs> Follow the beer can trail and the real bad smell and the toenails that are brown. You'll find bad, bad, bad breath, John. His breath smells like a fat chick's thong. Badder than milk in the sun. He's got hemorrhoids between his buns. <laughs> That was fucking good. Man. Yes, that was. Oh, good. my heart yeah. hurts. Well, I get you, but but very good. Uh, Brian Dewald was sending in a few different uh, songs for us. This is based on Easy E's "Boys in the Hood." Hey, Carl, remember that stupid shit John did back in the day? It's fucking retarded. Yeah, that crazy shit. Hey, John, why don't you put down that beer and come over here and drop a verse for Carl? Yeah. Baby. Woke up late at about two. Just thought I had to be at the Pickwick soon. I considered jerking off to start my day, but I better save the batch in case I get laid. Jumped in my ride to go see the ladies to the Pickwick in my 10 year old Mercedes. Pulled in the lot. Radio bumping, just as I thought, the broad came running. Pulled up a stool, ordered me a pint. My ass settled in for a drunken night. A few pints in, I make my move. Have I told you lately that I love you? And to my surprise, she wasn't even pissed. She leaned over and whispered something like this. I can be a girl if you got some cash. Let's jump in your Mercedes and get home fast. Reach for the blue chew to help my libido. Fuck me. They got stolen in Reno. She's getting pissed. What can I do? I'm not even hard for a minute or two. Pulled up my pants and said, oh, bother. There's cores in the fridge. Let's have another. Cause the beers in the fridge are always cold. <laughs> Talking that shit, my stories never get old. Knowing nothing in life but a beer in my hand. Now pour me another pint. You fucking sycophant. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, John. What am I listening to? Shut up. All right. So it, was, it took a little while to get there, but a valid effort. The beers in the fridge are always cold. <laughs> yes. There it is. All right. This is the last one from the new batch. Uh, this one came in from a lady. Ooh, a lady. Sarah Dunlap. <laughs> I think I know who this is. Yes, I think you do, too. Go, 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 Kia. Impressive. That was fucking impressive. That was really good. Fucking Sarah's got some pipes. She does. So that was the one that I thought would win this round. Do you guys agree? Of the new batch. Of the new batch. What do you guys think? Uh, You got. Fuck. I love that one we just heard. Yep. I also love the shut up and donate. I think the jokes per minute ratio on that one is just. I I would say those ones were my favorite. I like the Violent Femmes one quite a bit. Yeah. I like the Violent Mm -hmm. Femmes one, but I got to go with uh, shut up and donate to me. 
Okay. And, and, and you know what? Throw Sarah in there, too. Yeah. There's yep. no real fucking rules to this. Yeah, <laughs> see? There's the opposite of rules to this. I have no <laughs> idea how we're choosing the winner to Let's this. Let's add some more rules, all right? All right. We'll, we'll play all the finals. Before I do that, I did get a note from our friend Tab. He sent us a voicemail. Ooh. Hey, everyone. I'm Carl. When you submit a, pa- a parody song, be sure to make sure it's only the chorus and the first verse. Don't use a long intro or multiple verse verses or whatever, and then you proceed to make fucking two verses of TNT, a song that has the most obnoxiously long and boring intro of any fucking rock song of all time. Fuck you, Carl. All right. You're making some good points there. You're saying Carl doesn't practice what he preaches. Is that (laughs) what you're saying, Carl? Okay. So we got the stutterer of Deville, which we just heard from Sarah. We got uh, shut up and donate to me. And then let's not forget about John's house. It's a good one. It's a strong one. Welcome to John's house. Here's a box. Have a seat. Have a seat. The Wi-Fi password is Rodriguez3. <laughs> if you're hungry, there's bologna to eat. It's not expired. That's the smell of my feet. I got chicken. I got beer. I got cans. My seasoning cabinet's full of blue chew. I got chicken. It's expired. I got beer. I got cans. You have a problem. I got even more <laughs> beer. He's got beer, can, chicken, bologna, ham, ram, and dog. Ham, ram, and dog. John's got OCD, that's why he's a slob. He's gross. He's got gross. beer, can, chicken, bologna, ham, ram, and dog. Ham, ram, and dog. John's got OCD, that's why he's a slob. <laughs> Wolf down my sandwich, cause I need energy. Do me a favor and write me jokes for DC. I'm gonna go and take down the GQP. He's such a loser. But first, I'm blocking Kumia <laughs> so he can see. I've got fungus. I've got lice. Turning into a monster. I've got dandruff. <laughs> I've got some jackaloon obsessed with no, me. Sure, a foot gonna... odor. I've got trolls. I mean losers. Thousands of people. My moles will find out your name and where you live. Debt, delusion, despair, gout, and his dick doesn't work. John's got ED. So when his batch is wasted, John goes berserk. (laughs) He eats mice, rotting toenails, and he's running out of friends. I'd bet my life on it that he wears the pens. I don't know if you saw my tweet, but you know, I think I you know I got over ten thousand likes and a bunch of like I think a thousand uh, uh, retweets. I removed all my podcasts from Spotify as well, uh, and yeah, I did because because you know why? I don't. I mean, he's killing people. Joe Rogan, just just like you said, he's killing people. I don't want to be on that network that he's going to be out there killing people. I wasn't going to play the whole thing, and I couldn't stop it. I forgot how funny that is. It's really good. The Andy drop is <laughs> yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. It's so funny. Fits in there just right. So that one was good. Let's not forget, uh, we have this one from Roach with the Badge. I'm just a devil and everywhere I go... People know the lies I'm telling. Pay me super jets. My apartment might have rats. That's why they're spraying. There were glory days, but my youth has passed away. <laughs> what will they say about me? When the end comes, I know I was just a deviler. Life goes on without me. Just the dabbler and everywhere I go. Which is- All right. And that is very fun. Yeah. Stink uh, lines, follow me. <laughs> yeah, there's some, some good jokes in that. I want to point out, we talked about it in the bonus show a little bit. John was down in uh, Mexico to do a comedy show. Now, he wasn't the headliner. He was the feature act. And they were. I thought you were going to say waiter. <laughs> <laughs> he was busboy number two. He was um, supposed to be at the Hard Rock, and then he, he made up some story about like permits or something. Yeah. Mexico, you know, there's such oh yeah, they're yeah, so yeah, stingy yeah. about their permits. You know, they have fucking donkey shows next door, but it's like oh, you can't do stand up in here. You know, the but they work. have a certificate of occupancy, so <laughs> go ahead and suck off that donkey, man. So, uh, <laughs> 
So he says that the reason why he couldn't do the hard rock is because of that. And they ended up doing a bikini bar instead, mm-hmm. which someone showed a photo of the inside of this place. I have a feeling they didn't sell very many tickets. You and think? so they moved huh. the bad news because of that. <laughs> maybe you have an experience with that? You think maybe that's the case? Uh, I'm not allowed in titty bars anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, let's not forget Adam Thoreau's masterpiece where he got the dabbler himself to sing the chorus for him. Adam Thoreau! Every room that Vinny is in is a titty bar. Thank you, Sir Ryan Bebros. <laughs> Adam Thoreau with the first super chat of the day. Thanks for the $2, brother. Have I told you lately? I was the head writer at the Kareem Abdul Jabbar host. <laughs> Have I told you? I learned how to read music in second grade. Oh. Uh, um, you fill my heart with beers. Uh, <laughs> my mom is here. I do not go on Reddit. Yes, you do. <laughs> Have I told you lately? My oven's broke. Have I told you? I don't want to run off the batch and, you know, and and, and not have as as much to give. Poor fat losers, but I don't really give a fuck. Matthew Lewinsky, thanks for the five bucks. (laughs) I didn't shower today and I smell like ass. That is true. (laughs) Have I told you lately that there's energy in baloney? (laughs) All right. So that was an excellent one. And then and then there's also this fan favorite that we have to choose from as well. Yeah. Dave from Canada sent this in. Cause Yeah, all I really want is cause. And in the morning it's cause. Then in the evening it's cause. My house is filled with bugs. I like a chick with nice jugs. You need to send more super chats to buy more litter for my cats. My body's covered in stink. I invite my guest out for a drink. Jay Leno once laughed at my joke. I think I'll have another stroke. Planning lawsuits with Popak. Uh, I need Viagra for my cock. Sometimes I stutter my words. Green screen is covered in cat turds. Carl had better watch his back. I got a weird growth on my sack. In third grade, I played the horn. (laughs) Howard gave me some popcorn. The puppet triumphed, sold my bit. Says that my breath smells just like shit Have OCD, can't clean my room Can you come help me set up Zoom? Susanna getting a handy From Adam Sandler in college Who was on the balcony Who was in the cat dish Who was in the hamper Who was blocking my door Who was... And the trolls, they are saying things about my kids. And I just talked to Popak, and we are going to have ourselves a lawsuit. And <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. All right, guys, we have our work cut out for us. John's house. From Tony Muskrat, Just a Dabbler, uh, Coors from Dave from Canada, Adam Thoreau's Have I Told You, The Stutterer of Deville from Sarah Dunlap, and Shut Up and Donate to Me from Dylan Vance. Those are our six finalists for consideration. Kevin, I'm going to start with you. Yeah. What are you choosing as, as your uh, top, top, the, give me top the three. Sh- the, the top three? Yeah, give I me like one, two, and three. The, the, Shut up and dance with me. Number Is one. number one? Yeah. Okay. The Sarah song, number two. Okay. And then the girls song we just heard. Okay. Vinny, same same three. thing to you, my friend. What do you got? I'm going to switch the chorus song because here's what I like about that. Yeah. There's a lot in it. 
Howard gave me some popcorn. Is, is the, the fucking slide. Slide. <laughs> slide. <laughs> that anybody slammed into any of those? <laughs> Agreed. Uh, so for that, I'm putting that song first place because yep. I think it's like really you could use that a lot. Yeah, because it's very funny. It's a good like opening chorus. Everybody knows the song. It it's upbeat. Yep. So I'm going with that number one. Uh, Sarah, musically, holy shit, that's mm-hmm. incredible to do. Mm-hmm. You're still number three. Uh, mm-hmm. Shut up and dance with me is number two. Wow. That okay. One. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Sarah, I still love you. Sarah, there might be a job for you in the Jingles department. Yeah. Uh, At Crubs. the creep off, you I, call me up. <laughs> I got a similar list. So I got the Dabbler Seville number three. Shut up and donate is my number two, but my number one is John's house. I think it's yes. fucking hilarious. Yeah, we're missing John's house and it's, here. It's also very WATP specific. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you got Stutter of DeVille three. Yeah. Shut up and donate two. Yeah. So Coors didn't even make your top three. No. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. What do you think, uh, producer Chris? Yeah, Crows brings up the the Granny's House song. Yeah. But I uh, I don't know where these are at yet. But it's definitely Coors, um, the Jamarmalade thing, and um, Coors the, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. Jamarmalade two. Yeah, and then uh, the Sarah Dunlap Stutter thing. of of uh, Dove- 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 of Doville. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, f- 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 Figaro, Figaro, <laughs> Figaro. Um, wow. Okay. I'm going to go. I got to go John's house. Num- number one. Coors number two and Sutter of DeVille three. So what does all of that mean? You wonder? Well, I think we got to give it to Dave from Canada for Coors, the BC boys parody but frankly i'm really impressed with all of these so yeah they, there were so many good ones we'll yeah, get I mean, some yeah. we'll get some prizes out to everyone yeah, who uh, who who finished in the top three here because these are these are fantastic thank you so much we should do this more often so um i sent you over this beer on the balcony where stuttering john chats with a guy he grew up with in the old neighborhood did you oh, watch yeah, this? danny yeah daddy Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I watched Boomers on the Balcony. I watched it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Holy now, I'm, shit. I put together a compilation I'm going to play first. It's a little bit longer, but the reason why I put this together is because this is a response, Producer Chris, to the bonus show that we did about his book, mm-hmm. Easy for You to Say, where he tells all these stories about his childhood, and I'm going, this is bullshit. This is made up. This is all nonsense. So he has to get his buddy on to prove that all the stories from his book are true and real. So I put together a compilation. He talks about how he liked to get chased, how cops were chasing him on the beach because he was undoing girls' bikini tops, talking about sketching, talking about egging pizza guys, Uh. talking about knock-knock runaway. Remember that? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Uh, so we're experiencing blowback from the knock-knock runaway offense? Yes, and actually, there's a tell in here that tells me I, for sure somebody sent him our episode. Okay. Uh, shitting in the bag. that's off camera that I can't see? Oh, producer Chris doesn't have a camera. Yeah, producer Chris, that. show your face. I'm curious. Does he also have glasses and wood behind him? He does. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, I don't normally do a video show. I'm, just, I'm trying this out. This is like an experiment. Well, maybe you should. This is nice. I'm trying. I'm trying, but I don't want to like scare people away with producer Chris. Just yeah, <laughs> I gotta ease people into that. All right. So anyway, this is this is the uh, the compilation where he goes through every story that he wrote in the book that we went through on that episode. <laughs> Two chapters. No, you would. What do you mean? You guys would knock on my door and go, "Hey, do you want to get chased?" All right, and then we would go get chased. And you're and you're the fat ass who always got caught. <laughs> You know, you know, the girls would chase us all over the place. You know what I mean? But then the cop got involved, and he started chasing us. And guess who they caught? Hey, it's hard running in the, in the sand, you know? <laughs> they always catch Danny. So they caught Danny, get on our feet, and then skitch all down the snowy roads. And then... And then if we got bored, we would try and kick each other off by kicking each other's feet out. <laughs> that we would call the pizza guy, order a delivery, <laughs> and then go on Good God. Danny's Ooh. roof with a dozen eggs. <laughs> oh, Hardy laughs at this. And when the pizza guy would show up, we would just egg him from the roof. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> He's cracking himself up. 
And then the door you bell. heard, everyone heard of ding and ditch or whatever, doorbell ditch. Right. We used to call it a ring and run. But run. we would ring the they doorbell and, and then jump over the door and run the house. And then when they went up on the door, we'd be like, weep. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> a shit in the bag, a brown paper bag. We all did. And, 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 and yeah, I, I go, um, and they ask me, oh, yes, this is the phone company. Please do not pick up the phone because if you do, cause, because we're working on the lines, tell if us you the whole do, somebody on our, our end will get a severe electric shock. <laughs> so if the phone rings, don't pick it up. So then we would call right back, and when they would pick it up, we'd play the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was crazy. Oh, shit. <laughs> He's cracking himself up. Yeah, really? Wow. I, I, can't, I can't imagine anything I did when I was eight that would make me laugh that hard now. <laughs> I think John's body is crying out for help in many ways. <laughs> yeah. uh, I yeah. really feel like his, his he, he grabbed for his heart the last time on that last <laughs> on that last laugh there. He's literally going to be like that SNL sketch where he's like, I'm having a heart. Yeah. <laughs> he's really trying to sell it, isn't that, he? Wouldn't that be great if he just died of natural causes on camera during that? <laughs> <laughs> no! During his happiest moment. Yeah. Meanwhile, Dan looks like uh -huh. he's going to be murdered by Jason Voorhees. He's in a <laughs> barn somewhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, I felt bad. I felt so bad for poor Danny. You know, Danny clearly has never live streamed in his life. Right. Uh, but John spends the first like a good 15 minutes like berating his poor friend who like, you know what I mean? A 15 I have that. minute phone call. I, I have that in clip. advance. <laughs> Yeah, uh, would this have is, solved all of their technical issues. I, I love when John likes to big time people over technology issues because John doesn't understand technology at all. It's been well documented over the years. And if there's one person who doesn't know tech as well as he does, he gets like real pompous about it. You know, and you know, I I wasn't that into fighting in those days, but I hated the fact that I was being bullied. Let me see what a city it is. He doesn't even have a green screen. All right, let's see. What's up, man? Danny, go go on your phone. Go, I go. I put, I put it up in the bar in the Google bar. Go to your email and just click on a link. All right. Come on, my brother. You can handle this. All right, I got it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, what a fucking asshole. Why does this have to be broadcast? Why can't he just, like, mute his shit for a second and call his friend who has no clue, a fellow boomer, yeah, because because yeah. he he actually thinks that he's cool when he does that. Right, he, that he wouldn't be able to big time him. Crows pointed that out when he does his tough guy shit. It comes off so poorly. He doesn't realize he thinks he's like the coolest guy. Like, yeah, look at me. I'm telling this guy God. how to click a link in his yeah. email. Because oh. yeah. that 75 uh. YouTube viewers wouldn't know that he was not the worst person with technology. <laughs> right. Come on, click a link. But real quick though, before we move on, I do want to point out that the tell that we know that John heard our episode, so somebody is feeding him our bonus shows was the fact Ooh. that he called it uh, Ring and Run. He goes, ding, dong, ditch. We called it Ring and Run. He called it Knock, Knock, Runaway. That right. was the term he used in his book. Right. That we go, there's no such thing as Knock, Knock, Runaway. I bet he called it the N-word. Yeah, N-word runaway. Yeah. N-word knocking. Yeah, N-word. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think he was making that up, and now he's... Yeah, he's such a terrible liar. You can see he's like, what am I not supposed to say real quick? Uh, <laughs> yeah, nah, oh, not that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Got it. His brain functions in slow motion <laughs> for everyone to see. Um, but he also is in Mensa, which he'll remind us yet again. <laughs> then they moved the bright kids, the brighter kids from East Plain in to Pickin. Now, of course, you know, as as you all know, I'm a, I'm a Mensa genius. I went to Pickens School. Uh oh, retard alert! <laughs> retard alert, class! I don't know why he's still doing the Mensa thing. Does he really think he's so much smarter than everyone else? Is that was it? Is he joking there? Yeah, I mean, isn't it established that that's a running gag? Nobody, yes. nobody believes that. Nobody believes that. Yeah. Unless the essay stands for sloppy alcoholic. There's no <laughs> organization called Mensa that he's a part of. I was a smart kid. Uh, I, had to, I had to take a different uh, bus to school. Yeah, it's such a weird <laughs> brag because he's talking about first grade where he started going to this different school because he was so smart. Like, No one's smart in first grade. 
You weren't smart then. You aren't now. The way that John t tells or retells these stories, like the way he remembers details from yeah. like 11 years old. What is this? This is elementary school, middle school. He remembers all the names of all the people involved. He remembers all the names of all the streets involved. All the left turn, the right turn, half a mile there. I'm like, it's a I good think strategy. he's autistic. Mm -hmm. I think no. he has Asperger's. He's got like retard strength Asperger <laughs> recollection of of how many years ago these childhood stories. I was blown away. I was like, I can't remember that's shit you should from put when the I was 11. Who could contest this? Well, that's what's interesting, yeah. Chrissy. I picked up on that too. And I got the sense that Danny was just there to nod in agreement. Like there was like yes. a discussion they had previously. That's like, I'm going to tell all these stories about our youth. You just got to agree with everything I say. Yeah. Because <laughs> wouldn't you, if you were my friend when we were seven, and I told some story, you'd be like, oh, God, really? That's what I, I don't remember that. How do you remember that? Who's going to say, you know? no, you're wrong? Or like, I don't remember that, John. I don't know. Yeah. He's just going to be like, okay, yes, and. Yeah, you can pay any homeless derelict in L.A. to sit on you uh, on zoom and be like yeah i remember that that was hilarious <laughs> dan was not contributing any details that no. weren't in the book that john wasn't just regurgitating right oh, wow. and and actually it's funny because at the end i don't know why he does this but he asked danny if he wants to plug anything <laughs> and, and danny <laughs> no is like a, he's like a retired like yeah. blue collar guy yeah. you know he's like yeah uh if you need your driveway plowed <laughs> I, have a, I got a truck yeah. and a plow I, uh, I have an hvac company <laughs> yeah. uh summer's coming up <laughs> and now danny you know tell everybody uh, uh so Jesus what's Christ. going on now with you danny <laughs> what a segue. Not, what do you mean? What am I doing? Retired? <laughs> retired? <laughs> fucking guy's retired. It drives me crazy. You're retired already. Yeah. Yeah, but dude, I had fucking back surgery. Biggest mistake of my life. You know? It's so, hilarious. Actually, it's freaking boring being retired. I got to come up with a hobby, man. I really do. Do you want to plug anything? Yeah. I, I'm not even interested in my life. Why would anybody else be interested in my life? You want to plug your back surgery? What hospital did you have it at? Shout out to the to Dr. Klein. John's wow. so stupid. This is not a guest. This should not have been a show. This is no, like a conversation of two been, friends remembering shit. This could have been a phone call. This, yes. this could have been, if this man is truly your friend, meet up at that bar, that local bar, get together, have like a real hang. I, it feels like he's subjecting the audience. And it's like I, I as a viewer, as a listener, feel like a third wheel because I'm like I have no con. If they should call it exposition on the balcony. Every everything's <laughs> like oh you got a story for this. Oh, leading up to it, and now we were a little bit older. Nothing's in order. No, like the audience, we don't know. It's like unless you're from this very specific area of Long Island. Uh, who cares what these fucking... Who oh, fucking cares? Who cares about any of this? And then oh, you have to pay to watch Beer on the Bell Gate to be a subscriber for this. So let's hear what the perks are to be able to uh, watch this show. Perks. If any of you guys in the chat have a question for Danny, now's the time because <laughs> Holy any God. question you have about our childhood, Danny will answer about his recollection of a young... Stuttering John. <laughs> Why would anyone have a question for Danny? Andy, where were you? I should have been yeah. calling in. I would have paid fat five dollars to ask. Why are you doing this to yourself? <laughs> yeah. He's there to be a fluffer. He's a story fluffer. He's a story fluffer. Yes. Yeah. Danny, is there a gun to your head right now? <laughs> Poor Danny. Poor Danny. And also, he won't let Danny tell any of the stories. You know, <laughs> the, he not. he John has to tell the stories, and then they argue on how to tell the stories, and then and then John will set it up or tell it in his way, and then he goes, "Okay, now tell the story, now do it." Like he's this, remember this, that this, I was the just... fastest kid and I banged the hottest girls. Now tell the story. Do it the way I told you to do it. <laughs> it's so <sighs> sad. It, it's this is this reeks of glory days. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that should have been playing behind this whole episode because it, and every other, you know, every couple of minutes, he's like, we did OK, right? We're doing OK, right? <laughs> We're OK. Oh. I have kids. You have kids. <laughs> We're still OK. We did good for ourselves, didn't we? I mean, you're still married. I'm not. But <laughs> everything's OK. <laughs> <laughs> you have a broken back and I have cirrhosis of the liver. <laughs> oh, We're doing all right. Yeah. Oh, good. He acts like his childhood was the most amazing childhood anyone's ever had in the Epic. history of childhoods.
Get up on a one again. <laughs> 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 she, was a, she was a trooper though. She was great. No, I know. It, it 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 it's but it was never ending, Danny. It's like like our like our like everything was just you know, it, it was just I don't know. Like, yeah, we were I thought we had like you know, it was just an it was all an adventure, you know. It was just <laughs> like you know, and by the way, there's no way any like anybody like there's no way kids would ever do that you know no, no 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 way no way they're the coolest people to ever exist that Danny doesn't happen anymore looks which like part a wouldn't hostage. they do like if you just tune out john and look at danny and look at his surroundings <laughs> yes. there's yeah. like a little bit of light coming through a vent he has this like afraid look on his face yeah, he's I think about Danny to be headed by the <laughs> yeah by a terrorist yeah it's crazy. And like, he's like, me and Danny down by the handball. <laughs> I wanted to play like fucking Paul Simon over it. It was a lot. Well, let's get into I some like more. He was paying this man to be his friend. That's what it's like. We did this, right? <laughs> oh, it's it's worse than that. He makes his friend tell everyone how great his book is. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, Danny, you know, I got to tell you, uh, uh, you are one of my closest friends, and I love you dearly. Did and, and you know you did like my book too, right? Oh, dude, it was awesome. Mm. <laughs> you did like you my know, book, right? So <laughs> sad, Chrissy. What did you ask <sighs> that question? Like, what did you think about my book? Did you read it? Did you enjoy it? You did like I it, right? It was all part of John's plan to butter up Danny for some money so that he can go to DC. <laughs> I think this that's the larger plan is he's just like, We're good friends, right? I'm about to throw me fifty bucks. So I you like this being a guest to- on this podcast, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Chris, you really love WATP, right? This is your favorite oh, time yeah. of the of the week oh, right yeah. now. You're definitely the smartest and the fastest. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, it's I'm funny. concerned about John's health overall. Me too. Me too, for real. Yeah. And it's it's interesting. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, what? Because you got him in the death pool. Yeah. <laughs> That's so fair. So um, you brought up the fact that John has this vivid memory of all these details from when he was a child and remembers these stories, but then he doesn't know that his band played at Danny's wedding. <laughs> oh, God. It, it's amazing that we're still alive. I mean, I love it. No, the band played at the wedding. That was awesome. That was great. It was great. But our band? You played at my wedding, bro. Did we? I didn't even remember that. Yeah, yeah. there was a, I had Lenny Coco on the chimes, like a fifties band, a re, original fifties band, and and you guys did like a like a five song set, whatever. You don't remember? No. <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> Not only was he wow. at this guy's wedding, his band performed at it. He has no memory of it. Yeah. I would have put that in my book if I remembered that. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Damn, that's a pretty, that's a, that's like a real memory. That's like a real life event. And then after that, he goes in and berates the guy because John wasn't his best man, which is not behavior that men partake in. Oh, why no, wasn't I your least... best man? Are we best friends? <laughs> Are we BFFs? Not... Yeah. Well, even if you were, you were there, would you even remember that you were? <laughs> yeah. You should have said you were. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe you weren't the best man because you were fucking drunk and you, no one could rely on you. Possible. Um, so this is getting back to where you were talking about how it just sounds like a conversation that should not be a show. It's just two people no. reminiscing. All right, go ahead, Danny. No, no, no. I'll let you tell this one. Don't All right, so now we're getting... No, no, no. Honestly, honestly, wait, Dan... Honestly, the timeline, because one no, night... Got <laughs> mine first with the car, with the door. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So one so night... You tell us your... okay, yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, God, God, God. I want to hear your version. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? No, you go. No, you go. No, no, you go. All right, I'll go. Wait, no, wait. I'm not going. You're going. Poor Danny. I think we should book Danny on the... On the... <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. We should have him on the show and be like, be honest, was he lying? We should get <laughs> like, Danny on the show. Thinking, How much of that shit did you actually remember? I'd pay Danny to come on the show. All right, we gotta read that's a good that's a good call. We gotta reach out to Danny, Danny and try to get him on the show. Good luck finding him. 
Speaking of getting him on the show, I want to bring on another guest. What? Chrissy. This this what? person hosts a little show you may have heard of called the Michael Gavin Ali Show. Oh, great! <laughs> hey, what's up, Michael? Uh, we can't un- hear un- Unmute yourself, buddy. No, he's great like this. Keep him muted. <laughs> <laughs> he's on a roll. Do you All know right. what I know? I, I didn't send you a clip of this, but like John, every time he's laughing, he truly sounds like he's drowning. Like, did you yeah. catch him gurgling? He always had liquid in his mouth and his throat every yes. time he was laughing. I was like, I feel like he needs CPR. I'm going to throw this man a life preserver. <laughs> no, you're right. It, it's And that's why I left him in that compilation, all of his cracking up, because it's disturbing <laughs> the way he laughs. I, I got to tell you, Carl, this was like pulling out teeth without Novocaine or doing a shitty ass job at a restaurant, being a bus boy, throwing out the trash, washing the dishes and setting up the table. What it else does a so bus boy do? <laughs> Name three more things a bus boy does. They have straws on them. Uh, they don't take your order, and they don't. Uh, speak <laughs> it was just so fucking bad. I, yeah. I just, I couldn't even listen to it. It was just so painful. And it was the, like the you would know. You host shit. your own show. Obviously, you've had amazing guests on there, like Carl from Who Are These Podcasts, and yes. Chrissy Mayer from Chrissy the Chrissy Mayer, Mayer Show. Yes. So you, you would and know. I just like. I just can't fucking stand him at all i I, I just (laughs) did a uh video a uh watch along Mm -hmm. of the howard stern show with stuttering john versus crazy cabbie yes the boxing Uh, match just this uh wednesday with uh my producer chris and i was doing stuttering john impressions (laughs) all day let's hear it in that (laughs) let's hear stuttering uh, john impression i want to hear it michael uh i was a a fierce fighter uh 20 years ago i looked in great shape now i'm fat and uh ugly and i drink a lot of beers i drink a lot of cause spot on uh, everyone does a perfect uh, stuttering john impression yeah. every single person yeah. it's amazing I, I, I gotta tell you this what if uh stuttering john actually got arrested for drinking and driving and if the cop pulled him over mm-hmm. and says and you uh, walk straight and take a breathalyzer, and he's like, oh, uh, we're going to arrest you, and we're going to put you in the cop car, and basically they send him to the police station, and they take a mugshot of him drunk, and then they put his Michael, mugshot. Michael, is this a short story? <laughs> yeah. Where are you going with this? Let's media. role play it. Do you know why I pulled you over? <laughs> <laughs> it would just be funny. That's a funny hypothetical. His yeah. mugshot. Just to see his mugshot on social media would just be hilarious. We Remember see it every Nick week on the Nolte? balcony. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> yeah. You don't Remember need any help Nick with that. Nolte, uh, Remember the Nick Nolte uh, yeah. mugshot sure. of him being drunk? Yeah. Looked like that's shit. John. Yeah. That, that's, that's John on a good day. Yeah, I know. All right, let's let's get into some more of uh, these guys just remembering all the fun times they had together. And then you and me, you and Pat would still, you know, take our bikes to Beth Page. But, oh, and then we would go to Plain Edge Public Library. This is the best. I'd I'd be in my freaking cast. Me, Pat, and Danny then decide that we wanted to get chased by the library security. Oh, God. So then we start because like, remember we you know, we used to play tag in the library, and then the security guy got pissed, and then we would probably you know like scream shit at him, and, and yeah, I don't know if you remember, yeah. but he chased us down the streets. Yeah, yeah, out of the library. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the poor, poor guy, right? Like eighty right? years old, security guard. <laughs> no, but he's chasing us. And I remember his keys are like chinging and chinging and and me you and Pat are running, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> No, I said, Unbelievable. You're right, John. I mean you're the right. shit we did. You know, everything is not an anecdote. You have to discriminate. You choose things that are that are funny or or mildly amusing or interesting. You're a miracle. Your stories have none of that. They're not even amusing accidentally. 
Wow. <laughs> Imagine Perfect. doing a show where you're talking about getting chased by a librarian and cracking up over it. You mean chased? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think he's he does better with someone though. Like, I'd rather see this like sad display with an old friend than like him by himself, like just shouting out the same ten people over and over and begging for money. Like I I prefer this. Uh, honestly, Chrissy, I find this entertaining, but not for any of the yeah. ways that John thinks <laughs> right. we should find it entertaining. Yeah. It, it it's so stupid just to bring an old friend on his show yeah. just for him to back up. Right. The book. That, that was and the whole point of this. Yeah. It was so fucking stupid. It's like I could get a phone call. I can call an old friend of mine and have a conversation. I don't need to put them Prove on it. the show. Prove it, Michael. And... <laughs> <laughs> Prove you have friends. <laughs> That's when you and I started doing the whippets. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Remember them? <laughs> was, everybody, we would get these CO, um, CO2 cartridges. Yes. Wait, wait, hold on. I got to grab a beer. I'm going to do, like, do one right now like, for all time's sake. You put a balloon sake. on the end of this little thing, and you squeeze it, and then it puts, you know, the you know, the gas in this balloon. It would be frozen almost. And then you just suck it. It's like it, it's, it's, it's the nitrous oxide in the dentist, but you would just... Suck it in, and you would get like, like for thirty seconds, you'd be in like La La Land. It was like, it was like the most amazing thing. So we would start doing those. It's like I'm walking on sunshine. <laughs> Are you talking about doing whippets? This, this explains a lot. He's talking about inhaling, killing like, his brain. Like yeah. Helium. And, well, oh, he said helium. he said CO two cartridges, and then he said it was nitrous oxide. So I think he's confused about what he was inhaling there. I'd like to think that he was just inhaling CO two cartridges. Yeah, and right. nothing was happening. <laughs> or air spray, or those air hoses uh, in that uh, nose of his. Yeah. It's it's great. You you get really high for thirty seconds, and then you're brain dead for thirty years. It's great. You really <laughs> you gotta try it. Uh, Not a good advertisement it. for whippets, kids. Don't do it. It's a cautionary tale. Cautionary <laughs> tale about whippets. Um, oh, this is where John loses track of what's going on. So John's getting drunk on this show. And actually, his buddy calls him out near the end of it. I know. Everyone, take a, take a second to <laughs> absorb that. John's getting drunk. Are you okay? <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> so this is a very drunk John losing track of the conversation. <laughs> and then Danny... Oh, what the other thing I wanted to fucking say. Oh, what the fuck was it? Um, oh, I forgot. You know, I hate when that happens. I was going to tell you something. But, uh, Alzheimer's, huh? Yeah, I guess we are. But no, there was something else. Uh, I was talking about the whippets, but there was something else that we used to do. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, uh,. Fuck! I hate when that happens, Danny. Because I was gonna go right into, in, in, you know, in, into something else. But um, damn it! It fucked you. I really fucked you up because it messed up your whole thing, <laughs> your whole, the whole time frame. Yeah, no, 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 no. Because I had the whipping thing, <laughs> and then I was gonna go into something that was a, another funny thing that we would go through. That was a brilliant bit. Um, What's another thing that kills remember, your brain? Remember it. But anyway, um, so condescending to Dan, <laughs> and I, I wish yeah, I was I'm... on the other end of this conversation because he left so many openings there for Dan to be like, "Oh, that time we had gay butt sex with those yeah, guys." Right. <laughs> yeah. He said so many funny things right there. Just, okay. What was I going to talk about? What was the other thing we used to do? Danny should have trolled him back and been like, "You know, John, you left out you left out this really funny story. This wasn't in your book. Remember the time we both sucked this guy's dick? Like you could have said anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, come on. Now why wasn't that in your book? Remember when you sucked that guy off for coke and then it wasn't even coke? <laughs> and then exactly you did it again it after my wedding when you guys were done playing your final song. We went out back. We sucked off the cake. If I blow this guy, I get CO two cartridges. <laughs> CO two. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but seltzer water for me. <laughs> All right. This is John talking about where he got his comedy chops from, which, again, oh, yeah. I'm calling bullshit on oh, this. Oh, God. <laughs> but uh, what would happen, and this is where I think I got some of my comedy chops, is that we would all hang out the handball courts, and we would all get a six-pack, because that's all we needed in those days. 
I, I mean, now I can go through a six pack and you know be completely fine. But <laughs> but we would all <laughs> yeah, we would all end up in a circle, and then just for the like an hour or two hours, goof on each other's mothers, you know, goof on each other like, and everybody took a turn of getting abused. It was just like right. that's what we did for fun. That's it. Yep. And you know it's funny because even still now, you know, you come into town, it's just it's it's like we pick right it back up, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah it never stops. What's he talking about? He's the worst at ball busting in the world. He threatens to sue you if you goof on him. What is he talking about? <laughs> uh, do you? I, I gotta ask you a question, Carl. Do you think uh, his comedy stuff is a gimmick so he could be noticed? What I'm do you just mean? Like I'm so. Ki- no, because he says he's a comedian. Yeah. And is it just a gimmick that he's just telling everybody and he's not really a comic at all? No, he thinks he is. I think he thinks he is. Yeah. Michael, I don't, I don't think, think he'd be able to hold on to a line that long. He, he says just, it never he stops. He's talking about his consumption of six packs. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be okay, yeah. And uh, I, I forget what clip it was, but he said something really funny. He's like, back in those days, it would snow and it would stick for a few days. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Like he's, yeah, he's trying to say the snow has changed. Like, oh, back then the snow would hang around. Not now. It's like, you live in LA <laughs> he's talking about now, sketching. John. Like, yeah, like everything was different in this make believe world that was his childhood. Everything was different than what it is now. I was popular. I was funny. Everyone thought I was oh, cool. It was totally different. <laughs> I didn't drink that much. <laughs> we all sat in the same he started paper drinking bag. At Eleven years old, it sounds like. Yes. That's not good. This is Danny calling him out for being drunk at his show. No. All right, Danny, but I've, I've drank my full beer. That's all you had, and you're fucking wrecked. I'm not wrecked, but I but I only have four beers on the um, you know, on the beer on the balcony. <laughs> on right, camera, I four beers in about an hour. And then I slowed down after that. <laughs> I, I got bullshit on that one. Everybody, everybody, do, nobody believes that. Do you usually slow down your drinking or does it usually speed His up? His body slows down. I think he <laughs> say that. His body starts to shut down. Yeah, I call bullshit on that one. <laughs> so this is funny because after he says goodbye to Danny, and this is how you know he's just destroyed like i think it was kaya was talking about this that this is irreversible damage he's done to himself he gets <laughs> real teary-eyed and emotional about talking to danny for the last hour thank you very much that was the beer on the balcony with one of my closest friends in the world that will always be one of my closest friends in the world that i've known since i was seven years old and uh we are still good buddies and I think that's a testament to the both of us. I mean, you know, I don't know anybody. I don't know that many people that still maintain a friendship with those that are, you know, like those that were your friends at such a young age. And yet we are still fucking buddies. And it's just a great thing. Danny is one of the nicest, greatest guys that I've fucking ever met. And and I love him, he, just like a brother. I mean, he's a brother to me. He got the, he got the I love you, man. Um, <laughs> live on his show. I don't know what anybody haven't mentioned yet is that enough. is John is wearing his own podcast shirt to do yeah. his own podcast. Yes. He only like, owns four shirts, Chrissy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you want him to do. He's, like he's, like got... he's constantly advertising. He's advertising the show he's doing while he's on it. It's John Goodman from The Big Lebowski, it looks like. Yeah. Well, I pulled this clip and I decided not to keep it. But at the very beginning of the show, he asked people to donate to his PayPal or Venmo. And it's like, this is the show behind the paywall. These are people who already pay for your show. Oh, no. And you start out by asking them to pay dead. for it? He must, he must uh, need uh, to double the money. for. Uh, oh, he, for he definitely pass. needs to double the money. <laughs> and then double it again and then double it three more times after that. <laughs> He's not doing well. <laughs> Uh, two more clips I have on here. This is just a quick story about when Danny came out to visit Stuttering John out in L.A. and uh, talking about his motorcycle. No, I have mine. I, it just, you know, uh, uh, the battery's cold. I mean, it's shot because, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I don't ride as much as I should. Yeah, yeah, I know. I hear you. 
Maybe. You know, but but you know, but I love it. One of these yeah. days, maybe you'll come out, and then we'll I go for a run. I told you. How about the time you came out and fucking fucking I, like I'm having a party, Danny and his, Danny and Don fucking take my Harley and. And they disappear for like fucking six hours. I'm like, where the fuck are they? <laughs> and then you, oh, oh I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And then you show up like fucking seven or eight o'clock at night. What? <laughs> <laughs> so drunk. <laughs> so he, so Danny, w- like, ran off with his motorcycle. I, I guess <laughs> I didn't understand that story either. He's very drunk at that point. Well, if you wow. had a choice He's between hanging out with John or riding a Harley, you yeah. would opt for the Harley. Agreed. He wasn't clear about it, but he was very mad. He's like, I don't know what the timeline was or how long it was. <laughs> I'm just mad. I'm just mad about it. This is the most cringe part of the entire show. And this is John remembering a song he came up with 45 years ago. And let's see if, if him and Danny could sing it together. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I remember once, Danny, when... I remember when we slept out in your backyard and this song comes to my head because you and I, you know, Pat and Gary were sleeping. And, right. and then you and I, now I'm going to sing this for you and let's see if you remember it. I remember it. All right. I, I don't in my John, head. Oh, John, 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 the leprechaun went to school with nothing on. Dan, Dan is the man. Gary is contrary. Pat, Pat, as a matter of all your crackers. That's awesome. <laughs> it doesn't look like a person at the end of that. Oh, it looks yeah. like a. <laughs> If spitting yeah. image did a puppet uh, of stuttering John, that's what that. Is. I, I learned that there's a sliding scale of what awesome means. <laughs> yeah, it's subjective. He wants to live. He knew that song it... so well, like he had, like he sings it all the time. Yeah. All right, I'm going to share something. I hope this works. I'm, I'm experimenting with a lot of things right now. This is a video that somebody found from. He did this March of 2020, and this is amazing. If you look closely at his shirt, on his left side, a cockroach walks up his shirt as he's no. as he's podcasting. If you're no. watching, it's going to be on your no right. No way. Yeah. Right by the collar. Yeah. So oh my hold on a second. All right. Welcome <laughs> to the world famous Stuttering John shirt. podcast. God. I don't know what happened. You know, I have right my buddy right Vince. Headphone. Wait for it. He's really trying to help me, but. He's got all this okay, new there we software, go. rendezvous, <laughs> blog talk, <laughs> and he's trying really hard. It's not his fault. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> I fucking love it. Any oh. doubt, any doubt has been removed. <laughs> I just said the one cockroach that one time. It's my co-host. He, he looks down, he's like, he's like, Randall, I'll feed you after this. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Just go back oh, to your little bed. That's great. <laughs> Michael, you said you had a big announcement you wanted to make on the show today. You're gay. Okay. Okay. Oh. Uh, so I am doing a watch along of the Howard Stern shows with uh, Hughesy, Adam Hughes. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do uh, Angry Black versus Crazy Cabby uh, in May. So this year, we're going to be doing a lot of watch-alongs of Stuttering John, Artie, and many of the others from the Howard Stern Show. Does Husey know he's doing this? Has Husey agreed to this? <laughs> Does he uh, know? Yes. Okay, good. Just want to make sure. So uh, <laughs> he was supposed to come on uh, on Wednesday to watch the Flunky versus the Junkie, but I was doing uh with uh producer chris and i was just doing a lot of john impressions i don't I'll like that he has a producer video. chris and that he does yeah. john impressions i know it's fucking very me confusing it's okay, very wait confusing. michael do it again do your john again uh i i i uh faced uh crazy cabbie 20 years ago okay. and i looked <laughs> the best in shape all right ever. all right all right. Well, guys, Shuli made the trip here just to be on WATP. That's the only reason why he's here in Rochester. No, he's New York. here to do two more shows at Comedy at the Carlson. Oh, tonight. that's right. I forgot about that. So the reason why he's here, of course, is to talk about our friend, Stuttering John. <laughs> Did 
Yeah. Everyone's stealing Croge's bit. Ah, I say it is a it is a catchy tune, it's isn't it? It is infectious. I agree. All right. It actually makes me look forward to hearing Stuttering John's <laughs> voice when I hear it. <laughs> oh, really? You don't want to hear him just saying uh, W A T P W A T P. All right. One. Let's get into what's going on with Stuttering John and MSCS Media. They, we put a ton of clips when we did the bonus show this week, but I saved a few because they were talking about Shuley. Now, Shuley, you and your friend Vince, the attorney, yes, did a show yes. about John and Tommy. Yes. Where you kind of pulled some clips and broke it down. Yeah, it yeah. was fun. I enjoyed yeah. it. It was yeah. pretty good. I loved it. So Tommy, at the end of the show, now this is a drunk John. We're two hours in. Well, first of all, I love that, like... The only fan interaction that John has with fans is on a pay purpose. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. Like, you have to pay for him to be on your show. You have or, to. Yeah. You know, there's no other way to communicate with him unless he can take something from you. Well, unless you're a stutterer, because he did explain that he cures stutterers. He's better than any speech uh I don't even know what the term is. Speech therapist. Right. He, he doesn't know the term either. <laughs> <laughs> He's never met with one. Right. But he saved people's lives and Dude, he helps people with it's their It's called stutter. aversion therapy. Parents take their stuttering kids to look at his apartment and go, you want this to be your future? <laughs> Fucking talk right. Yeah. <laughs> Save people's lives. Here's a cockroach sandwich. Is yeah. this what you want? You want this? <laughs> so I've just been getting hit up on social media. Everybody's like, he's talking shit. He's yeah. doing this. And I'm like, All you right. watch it yet, I didn't right? watch a second of it. I knew I was coming here. Well, peek your eyes at the screen right over here, sir. I said, I'm saving all this for Let's for check Carl, it out. And let's give John his worst nightmare, my attention. <laughs> okay. What a fucking mess. His worst nightmare Surely. is lice shampoo, actually. <laughs> you did nothing at the Stern Show. You were nobody. Nobody gives a shit about you. And your fucking partner, this fucking hack attorney, Vincent. Now, Tommy, I told you, these guys decided to, like, cut your show up, what, like five times and trash the both of us? And then they got, they actually got views, right? <laughs> Keep going. First of all, <laughs> the only way she could get attention <laughs> is by talking about centering John. <laughs> I feel like that whole opening rap is him in the mirror to himself yeah. every morning. Yeah, you you just take show. out my name, yep. and it's just going, "Good morning, loser. <laughs> You've done nothing." So this is the guy who earlier in the show didn't know who Richard Christie was. Yeah, that was fun. Had no idea who Richard Christie was, but he knows your role on the Howard Stern show all the years he wasn't on the show. The guy goes, you know Richard? And he goes, Jeff the Drunk? <laughs> Fucking, I'll play that clip because it's just funny. Fucking we play this idiot. on the bonus, but it's worth checking out again. Can you do a Richard impression? I miss him like hell. Who? Richard, Crazy Richard. I don't remember Crazy Richard. Richard? You know, you remember Richard? No. He was like the hick. He was like the hick. You mean Jeff the Drunk? No, not Jeff the Drunk. Richard. I don't know. He was he was like Kill Bill. He was funny as fuck. I, th I think I was I, th I think it was gone by. Maybe, then. maybe you were. Oh, yeah. You were gone. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, you've, you've been gone for a while. He's buddy. Gone, <laughs> You're out of it. Does this guy even know who he's interviewing? Is Stuttering John known for his impressions? Like, yeah. I don't, I what don't a question! <laughs> I know from this anus faced man. <laughs> Like and and let's let's get real here. I'm doing five shows this weekend at a, at a top notch comedy club, and this guy is flying out for a twelver, you know, or driving out yes. to this fucking guy's house because there's a twelve pack involved. Correct. Like that's his fucking that's his finish line that he wants to cross. Just tell Dante to call me, John. Would you know where John? So this is in Florida. You know where John is staying? At his house, right? Scott, guy, the engineer's house. Oh, of course, because Scott hasn't Scott. had enough shit in his life. <laughs> This guy can't even get a hotel room. He, He's got to he, stay with Scott the Engineer. I mean... And it, he's like, I hooked him up with a great gig. I hooked up Scott. I, I give back. That's what, he's that's sleeping what he on saying. the cold side of Scott's bed now. <laughs> I love Scott. I love him. I love Scott, but I would sleep in a fucking box on the street before I'd say, Scott, move over. I'm roomy. Are you coming fucking in kidding night. me? John walked into a place. This place smells great. There's yeah. like 11 layers of cigarette tar. 
He really is Belushi in that in that uh, bit, the house guest that wouldn't yes, leave. Yes, right. You guys mind if I make some collect calls? <laughs> it just fucking walks right in. All right, there's more to this. Because for some reason, so I don't think John's... And we weren't shitting on Tommy, by the way, in, in our video. We were actually complimentary to Tommy. You were. But now... Well, it's funny because... John hasn't even watched this thing. He doesn't even know what it is or how it works, as he makes very clear. Well, I love that he goes, they they cut your video f- five times. Yeah. He thinks that you guys did five videos Yeah, based on this MSCS. He, he breaks down like it's a did. robbery. And the an guy's so fucking drunk, he thinks he's on an alien spaceship or something <laughs> sitting there talking to this guy. <laughs> like, he doesn't know what this is. Are we going to go back to Earth soon? <laughs> and I, love, I love how serious he is. He goes, may I have the room to talk about a nobody? <laughs> Surely. <laughs> you know, why are you then fucking trashing this guy? You know, I mean, I don't understand. Oh, come on. Would you... But I didn't know that it went on for five fucking, you know, they did five shows on it. And here's the one thing. Five shows? We didn't do five I, I, shows. I don't know how many. I, it was more than one. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't okay. know exactly. They got a lot Whatever. of time on their fucking hands. I think if we did one show. I think he did one show. That was it. Yeah. I mean, were there five clips? I don't, uh, I don't maybe. Know. Yeah, maybe that's what he's getting confused. And I got news for John. I put zero work into <laughs> that show other than watching what Vinny cut up yeah. and goofing on everything. That's actually something clip. that John can relate to, actually. Doing yeah, zero exactly. work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just sat there. <laughs> he's like, I, what else did you do? It's yeah. a podcast. Of course it's zero work. I just what do sat, you mean? I sat there and let bugs crawl on me. <laughs> <laughs> like a professional. <laughs> like a pro. All right. <laughs> He talks more about your relationship, yours and his relationship. <laughs> oh, yeah, because yeah. that goes back years. I have never met Shuli until I tried interviewing him, and the pussy wouldn't even talk to me, and I tried to interview him, and he called security on me. He called security? Uh, yeah, uh, and, uh, you know, I don't, look. Called I, security over what? Hey, bring because him I was asking, I was trying to ask him some stuttering John questions, because, of course, I figured out, where they were staying, because so you call fucking security. Bring him on. Have him come yeah. Hey, what, what's his name? Yeah. Shuli. Yeah. Shuli. Hey, come on on, yeah. man. And then oh, the security okay, came Sarger. to me <laughs> and my producer, and we're like, I, I don't know, dude. You know, you, you, we were just asking questions. You know, I mean, wow, you know, riveting. we didn't do anything that is wrong. As long as, I mean. Last I checked in America, we didn't do anything wrong. I thought this was America. Huh? Isn't this America? And I the manager. <laughs> the manager's response was, sir, we don't allow vagrants in the hotel. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I mean, surely, though, to be honest with you, man, I would have done the exact same thing. If a fucking man with stink lines and a microphone <laughs> came at me, I'd call the goddamn Marines. I mean, would call security. A few things. First of all, He's legit a whack packer now. Yes. His speech, mm-hmm. his cadence, he's got this speech defect now. Forget the stutter. Yeah, it's not the stutter anymore. It's, yeah, it's, it's something else. It's just this booze and yep. pills and whatever the fuck else is going on. He's a mess. That's number one. <laughs> yeah. Number two, at that time, believe me when I tell you, there is nothing more than I would have loved to have done to annihilate him in the lobby of that hotel. <laughs> right. But I was I was corporated up, man. I'm yep. working for the show out there. This was a big LA trip. They didn't want any fucking problems. And and he's like, I, I love that he goes, and of course I figured out where they were. He also figured out where we were broadcasting and hung out in the alley with speech impediment <laughs> yeah, man and Melrose Larry Green. <laughs> out by the dumpster. Yes. <laughs> where the real party was. Literally going, Hey, get Gary to come out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who's that? Jeff the Drunk? Some guy oh, from the Richard? kitchen named Gary comes yeah. walking. I was like, did you want me? What's going on? <laughs> and we were literally back there in the back going, Stuttering John's in the alley. And people are laughing about they it. Are. They're laughing. I mean, he's going, they're scared. They're scared. The funniest thing is, is that this is what he thinks is his best material when he goes and asks people questions. Like, he wants to go to D.C. Right. And do this with politicians. Right. They're going to respond the same way you did. So he comes up to me in this <laughs> lobby, and I remember this because he was, he was, he was uh, like, hammering Twitter while we were out there. Mm-hmm. And he kept using this one line on Twitter, and he even, like, retweeted himself. And he comes up to me, and that's 
That's the opening question. Oh, the jump thing, the shark? Yes, yeah. something about jumping the shark. Yeah. How do you feel that John Hine, yeah, and now, now he's on a show that jumped the shark? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Great joke, John. Come on. Killer opener. <laughs> and right there, I, I was... What I are was, you supposed to say to that? A good one? I, like, so okay. I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. If I talk, somehow I'm going to be in trouble. So I'm like, just get security and get him the fuck off. Now, the very first thing he said at this part is he says, I've never met Shula. Right. Let me tell you a little story. So when John was answering phones. Can I stop you for one second? You told me this last night. It's so funny because I came home, checked my email, and someone sent me in. This is from the wrap-up show. Yeah. And I'm not going to play the whole thing because you're going to tell the story. But it's just so funny how someone sent this over to me. As a caller, I was calling into the show when John was working. And and um, there was an incident where when John would go on the road, he'd bring this videotape with him. And it had. Yeah. So it's so, so funny because you told this story like years and years ago on the wrap up show. Back when we could just tell shit. About stuttering John. But yeah. please. CP. Please tell the story because. What was this tape? Because people, well, we have to remember that stuttering John was always a call screener. Yeah. For as much airtime as he got and the other things that he used to do, he was a call screener. He and, acts like he was like a co host. And in his opinion, I may have done nothing, but they literally gave you nothing yes. to do other than <laughs> a monkey's job, you know? Uh, so. He used to go on the road and, you know, leech off of Artie and do stand-up. And by yeah. stand-up, I mean he would put – he'd had this VHS cassette that, that would run about 10 minutes long of his best interviews on the red carpet. Nothing to do with stand-up. Mm-hmm. Also, nothing that he wrote. Right. Okay. But that's his first 10 minutes. Then he goes up and does a fucking, you know, wobbly, hacky seven minutes and walks around and goes, I got 20 minutes. You know, I do 20 <laughs> minutes up there, sometimes 30. <laughs> Right, <laughs> if I'm feeling it. So I'm in town. Or local. the tape jams. Yeah. I'll do thirty. Yeah, yeah. Dude, how pissed off was he when DVD players came out? Oh my god. <laughs> so I'm I'm local in Vegas. I go out to the show. Uh, I I tried to get stage time. He said no. You, I think his thing was like, I don't think you're ready yet for uh, <laughs> for this crowd. Get you the know, fuck well, out of here. He said that. I swear to God. Jesus. So I he watch, knows talent, Vinny. Yeah. So I watch I watch him fucking. You know, limp through. I watch Artie crush. Then the show's over. A couple, you know, day later they leave. I get a call from John, the guy who never met me, calls <laughs> me and says, "Hey, I left that videotape at the hotel." Oh, sure, that's half his act. <laughs> oh no, yeah. he needs that. He's panicked. <laughs> yeah. Not only is it half his act, but it, I don't think Howard knew that he had this, you know, right. sizzle reel. Right. That's all like that Howard Stern he, show. That's show. all Howard Stern show. How shit. funny would it be if he came out on stage the next weekend and was just like, "I was going to show this tape," so I, I walk up to this celebrity and I ask him this crazy question. You got to see it, Billy Crystal. Trust me, it was great. <laughs> it, was it, went, great. it went a little something like this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so like I think he was more worried about that than losing the ten minutes of time. Yeah, is is him getting in trouble? Okay. Rightfully so. So yeah. he begs me. He says, you know, see if you can get this tape. So I go down. I know the hotel is the Palace Station. I go down, and I start fucking begging people. I say he was in this room. Can you please check? Blah blah blah. He left it in the room. Sure enough, they come back with the video. I get it back. I send it to him, and then like a month later. They're on the air talking about John forgetting shit at shows. Yeah. Doing whippets and forgetting stuff. He forgot his money at a show or whatever. Yeah. So I go, perfect segue to tell this story. And I call in, and I get put on hold, and they go to break. And during the break, John picks up the phone. He goes, uh, uh, Julie, what, what are you doing? <laughs> and I go, wow, I was going to tell that story about you forgetting the tape. Yeah. And he goes, oh, really? Really, dude? After everything I've done for you? <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. I've done for you. I'm like, you mean put me on hold when I call in with something good? That's what you've done for me? It ain't stage time. You told me I wasn't ready. Yeah. So you ain't doing that for me. And I was and I was so pissed at him. And I just go, you know what? I'll just talk to Will or Gary and yeah. I'll just give him my stuff. And he immediately was like, uh, no, 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 it's all right. Because he just didn't want them knowing about this video. Yep. Hundred percent. Yep. So you know he was, but he knew me. He knew he used to sit there and go. He loves your stuff. Keep calling in. He loves your stuff, Julie. So he knows. He's wow. Just, yeah. He's got some words for you now. Yeah. What's but going? you know he was a coward, and Vince has called him out for being a coward. Like like he doesn't, you know, like he runs to security. 
He ran, he ran to the front desk and said, please call security. This guy's bothering me. I thought you were going to tell me he went in there with like a baseball bat or something. No, I just had a microphone trying to ask him some questions. Uh, and it's fucking ridiculous, bro. I've never worked with the guy. I've never had a problem with the guy. I've never even trashed a guy. <laughs> the only reason that I was interviewing him because he was the only one that we found. At the hotel, he was silly enough to sit right by the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> silly. They, then he went around to the bar. They were all there. He's like, in, he's insane, dude. Yes. He's yes. insane. I've never even trashed the guy. I never even he, knew the guy. And he wouldn't answer my question about whether or not the Howard Sturgeon jumped the shark. What an asshole. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking right now to see DMs from him. Right, that well, I while have. you're looking, I have one more clip from him talking about you. Yeah. And uh, Julie, this is gonna hit pretty hard, so I wanna I want you to brace for this one. Sorry, I just read a DM from him. Why are you such a pussy? The guy who never said anything bad to me. Well, Go let's ahead. call him and let's talk to him. <laughs> I'll tell him why. Yeah. First off, we have too much Sergeant John on the show already. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need him actually on the show. <laughs> I need to curate this. Julie's a nobody. Nobody knows who he is. And you know, I mean. You know, he's obviously jealous, you know, and, but just to trash. Either of us. Yeah, like, why? But that's Vince. That's this hack attorney that, you know, that's his idea, like, because he's trying to be, like, controversial. And, but he doesn't understand that you don't trash, at least as far as. He and I, I thought he was my friend. I would never think that he would do a show and start trashing me. But he did, you know? See, now, I, I wouldn't say he was trashing you. I would say he was breaking your balls. Thank you, Tommy. Check out the big brain on Brad. <laughs> You're a smart motherfucker. That's right. My hack attorney, Michael Popak, says <laughs> yeah. we have a case. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so he hasn't seen it. He knows nothing about it. No, and even and he Tommy's we're doing a series on this. Right? Like, he yes, we're he doing that's a your whole show format. Now. A mini series on John. We yeah, did, that's my show format, not did, Julie's. We did one episode, and quite frankly, to quote Orson Welles, under protest. I wasn't a hundred percent wanting to do it, but I said, "Fuck it, let's do it." Well, I like though that at the end, Tommy's like, "Well, you know, they're probably just like busting our balls," you know. He's like, "No." They're trashing us, and it's because Vince is a fucking I asshole. thought Tommy did a masterful job of interviewing John, especially in the condition that he oh, was. Oh, John got you, wasted. He has the speech of someone who is being fed pudding all yeah. day long. That's <laughs> that's what I hear. When I hear him to I never want to I never want to And then as soon as he stops talking, here comes the airplane right in your mouth. Here's your tapioca. I Jeff, think you meant funnel. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff the it's Drunk not... is a better broadcaster yeah. than Suttering John at this point. Those two should team up. They There's really should. That would be funny. Welcome to the show. What's up, fuckers? <laughs> All right. Here's a scenario for you. Yeah. Jeff the Drunk's been doing a show with Suttering John for a few months. Sure. And he thinks that John's drinking is getting out of control. Sure. And he has to have a serious conversation with I like... him off the air. <laughs> hey, but hey, can we... I'll be Stuttering John. Sure. Okay. Hey, uh... I know we're having fun, but can we bring the room down a little bit? I, shut, shut, shut the shut the fuck no, up, John. This is, listen, my, this is my show, John. <laughs> this is a little something called tough love. <laughs> I think you might have to pump the brakes a little bit. I'm just drinking the hydrate, you know, like coarse lights. It's not even any alcohol in these Listen things. to me. I've shit myself. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> You've upset me again, John. I can't perform without my silver bullets. <laughs> and uh, to quote, you know, to go back to John's opening quote, which is, "I'm a nobody. Nobody knows me. Less people know you, dude. I've seen the views. I've seen the numbers. <laughs> it's not going well. Less people know you." All right. <laughs> I want to add in since we're talking about Centering John, yeah. a guy that everyone who follows Centering John knows about. Sale underscore D nineteen seventy. Love this dude. Oh, Sale. Love it. What's happening, buddy? What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm I am doing well. So I'll just <laughs> give looks a... like uh, Anthony, my uh, <laughs> my uh, opener. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me just say, let me just say, Shuley's the best. He freaking's the best, man. Thank you, Sal. I'm a big fan, dude. Agreed. 
Big fan. Let me give a quick background on Sal D. So Sal D, we used to think, was stuttering John. Because he would go on Twitter, <laughs> and if there was a big thread that everyone was looking at, he'd go on there and put people should check out the Stuttering John show. You know, no matter what, how tragic the conversation was, he'd always so we're like, this must be John's sock account right. going on to promote John's show. But it actually was this guy that we're talking to right now, Sal D, who I believe was a fan of Stuttering John. Is that correct, sir? You know, I yes, I was a fan of. Funny that you said it, Stuttering John and Jeff the Drunk. <laughs> <laughs> They're both great. The mega powers. <laughs> <laughs> I told you our Q rating's going up. <laughs> People know us, dude. <laughs> they really should team up. They really no should. No joke. That would be great. <laughs> Maybe I'll just do a show. Maybe we should just do a show as John and, yes! and, and uh, I'll do that. Jeff. Yeah. Put it on the creep off feed. They made five episodes <laughs> of me <laughs> and Jeff. So, Sale, um, I heard you on Cardiff Electric Show. <laughs> and you said some very interesting things, which is why I asked you to come on here and talk about it a little bit. Right. You and our, our friend Hockey Puck, Hockey Canada Sean, have incriminating audio of Stuttering John that you're waiting to unleash to the public. Is this correct? Uh, I guess I would say I've heard some incredible stuff. And yeah. You know, quite honestly, it's like, why isn't this out there? That was always my, my question. Like, pump it out there. And from what I understand, it's all on hold right now to see basically how this guy is going to be coming up. Is this guy getting anywhere? Almost like, you know, let's hold on to it. There's really no reason to release it right now. Also, is there's, you know, some legalities that we're making sure that you can release this stuff. You know, nobody wants to get sued. Everybody wants to make sure, you know, they're getting things done correctly. And, yeah, that stuff's it's out there. I've heard it. Am I in possession of it? I can't. I can't really Hockey say puck. right now. Hockey puck has it, right? Uh, um, sounds right. So, sounds like that might be the case. So you're interesting because you've been on Twitter yeah. recently telling John like you're you're actually uh, asking him to sue you because you would like to have a lawsuit going with Stuttering John. You you think that that would be fun? Every fan does, really. <laughs> For what I do, what I do for a living, you know, I I don't want to put it out there. Um, I am really pushing John to follow through with what he says. I would love to get a cease and desist order um, because when you get a cease and desist order, it opens up the floodgates to respond legally. So yes. I haven't received one, and I urge John. John has my phone number. I can give him my address. I would love for him to send me a cease and desist because. It. Again, for what I do for a living, I would love to follow through with that and bring John right to the right to the gutters. And that's why a lot of the stuff hasn't been released. It's because wouldn't it be great to release this in a public forum other than Twitter? Sure, well, but it's a tricky time right now because, you know, you can't cancel nothing. So <laughs> you kind of got to wait yeah, for the guy exactly. to get something. Well, and then... didn't he half cancel himself when he pulled himself off of Spotify, right. the yeah. idiot? <laughs> well, I will tell you, something did happen this week. Oh. And Suttering John has once again threatened to sue yours truly. Oh, I'm texting the great <laughs> my t attorney Michael Popak was going to come on today. <laughs> to talk about how the oral arguments went in my <laughs> oral lawsuit arc. with Sirius XM. And Spoiler he sent me the link well. to it. And uh, so he's going to come on Saturday at 12.15 uh, to come on and just tell you guys how that's going. And also I have to deal with him because, um, you know, certain people are posting my beer on the balconies, you know, on... <laughs> Sites on their own shows, those are behind the paywall. That's copyright infringement. So I got, you know, I got to talk to him. Thank you, counselor. I, I might have to sue, which is fine. I have no problem suing. I watch the Batman on my laptop. Go fuck yourself, yeah, John. Yeah, he does. I got no problem suing. Every problem you have comes from <laughs> suing. What are you talking about, dude? So at noon today, Listen, I, I would never. It costs money. It costs money to sue somebody. All yes. right? I don't. I don't. I don't do anything like that unless I'm getting paid. And let me tell you something, Popak, whoever, he's not suing anybody. He's not going to drive himself to a courthouse for depositions or nothing. 
This is all. He ain't even coming land on his fucking John show Park. on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you me? Yeah, he's, spo- he's supposed to be Thank on with him you. right now. Thank actually. you. I, how much you want to bet he's not on? I, I, we'll see. I guess somebody in Discord find out. Someone I guarantee find out. you. He, he's running late. Uh, he said yeah, he'll he's be. On, he's actually on right now. Oh, all right. He is on. Okay. So this is kind of fun. So he's threatening yeah. to sue me because, and I, it's great. He goes, he's using my beer on the balcony. So I was behind a paywall, which a, it's not because he doesn't know how to put something up unlisted. He's yeah. such an idiot. He puts it out public and then he takes it down. And what a moron! You should be. You should want the everyone to share this fucking piece of shit. Right. Well, it, what's great is that no, he really shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope. Half of his subscribers are fans of WATP. Of course, for sure. It, it's not even up for debate. They said these are NASCAR fans. Absolutely. They're there for the crash. Yeah, of course they are. Some of them want to see this guy win. So for some reason, John thinks that it's okay if I use clips of his show as long as they're free clips. But if they're clips of shows he charges for, I can't use them anymore, which is retarded. Welcome to that's John not, Logic. Yeah, that's how that works at all. <laughs> and then he goes, I talked to Michael Polpak, and he agreed with me on that. Oh, really? The attorney who wants you to work with him agreed? Yeah, you can yeah John, have sure. a legal issue? <laughs> yeah, no yeah John. I got to go, though. I got to go. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds right. Yeah, and my, my dentist wants to pull teeth out of my mouth. Go yeah. figure. I, I can't believe it. Any I chances? believe the oral arguments of Stein's home. <laughs> and this is a guy who back when he had a show with Royce that was actually produced and decent, he was playing Howard Stern clips from Sirius XM, oh, which is behind that, a paywall. But that's okay, <laughs> that's right? That's okay when John does it for oh, some okay. reason. So I got an email from YouTube at noon today because John sent them a note trying to get my videos taken down. Dear Mr. YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dear Mr. Tube. (laughs) All right, so this is the note that he sent to YouTube. It is my show, which is unlisted and behind a paywall. I charge money for this material. Nobody is allowed to use my work that is behind a paywall ever without my permission. This person that is stealing it, using it to make money, that is copyright infringement. How dare he say his work? His work. His work. Shame on you. He is using my sloth. Yeah, I'm on a balcony drinking beers. He's stealing my work. This is their response. It's insane. This is their response to him. He doesn't drink while doing shows. That's what he always says. Oh, he never of drinks. Course. Yeah, <laughs> that's libel. The response was sober up, John. <laughs> yeah. Listen to this response. Hello, thank you for your message. However, we remain concerned that your copyright notification is not valid for some or all of the videos identified in your notification. As a result, the content will remain live on YouTube. Oh. So well. YouTube sent me this note, and they said, just so you know, we're going to leave your videos up. Doesn't mean that this guy won't go after you outside of YouTube. So watch out for that. Like, oh, th- thanks for that <laughs> Yeah, I know. Thanks, YouTube. Appreciate it. But at least they're like, yeah, John, you don't have a... Yeah. It has nothing to do with what was behind a paywall or not. Dear Carl, we used our retard stick and kept them away from you. <laughs> have a great day. That's basically what the email said. Thanks for the content. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Sal, what do you think, man? You think he's going to go through with it? You know, this. No, listen, <laughs> I urge John, you know, I urge John to sue somebody because what's going to end up happening is John's going to get screwed in the outcome. Yes. You know, John doesn't realize that one day somebody's going to take him seriously and they're going to say, let's show him what it really costs to conduct a lawsuit and to defend a lawsuit. You just can't do it, man. It can't, you know, you can't keep saying stuff. And that's why now. My whole thing is I want to get involved in a court case with John. And my goal is to end up in court with John. Well, then we have much to yeah. discuss, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, you're like my, my Israeli mom. She always wanted to get a court case going <laughs> at some point. Is that floor wet? <laughs> Slip on it. The last time John threatened to sue me, I had Vince on, <laughs> your friend and yeah. John's former attorney, yeah. to talk about it. And Vince said... The best thing about this is the discovery phase. That's right. Because we both have to open up all of our books to yep. each other so that we can see, like, are there damages? What's going on? How much money are you making from your podcast? How much am I making from my podcast? What's How going on? How much did he get that Tesla for? Honestly, it'd be, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be worth it just for that, uh-huh. just to see how much money he's making from his podcast. Like, if it cost me, you know, a couple tens of thousands but that's of dollars. Another, that's another very whack pack trait, yes. okay, is to step into your right. own trap. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> is to right. is to be like, I'm gonna make this person look like a moron, and then you're the moron, and yep. and he does that on a regular basis. He's pretty good at it now. Yeah. yeah, all Carl has to do is just write courthouse on a cardboard box and put a stick under it. <laughs> 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 Wait for him to walk. In. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I fell for her again. <sighs> All right, Sal, I'll give you the last word, buddy. Yeah, you know, I, I have some stuff coming out. It's going to be coming out on my on my uh, Twitter account. Um, right now, I'm holding tight. Everything I put up usually gets deleted. Um, I delete it because of uh, – there's reasons, legalities. Even though it's up, if you delete it, you show, hey, I didn't mean to cause harm. That's why I delete everything after a certain amount of time. Smart. Um, John's stuff, John's going to John's gonna step in his own stuff. We're hanging out here. You know, my Twitter handle's up there. If you don't see stuff, you will see stuff. We're pu- trying to pull him out of the weeds. And when he comes out of the weeds and he makes that one mistake – we're going to be there to just have fun with it. Club him we like a seal. Stuff. <laughs> like, you know what? Like Vince said, you know what? Discovery is the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. Well, Sal, I've been a big fan of yours for a long time, and I don't know what you do for a living, but please don't ever do it to me. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, We're and cool, know right? That, know that I'm a friend, and We've I will always a be a friend. history between us and uh, Jeff the Drunk, so I we love got a you, long buddy. history. And you know what? I, I find you to be... I find you to be the greatest. You did a phenomenal job on Stern. Um, and you know what? You're a great comic, and you're, you're the real deal. And I think that's why you get under John's skin so much. It was an embarrassment at that hotel. It was just why you would even post that stuff. It was an embarrassment. And God bless you, Shuley. Keep up the good work. WATP, you guys, you guys are doing the great work. And I know for a fact from talking to John, you guys drive them crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Hey, Sal D, before you go, may I ask you one question? Who is Cardiff Electric? <laughs> Are you like, what's that? Explain that question a little bit deeper. <laughs> okay, no, I was just who trying. Who the fuck is Cardiff Electric? Yeah, I want to know if you know who the fuck Cardiff Electric really is, is what I'd like to know. And if yes, who, who is it? It could it? be me. It could be Shuley. It could, could be, be Tommy. Anybody. Could it be could Tommy. Be could be Tommy playing yeah. the long game. <laughs> Playing the long game. All you right. know what? Cardiff Electric, Cardiff Electric will always be a part of our uh, imagination, but we'll never know, will we? No, we won't. <laughs> All so, right. Sal, I, I'm really glad that we got to talk. I want to talk to a Hockey Puck someday. I hope he'll come on the show because it sounds like you guys have a lot of things planned. Please. Hockey Puck is holding back. You know, Hockey Puck is holding back right now. He's a... Uh, He's the gatekeeper right now. Okay. Um, you know, I was able to get some stuff from him, but he, you know what? He's doing exactly what I'm doing. We're holding back, and uh, we're waiting for John to make that one slip up, and we're going to be right there to Christ. You guys should the see the us. email newsletter. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys, if he does slip up and something's going to happen, I'd love to break the info here on WATP. So, I mean, John's uh, the only touch. guy that has a SEAL you Team 6 of one. trolls. <laughs> yeah, you know? I know, like, right? Uh, <laughs> just, it's on, it's on, it's on. It's go, go, go. Elite <laughs> fucking specialists <laughs> that are going to destroy him. It's... John, it's not too late. Apologize now for everything. <laughs> yep. You know, it's like spies like us. Put down your swords and I'll bring back the sun right now. Everybody relax. All right. Thanks, Sal. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Absolutely. Good to talk to you. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Best you of luck. Rock. Best of luck to you, my friend. We got friend. two shows tonight, Anthony. I'll see you at the club. <laughs> well, really Anthony, I swear. <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> hey, what, a, what a sport. He's in the parking lot helping us out. So, my friends uh, Royce and Mersh over at Revenge of the Sis were chatting about this lawsuit. <laughs> I love those From guys. Stuttering Johnny. I like those guys, too. And uh, they were having a little bit of fun with the latest legal threat from our friend Stut Joe. By the way, I, a lot of eye rolling. I, I'm sorry. This was just sent to me uh, by at, at Muttering John, by the way, on uh, <laughs> Muttering John. Yeah, yeah, on, on Twitter. So I'll give him credit for that. He's not talking about us, by the way, because we've never done anything behind a paywall making fun of him. But I think we know who he is talking about. Well, I just got off the phone with my attorney and dear friend, MS. Pop a, oh, that's the guy. That's the attorney he pretended to be when he DM'd me. Remember that? About a troll show that is using my content behind my paywall for his own show. He has instructed me as I thought this is not fair use. Time for another lawsuit with monetary ramifications. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. That was his tweet. Type another lawsuit with monetary ramification. I'm sure it was spelled ramification. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Anthony Kubia said another lawsuit with monetary ramifications. <laughs> what has there ever been one lawsuit? Oh, no. Sirius is going to get their court costs back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to be monetary. <laughs> the monetary is coming out of him. Yeah. For one of you, it's always a monetary <laughs> ramification. What is he hammering? He's about? talking about who are these podcasts. Um, I'm assuming. Yes. Uh, because because he's been playing uh, some clips from his uh, paywall show. I guess he has a paywall show. I didn't know that. Again, we haven't covered this guy in forever. Well, we covered him yesterday. No, no, I mean, besides <laughs> yesterday, before that, we really haven't been like up to his day-to-day activity. We covered him yesterday. Well, you know, I got to say this, man. Now that John's our friend and he's being nice to us, mm-hmm. you're going down for this, Carl. <laughs> you're going down for... What? No, don't take Carl down. I know. Uh, no, John said nice things about us, and Carl mm. uh, hasn't said nice things about us as recently. That's wow. a good uh, well, hey, Carl, I'm a fair, I'm a fair weather friend, bro. Carl, you got to be nice to us now, bud. <laughs> you got to say something nice about us. All right, you're going down. Oh, you're going down. You know what? I'm testifying we, on stuttering yes, John's behalf. I will be there in this fake lawsuit that he's doing. Okay. <laughs> And I will go right into that courtroom, and I will testify on behalf of Stuttering John. And I will do a monologue where I go, Your Honor, is he a slob? Yes. Is he a shitty dad? Yes. Is he a drunk? Yes. Does he have a bunch of dirty kitter, litty, kitter, kitty litter boxes all over his house? Yes. Just, where was I going? With, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Carl's a bad guy. <laughs> You're going to have to get in line behind me. <laughs> Very well done, Birch. Thank you, guys. Um, so I played that clip of John talking about how he's going to have Michael Popak on the show. Sure. Which is today. He's talking about it's going to be Saturday. It's po- Popak Day, guys. And uh, he says, you know, he's got a lawsuit. We're playing cuts behind the paywall. Then he's talking to his guest. He gets distracted by a text message. All right. And he says it's from his ex-wife. Uh-oh. Okay. So the last um, uh, question I have for you is... Um... I'm sorry, my ex-wife just texted me. Uh, 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 is oh, uh, I see now. <laughs> now she threw me off. Um, uh, hold That's on. Her fault. Uh, uh, oh, I had one last question for you, and now I'm blank. Oh. Stop, dude! Come on, man. <laughs> No, God damn it. It's her fault that I'm a terrible broadcaster. Now, people have speculated that potentially that was actually his attorney, the great Michael Popak. <laughs> actually, do I still have that? Yeah. I'm uh, Michael Popak. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Michael Popak. People have speculated that was him who was texting him yeah. because later on in the show, John kind of softens what he was saying about this legal thing. Oh, that's so funny. And again, before I bring Allison, I, again, I'm going to apologize. I did two beer on the balconies, and I did happen to make them private because there are shows or a show that is using my show behind a paywall that is behind my paywall. And I got to check out the legality of that. And if there is a law being broken, then I will sue. Be- but if there's not, then I can't do anything. But if there is, <laughs> I'll be the first. I'll be the first to sue. Uh, it'll be a pleasure of mine. Yeah. <laughs> loves but, to sue. You know that about me, it. right, guys? He's Coming down the pike. <laughs> yeah. Voted most likely to sue. He's got to keep those hands down, man. Those fingernails. Please <laughs> stop putting you know. them in the camera, dude. <laughs> I know. So I used that as a thumbnail on one of my YouTube videos, and it was gross just like putting it in Photoshop. I was like, oh, God, I didn't want to do this right now. Farmers have cleaner fucking... <laughs> Mechanics, fucking have proctologists, cleaner, yeah. yeah, have cleaner hands. Casey, yeah. our review girl has cleaner hands. Serial Let's killers, go crazy. Yeah, I mean, everybody. All right, so John said that it's illegal to play anything that. from his. What do you think the text said? What did you say, you <laughs> idiot? Yeah, he's like, oh, 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 oh no. I have one more question. Nah. You just claim another lawsuit. <laughs> There's nothing we can do, retard. Let me worry about court cases. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was my ex-wife. I apologize. <laughs> Three words. No more freebies. Yeah, yeah no more freebies. <laughs> that's probably what it was. So he, he just said, I cannot play clips from anything that's beer on the balcony behind the paywall. So recently he had uh, Greg Fitzsimmons on Beer on the Balcony. And here's a fun clip from that. This is actually Joe Namath NYJ in the Dabblers Anonymous subreddit. I put this together. 
It's called The Fine Art of Changing the Subject. This is a little uh, compilation. John, I'm ordering you some cat food from DoorDash. Poor cats have to eat. It's like, you know, like everyone assumes, just like you did, oh, John's got to be stupid. These guys, oh, no, John's got to be poor. Like, I, it's amazing. Do you get the trolls like I do? No, I don't. But <laughs> but do pe- but people don't know you're rich. People don't realize your real estate holdings. I mean, even with the divorce, you must, I mean, you're living in a house and you're divorced. That's a pretty good sign. Well, well, it's a condo now because, uh, yeah, th- this is the spousal drop well point. All, how old are your kids? <laughs> yeah. Um, so how many beers oh. will you drink during this podcast? And then how, will you continue drinking for the rest of the day and into the night? I only have four on this show. That's it. Uh-huh. I limit myself to four 12-ounce. That's it. You know, because it's beer on the balcony. I used to do it actually on my balcony. Yeah. But then it, like, you know, but then the sun and everything was glaring up the screen. And I said, all right, I'll just put it on the green screen. Uh, so then will you will you then drink tonight as well? <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't know. And, I don't know. <laughs> hey, Greg, uh, yeah. You know, hold on. Are you buying? Yeah. And now we're doing the show from Yankee Stadium. Um, <laughs> It changes green screen. It's all proud of himself. I mean, <laughs> what is that noise? I love it when people always ask him. He has these guests on, and it's noon when he does his show. And the guests are like, You're drinking beer already? Like, what? why are you doing that? This is a grown man. This is a father of children. <laughs> and who, his answer. Whose, whose answer is, It's called yes. Beer on the Balcony. It's, I, what am I, my hands are tied here. Yeah. I wish, I wish it was called Swan Dive off the balcony. <laughs> That's what you should change the fucking name to, you method acting piece of shit. And here I go. (laughs) Holy shit. He's a real Daniel Daydrinker Lewis. (laughs) Yeah. And I love Greg's Greg's fucking Emmy Award winning. He's a brilliant writer. He's a fucking phenomenal stand up. And this idiot, he this Uncle Rico. Yes. Do you do you deal with the trolls? No. <laughs> it's called success. He's always asking every every celebrity that comes on, you deal with trolls too, right? There's probably like subreddits made about how much of a loser you are. They're like, no. You know, what do you mean? People yeah, don't right. buy you cat food for your pets. <laughs> All right. I want to play a clip from our bonus show because Croge had a theory, and I thought it was an interesting one, so I wanted to get Shuli's take on it. So I am going to see if I know how to do this. Oh, look at that. I do know how to do this. Look at me. (laughs) I have a theory, and it's speculation. I'm speculating here. I'm just making some shit up, but, like, let's throw this at the wall and see if it sticks. Okay. We've heard a little bit about John's childhood from his book and from this interview even where he talks about his dad being violent and unpredictable. Correct. I think John's dad is an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. I think John is an adult child of an alcoholic as well as being an alcoholic himself, which is very common. Sure. And I think that he's going to spend his entire life as a little boy fighting against this unpredictable drunken dad. Now, this drunken dad could be the trolls, but it also could be Howard Stern, this guy he hasn't let go for 20 plus years. Now, Fred had an alcoholic father. Robin had a father who molested her. Uh, Gary had a mom who had severe psychiatric disorders. This whole family of people was brought together with these terrible parental issues. And they all stuck to Howard Stern, who is unpredictable and incredibly cruel and treats people just terribly, but every once in a while doses out a little bit of love. You did good today, John. He said that, and John will never forget it. Even though he was cruel to him, like the other 30 days of that month, that 31st day. Yeah, but Howard also laughed at his joke that one time. He did. He laughed at the joke that one time. (laughs) And John... What do you think about this theory that Howard surrounded himself around people who are broken, and he's like their, their father figure? I think I need to just take a step back and defend John's father. Okay. If John was your kid, you would drink too. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. That's a good point. <laughs> all right. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, you know, we're all done with the Stuttering John uh, parody song contest. Right. But it doesn't stop people from sending in Stuttering John parody. So. Oh, good. Yeah, this is one from uh, Emineus. And this is uh, Thank You for the Super Chat. Oh, uh, we got a super chat here from Pamela Anderson. Thanks for two bucks. Uh, 
Uh, Nicholas Cage, coming in with five bucks. Well, we got one here from Algorithm. Thanks for the five bucks. Uh, one here from Nick Gurr. Thanks for the two bucks. Thank you for the super chats. Appreciate the super chats. Please send in more super chats. Give me all your super chats. Ten bucks here from John Stinklines. He says, hey, stuttering fuckface, go fuck yourself. Listen, all you trolls out there, I got your cash, so I don't care. Just keep on sending in your money. I think it's really funny. I also got the names of you, so watch your ass or else I'll sue if you say something I don't like. A lawsuit's coming down the pipe. A little there, a little here, it all adds up to buy me beer. So keep that moolah flowing in so I can stick hydrated. I need to buy my baloney because I need my energy. Wow, <laughs> someone sent in 200? Uh, I, I can't refund. I need to be able to buy my blue chew pills. <laughs> I need to be able to pay my child support for my kids. I need to be able to pay my electric pills. I need you to send in super chats. So give me all that you can give. I need to kill these cockroaches. They're everywhere. I can't afford to hire an exterminator. I also need to buy a car so I can drive down to the bar and buy the finest cores with your super chats. Uh, Patrick Michaels, crying baby, send in five bucks. Uh, two bucks from Vinnie Peacocks. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's it. Come on, people, send in those super chats. <laughs> I just played that because I thought it was catchy. I just yeah, wanted to go. Yeah, it's a fun <laughs> chorus. Listen if you combine that. that guy's production skills with the guitar playing Opie guy, I think you'd have one mastermind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe they'll find each other somehow, some way. <laughs> I haven't played this one yet, but Doug from the Jingles Department sent this in back when we were doing the contest. He said, this isn't for the contest. It's just okay. a uh, a trap song for Stuttering John. Well, the club said, don't ever book me again. But the club said, don't ever book me again. But the club said, don't ever book me again. You have a brand new a Mercedes. You're a self-declared multi-millionaire. I'm like, dude, I don't. But when it comes to my private finances, I'm not going to tell you exactly what I have and what I don't have. Because I know the trolls are listening. For all you know, I'm driving around in a Tesla. For all you know, what you know, I'm driving around in a freaking uh, Kia. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to tell you what I'm driving around in. Nor am I going to tell you how much money I have in a bank. But look, I'm honest about everything. They say I'm worth $5 million. I'll tell you this, I'm not worth $5 million. Tesla's the way to go. Then he started writing paragraphs and paragraphs about <laughs> flat screen TVs. And Daryl Lee, thanks for the $5 uh, super sticker on. Super chat, super chat, super chat. Uh, Saturday it was just a troll. It was just a troll. When did I think it was funny? I felt bad. I told I'd give her back the money as soon as I get paid. A money-centric fool or something. I'm like... What the hell is wrong with you? Jen doesn't rap about money correctly. <laughs> no. Supposed to brag about having money. He does just what the is opposite. This self-declared millionaire, by the way. You know who he sounds like in those higher registers, right? Opie? Yeah, totally. <laughs> High registered Opie. Yeah. The similarities between those two are staggering. Like they've just become the same guy pretty much. It's interesting because what would Suttering John be if he had millions of dollars in the bank? Is is Mike would would he not make a fool of himself on the internet? Because Opie has I mean, that's what he was doing at his, at his highest success on the Howard Stern show. He was making a fool of himself on the air, right? <laughs> oh, that's true, yes. You know? That's true. He did make that movie one too many. So, yeah, I, I think Stuttering John with money would still be funny now that I think about right. it. Because <laughs> that's really the only difference between the two of them is so that... So you're saying Opie has to make a movie, right? That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that. I'd watch that on our Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... I mentioned last week that there's a, a new legal threat because John thinks that because I was playing clips from his paywalled content, that now there's copyright infringement and he can sue me, which is, I mean, YouTube already told him that's not true, but he's still like really leaning into this. And every episode this week has been about that, except for he's having a little bit of problems because his attorney won't get back to him. <laughs> Shout out to Michael Popak. I haven't heard from Michael since his girlfriend got into a fender bender. I wonder, there's no way he could be mad at me for that. I didn't, because I didn't. 
read the GF, but he hasn't responded. <laughs> There's no way. I I know he's going to say, John, relax. I'm not mad at you. I know it, but, you know, you know, I get a little insecure with that because I don't want to piss anybody off. Really? So, so his his lawyer's mad that John hit her car? Or? No, oh, I'll, okay. I'll give you the story here because then he brings on the Midas Touch Brothers ah, who okay. are very close with the great... <laughs> and they, they all discuss this with each other. Yeah. Um, hey, Ben, have you heard from Popak? <laughs> well, I think Popak's missing. Popak is no, 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 missing? No, no, no. Pop- I spoke to Popak earlier today. Okay, so I guess he is mad at me. This is the weirdest thing, guys. <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. He's supposed to come on, right? Yeah. So at 11.59, a minute before I start the show, he's he's, he's my first guest at 12.15 to talk about my lawsuit with Sirius. And um, and another lawsuit that I'm g- going to be doing soon. Anyway, so... He has to keep bringing me up. I, I scan my phone as I'm about to start the show, and it says, all I see is John... Uh, I got an offender bender. Oh no! I'm not gonna be able to make it today. So I go, I go. Wow, <laughs> you didn't give me too much notice. And then he goes, Well, don't worry. You know, my girlfriend's fine. And then I realized that he typed in my GF, got into offender bender. Oh I, no! Yeah, I don't speak with you know initials GF. I didn't even know the guy had a girlfriend. <laughs> Well, ignorance does not make you uh, guilt-free on this one, Chad. <laughs> also, did you not see it, or did you not know what GF meant, or which excuse is it, John? <laughs> That's a great point. I didn't pick up on that. He's got two different excuses of why it's not his fault. I just think that's what so self- funny. He really is a self-absorbed yeah. guy. Oh, yeah. This this guy writes him a note, hey, my girlfriend just got in a car accident. I can't come on the show in 15 minutes. And John's only thought is, well, what the fuck am I going to do now? You yeah. screwed me over here. <laughs> Not enough notice. When do you know you're going to get in a fucking accident? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't she have got an accident yesterday? What's her problem? Ah, Carl, Saturday at 2, there's a chance I'm in an accident by then. <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to drive. Mike, what are you doing? <laughs> this, this was no yeah, accident. That is on me, I guess. <laughs> this is on you. So disrespectful. No, no, no. I mean, no, 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 no. I just think that <laughs> because then I texted him a few times. So I'm so sorry, Mike. I didn't get the GF. I'm not initially gifted. So and, you were like, when I thought it was you who got in the fender bender, yeah. I was like, bullshit excuse. Yeah. But now well, that no. I heard it's your girlfriend, <laughs> yeah. now that I understand what GF says, now... Okay, now I'll give you a pass. Am I yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know, it's because all of us men, c- come on. I mean, if it's Popak and it's a fender bender, I mean, we all get the fender benders. It's not like, you know, I don't cry over a fender bender. But if it's his girlfriend, then I got to show him the respect and go, yeah, you, you know, go. is she okay? But I didn't know. No, and I, how could you? And I kept texting him, Ben. <laughs> I, I kept going, hey, Mike, I, you know, you know, I don't know if you're upset with me, but. I didn't see the GF, so you know uh, the Midas Touch guys are coming on. If you want to surprise yeah. them, no response. All right, so he's getting blown off here, <laughs> and he's putting them in the middle of it. Yeah, right. It's like, hey, you know our mutual friend? He's not texting me back. What the fuck's up with that? You're like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Ask him. I don't know what the fuck. We're Can you believe I called him at his girlfriend's <laughs> funeral, and he's not getting back? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Also, the idea that he, that he thought that Michael Popak got in a car accident, it's like, well, you have to deal with shit when that happens. You can't just be like, look, at I'd, I'd love course. to exchange insurance and write up a police report, but I got to go on Stuttering John's show in five minutes. So. Oh, Stuttering John, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right you to say. say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will get the Stuttering John pass then, my friend. I like how the one uh, Midas Touch brother called him Pocky. Fuck yeah, yeah they're good. all buddies. Yeah. We also really breezed over the phrase initially gifted, as if he's not gifted with initials. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, good point. <laughs> initially gifted, that's not what that means. I'm not initially gifted. This is the guy who <laughs> names his chapters F and G. Yeah, right. I can't read words. I can't read letters. Yeah. I, it's tough. What are we supposed to do? All right. And LOL, then, I don't understand what that means. And then I don't know why these Midas Touch guys deal with John at all. When they watch his brain break in the middle of their conversation. And, and I'm so like, you know, like, I'm so, you know, like, like, I, you know. It, it, it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just a, it's a fun little clip. So now 
John starts talking to this other attorney. One of the Midas guys is an attorney because he wants to get some feedback on what happened with the Sirius XM lawsuit. Cause that's what Michael Popak was supposed to come out and talk about because they had their day in court with the three judges and they wanted to find out what was happening. And John gets called out here. This is great. But I have a legal issue that I got to talk to him about. This. <laughs> and plus, he was going to come on and talk about the whole serious exam. Because, Ben, I don't know if you heard, you know, they went into oral um, arguments. In front of the Second Circuit, huh? Yeah. So that's pretty damn good. I mean, the, I mean that the Second, Cir- uh, th- that the second Circuit w- was cool with hearing the case. You know, isn't, isn't that like the first hurdle to get over? Well, I mean, I guess the question is if you win in the Second Circuit. So the, the the fact that they hear the case is, I mean, they're they're supposed to hear the case. But if they rule in favor of you in the case, that would be great. And you could usually get a good indication of where they're going to rule based on the questions that they ask you from the bench. And so you can get a sense of where the panel is. Did you hear about how it went? Wait, hold on. Before Ashley even answers that... I- Ashton, what what a do, what what a con you pulled on me over here! I thought we were going to be talking about Midas, talk, talking about the news, but no, you wanted Ben on here for 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 the legal advice. Oh come on, I'm going to move on to everything else in about two seconds. <laughs> Honestly, brilliant way to get free legal advice. No, right yeah. him on as a guest <laughs> of the pod. Yeah, he can't bill me if he's a guest on the pod. Genius, genius <laughs> strategy. No, okay, so we'll get right into. So I was watching. All right, I'm, I'm really glad they called him out on that. That one guy might get sued for that implication. <laughs> I, I don't need advice. I was cleared by the second cervix. Didn't you hit me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what's Are those po- Midas Touch Brothers, the guys that were on with Portnoy a few weeks ago? Yes. Boy, what a fall from grace. Jesus those, Christ. Yeah, those are the guys that Jordy uh, used the Edward in a text message yeah. to his fiance. Yeah, that's those guys. So I think it's funny that Michael Polpak is trying to make it seem like they have a case and it's going to go, it's going to win and all this great stuff. He's like, isn't it amazing? We're actually going to be heard by the judges, the panel of judges. And so John asks one other attorney about this. He goes, well, yeah, they're supposed to hear it. That's the fact they didn't throw it out. Doesn't mean it's a good case. You know, it depends (laughs) on like what kind of questions they're asking. And I haven't seen the video, but from what I heard, it sounded like the judges had a lot of questions that Polpak did not have answers for. And I'm guessing that's probably one of the reasons why he's avoiding John. He doesn't really have any good uh, news to share with them about this serious XM case because it's. Has anyone ever asked John? And I know you're a student of this. And I know you've brought it up before, but is there ever a point where John addresses the idea that serious XM played his audio for years? And he, fuck? Yeah, I, I've brought that up many times because for 14 years, he didn't say anything. It wasn't until he was unemployed that all of a sudden his right to publicity was so important to him. It's the most mind-boggling one. I'm amazed it hasn't gotten thrown out, quite frankly. I, I, same here. It's shocking. So it, it'll get thrown out pretty soon, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But that won't stop John from his next lawsuit, suing yours truly. Um, called my attorney today as I prepare my next lawsuit which is <laughs> coming down the pike type me and this one is, is not going to be something that somebody could easily squeeze out of Lem's, Leslie Ramsden even though they're lame excuses just that a lame excuse would not hold up on any court all right so John's this is the Thursday show so I was playing you the Tuesday show where he's saying Popak won't return my tax so now he has to pivot and pretend that he's talking to Popak again <laughs> right so he's like oh yeah i talked to my attorney today we're definitely gonna sue carl yeah. even though carl's got that lame excuse you know fair use yeah. what a lame excuse fair use is <laughs> i've got a whole legal team it's not just popak <laughs> yeah i know he's making it sound like he's got this whole team and he's trying to scare me again and it never works i don't know why he does this oh he doesn't <laughs> learn from his mistakes so i think he's mad that i make more money from his beer on the balconies than he does Right. I, yeah. I, I think he wants a cut of it. <laughs> and I'm willing to negotiate. If he wants to reach out to me for some kind of a profit sharing arrangement. Or beer. I just want yeah, or, or beer. I just want control over booking the guests. That's all I want, John. And then we can How do many racks can you afford? Profit sharing agreement on that. Oh, all right. This is uh just a fun clip. Where shall I begin? I'll start with this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll just put it up. <laughs> okay. 
K. <laughs> There you go. Thanks for paying me to troll me. I love it. So someone put up their Shuli won John Zero because <laughs> obviously uh, Shuli actually just put out another episode with uh, Iso goofing on John that was that was really good. They played a whole other uh, show of John goofing on Shuli. And so uh, Shuli's finally starting to fight back, and I, I do like that. I think it's fun. Shuli wasn't intimidated. John called him a loser. <laughs> yeah, and he come right. back from a knockout like that. I love that John's starting his show and he's immediately distracted by the chats that he's reading. <laughs> and then he pretends that he loves it when people give him, by the way, that was $2.79 Canadian. He's like, <laughs> he's like, all right, make fun of me all you want. I'm getting your money. Yeah. It's like, well, then why are you suing me if you know that you make money from people trolling you? Then why are you pretending to want to sue me? It doesn't, none of it makes any sense. It's a matter of principle. Right, yeah, of course. My lame excuse. <laughs> That's great. So this is John announcing that the DC trip is on. Every, every dollar helps as uh, my flight is booked to DC. It is. Just got off the phone with Gonzo. And uh, he's going to meet me in DC. Not saying exactly when. Don't want to tip anybody off. But I will be going to D.C. So every little bit helps. There's, there's the Venmo. He says he doesn't want to tip anyone off. Who, like Republican senators? <laughs> do, do you think like Ted Cruz wants to go out to dinner with his wife? And they're like, not this weekend, sir. Stuttering John Melendez has a camera crew. We can't let you go out to dinner. It's too dicey out there. Who's he tipping and off? Our, in our latest story, Mitch McConnell is in hiding after being tipped <laughs> off to a podcast. <laughs> I think he's trying to keep the SJ army at bay. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, because he knows that there's going to be a yeah. groundswell of support for he's him. He's being responsible. If going into me. there. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Mr. Connell, he's, he might ask me what I do with the money. I, I can't possibly let this happen. This would be terrible. Mr. Crenshaw, is your refrigerator running? <laughs> <laughs> you should be writing jokes for this guy. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm happy to, as long as he doesn't sue me. So then he decides, well, he, he announces that his Venmo QR code up in the corner is finally fixed. I don't know how long it's been broken. I don't think anyone's ever tried to donate money to him through that. He's never mentioned Venmo. Right. But it's, but that's like the little thing up in his corner. Like I have my logo in mine. He has the Venmo <laughs> QR code. So he, he announces that we finally fixed it. And he goes in and he says he got one donor. And then he decides to read his PayPal donors. And the end of this has got a good kicker. Uh, let's see. The first Venmo. Uh, oh, okay. Barbara. Barbara Benstein. Barbara Benstein. The first Venmo. Thank you very much, Barbara. I also want to do a shout out to the PayPal people. And they have been incredibly uh, nice and generous as well. David W. Sparrow. Rosalie Taylor. Sean Regnier, thank you very much. And uh, and that's the, Christine Garcia. And uh, Dennis Higgins, but he canceled it. I'm not really sure why. Anyway. <laughs> There's a lawsuit coming down the pike. <laughs> I love that he's reading donors who canceled their donations. <laughs> I regret life. <laughs> I regret life gave me 20 bucks. Oh, and there's a $20 credit back to I regret life. Yeah. Uh, American Express. Oh, I don't know what this is. <laughs> so John had a stand-up gig. This is so funny because John was supposed to do this stand-up gig, and he didn't end up doing it. He ended up canceling at the last minute. So. Oh, okay. Instead of doing a stand-up gig, he made phone calls to his moderator. Uh, Benny Loco, yes, our thoughts and prayers to your husband. I meant to call you last night, but instead I talked to Nikki B for two hours. Jill Carter, after I got home from what was pretty much a debacle. Um, so what was this debacle that happened? He explains... They booked me to do this show. I said, okay, but, you know, they have like eight cameras. I said, I don't want any tape for a 10-minute set for the amount of money you're paying me. No. 
And then they told me they wouldn't. And then I get there and they said, sorry, we really have to. And then I said, well, sorry, I'm not going on stage. Marky, Marco V193, Jill Carter. I've already been offered 10 grand for a special. I'm not going to do it for freaking 10 bucks. <laughs> Mar- All right. John is claiming he's been offered 10 grand to do a stand up special. By who? I assume by you, Carl. Obviously, (laughs) uh, we all put together. Doctor Steve. (laughs) Doctor Steve, I think, is the (laughs) the main money behind that project. So, what's amazing about this is I saw the flyers for the show. He was promoting the show on the flyer. It said live stream production produced by Cannabis Capital. It was on Twitch. They were. It was being promoted as being streamed on Twitch. John goes, I didn't know this was going to be on the internet. He gets to the gig, sees the cameras, goes, what's going on here? They go, yeah, we're streaming it. And he goes, well, I'm not going to do it that. Like, Jesus Christ, John, do you pay any attention to what's going on at all? I can't burn my best material. <laughs> yeah, I know. He, he, still, he still plays that card. Jay Leno <laughs> told me, never put your material out there because you want to be able to reuse it. <laughs> yeah. oh, God. In fact, he said, never do anything funny. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it one of who said that? I can't remember. Uh, this is just some funny stuff because as he's getting donations, he doesn't even know when he's getting trolled. This is a donation from Jerry Winters, who happens to be the quote unquote woman that Podcast Hitman killed. Oh, and the okay. avatar is of Podcast Hitman. You know, you know, I'm, I obviously I know how would not do anything. Uh, uh, malicious, you know, so I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Jerry Winters, thanks for the five bucks. Speaking of movies, will the Hollywood show come back in the future? Yes. Yes, and thanks for reminding me, Jerry. You know, I it's just because I had the writing gig for, gig for the five straight weeks, writing for the app, wrote a lot of great questions. It, it's a trivia app. And uh, I got it through a friend from The Tonight Show, and so I hadn't been doing the Hollywood show, but I will do it, especially with the new uh, nominations that have come out so i will i will bring that back and and thank you jerry winters for the five bucks what bugs me about hollywood's coming back <laughs> i'm excited about that what i think is funny about this is that this is a guy who's super paranoid about being trolled all the time even people who aren't trolling him he'll turn on them and get pissed off Yet here we have this person who's totally trolling him, and he has no idea <laughs> that's what's going on, and he'll never find Amazing out. Maybe it slips through the cracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'd love to know what he's writing for this trivia app. Oh, by me, the t- way. me too. I wish you would tell us what the app is. What is the capital of Vermont? <laughs> <laughs> right, they're trivia questions. Like, why would you need a writer for that? It doesn't seem like a That's writing. That's a good question thing. for the trivia app. <laughs> Here's a why trivia. Why are they paying John Mullen? <laughs> yeah. yeah how, much, how much does it pay to write trivia questions? Yeah, a troll got him this job. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, real quick, I, I missed this. It's a little bit out of order, but this is going back to um, another lawsuit against me. Yep, Popak is uh, going to help me out with another another lawsuit from, you know, this one's going to be probably easier than the Sirius XM one. All right, so he's, he's already calling his shots. This is going to be an easy lawsuit. He can't wait to sue me. He's I'm taking to... a bite out of hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to need some hamburger helper when I'm done with him. I don't know why you're smile talking over there. You could owe this guy dozens of cents. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. What's interesting, though, is that he's talking about copyright infringement, and then he's on with Richard Ojeda, or, or Jeda. He calls him Richard Ojeda still. What is it with these guys who mispronounce their friends' names? Carl Ruiz, Richard Ojeda. <laughs> anyway, he has this guy on, and they play this guy Randy Rainbow's video, and they play the entire thing. It's over four minutes long. There's no commentary. He doesn't pause it. He, there's no transformative content going on. This is what copyright infringement is. And there's a new strain of mutations at large. Some go by Lauren and others by Marge. They somehow spread to Washington, D.C. All through the GOP. I don't know who's running the federal government these days. Uh, Joe Biden or Prince John. What's with this day? She thinks democracy's a game, and she's the same. So we refer to them both by one name. But girl, you're a Karen. You're an obnoxious, intolerant pain. 
Hun. You're a Karen. Such a Karen. And you appear to be missing a brain. You're fucking stupid. Oh, and John's dancing along with that because it agrees with him politically. Now he likes show tunes. Say what you want about it. I'll have it stuck in my head for the next two days. It yeah. is a catchy ditty. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> that goes on for four and a half minutes and John just plays it straight on the show. Like, hey, this guy's putting out some good content. I'll just put it on my show as content. That's exactly what copyright infringement is, John. You moron. I felt bad sending you any clip that's over a minute. Imagine if I made you sit here for four. I'm, t- I'm telling you, Brendan Schaub is going to get to it. No, what you should have done is just sent me the entire episode. <laughs> Carol, here's the entire episode. It all sucks. All right, I'll just play it. We'll just, we'll just watch it. All right, cool. Just watch. Uh, one last clip that I have, and this is interesting. So there was a voicemailer, Roy, who turned me on to this. This is from the Howard Stern show. And John talking about the abortion joke on the Howard Stern show. So if you guys recall, John likes to say all the time that before he had his first kid, Howard said he should get an abortion, and John wanted to punch him out in the face. He was so mad at Howard. Now, it seems sure. to me in this clip that John might have known that was a joke all along, and now he's pretending that he's offended by it. But you be the judge. Watch this. Yeah, somebody else let it slip a couple of weeks ago that you had already done. I know. I should mention, this segment is he was just fired from his afternoon DJ gig. So they have him okay. in there with the program director who fired him, and they're talking about that. Yeah, somebody else let it slip a couple of weeks ago that you had already done. I know, I heard. <laughs> John, I'll buy you lunch again. Everybody knew anyway. Yeah. Well, there's still time for an abortion, though. Oh, oh. No. Well, listen, sometimes you got to make... You can't afford make, it. Sometimes oh. you can't afford it. <laughs> You've just won an abortion. <laughs> Howard did tell me... Courtesy of Rob Zombie. Abort my first kid, and I'm going to tell her when she's 14. <laughs> Courtesy what? Of, oh, he did tell me to abort my first kid when I said... I was, so, so she's yeah, 14, I'll have that conversation. You see, Howard, the guy that I'm hanging out with? <laughs> he wanted me to kill you ten years ago. What? What's going on there? Does John know it's a joke, or is he was he butt hurt then too? I'm gonna tell it her. It seems like very nervous energy. Like he yeah. certainly knows it's a joke, but has nothing to come back with. But I will. I'll give. I'll defend him in this way. I think the reason he's stammering is because he probably is boiling with anger that he's afraid to release. Yeah, I, that that could be true. It's it's hard to interpret what that was. But as soon as he heard the yeah. word abortion, he definitely triggered him. He's like, well, I'll wait till I, my daughter turns 14. I'm going to tell her that Howard Stern. My main takeaway joke. with those old clips is it's amazing what alcohol does to the voice. Dude, he's a different person. It's completely different. He yeah. looks different. He sounds different. In every single way, it's a different person. And it's funny because <laughs> when we bring people on here, like a Dr. Steve or any number of people who are Howard Stern fans, they all say, I used to like Centering John. Like, we right. all used to like Centering John. You know, uh, uh, Brian Johnson. From tell him Steve Dave, you know I, I like Stuttering John, and then you like watch what he's become. And you're like, oh, I don't like this guy. This this guy I don't like. <laughs> Stuttering John, it was was fine, but it's really your fault though. I didn't realize he was an <laughs> asshole until this program. <laughs> well, I also think that I've aged him quite a bit. I mean, me and the Silver Bullets are doing a number on this guy. I have a feeling. Who are these podcasts? W A T P. It's an impromptu crossover event. Who are these podcasts? The Shuley Show. And of course, our mutual friend, Vince, the attorney, joining us today because of some recent events that came up this week. Uh, wait, you should change your name, Vince, to Vince the Text Receiver instead <laughs> yes. of Vince the Attorney because you've been doing more of that the last few days than, uh, than, than actual cases. <laughs> Vince has been called upon to scare us into hiding, Shuley. Yeah. He has yeah. a new job in this world. So to give everyone an idea of what the hell these guys are talking about, I've been getting texts from, I'll call the person stuttering Juan, because I don't want to reveal any identities. I don't represent sure. anyone yes. in in this case or potential case, and I'm not giving any legal advice. That's my disclaimer. But stuttering Juan... Use your imagination been, on who that might be right. for the people at home. Te- texting me asking me if Shuli's address was accurate and it was something like Alabama and then this weird address and I didn't even know if it was accurate or not so I I did the research and I got him the uh, exact address and I sent it over oh good and then and then for Carl he's just asking if I knew him and I haven't listened to anyone's show really in the past four months I didn't know what stuttering Juan was talking about so maybe we can get some more insight and I can maybe help all three of you 
litigate this matter or not litigate this matter if potentially possible. That sounds yeah. good. So ESO has done me the favor of sharing the video with me that I have right here. And this is the video that now this is actually stuttering John. So it's no one that we're talking about on this episode. What you're going to see here. And, and this is so funny. Just a random spot that I paused it. Always looking like he's shitting. Always, always, <laughs> it's, it's every great. time, like like it's the shit that's going to take him out. So that's the look. Of his face. What happened was Shuli just put out an episode recently where him and Iso watched this video of John talking about Shuli from his Beer on the Balcony show. Now, Beer on the Balcony, as we all know, is behind a paywall. You got to subscribe on YouTube or Patreon in order to see this amazing content. Let's see what kind of content we're talking about. about. Back this yeah. up to the beginning. Now we're going to do just a very brief thing on Shuli Igar. Shuli, let me just say something to you. I don't really know you. I put you through on the phone plenty of times with Stern. All right, so you get the idea. You've already commented on this, obviously. We don't have to rehash anything. But this well, is I a video from Beer on the Balcony that we were able to find on Reddit pretty easily. Somebody posted it up on the Dabblers Anonymous subreddit. So that would be the first issue. Was this video that both a YouTube playing or the hypothetical Muli and, and Carlos, let's say Muli and Carlos get a video. Did they get the video from the paywall that they pay for it and then post it? Or was it posted in the public domain and they were able to get it? That and does way? that matter? Potentially not. Most likely it doesn't. Obviously, if, if Muli stole the video from John, he's facing criminal action, which Oof. is not really what we're talking about. If we're talking about infringement, it really doesn't matter technically. Mm. So if it surely would be facing criminal charges, but if he uses the video in a fair use manner, then he wouldn't be facing potentially infringement charges, uh, copyright infringement, civil case. Right. So this, this isn't the Pamela Anderson tape, you know, <laughs> this, this is different. This well, is something well that's available. To, yeah. This is something that's available to all. Uh, if you are, uh, you know, privy to a thing called the internet, and, uh, and Google, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? That would be so my defense. Uh, it's not my world. That's more your world. But that's something I would say in court. Well, I, I, and, I, and I told Stuttering Juan that uh, at least I didn't think Muli or, or Carlos were thieves. So I didn't know what he was talking about. So this is the video that he's claiming. You wouldn't claiming, know by the names. I'll tell you that. <laughs> this is the video he claims that that's being used and that his copyright is being infringed upon. Yeah. yeah, this is the specific video, and I think what you said was not just we weren't thieves, but that we aren't hackers. I think you made it <laughs> yeah. pretty clear that we're not hacking his account in order to get this this content <laughs> from him. Right. So then, I mean, in terms of criminal charges, assuming Muli and Carlos didn't steal it themselves, let's say someone did steal it and then posted it online, yeah. then if, if either of them did a show with it and it's within the fair use standards, then it's perfectly fine. There's no criminal action. And I apologize. Uh, I, I keep saying myself, Shuli, I'm, I was actually talking about Carlos and Muli is what Bodies I meant to ours. say. Yeah. Some friends we know. Friends of ours, yeah. And I'm curious. So it sounds like Carlos and Muli, because we found this on, on the internet, it's okay to transformatively use this for our show, for our content. What about the person who actually put it up on Reddit? Does, does Stuttering Juan have a case against that person? Potentially for conversion, which would just be theft and has nothing to do with Muli and Carlos, assuming that you guys, those guys had nothing to do with actually stealing it. So it's a non-issue in terms of copyright infringement. Yeah, because yeah, then you'd have, to, you'd, have to, you'd have to go after every single person other than Muli and Carlos who have seen this video and possibly done a reaction video to it, which, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I haven't talked to my attorney, Minnie, but uh, I'll ask <laughs> you, uh, it, wouldn't that be fair use to react to something online uh, to, to make a video? I see quite a lot of those. Assuming that the reaction is within this standard set forth by the courts for fair use, which most likely it would be, then yes. So the theory is that if you create something, someone's not just rebroadcasting it without adding anything to it correct yeah because so it's, it's interesting because i've seen people talk about marvel movies 
And now Marvel movies owned by Disney, a pretty large corporation, deep pockets, a lot of attorneys on staff. You would think that if they were doing something illegal by playing clips and then commenting on it, that they would get sued into oblivion. The issue really, guys, is that there's only there's only been a handful of cases, but the most recent case came down where a YouTuber was sued by another YouTuber for reacting to their video. Oh. And if if Stuttering Juan would just read that case, it's Hussan Zadeh, Hussan Zadeh, it's a Persian name, V. Klein. And basically exactly what you just said, they were sued by a YouTuber and the court said that you were reacting to it. You were adding something to it. Therefore, it's not a copyright infringement. So oh, that's in the legal uh, terms. That's a real popak. We call it. That's <laughs> like a, so it, what is it popak? Falls apart. Right, right, is, right between your fingers, just falls, crumbles. There's a uh, legal precedent. What is the popak reference? I don't know what that means. Uh, it might, it might be, uh, we'll explain it offline. It's fine. It's no big deal. The people who need to know what it means, know what it means. And that's all that matters. Well, it's interesting, uh, because <laughs> attorney, go ahead. What were you <laughs> saying, interesting because I do know of an attorney named Michael Popak. And, uh, <laughs> this specific attorney is in a lawsuit with Sirius XM. And, yes. uh, it just went to oral arguments with a panel of three judges. I happened to listen to that. And what they kept saying to him over and over again is that there's no legal precedent. He didn't cite any cases that showed where there was legal precedent for the right of publicity that uh, this, this is actually Stuttering John I'm talking about now, not a fictitious character. But Stuttering John is trying to sue SiriusXM for right of publicity. And the, the judges said, you know, we don't see any other cases where this has been used and uh, been successful. So it seems like if you can't find something, Minnie, that uh, people have used in the past for uh, for what uh, Stuttering Juan is threatening, then maybe it's not a good move on his part. Probably. Yeah, and to be, and to be clear regarding the the Sirius XM case, I can't I can't comment on that for for various reasons. I shouldn't, but I do. Right, <laughs> right no, you guys can do whatever you want. Okay, I good. just happen to have some special connection to it, so I just can't. But in I reality, I comment either. I. Uh, cry myself to sleep every night hoping that they call me back so i will not comment on that so well i'll say i'll say this think about the the interns that weren't getting paid for all those years on the show sure sure then were they actually signing away their rights to use their work most of them weren't now i don't like california law i love new york law for cases like that so assuming that someone didn't actually sign anything that's what new york requires here uh, I don't know what attorney, I don't know anything that what John did uh, subsequent to me and him potentially even thinking about something like this. But to me, the people that work there and never signed the way their rights, and if they're still using their work today, potentially they have a case in, under New York law. I don't know anything about California. Yeah, well, that, that's not the angle that uh, this particular pair that have teamed up for this are going after. They're using California well, it, law to write publicity. But it is interesting because they were sued by um, uh, music groups because they were playing all these songs on the 50s and 60s channel. And these musicians said, you know, well, we're not getting any royalties for you guys playing our songs every single day. And they won. They and, settled, and, yeah. so, and so, for example, I know comedians that uh, – you know, have that get paid via uh, um, the comedy channel on Sirius playing their work. So I kind of see that, you know, let's say somebody worked there. Let's say they worked there for 15 years. You know, let's say every now and then some of their bits get played on Best Of. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it's a little gray area there. As much as I hate to side with stuttering Juan. But let's be honest, they don't ever play stuttering wand stuff. There's no. no also, there's, I should make the comment that copyright for music is very different than any other form of entertainment. Th that's very strict. You can't run four seconds of a song on YouTube without right. there being a copyright infringement. Whereas you can play 10 seconds of a movie or 20 seconds of another video and it's fine. You can have transformative. But with music, you cannot do that. It's very different. Yeah, it makes sense too, right? Because what can you really add to a song uh, while it's actually playing? Hmm. Well, yeah, in that in that case, it makes sense. Unless you're doing a sweet mashup like Kid Rock, that obviously <laughs> you're making it your own. 
Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, true. All right, so let's get into this um, hypothetical text string that uh, we recently were made aware of because it's interesting that someone who wants to bring up a legal case would start mm. by maybe threatening said legal case as opposed to just serving the papers necessary. Right. To get so, it started. And, and, so whatever would call is referring to is that I received the text message from somebody and they were asking if I represented uh, Muli and, and Carlos. And I said, I wasn't. And then proceeded to give me more information about the case. And then when I had referenced that, that you probably don't have a case, then that person didn't want to talk to me anymore. And then I told that Sorry, person. wrong number. <laughs> New phone, who dis? So, <laughs> you know what's cool? You know what I said to John? I said, John, the best thing about you is I'll tell you that you're too sensitive. And then you'll tell me that you're not sensitive. And then you will completely disregard what you said and you become sensitive again in terms of blocking people. And I think like for us, part of John's charm is that he doesn't understand that aspect of his life. Right. I mean, like if he was, if he, if let's say he listened to me, he didn't block anyone and react. And I don't think John would be that fun. And you wouldn't be, you wouldn't even have a a 5,000 subscribers Carl, because what else would you do? I mean, I only watch the oh, videos yeah. where you make fun of John. That's right? what I, so like, that's, so I think everybody watches. Listen, uh, you know, I mean, he, he he brought out something in me that I've been sitting on for a while where I'm just like, I'm not going to react to this guy. I don't need to. He needs me to. And then finally, I was just like, he wore me down. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> forced I your have. hand. I'm going to react and I'm going to and I'm going to say something here that I didn't think I'd ever say. Because you know me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm all heart. I'm a very positivity kind of guy, but it felt good. Well, I really what, liked it. I miss it. What did you actually say? I said a lot. I said about it. <laughs> but, like but what was the main your main argument against him or main put down? Well, for I, you know, for example, in that video, he talks about how he doesn't know me. He, he doesn't know me other than putting my calls through, and it's like he knows me like he knows me and he's and he's acting and then he proceeds much like every troll they go i hate you your show sucks yeah. and then they tell you every show that you've done and every part of every show and every line that you've said so he he's sitting here trying to take this high road of going i don't know you i've never fucked with you i've never started anything with you and i'm like going into my phone and there's dms of him going why are you such a pussy like out of the blue that's his hello to me yeah. and ironically what you brought up a minute ago vince is so funny because i this guy that started this made these videos calling me out has blocked me on twitter <laughs> he blocked me yeah, and I want to point something out, Vince, to your point. We made fun of Stuttering John's show four years ago on Who Are These Podcasts, and like most shows that we do, we just moved on. His reaction to us just kind of goofing on him, saying his show sucked, was that we're nobodies and we're losers, and so we played that, reacted to that. Next thing you know, he's going to sue us, he's going to break our legs, and this is what's really, that's why we like him, right? That's why he's engaging, because he overreacts, he's thin You know skins. how frustrating it is? You know how frustrating it is when a nobody says you're a nobody? <laughs> that's why. That's why I said it to him in my last episode, because I want to piss him off. Well, that. actually, here's the thing, because, I mean, he is right about I mean, you're not you're not a loser, but in the end, John <laughs> has has made it in this industry, the entertainment industry. You got he was on network television, so I don't think anyone really, ha- all of us on. has. Let's let's. I mean, can we put a little <laughs> little asterisk next to the on? I mean, I'm sorry. The, the odds of him, um, anyone making it to that level. Uh, I know he doesn't have necessarily the financial success, but he has made it compared to everyone that's making fun no, you're of him 100% now. Right. So, time you're out. 100%. I just want to say the best thing about Vince is that he trolls you when he's on the show with you. Yeah, he did that when he asshole. was John's sidekick. He did that to me when I had him on the show. He's doing it to us now. That's what I love about Vince. Like That's what makes it fun. That's what makes the conversation fun. I don't know why John fired you from that role because you were great as his sidekick he's, or he's co-host. great. He's yes. great. Minnie, Minnie is a Minson is a real prick. Don't deal with that. <laughs> yeah, that fucker. guy's a problem. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's that's the thing with John is, is my personality and, and my shtick would never work with with his because I will go against him. I just heard him saying, and maybe Shuli, you can get a reaction. I guess Howard's saying that everyone in the grand old party, any any Republican now, is crazy for the most part. And before you react, I'll say that I have years and years of audio from Stern. He's always been a general election Democrat, no matter what. Uh, except for right after 9-11, he, was, he wanted to bomb everyone and he was with uh, Bush. But for the most part, actually for all the part, he is a Democrat in terms of general election, not local. The presidential election, he has always been a Democrat, which is common amongst Long Island Jews, not Las Vegas Jews. So it's right. not something that's uncommon. So now he's bashing people for being Republican, basically saying that if you're Republican, you're you're crazy. Oh, Senator John might sue him. That's his shtick. Watch yeah. out. Uh, c- c- copyright infringement. <laughs> well, that's what John started. After John listed and named the 100 people that are in his chat room, then he said, well, I don't usually uh, agree with Howard Stern, but, uh, you know, I think that the GOP, all everyone in the GOP is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's his whole that's his whole thing now. He's probably said that Howard Stern stole that from him. I've heard him say that before. I know Gary's listening to my show and then telling him what to say. <laughs> You know, we're we're in such a crazy time in this world where, you know, you got all these people on both sides that are that are all crazy. And then and then today I see on Twitter a video from the rapper Red Man, who I've been listening to since I was 16, telling everybody, stop watching the news and stop picking a side and just fucking go out and live life. Amen. And it's crazy to me how how like just we just whirlpooled into this fucking thing, man. And people are so deep. They're so far. Howard talked about filling potholes with executed fucking prisoners as one of his running platforms in New York. Like, you know, I get that people change and people evolve, but fuck man, you know, he made such a hard left and he's all in now. He's like, I don't give a fuck if I lose, let's say 40% of my audience because they're Republicans. Uh, Fuck them. Like he's just, he's all in. Well, the math's pretty know easy. Know, but, yeah. The math's pretty easy on this one, Julie. That would be forty people. So I yeah. think that's fine. All right. I don't know. They didn't. They still haven't worked out a whole ratings thing there yet, but uh, they're working on it. So my friend and my yeah, I want to get the actual ratings for the show now, like the real ratings, like how many people are actually watching. And my friend works in the IT department there, like high up, but he still won't reveal that information to me. Yeah, you got to get Putin in the mix if you want those numbers, dude. You're going to have to have some Russian cyber action going on because they ain't looking to share those anytime soon, I'll tell you that. I do know this, Vince, because there was that article that came out in the New York Post and uh, well, it's probably a year and a half ago now. It was, it was a pretty big deal when it came out. And what was cited in that is that they did a survey of people who have a subscription to SiriusXM and fewer than 10% of those people said they subscribed for Howard Stern. And if you had taken the same survey in 2007 or 2012, you're going to be over 90%. So the uh, audience has definitely shrunk quite a bit. Based and on that, that. and that's just that's listening on Sirius, right? Even even another example, I did one episode of uh, Your Mom's House. Yeah. And that YouTube video has more hits than all of my YouTube videos from the show that I've been on in clips or whatever to promote put together all of them, just one episode. So I know they're trying. That's, that's their like big thing to get people, you know, to get the online, but like you can't do that by turning off comments and, and not letting people say what they want to say. Oh, serious. Doesn't allow you to comment on their Twitter account. No, I don't know about Instagram, but it, Twitter account, you can't. Um, uh, Stern Show account, and hell no. So getting back to Suttering John real quick, I was looking for this clip. I was going back to some old episodes of WATP. I, I wasn't able to find it because we've talked about him for many hours now. But there was a time when I played this song on my show that John had played on his show. He grabbed the acoustic guitar, and he's singing, and he's playing. And he screwed it up really bad. It was really embarrassing. So we had some fun with it. So John gets on with Royce, who was his co-host at the time. <laughs> And he says, they're not allowed to play my song. They can't do that. And Royce goes, yeah, I'm not worried about that. Like, we play clips from Howard Stern. And John's response was, yeah, because they're talking about me. So, of course, uh, I'm going to play clips if they're talking about me. So now he's talking about Julie. 
behind yeah. his paywall. Shuli yeah. plays it, reacts to it, and now I guess that law has changed in his mind or something. Like, why does he think this is different? Was it the song that starts with "Poor little Jew boy thought he was a coon"? <laughs> no, but I have recently talked about that one too. Shuli, do you know it? Do you even know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the song yeah, okay. that couldn't believe Howard didn't put on the album <laughs> right on private parts that he came up. Was it that was, the one? It was actually no. when he was an intern, he wrote it, and he wanted it to be the show's theme song. Right, and he couldn't. I just remember he was shocked that Howard wasn't into it. I can't believe they goofed the lyrics. <laughs> and it's, it's 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 super blatant, even for the time. We have to get that song up. It is it is amazing. You guys talk. I'll find it. I have it. I have it. Here. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you're on the one show that you'll have that in about thirty five yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. Let me give me a second. I'll yeah, he, he goes, poor little Jew boy thought he was a coon, and I forgot how the hook goes. <laughs> well, I mean, that's you really remember the most important part, <laughs> in my opinion. People, you, you play, you say those verses to people, and they're not. After you finish, you thought he was a coon. People aren't like, I wonder what the chorus is like. <laughs> and back to our uh, politics being divided. I can't stand when people say, "Well, everyone needs to come together and, and act as not one." That. I mean, I, I know, I know a few places where that happened. Uh, Germany, for example, where everyone just supports <laughs> one person. <laughs> right, uh, right. I, and I get our system benefits from everyone being dug in, and the end product generally is what makes the country great. It sucks because half the people are Republican, half are Democrat. That's great, right. and you're never going to change most of those people anyway. So right. it's really the rub that comes out of that conflict. And we are pussies compared to, let's say, even with in terms of Hamilton. Uh, you know how they settled their disputes. I mean, they went across this river over here and dueled when they yeah. had a political issue, like right? Like and what men. do we do? <laughs> what do we do? I send, I, a, send I, a tweet. I duel on Call of Duty. Uh, Carl hates it, but that's where I duel like a man. <laughs> oh, good. Can we talk about that for the next twenty-five minutes, please? Uh, Can't wait to hear us. about it. Don't so make how would, do you, dude? So this song. The, <laughs> Although it's not so controversial, it was really John's like first week or two and as an intern, and he came up with a few songs. This was the first one where he really thought Howard was going to love it, mm -hmm. and that's why it, it was so controversial at the time. And let me just thank you, by the way, uh, Juan, for uh, bringing us together. I haven't talked to Vince in a while, so I appreciate the text. It's helped uh, bring us back together. Nice. What, yeah, what I recommend is that eventually you get John on with you, and that should be fun. I don't know if he'll if he'll. Agree I made him it. an offer my last episode. You did. I, I, yeah, I yeah, said. but you're assuming he watches it or or he'll get it. I really got to convey it to him so he actually can say yes or no. Well, I don't have his number. Can you get me his address? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, what's funny is that. So Stuttering John likes to hide behind the, I don't listen to his show. I don't know what they're up to, but the people tell me, well, you know, I, I have my <laughs> moderators and they tell me what's going on. So they'll tell him ridiculous shit that he just automatically believes. And it gives him yeah. an out on things. He can be like, what did yeah. they say about me? What were they saying about my kids? Like nothing, but. We used to do a thing with, uh, when we were on the killers of comedy show, we used to do a thing where we would, uh, they would just be wild fucking heckling assholes in the crowd. And we didn't want to be the asshole. So we'd be like, hey, guys, listen, management said they're going to throw people out if you heckle. We, we don't want anybody to get thrown out. So, But really, in our head, we're like, somebody's got to calm these fucking animals down. Uh, just so everyone knows, we had an echo going. And I did call. I just watched one of your shows where you were making fun of someone for echoing and echoing back and, and yeah. the triple echo and the echo forever. So. Yeah, I think it's it's cleared up now, though. That's what's great about Carl Show is is he's a man of the people. He makes fun of the people's problems because he lives through the people's problems well, as well. What I like to say is clean it up and post. <laughs> I make mistakes <laughs> yeah, too, is, and then I make it true. seem like I didn't. That's the key that to success, true. right there. What if I were to play this right Here's now? Here's a story about a Jew's success. Do do um, do up do do um, do up. He grew up with blacks. His mind was a mess. Poor little Jew boy thought he was a coon. After dancing the horror, he had nowhere to go. Do do um, do up 
do do um, do up who would have thought he'd be king of radio hell to king howard howard is the king howard 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 stern ty scott muni to a pole light a match and watch him burn i mean let's face it scott muni's throat is a mess soupy sales needs an enema and scott shannon wears a dress now this is a theme song so you'd think that that'd be over at that point no he starts verse number two. Well, Howard said we see ya to NBC. <laughs> do do um do up do do um do up. It seemed they got jealous of his popularity. Do do um do up do do um do up. Now Howard makes more money than ever before. Do do um do up do do um do up. He's a king, great top rate ratings whore. Howard is a slut. He's a rich <laughs> ruling slut. Howard, Howard, Howard Stern. <laughs> Ty Scott Muni to a pole, light a match, and watch him burn. I mean, let's face it, Scott Muni's throat is a mess. Soupy Sales needs an enema, and Scott Shannon wears a dress. Why was why were the choruses the same? If you're writing like a, a fun <laughs> satirical song, you want to add more jokes, right? At the second chorus. <laughs> You know who he should sue is the guy who recorded his audio for the book that looked at him after that take and went, we got it. Yeah, That's the guy it. you should sue. You guys are such haters. I want to see what you did when you were 20 walking into <laughs> a major show. That was a great fucking song. It's a great it song. Was. <laughs> and, and actually, he, didn't, he does an English accent in that part, too, which is cool. I want to see what you guys are doing behind the shitty music with Vinny. Please, Shuey, to your point, I like to think that he did take twenty or thirty takes at that, and they're like, "All right, this is the best one. We'll use this one. We are on a budget here. We got to move on." I think after take fourteen, the guy's like, "I'll put it all together and send it to you." (laughs) Yeah, we'll figure it out in post. We got it. Yeah. So the song you played, I guess John sang. Poor little Jubei thought he was a coon for his book, but the actual song itself is really good, a lot better than than what you played for us. And in fairness to John, that was his like first week on the on the job, so yeah, he was kissing Howard's ass. But the the thing was, he didn't realize that saying "poor little Jubei thought he was a coon" would be offensive and, <laughs> and not necessarily appropriate uh, for him to actually do. He also yeah, well. he also says, "I didn't think this was funny. I just knew that Howard would think it was funny." He likes right. to pretend like, yeah, I'm also very offended by this. I got Vince is painting a picture like he just walked off a farm and into the city <laughs> and, and into a building. And he's like, he didn't know any better. He's, you know, Jew boys and coons. I mean, what are you, gonna well, do? you can't fault the guy. Well, let me ask you this, uh, Vince. So theoretically, there's a guy named Stuttering Juan who wrote an autobiography. And then, oh, 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 and then he made it available. <laughs> Uh, where you could you could download it. So I went ahead and purchased this, and I've been doing an ongoing series on uh, Patreon, but I put some stuff up on YouTube too, where I've been listening to Suttering Juan's book and kind sure. of deconstructing it. Now, this is something that costs money. I, it's not a paywall, but you know, it's a similar type of concept. He has not gone after me for that. Why is that? I don't know, but in New York, there is an exception for... <laughs> audio read by a book so there's different types of of copyright and obviously this is something where someone's reading a book so it's actually an automatic uh victory if he would bring it and then the damages per page or i think are seventy five thousand per page i don't know if you're <laughs> if you're lying to me that you're actually doing that but i mean i wouldn't let john starting juan know that so I, i'm <laughs> i'm playing clips of it i'm not playing playing pages at a time i'm playing clips and, uh, the court does not care. I mean, if it's transformative, content. if you're reading, it's similar to a song. If you're reading a book, it's it's called per se liability with the well, per I page. Li- I don't want to argue with you about the law, sir, but I don't think that's true because if you're using it uh, to review or if you're using it to um, critique, you can certainly take passages of a book and print them in a newspaper. As you're reviewing or critiquing a book, that's perfectly legal. Look, if that's what you think the law is, I'm, I'm just saying I wouldn't let <laughs> broadcast this to John because those are the easiest lawsuits to win. When it comes to a lawsuit like John is threatening, oh, Juan is threatening with our friends Muli and Carlos. Yeah. Um, what, what? So how does that work? Like, what's the process of that? What does he do? And then what's the next step? And what can they do? 
uh, if they wanted to find out, you know, or get involved in gotcha. this lawsuit. What are some of the pros and cons for each side, I guess, right. is what I'm asking. So anyone with about $300 can file a lawsuit. Oh, so we're they're fine. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be a few months then. Okay, good. So you at least need $300, and then you actually file a complaint, and then you two would get served. You don't serve it through a random person like... <laughs> mini you yeah, have to right. go to the person and have it served in person or potentially via mail now there's an issue for you guys assuming Muli and carlos don't live in california then there's a whole issue whether the court has jurisdiction over both of those two <laughs> and then they will look at your connection to the state of california if that's where stuttering juan lived but let's does, say stuttering does, can i just ask real quick does the person filing the lawsuit usually go around asking for the persons that they're suing address is yes, that a normal that's totally normal, normal. that's whatever oh, that's okay. what we always do we just ask random people if that's where <laughs> the address is and then for whatever reason we don't file the suit we just yeah. ask that yeah, yeah. i missed so, that episode of perry mason Go ahead. so let's just say john <laughs> wins the case he then has to prove damages no matter what Right. So there are a thing called statutory damages, which we were talking about with Carl, that are automatic. But then he's got to show actual loss. So in theory, Mooley and Carlos would have access to discovery, which would include starting Juan's tax returns. If he has any businesses, the incorporation documents, the corporate bank accounts and the corporate tax returns as well. So any type of financial information that he's claiming that he lost money because of, he would have to produce before you would actually get to some dollar amount. What if stuttering Juan's hiding stuff in offshore accounts (laughs) in other... In other, <laughs> in other, well, in theory, terms. since he's the plaintiff, he yeah. wouldn't really matter so much because he has to prove with documents how much right. he actually lost because you stole one of you guys stole his his beer on the balcony. Would sure. Stuttering Juan have to open up his books before the uh, actual trial would begin? Yes, and there's two parts of a case: liability. Were you guys liable for violating his copyright? Let's say it wasn't deemed to be fair use, and then damages come. And so he's got to prove what amounts he was damaged. So at that point, uh, documents would have already been exchanged, yes. And then he would have to use those documents to prove. And then you would go through his bank accounts, all of his YouTube accounts, any type of financial accounts from YouTube or any other place where he gets money, Patreon, you're entitled to all that information. And then you would do your analysis to determine if, let's say, Carlos did steal it and he did infringe on john's rights how much did he lose based upon his bank account Mm, okay all right so So you would get all that information including uh, tax returns as well here's a fun what if the bank account's at a loss already how (laughs) then what do you do what if he's overdrawn (laughs) right right you go we didn't do this one all right here's a fun question for you vids so let's say that discovery happens. We're opening up our books to each other, and I get to see specifically how much money the stuttering Juan character makes on Patreon and through YouTube. Could I use that information to like have a goof on my show, or you know, maybe play well, like what a, if a you contest? React to it? Could could he, could Carl react to something Carlos yeah. and Mooley found out? Yeah, that's a good question. Can I react to it? Generally, yes. So everything that yes! is in a lawsuit is public, and it's it's public for a reason, right? We don't want to keep things private, even though you may not want them to be private. The public needs to see, and we need to react to it uh, going forward based upon the precedent it sets. The only issue would be maybe you would have to redact his social security number. You would have to redact sure. his social security number maybe. on his tax oh, returns. Okay. But but the amounts and everything else most likely are going to be in the papers. So anyone who has access to the to the court Guys, file coming this fall, the the <laughs> the Mooley and Carlos show <laughs> available on all platforms. So here's what I'm thinking: we have a uh, a game that we play. We have to guess how much money. Starring Juan makes off of YouTube. And, uh, you know, it's like Price is Right rules. Close is yeah. about going over. Well, I we can get how many, how many subscribers does he have? There's no way to know. As far I as mean, paid? 
There's no, no, no. The actual just YouTube subscriber. Well, he makes money off of pe- people who actually subscribe and pay for YouTube, and then he makes money on Patreon. I, yeah, I, I know how they make. I know how people make money off YouTube. I was just oh, asking okay. how many subscribers. He actually are. makes money off of Carlos because uh, people go to his show after listening to Carlos. <laughs> this is true. I think he has like yeah. thirteen thousand fans. Right. I think he, he's had that number think, for years. I think realistically, he owes us more than we owe him. <laughs> No I shit. think at this point, if we were going to tally everything up, especially with Carlos bringing over so many people to his show, I mean, think of how many trolls have donated to him just to troll him. Yes, like, people I know, friends of mine have done it. I know. That's what I'm saying. So you add all those donations up plus subscriptions, I think we have a case. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting you bring up because in that case that I told you about, the Klein case where the YouTuber was sued by another YouTuber, yeah. the court basically said that, yes, part of copyright law is the ability to create future work. And, and that includes jobs that are being created now by people that are reacting to other work. So, yes, it's a part of the analysis whether you're actually adding value to John's work I'm using work as a copyright. Well, work. we're not yeah. hurting it any. I can tell you that. <laughs> no, definitely not. Yeah. Let's look at again. Let's get another example of some of this uh, copyrighted work that John's so proud of. Behind that, the paywall. Behind the paywall. This is what you get. This is an advertisement right now, everybody. If you want to subscribe yeah. on Sorry John's Patreon or through YouTube, this is what you get that no one else does. Never had a problem with you ever. Uh, the desktop Never. videos. Uh, no, we're Never said anything bad about you. You know, I didn't know you, but you know, what is there to say? I could tell you a lot. Of, I could say a lot of bad things about you, you know, from what I hear from, you know. Uh, oh, the audio's not coming through now because I had to turn that yeah, off yeah, yeah. so that yeah. you guys could hear what was going on. All right. That, it'll, it'll work in post. That'll be fine. It's all it's, good. It's, he's just, uh, he's, he's, this is literally, I've never seen somebody get an infomercial and be upset about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he's, right. Exactly. We're literally giving him an infomercial, and he's like, hey, Promoting take that, that down immediately. I don't want anybody knowing about me. Vince, I have another question um, what, as it relates to uh, to the law. So let's say this Stuttering Juan character has a copyright for the Stuttering John podcast. Mm-hmm. Does that mean there's a copyright for anything any piece of material that comes out from the Stuttering John podcast? Does that mean he's copyrighted the name of the show and no one else could put out a show called the Stuttering John podcast? Yeah, I mean, that's more of a technical question. There's a difference between trademark and and copyright, and that's outside my scope okay. of because I'm more into litigation. So I'm not sure where, you, where, where are you well, really asking. I guess my point is, do, can we assume that he owns some type of copyright for this work just because he's the one who did it? Like, just talking on the internet does not mean that you own that. You've put it out on the internet. You need to, like, file for a copyright, I would think. Well, isn't it, and, and there's also third parties that you're putting it out through, right? There's, yeah. like, Zoom or StreamYard or whatever system you're using. Like, who's to say that they don't own it because it's on their platform? Yeah, but I wouldn't necessarily use that argument if you were ever to get sued. The, the the real issue is, are you using it in a fair use manner? Well, yeah, the answer that is, to me. <laughs> the answer that is obviously yes. So that's yeah. why I'm just trying to explore other reasons why this guy's an idiot. <laughs> it's not, it's not <laughs> that'd be that's fun. fair, and that's fair. <laughs> that's how I like to use my time, and that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> fair for him. <laughs> Well, right. I, I, you know, part of me has never uh, wanted to be sued more in my life <sighs> I know. Uh, than right now. Especially if it's on... both of us at the same time. You know how much fun that would be? Oh, my God. Oh, I we can't. Do, can we hypothetically could Mooley and Carlos stream on Twitch IRL uh, during the court proceeding? How oh, do we get the court proceedings to yes. be televised? Well, how does that work? You, you generally won't assuming he's going to see you in federal court. And the court uh, that does not allow for any type Fuck! of recording. <laughs> Actually, we got to get a hold of Springer. Springer's putting anybody on. Let's I move know to California. I'll move yeah. to California if we can make this a state case. Judy Wapner. Let's find them. Somebody's out <laughs> yes. there. One of my other famous clients was Benji's old girlfriend. Remember that girl who was really Ivy? skinny? Yeah. So Ivy, Ivy Supersonic, yeah. she recorded the Madoff hearing in audio and got busted. Really? So, yeah. 
we eventually got it or she got it dismissed or just got it squashed. But yeah, she got in trouble for the audio recording of it. She went in there and did it. <laughs> I no, thought it was well, awesome. Listen, when you're, when you're, when you're a super skinny chick with a squirrel tattoo on your neck, you're going to stick out uh, in a courtroom. Probably not best to have a recorder. It's like that. What's <laughs> happening episode with the doobie brothers. It just did it fall out of her trench coat when she stood up. So John saying he doesn't know you, what type of interaction have you had with John from the beginning? <laughs> Biblically? Uh, no, I knew him at first from calling into the show. He was the first one that tipped me off. He would say, Julie, Howard loves your stuff. He loves your stuff. Keep calling in. So I did. And we had met um, face to face at a stand up comedy show out in Vegas. Um, we met again out in New York when I went out there to do to sit in on the show for the first time. So, yeah, we had met a few times. We knew of each other. We we weren't best pals, but he definitely knew me and I knew him. Yeah. So basically I was gave- I was the guy he called when he left his uh VHS cassette of his uh street interviews that he used to play before his set when he would go up and do stand up, he'd play 15 minutes of this uh highlight reel from the Stern show. And then go up and do seven minutes. And so he forgot it at the hotel. And, and he knew me then to call me and ask me to go get it for him, which I did. What hotel was it? Palace Station. Oh, God. Yeah. Have you, Carl, do you know what Palace Station is? No, I've not been there. Picture like the worst, <laughs> the worst shitty casino amongst all beautiful casinos. And yeah. that's it. I didn't even know they had rooms there. So wait, it was on the yeah. Strip? It's, yeah, it's, technically. It's a little behind the street. It's literally okay. right next to the freeway. It's right okay. next to the like if you veered off the freeway and wanted to kill yourself, you'd end up in their buffet. I've been I've it's been to right. Vegas a dozen times and I've never even heard of that place. Yeah, yeah. it's that it's at best a local stop. And okay. even locals don't like fucking going there. How'd you get it back? I I went in there and I just started. I talked to the front desk. I, he goes, I schmoozed, he goes man. do you know the fuck Centering John is? If he has to come yeah. down here and get it, you're not going to be happy. I and I was like, I just schmoozed him. I just talked. I just talked to him like a, like there was. I wasn't taking no for an option. I was going to get this video for him. Uh, you know, because he was telling me he's like, dude, if they find out that I have this thing on the road, he's going to kill me. He's going to lose it. Blah blah blah. I felt bad for him. Did you get to go up to the room, or did they actually send someone up they, there? No, they sent someone up and brought it, brought it to. I'm me. just curious where he actually left it. Yeah, that I don't know. Yeah, no, because I mean, there's stories that already tells where John leaves leaves ten thousand dollar checks on the on the floor yeah. of the motel <laughs> yeah. and things yeah. like that. So I don't know why you guys are always hating on John. Man, these are like He's classic stories, yeah. and it's it's, it's there entertaining are, there are to classic me. Classic stories. The classic John, I'm a huge fan of. I, so I've why don't you leave him alone? It. I mean, why are you guys always stealing his shit and picking on him for real? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what is the real beef you have with him? Hey, who are you not representing here? <laughs> yeah, Us seriously. Or him? So, I mean, <laughs> Vince, I, I wanted to ask you something else, and maybe I should have tipped you off before we did this, but. Are you familiar with Brendan Schaub? Yeah. Okay. He's a fighter, right? Yeah, he mm-hmm. was a UFC guy, yeah. and now he's transitioned into podcasting and comedy, and he gets picked on quite a bit by the internet. There's actually a, uh, a pretty large subreddit that uh, hammers him on a daily basis. And this kid... And that's not fair, Carl. He gets picked on from stand-up comics as well, oh, not just the internet. Th- that's very true. Yes. Good point. Yeah. He made a comment that he is Eskimo buddies or Eskimo brothers with Dana White. Do you know what that, that yeah, statement means? It means they fucked the same girl. Okay, do you know who they fucked or who he claims they fucked? No. Interesting. All right, I'll think about it. Ronda, Ronda Rousey. Yes. Yeah, because I, I did hear that uh, they had gotten together at one point. I was well, going to guess Muli Carlos. <laughs> but that was, He's that a better was, man than me, man. I wouldn't be able to handle that. <laughs> I just saw another case out of Vegas uh, related. Dana White won his lawsuit against the boyfriend of a stripper in Brazil that was suing him for banging his girlfriend. It's like 
do you really want to win that case and have to go home to your wife and explain? <laughs> we once we once were c- contemplating filing against Ashley Madison yeah. for the data breach, yeah. but we couldn't find one goddamn plaintiff to actually file the case. Of the millions of guys that were on there cheating, one of them was willing to go public and say, hey, I'll be the lead plaintiff in the case. I'm surprised because I feel like a lot of them lost their marriages over that because their name had already leaked at that point. You'd think that a few of them would be better and you can still a guy could still lie his way out of that it's tough <laughs> to put on a three-piece suit and be like i'm not doing anything today you know i got it for another and how cool is this That's once we point. file and then it settles the the name plaintiffs are the name plaintiffs you can generally find the name plaintiff but the millions of guys will get a check for four dollars in the mail <laughs> what do you what do you do when you get that check yeah it's not uh, as discreet as you want it to be why are you getting yeah. paid from this website? I don't know. They'll give it to everyone. <laughs> so anyway, just to uh, finish up my... Way, yeah, tell, tell him about Brendan Schaub. So to finish up my thought, because I yeah. want to get your take on this. So Brendan Schaub is goofed on by a lot of different people and, and clowned. Well, recently, this guy named Kyle, who has a show, you might have seen his show on YouTube before. He used to go by Saiyan Z. Now he's unique or uniqueness. He's, he's kind like of a, a mumbler. Zinny in training, kind <laughs> he's, of. He's a bit of a mumbler, and uh, he likes to talk about Howard Stern and Opie and Anthony and all these kind of things. So he was playing clips from Brendan Schaub's show and and clowning him a little bit. Brendan Schaub filed a lawsuit, got his entire YouTube channel taken down, and now they're in a legal battle over it. So this sounds similar to what we were talking about with your other uh, case law precedent, but I wasn't yeah, sure if you knew about this. I didn't know about it, but... The Sans guy, does he have a, a lisp or something weird yes. about his, the way yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. talks? Yeah. Actually, I had a, we had to take something down with him. And we, we filed for, for a copyright complaint against him just through YouTube because he was using one of our Artie videos, one of my son's videos, actually. Oh, no kidding. We, okay. we found Artie in, when he was doing his time working in the gas station. I've seen for, that video. And, yeah. So God, I, I hate that video, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything else to do. So what I did was I wrote on a $20 bill, like not, not for drug use or drug dealer don't accept or something like that. And, you <laughs> yeah. know, like not, oh, not valid for drugs. And right. I gave it to him. He's like, who the hell is this guy? But yeah, we had to hunt them down and find them uh, to see where he was and if he was still alive or not. But yeah. So the reason uh, why so- I bring this up is because. The, what's happened from this case, and I actually had that guy Kyle on my show recently. Shuli was there, and Kyle said that even though there is some paperwork because they showed it to YouTube, which is why YouTube took down his channel, he says that he hasn't been served yet. And I don't know if that was just a move that Brendan did just to get him to shut up, but it's totally backfired on Brendan because everyone now, like – YouTubers who have millions of followers are now talking about this and everyone's goofy on this guy who claims to be a comedian and against cancel culture, who's now suing people for goofing on him. And a lot of times I feel like these types of lawsuits kind of backfire on the people who file them. Potentially. Uh, he has some money so he can hire potentially decent attorneys. Right. But look at the public. If you're telling me people with millions of subscribers are talking about him, even if it's negative, I think it's probably more valuable that he's doing it. I get what you're saying in terms of filing the lawsuit. Generally speaking, it's not a good idea in, in this context, especially if you're not talking about a lot of money. You're going to waste yeah. a lot of money if you actually have an attorney. You don't need an attorney to file. You can do it yourself. Uh, but be prepared to present all of your financial data to whoever you're filing if you are successful. So you have to get to that point. And most people won't get to that point if you're following the fair use laws that are applicable to YouTube and, and any other type of work. Well, it's interesting because this uh, stuttering Juan character that we were talking about earlier did put in a complaint through YouTube to try to have some of my videos taken down. And YouTube told him that this fell under fair use and they said they would not be taking them down. And I'm wondering why wouldn't the first move be a cease and desist? Yeah. So there's some technicalities regarding infringement. They don't have to do it, but it would give you the opportunity to cease and desist uh, what they feel is an infringement on their rights. Yeah. And that has to do with damages as well. I mean, if you didn't receive that, then I'd say you're okay, but he could still file just because YouTube makes its determination doesn't prevent John from, or Juan from filing against Carlos. No, but it should you know, discourage the- him. <laughs> if YouTube's going, yeah, no, we watch this. It's fine. You would think that would discourage uh, Mr. Juan a little bit. 
Yeah, but YouTube has no jurisdiction over civil matters, and they could, they're a private organization. They don't have to allow any videos on their platform if they don't want to. I know, so, and, and yet they're al- allowing me to keep my video up. All they do is take people down all the time. That's what, that's what YouTube <laughs> right. is famous for at this point. Yeah. And even they're like, you don't have a case here, buddy. What are you doing? I, uh, Vince, in your expertise, in your opinion, I have offered uh, Stuttering Juan uh, or John, either of them, to come on my program and to speak face to face. In your opinion, do you think I'm making a mistake? Or what are your thoughts on that? No, I think that would be cool. Why? Why would it be a mistake? It would be fun, mm-hmm. and it would be great for both channels to to cross over. And at this point, at th- these levels, it's what you should be doing. And will John do it? I don't know, but uh, I can maybe. Ask him the next time he threatens one of you, one of Mooley or, or yeah. Carlos. Next time he sends a threat, uh, ask him if he'd want to come on my show and what's his address, please. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, by the way, Sheila, I have that information. I'll give it to you offline. Thank you. Also, it's funny that you bring that up, Vince, because you're right. That's what he should be doing at this point. Is he not aware of radio wars? Did he grow up in this? But that's how you both grow each other's channels is by having some back and forth, not just like no, they he- better shut up or I'll sue them. Like what? So he fun. does radio wars differently. He <laughs> starts them and then blocks the people he started them with. Yeah, I know. What it's is a different that? kind of war. It's it goes back attack. to the, the original point with John is if if you want to get him to change, he wouldn't be as fun. Yeah, that's so true. yeah, that would be the normal thing to do. But he's not going to do it, and that's just his personality. He'll never do that. Based, so, tr- translation I, of what Vince just said, if John were a smart man, he wouldn't be as fun to make fun of. Yes, I agree. Right. Good point. Right. Making right. a lot of points here, Vince. That was Minnie that said that, not Vinny. <laughs> not Vinny. Vinny's a friend of, yeah. of John. He, he, You're talking shit! <laughs> <laughs> well, how many times has John, well, surely, has he said to you, you guys get into a fight, you're never talking again, and then a few months later, he can come back and he'll talk with you? But not a lot of those with us. It was more of like, he wouldn't talk to me, and then he would go on his show and claim that I leaked a summit video of the serious summit meeting, and then he wouldn't, and then, and then he wouldn't talk to me again, and then he'd send me a DM asking what hotel we're staying at in LA, that he's going to come and Hold on, Shuey, can I ask you a question? Yeah. So when he said that you're the one who leaked that video, you were still an employee of the Howard Stern show and a serious. And 100%. saying that could have obviously put your job in jeopardy. I assume that he then went on and apologized for that mistake. Never. Never oh, what? once. Wait, what? Never once. Not <laughs> only that, there was another thing he said. And I'm not going to bring it up because, you know, the person's still employed there. But he accused somebody there of something. And this person came to me in a panic. In a panic. They're going, I cannot lose this job. I I don't know what he's talking about. I've I've never fucking talked to this guy. I've never like that that it's not somebody from his past that he knew. This was this was somebody he had never face to face interacted with before. And he accused them of something. And this person He had never met going, this person before? Never. Never. <laughs> yeah. And he and and this person's like, what do I do? What what if they call me in the office? What? And I go, nobody listens to this fucking guy, so don't worry about it. If I didn't get called, I I was listening, and I I know that he never necessarily said it. Sorry, nobody normal listens to this guy. (laughs) Right. Go ahead. He never said that you were the actual leak, but he was sort of implying it from my recollection that potentially you would have been. Mm. So, and then he was also implying that I guess people, Marcy was hooking up with somebody else or something like that. Something to that effect. I don't know if that's what you're referring to. Hey, I want to bring in our friend, Brian Johnson. Brian, what's happening, buddy? Hey, boys. Andy. (laughs) Good to see you. Producer Chris. Hi. Carl. Hey, man. How's everybody doing? Doing fantastic. Thanks for coming on. I wanted you for your opinion on what's been going on with our friend Stuttering John lately. And oh boy, are you familiar with this serious XM lawsuit that he has going on? I sure am. With the great yeah. Michael Buck. <laughs> so I got the <laughs> audio from oral arguments in front of the panel of three judges. And so you have the attorneys from Sirius XM and then you have Michael Popak. And they're going through, the judges are asking them questions and they're responding to it. And I pulled some clips on here and starting off with, this is the Sirius XM attorney. Now, this might be a little bit hard to hear, so I'll kind of explain what you're going to hear here. 
Because, you know, it's just like a Zoom meeting. They don't, they're not, like, mic'd up and stuff like that. So what's happening is the serious XM attorney says Michael Popak has not been able to point out one example of serious XM violating John's right to publicity. <laughs> and the way I understand it now, and I don't understand law, and I could be off on this, but the way I understand it is the law is written so that you can't say that John endorses Sirius XM if they're not paying him to endorse Sirius XM because he has some celebrity status. So you can't like put his face on a billboard and say Sirius XM because that would imply that Stuttering John endorses it. Now, they've never done any of this. Right. They've never had a spot where it's like, <laughs> oh, Stuttering John, stick around after the break. You'll hear me on Sirius XM. Like, or, or you're listening to 80s on 8. Tune into Howard 101 to hear Stuttering John. It never happened. But that's what they're trying to... So anyway, this is the... I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> Throughout that entire period of time, including today, whatever being broadcast on Sirius XM can be heard by anyone. It's, it's very easy to do that. And he can't come up with one example to explain how it's being used in a way that would violate or potentially violate a, a right of publicity under California law. Tell me, for example, um, that we did... This, so Stuttering John says, you know, you should subscribe to Sirius XM. That, but properly, could, could give you a right of publicity claim. He can't do that. He- so what he said there was, you can listen to anything we're broadcasting on Sirius XM if you have a subscription. So those guys can pour through hours and hours of this and try to find one example, and they haven't yet. <laughs> so what are we doing? It reminds me of, like, when you used to go to school and you would walk into a classroom knowing that you didn't study for the test, knowing you're going to fail, yeah. but you're still there anyway. And that's what it seems like this guy's doing. It's like, if you, you haven't brought the necessary homework, what the fuck are you doing there? <laughs> yeah. So Michael Popak's argument is, well, we need to have discovery. We need to for the judges to say, yes, this is going to go to trial. That way we can get discovery. That way they can go through and get all of the information from Sirius. And the judge, I love what the judge says to this. And for, and for us, we think the allegations are back. sufficient to lead to the discovery to get past but the Of course, process. that's why you're here. But these, that's why we're here. Go ahead. So, if, so, these, hold on. if these allegations are sufficient, doesn't that mean everybody can get to go to summary judgment? All you have to say is they're using my persona outside the copyrighted material, period. And you're saying that's sufficiently played to get you to summary judgment. Isn't that what you're suggesting? Yeah, Michael Bullbach says, no, just the fact that we're saying there are allegations, that's sufficient enough to go to summary judgment. Just goes, well, no, I mean, you have to show us some evidence that this is going on <laughs> before we're going to waste everybody's time with it. Doesn't sound like he's going along with uh, what they're trying to pull off here. Sounds like he's leaning towards throwing this out. Yeah. <laughs> If I didn't know any better. It'll be nice because, like, so, so the stuttering John thought it was just going to sail right through to begin with. And then they hit a hurdle. They hit a little speed bump. Yep. So now if they can't clear this speed bump, it's almost twice as fun to watch it fucking well, crash and burn. My prediction is, Bri, because they thought they were going to get them to settle out of court. That was the whole goal behind this. Like, they're, they don't want to deal with this. It's going to get, you know, there's a lot of legal battles that go on. It costs money. They'll just give us a settlement. They didn't realize this was actually going to be something they had to try to go and improve. Yeah. And Sirius has deep pockets. Right. And, yeah. and, and like I said, when this first happened, is they do have deep pockets. They could pay off John to, to shut up and go away. But then you have Gorilla lining up right. at the door well, and Jackie the no, Joke I mean, Man. I mean, they can West. afford to pay their attorneys as well. Yeah. Exactly. Not, not pay the off the That's people a that they move. got fired. Right. Squash this thing immediately. Deep. Yeah, deep. If Stuttering John won, that, that would spread very quickly. Yes. Yeah. And you're right. The, the, that line would be around the corner. So this is great. This other judge talks about how confused he is because they keep talking about like, well, Sirius owns the copyright, right? And Mike Bobak's like, yeah, yeah, of course they do. So wait, what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. this, so this is my, that's, that is my fundamental question because I'm quite confused. Are these, not, are these recordings not uh, copyrighted? They're either copyrighted or copyrighted. Okay. So, so, and they're rebroadcasting these copyrighted clips, correct? Sure um, and they're permitted to do it, as I understand it, and I'm trying to figure out what the line is that you are, are asking us to draw. They're permitted to do it with respect to advertisements for the Howard Stern Show. Well, I Yes think or no? They are as long as they don't go too far. You what? can't extract. No, no. So stop, stop, please. Just give me one second then, because then my confusion grows. 
<laughs> he just told him to shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a good sign for <laughs> as long as they don't go too far. Yeah, I know. He just wants it to be such a gray area. Who knows? It's all so gray. Yeah. They, oh. Pope Alex tried to use it. Like, Could you define the word if? You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. So basically what he was tasked with, Michael Popak, was bringing in cases and citing cases that would speak to the judgment that they want. Because there needs to be a legal precedent set for this right of publicity. It's never really worked before. And uh, I thought that was funny because he's acting like, yeah, we've seen this before. And the judge goes, we looked through all the cases that you cited and none of them were, was right of publicity granted. Even though it's in a copyrightable work, and there's, there's tons of cases that we've cited in which the thing that is embedded in the copyrightable work may not itself be subject to copyright. Every, every case goes the other way on this. Every single, Jules Jordan video says you can put it on a DVD. That's preempted. Ray V versus ESPN. ESPN rebroadcast these wrestling matches. Preempted. The Laws case. Taking a portion of a recording that they have a copyright to and putting it in another song, the, the Ninth Circuit said was okay. Every single case. Every <laughs> single case. They're like, yeah, no, this is not how this works at all. Of course, Popox like citing pro wrestling and pornography. <laughs> I thought you just wanted cases. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to be a, I'd love to be a roach on the wall when John finds out that he lost. Yeah. <laughs> well, so this is what's great about it, and I know I would like to see that too. So yeah. finally, Michael Popak comes back on John's show after not after ignoring him for a week or so. He finally comes back on John's show. I didn't pull the clips, but I'll just summarize what I saw. So basically, John didn't listen to this audio. It's out there for anyone to listen to. Just like, oh yeah, I haven't gotten around to listen. It's your case. Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you listening? To You're this? the only one that's interested in. It. Well, not I'm the only one. To it. You're not, you don't have time to listen to it. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. So then Popak tries to spin it that this could be good because you know sometimes you get these questions from judges and they're just trying to scare you and then you end up uh, ends up going to trial anyway. You know you never know and it's like if anyone listens to this, it's pretty obvious this isn't going anywhere. Right. This is going to get thrown out. Well, like all the judges have this incredulous tone to their voice. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah. They're like, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I'm very confused. What point you're trying to even fucking make? Well, what I was saying was, shut up. <laughs> shut up. I, I, I'm very confused. <laughs> it was a little nicer to him than that. But. Spent all morning reading about pro wrestling and pornography for no reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I should mention, because we did update, we put on a impromptu show with Shuli and... Uh, John's former attorney, Vince, and the three of us talked about this because John threatened to sue both Shuli and myself by text messaging Vince and kind of like vague threats of like, what's Shuli's address? <laughs> you know, and this kind of stuff. And then when Vince started writing him back and going like, hey, John, just, you know, you know, fair use. I don't think you have a case. Like, I don't want to talk about the case. Yeah. Well, you're the one who started <laughs> texting Vince on this. <laughs> but I just want to say that I would love to play poker. With stuttering John. Because oh, yeah. he's so bad. This he's just like, oh, yeah. Suing Carl is going to be very easy. It's going to be a very easy lawsuit. Like, <laughs> this is you know, a you great don't have hand. pocket aces, do you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when it's my turn, I'm going to fold. <laughs> you have nothing right now. And the, also, I just want to point out, there's no money to be made off of me. So there's no way Michael Popak is taking out this case. Like, Sirius XM is interesting. They can make some money off of that. Yeah. It's a corporation. But they're like, ah, oh, let's sue Carl. Let's find out how much money you made on YouTube last month. Like, yeah. trust me, no one's getting rich on my YouTube. You he heard about your right. beer fridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Popak, you know, not everybody passes a bar with, you know, better than a D plus. You know, he's an ambulance chaser. I don't know, man. I'm not trying to judge Michael Popak. I think that guy's great. <laughs> That was the Trucker Andy who said that. <laughs> Carl, Come at me, Popak. Carl Hamburger loves Michael Popak. But uh, I, anyway, people should check out that episode. It's up on YouTube. We also put it in our regular feed. You can check that out as we uh, talk about. And, and Vinny's funny because he'll like kind of fuck with us. He'll troll us as we're going through and yeah. talking about this stuff. So it's kind of it's interesting. Cool to have a funny Vinny on the show for once. <laughs> that, that was funny. You saw that already, Bri? Yeah, I watched it uh, uh, yesterday. I watched Vince try, like, and you could see it in his face. Yeah, it's very slight, but you yeah. can see it when he starts to troll you guys, and you like you call him out immediately on yeah. his bullshit. Well, he's very dry, and he started telling me how because we were reviewing "Easy for You to Say" John's audiobook. He goes, "Oh, well, I mean, there that that's a no brainer. He'd make seventy five thousand dollars a page <laughs> off of you for that. Like, that's an easy lawsuit. He should do that tomorrow." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the only time like he ever kind of smiles a little bit. That's how you know he's full of shit. I have other amazing news. Back on November, November 3rd, to be specific, I sent an email to Tommy from MSCS Media asking him to come on the show. I said, yeah. I love the interviews you did with Sutter and John. We covered him on my show. I'd love for you to come on. Never heard back. I just heard back last night from him. Oh. He sent me a note, and now we've been texting back and forth. So I'm going to try to get Tommy from MSCS Media <laughs> on sometime in April. So he is real. Maybe. Yeah, it was, could uh, be a bot. I was going to ask, what's his deal? Does he have, like, cheek implants or something? Can you write down the question you want me to ask him and send him in? I'd be happy to get to the bottom of that for you, sir. I thought you might have texted about it. <laughs> I'm trying to ease him into this interview. I don't want to just like... <laughs> so are you a mongoloid what's or what's your deal? <laughs> Not a good way to start a relationship. So, all right. Let's get into uh, our friend Centering Gemma one. All right, now I want to point out, because I know there are people watching and listening to this show for John, what we're about to do is an infomercial for Beer on the Balcony. <laughs> this is behind a pay. I found it on the internet, but it is. you should subscribe to John's Patreon or YouTube and watch this show. It's the best thing he's doing right now. It's well worth the money, so please subscribe to Stuttering John on Patreon to watch Beer on the Balcony and this past weekend's episode. Wow. It, wow, it was something else. Yeah. I'm going to bring up a uh, video here. And I want to start off with John introduces his guests. And he introduces her by insulting her, which is always fun. This is a stand-up <laughs> who we met on that show that he did that he refused to go up on because it was being streamed on Twitch. Yeah. So he saw this woman lose on that show and decided to bring her on Beer on the Balcony. So here we go. Now I'm going to introduce you to a comedian that I happened to see on on Wednesday night at this weed show that we did. I didn't go up because see the sore on his hand on the, yeah, the cuts of his and hand. burns on him. Uh, I'm just watching all the time. He always got the sores. food in his mouth with his tongue. He's so fucking gross. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't even pull that at the beginning of this. You saw it, right? Yeah, yeah. The beginning of it. So there's a delay after the theme he song. Plays a three minute theme song, yeah, and he's nowhere to be found. And, and then he comes out. Like, he's just like, "Oh, sorry, I just had to eat some food." That's like a, a, <laughs> a minute of like dead air. I need with, like, and he's got like a screensaver of all like the things he's been searching. Well, it's his YouTube. Yeah, oh, yeah, right, yeah. Right, so right, it's right. like Bob Hope and <laughs> Prince and Stephen Wright from 1983. Is that where he's getting his jokes from? I Bob guess. Hope. I mean, Fred, <laughs> yeah. Fred Norris and Trump are in there. I I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> You know, they were going to tape me, and I didn't, you know, there's no way. I, you know, that was the re I, I, you know, the, the, I don't do that for oh, the amount yeah. of money they pay. Uh, He's got like beat off calluses on his palm. I don't know. I saw Probably. this comedian, and I really liked her act. So please welcome Luz, everybody. Hi, how are you? <laughs> how you doing, Luz? I I, I I do I do let myself be get taped for that amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> So Luz handles it well. He starts out by going, I didn't do the show because they were trying to pay us almost nothing to be streamed. But anyway, Luz did. She's yeah. an idiot. Come on, uh, the show, Luz. Good way to start. Luza. She handles it well. Now she's, she's fine. So this is John explaining why he would not allow them to videotape his stand-up routine. So Luz Pazos. Uh, yeah, I know. I, it's only because I've, I've already been offered 10 grand to do a special. So if I'm so I'm gonna do it special, I'll do it for the ten grand instead of the seventy five bucks or whatever they're gonna pay you there. You know what I mean? Of course, yeah, I, I totally get it. I, that's our rate, by the way, guys. We we get paid seventy five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> She's including John in that. You know? I can't tell if that's a joke or not. What did you think, Brian? Seventy five bucks is that what they got paid for that gig? I I mean I wouldn't doubt it. I know there are some comedy clubs that are pretty cheap. Yeah, you know, it's, it wasn't a high-profile I mean, one. 
Right. I, I just love that stuttering John's like, well, you know, the only reason I didn't do it was because, you know, I have this 10 grand deal coming up. Right. But it's like, right. OK, so if you didn't have the 10 grand deal, then you would have done it. <laughs> I want more information on this 10 grand deal. <laughs> if he's being offered 10 grand to do a stand up, why isn't he doing it? He needs that money to sue me with. Right. He should definitely take them up on that offer. Carl, do you think you entered his mind when he's like, they're going to tape me, so it's going to be out there. Mm -hmm. It's not worth $75 if he gets his hands on it. <laughs> oh, for sure. In fact, he even talks about yeah. how there were all these trolls in the Twitter feed waiting for John to come yeah. out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's got to be a tough life to live, thinking that you're always getting goofed on. Like, is there a camera in here? Is someone listening to me? I, <laughs> this might show up on a show. <laughs> And right at the beginning there, there's a classic uh, John backpedal, too. In clip 10, this is where he's like, oh, uh, you know, he's my friend. I'll do anything for him, except, but, but I'm not not, not oh, doing this, though. So. I ha actually have the, the video of that. Let me, let me pull that up for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's my buddy Adam Hunter, so, you know, I, you know I'll do anything for the guy. So <laughs> Again, they said 75 bucks. She's laughing. She's like, yeah, I know. It doesn't seem like a lot, but whatever. They can stream it. And John goes, well, I wouldn't even do stand up for 75 bucks, but it's my buddy Adam Hunter was doing him a solid. Right. That's the only reason why I was doing the show. Yeah. But you didn't. Right. Because you literally got to the club and then just refused to go on stage. Right. The end of that sentence is, I'd do anything for him, but I, I didn't do it. Yeah. Okay. I, so you do, wouldn't anything. do anything yeah. for him then. We figured out the meatloaf thing, but I won't do that. <laughs> I won't stream on Twitch. <laughs> that was the answer all along. I had no idea. <laughs> It sucks. <laughs> now, what I'm going to, what I want you guys to watch during this interview, because it's fascinating to me. I was rolling last night when I was watching this. The amount that John talks down to her, the idea that John's more famous, he's doing her a favor by bringing her on beer on the balcony and watch as this unfolds. It starts off with Luz doesn't know who the fuck John is, which is by the way, John's kryptonite. Yeah. <laughs> he, oh, he hates that. And then I see all the people in the chat, and they're all trolls of mine who are going to grab it and then post it all over the place. So, oh, you know. That's not cool. That's not cool. I don't have that many trolls. I think it's cool. Know, so that's well, well, that's so funny because when I called you, and then you were like, I go, Do you know who I am? No. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I was on the Howard Stern show for 15 years, the Tonight Show for 10. So, you know so I've been asking. I came to America two years ago, so it's kind of... Oh. In that she's, case, I'm more famous. She's from... <laughs> in that case, let me tell you the movies I was in. The Godfather, The Godfather yeah. 2. She's from Peru. She's been here for 10 years. Yeah. And so she doesn't know who the fuck Sonny John is. They just met at this comedy show. And John's talking down to her this whole time until he realizes that she actually does have shit going on. Right. So John's thought was, you know, I thought you were really funny. And I told my friend, who's a manager, that he should manage you. You know, like he's doing her a favor sure. on this Oh, my one. God. He tells her three times. Oh, and, and after she leaves, he says it again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you have an agent? I have a manager. Uh, Levity. Levity. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. They're a pretty big company. How'd you get them? <laughs> I did a festival and I did a taping for HBO, and they met me there. Yeah. So. Oh, so are you, do you have an HBO special coming out? Yeah. No, I have something. There is a female comedy special on HBO. It's called Comedy Chingonas, and I am on it. Oh, is it out yet? It's out. Yeah, you can watch it now. So, so she has a manager. She's represented by a big company. She's on HBO. HBO. Yeah. yeah. And Jazzy, like he discovered her. Yeah. Right. Like he literally brought her on thinking that he discovered her, this talent. Follow up question. Uh, can you give them my number? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so it's only female comics on this show? Yeah. So you can afford to buy me several beers. <laughs> well, later on in the interview, he asked her this. I don't think he's understanding what she's telling him at all. And what's your day job? No, I don't have a day job. Well, this is all I do. This is all you do. So you're totally what got you so fascinated with stand up comedy? <laughs> <laughs> when did you start dabbling? <laughs> John goes, You can make a living in show business? Yeah. Why what? Dude, why are you so He was genuinely surprised. surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he was. He's like, What? I thought you were really funny, but I didn't know you were making a living at this. You're not writing questions yeah. for an app? Yeah. <laughs> or you're a realtor, right? And the 
the fucking arrogance of he's like you don't know who i am it's like he she got here just as you were getting off the tonight show yes so what the fuck would she have seen you in in the past 10 years also she's a 30 year old (laughs) she's a 30 year old woman she wouldn't have been watching the tonight show anyway Right. right. I mean, the Tonight Show is watched by Midwesterners <laughs> in their sixties. Yeah, that's that's who Josh be trying to appeal to. <laughs> He's like, I, I was on a radio show when you were six, <laughs> <laughs> and living in a different country. Yeah. Have you seen Try Up the Insult Comic Dog? Oh, yeah, he's great. That's me. <laughs> that's actually yeah. the Ali G show. That's me. Oh, okay. I do know who you are. Then wow, <laughs> you must be living in a giant house. <laughs> 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 All right. So this is. So after Luz tells him this HBO special, John is obviously in love with her because he laughs way too hard at this joke. Way too hard. And what's the name of it? Comedy Chingonas. <laughs> what does that mean? Crazy bitches with tight pussies. No, it means... Um... <laughs> <The> monster. <laughs> I mean, say the line, Andy. I mean, what a, what a charmer. What a charmer he is. Monster. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's oh so long God. and loud that, like, she, you can see her start to lose, like, confidence in it. He's like, what the fuck? Yeah. This guy's it's deal? too over the top. We're like, am yeah. I being pranked right now? Are you like, having a stroke, sir? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Sorry, I said tight pussy on your show. I didn't know you were going to erupt like that. <laughs> so, as John likes to do, he starts hitting on her. And does it all the wrong ways. This is something you never ask a woman. Ever. Crazy bitches with tight pussies. I love it. You are too fucking funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> and you're so cute. I mean, how old are you? <laughs> is uh, a face he looks like yeah, yeah. Young, but I'm 30, so yeah. That's that's pretty young, Luz. <laughs> no, in my country, I'm a like, and I'm a, a grandma. You know, I'm an abuela in, in something. Like that. <laughs> It's funny because later on in the interview, did you watch this, Bry? Yeah. Later on. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating because because later on she goes, and she. I, by the way, I love Luz. Yeah. She comes off as amazing in this interview, and we'll get into that. She's so much. She's so likable. She's so likable and, and fun and funny. Like she gets it, and John does not. So she literally explains that I don't like to be hit on by comedians. I like to be one of the guys. That's kind of like my thing. I dress in a way that I don't want to like be provocative in any way. I just want my jokes to do the talking for me. And John just, Oh my God, you're so cute. Oh my God. You're young and you're cute. And wow. She's just like, like you said, Brian, her face just like, Oh, is that what this is? You can see her like swallowing vomit. Yeah. That's what, that's what John, John doesn't get. He did the same thing with Bobby Brown is like, right. The whole, not to be too sensitive, but like the whole Me Too movement is exactly about things like this, <laughs> where like stuttering John is using his power or what these people perceive to be his power in order to like get something to hit on them. It's like they're not there to be hit on. Like they're there to promote their shit. Unfortunately, they don't know that promoting their shit on, like um, with <laughs> so you no one. Yeah, means right. nothing. It's, it yeah. means nothing. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's such a waste of her time. Yeah. It's one yeah, of the totally waste down. of her time. This is John trying to pronounce the word Peruvian. <laughs> and this is just funny. <laughs> I love it. Uh, like, you know, you'll be the Peru. The Peru okay. Peruvian version of Sofia <laughs> Vergara. Alcohol is bad. You shouldn't drink alcohol. And uh, as for drugs, well, drugs are bad. You shouldn't do drugs. I don't know if that's the stutter <laughs> thing on that one. I think his brain just locked up <laughs> yeah. for just a couple stupidity. minutes. And again, like, a guy who's like, you can be the Peruvian approximation of a Colombian woman. How's that sound? Oh, I know. <laughs> right. So she, she's she got her own thing going on. She's not trying to be a sex symbol. He's not picking up on anything that she's saying to him. Doesn't understand at all. And then, of course, has to ask this question. So, so speaking of beauty, um, are you married? Do you have a boyfriend? Oh, he, you come here often. Um, <laughs> I spoke about him. It's a fashion designer. Yeah. What's funny is he's not hearing any of this. She goes, "Yeah, I talked about it in my act. He's a fashion designer. It's like a bunch of the jokes that I was yeah, doing. That act that you loved. Yeah, the <laughs> act that you couldn't get enough of. The reason why I'm on your show is making you laugh so I much. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone in the chat actually gives him shit about it. They're like, "John, you got to stop hitting on this girl because it's uncomfortable. Like you could tell it's uncomfortable. Yeah. 
And John defends himself. He's like, no, this is how you interview someone. You want to know. <laughs> Are you married? With your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> in clip 12, uh, Lou starts interviewing John. This is what John hears in his head. Welcome. Hey, baby. You got girlfriend, Vietnam? <laughs> well, baby. Me so horny. Me so horny. You keep lying. Me love you a long time. You pawn <laughs> so Does he still have that girlfriend from Vietnam? I don't know. He has a boyfriend for a been, little while. Yeah, I'm wondering about that. Although he did tell her he doesn't like long term relationships. Yeah, which is so funny. He hasn't been in a relationship for more than a weekend. Yeah, no, I just, I just can't take the long term relationship. <laughs> I get tired of people <laughs> like that. Those people that dump me. <laughs> yeah, a lot of girls have a sense of smell, and it's a real problem for our relationship. <laughs> Do Peruvians? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So after Lou says she loves Louis C.K., John decides to list his own comedy influences. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which like no one asked him. You know, he's like, what? What comedy? What comedian is he like? Oh, I love Louis C.K. Bob Hope. Yeah. So then John starts going through. All these, uh, oh, I like Steve Martin. Like, do ya? Yeah. Everyone likes Steve Martin. Okay, <laughs> good, good one. And then he says those. You know, I'm you know because I'm a little older. Uh, Stephen Wright is great. Have you ever seen Stephen Wright? I've seen Stephen Wright. Yes. I, I love his delivery. Just why do you <laughs> drive on a parkway and park in a driveway? <laughs> you know, there's just no emotion. That's a My fucking God. Gallagher joke. That is a Gallagher joke. How dare you say that's a Stephen Wright <laughs> joke? That's so insulting. Not yeah, to mention, he, she says that she's familiar with Stephen Wright, and then yeah. he goes on to perform yeah. like a lobotomized impression of him. <laughs> right. It's like, what? what, do you, what do you, she she knows who he is. It didn't matter what she said; he was going to do that. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. couldn't wait. He, then, had, then, he had it in the he had locked and loaded. Oh, right, you want to do a presser? And that what's funny is that it was that Stephen Wright thing was on his laptop at the beginning of the show too, so he was just watching that. So That's he why remember, he brought it up. He couldn't remember one of the jokes that Stephen Wright actually said. <laughs> If he was just watching it, You're, that's a Gallagher joke. You sure about that? I'm positive. Oh, about really? It. Okay. Vinny and I have joked about that on multiple occasions. <laughs> All right, Tucker Dixon is that? A <laughs> yeah, fact we need a fact Tucker check. Dixon. Oh boy. All right. So John then goes on to admit that even though he thought that Luz was funny, he doesn't remember any of it. No, I. You know, I obviously I was probably hammered by the time that you were on, but. I can't remember a lot of the jokes, but I know that I was laughing and I was telling, um, uh, <laughs> and, um, and, you know, and that's when I told <laughs> Joe, I was like, Joe, you should rep her, man. This Second girl time. Is, you know, so, you know. She's got representation, John. She's fine. She's yeah. getting gigs. It's like a living doing that. John goes, I don't remember anything you said last night, but <laughs> I do remember. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember telling that guy that he should rep you, uh, but I don't remember that. I already told you that 10 yeah, minutes right. ago. <laughs> I like that he says, obviously, I was pretty hammered by the time you went on. So he gets there and just starts pounding beers, and everyone knows he's a problem if he says, obviously. I was pretty hammered by the time you went on. Oh, man. Do you have the clip of him mansplaining, uh, middling, and yes. name dropping? That's what's coming up next. <laughs> that is what's coming up next because this is so insane. John keeps saying how, oh, yeah, I middled for this guy, but then I was the headliner, and he middled for me, and he was giving me some tips. And someone in the chat goes, what are you talking about middling? Because the whole time I'm yelling at the screen going, it's called it's called featuring. It's the feature. You have the host, the feature, and the headliner. And he goes, well, you know, sometimes they call it the feature, but yeah. So it's like, all right, so you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. And then as he's explaining this, he decides to insult Luz one more time because he can't get enough of it. But if I'm doing like the Laugh Factory, if I'm headlining, there'll be a feature mm-hmm. that goes on right before me and, and, and then the host. She knows. Yes. I mean, you know, <laughs> so... So where are you now? Are you a a, a host? You know. No, I I used to host a lot, but now I I headline some shows. <laughs> so she, she's trying to be polite about it. She's yeah. like, you know, I, I'm actually a pretty accomplished comedian. I've been on HBO. I make a living from this. I'm trying to explain this to you. It's nice. <laughs> He's like, ah, but, yeah. But the fact that John goes, so what are you doing? Are do you host? 
Th- that's like what the locals do. You work at the comedy club. Yeah. They let the local guys host. Dude, you know? They let me do it. Right. They let anybody <laughs> host. You ask who's celebrating an anniversary and you get the fuck off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> like she said in the very beginning of the interview, I've been doing this for eight years. Right. right. Why the fuck does he need to explain this to her? Like, why in, in his mind, why does he think he needs to? Right. Yeah. But why would he even think that she's hosting? That's not the job you have. If eight years in, you're hosting, you quit. And question, is this part of the interview past the HBO yeah, yeah. special yes. announcement? Yeah, we're that... going in order. I know. Why? <laughs> Why would he think she's hosting? Oh, fucking ass. And he just saw her do comedy right. a couple nights ago, and she killed. And he right. loved her so much, and he wanted her on his show. And they just insults her to her face over and over again. I know I'm a woman and have an accent, but I'm smarter than you, John. Coochie, coochie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. I got to remember that. <laughs> All right. So then he starts. Oh, Lou starts reading the comments. So I'm, <laughs> I swear she guard. realizes that yeah, she's yeah. not it's getting anywhere together. with this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on StreamYard, you can see the comments that are coming through on YouTube. So she starts reading through comments from the trolls, which is fun. I would think that white people would love you. <laughs> Bro headlines a hobo barbecues in Temecula. That's hilarious. Okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> called a troll. All right. Call the troll. That's called a troll. What did she just read? I didn't yeah. even pick that up. John headlines at a barbecue in Temecula. <laughs> okay, thank you. I watched it like three times. Like, I don't know. Bro headlines a hobo barbecues in Temecula. That's hilarious. Okay. That's <laughs> called a troll. It, they actually pay. They actually pay That's me. So it's so funny. This is really? how... oh, guys, oh, yeah. call me too and pay me. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's it's so it's so pathetic. But hell, if they're gonna pay me, <laughs> <laughs> she's laughing at her face. Yeah. He goes, "It's so pathetic." She goes, "Yeah, <laughs> it is pathetic, John." She's totally turned the tide of this interview. Oh, Do great. you host? Yeah. No, I headline. Who are these trolls? What are they saying? <laughs> also, that club is gonna pay you and you turn them down, but you take their the trolls' money. Oh, so. right, that's a good point too. Yeah. Right, like money doesn't mean anything to me. Right. Two bucks to goof on yeah. me, I'll take yeah. it all day. Sweet, I love it. I think it's fun. Is it a troll or his biographer saying that? Because <laughs> that did happen. So Both. Luz tries to make John feel better. And as she's saying, like, how cool a wife he has, she mentions, mentions his drinking multiple times. I think that even though they've just met, she's picking up on what his main personality trait is. Yeah. And that is one of a drunk. No, I think they're obsessed because, you know, you're like... The guy, funny guy that drinks beer and like you're the hero of them and they wish they could do your life, guys. I'm, I'm sure that most of these guys are just merry at home, just doing, <laughs> doing, you know, merry life. So you're kind of exciting for them, you know, like you have this, the life of a comedian, then goes out, drinks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Constantly. You're 56. Yeah. You can't get laid. You get yeah. drunk in a bar in the afternoon. And it's jealous of you. This hour-long conversation, she doesn't drink anything once. Right. He's pounding, pounding four beers. beers. This is awesome. She totally turned this around. She did. Yeah. I love her. She's so funny. It's weird how many people watching it look at Stuttering John as like, you're not living the comedian lifestyle. You're a fucking fraud. Like, you're lying to this girl. <laughs> right. But in his mind, he probably is like, yeah, I am. Thanks. Yeah, you know? right. right. Like, he's that deluded. I, I tour all over. I was just recently in Reno. Oh, that was August. <laughs> uh, I was in Vegas. No, that was September. Yeah. If I've learned anything about this guy, he'll remember that compliment for a long time. Oh, right. oh yeah. The backhanded compliment. It's the only yeah. thing he'll remember about this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and then she continues to pile on him. Because she's shocked that he was once married. I, I can't believe you were married. Like, <laughs> you, 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 you never imagined that happening ever in your life. Like, you, just, you, you, you look to me like the guy that will never get married. <laughs> look at his face. He's not sure if he's going <laughs> yeah, right. to goof on or not. He yeah. can't tell. He's like, what's going on now? What do you mean? She, she just said, I, I dabble married. in marriage. <laughs> Two seconds ago, he was living the rebellious comedian's lifestyle. Now he's like, wait, what yeah. are you saying? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what? So then the trolls continue to fuck with them. And what's great is that John has no control over his own show. He's just getting away from them. And Luz is goofing on them and they're just reading the comments. King Cap is asking, hey, ask Luz who are some of her comedy influences. 
and I already did ask. Yeah, uh, Luz, uh, Luz keeps dropping Leno references to impress Luz. <laughs> I love this comment, Susan. <laughs> John, yeah, yeah. Luz, John is a nice guy, as his mother. <laughs> <laughs> They're so obsessed, especially, especially like now, because... It, it, you know they're like 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 anytime I do this show, this whoever this idiot is, and I'm kind of feeling who is he pays, he, he pays, pays he pays me per month, he I'm pays not- me every single month to be a Patreon member so he can jerk off and you know what? and write this shit. <laughs> Like to volunteer to kick you in the vagina. Where do I sign up? <laughs> That's one of his trolls. <laughs> I love the guy goes, Luz, you wouldn't believe this. This person is goofing at me right now. It gives me five bucks a month. He must be a millionaire. I don't know how he's able to give me five dollars a month for just to goof on me on beer on the balcony. It's unbelievable. <laughs> well, how do you how do you explain to someone like an extraordinary number of people watching me? Do not like me. <laughs> <laughs> that was the funny thing, Brian, is that he kept saying, oh, yeah, this is the same person that was goofing before. They just changed their name. It's the same person. He, right. he kept saying that over and over again. Oh, yeah, I think I know who this person is. I have their home address. It's fine. Yeah. We'll get this thing. I'm going to break of. their legs after this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This was this was some kind of interview, man, because then Luz, I think she's trying to make light of the situation. Maybe she knows that she's being funny. Doesn't matter. She tells John that just the fact that he has a troll means that he's famous. And John gets so excited about this. This is all he wants to hear. This is his validation <laughs> in life. He wakes up on Saturdays and he's just planning his day around you. Like, oh, yes. who am I going to yes. be? He has to create a new password. Yep. And it's all yes. just to fuck with you. That's, yes. That's fame. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. That's pretty impressive, isn't it, Luz? I mean, if I hadn't impressed you before, now you gotta be impressed. I'm impressed, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> isn't that impressive? This guy wakes up and gets excited about goofing on me on the internet. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, hero of the stupid, <laughs> king of the trolls. <laughs> List goes on. But he genuinely was like, yeah, see, I'm a pretty cool guy, what? aren't I? You thought I was a loser. Yeah. <laughs> Just because every interaction with me so far has been me blackout <laughs> drunk doesn't mean I'm a loser. This guy goofs on me on the internet. I got a lot going on. It feels like if Stuttering John is awake, he's making an asshole out of himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After this, because now he's got her on his side. Oh, that means you're famous. He's like, yeah, right? That's what I always tell people, too. Then he overplays his hand <laughs> immediately of with course, her. Of course. <laughs> oh, my God. But I have people who do shows about me. They do shows about me, which, which means you must have made it because, you know, they don't boo nobodies. Yeah, exactly. Look at that. <laughs> She's like, all right. Now it's getting sad. Yeah. I thought it was just this one troll and other people who do shows about you. <laughs> yeah, Luz, it's great. I, I like to threaten lawsuits. There's people doing shows, making more money off of me than I am. Yeah. It's great. Oh, man. You wouldn't believe how much fun we're having over here. <laughs> He doesn't just stamp out the flaming de- bag of dog poop. He stands there and starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> Smelling his shoes. So John then talks about what a great life he has. And he's comparing it to the losers who are trolling him. And I just thought this was like his definition of having a wife is odd to me. You yeah. know, I mean, look, I, you know, you know, I'll go to the pub. You know, have a few pints with my buddies and, you know, and they'll be waiting for my next show on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. They, oh, they go to the bar and they're just talking about how much of an asshole you are and they want to fuck with you. No, they don't go to any bars. They don't have friends. <laughs> you know, they sit in that basement. I'll be going to the bar. So, <laughs> Luz actually is way smarter than him. Yeah. She's like, oh, you're goofing on because you're saying they just go to the pub and, and drink. He's like, no, 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 that's, no. that's what cool people do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you don't understand. They're with their moms in the basement. 
I'm the cool guy at the pub. She's like, oh, no. And he also <laughs> says that the people who are live at the bar can't wait for him to do his show on Tuesday, which means they can't wait for him to leave. <laughs> no, this is this is so confusing. I had to play that again because it's one of the funniest things. Yeah. They, oh, they go to the bar and they're just talking about how much of an asshole you are and they want to fuck with no, you. No, they don't go to any bars. They don't have friends. You know, they sit in their basement. I'll be going to the bar. Everybody so, just <laughs> talks about what an asshole you are. Am I right about that? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes, he goes, no, I have friends. You mean other day drinkers at the bar that you go to. Those are your friends. It's not like you pick up your buddy on the way over there. They're there drinking. You show up, you're drinking, and now you're all friends. Like, see, I have friends. Okay. <laughs> my Coke dealer's my friend. Like, she thinks he's sitting around drinking with a bunch of trolls who fucking can't stand him. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I know! Is that the band from the Pickwick? He hasn't mentioned Pickwick in a while. He's been mentioning Scotland Yard, okay. which is a little closer to his house. I've mapped it out. <laughs> <laughs> I know how many steps it is. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with him in the pickle. It's the bar in Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> the bar at the depot. It's a classy joint. <laughs> All right. I got a few more here because honestly, everything about this was so funny. And Luz goes into talking about the difference between men and women. And I got to give Luz a lot of credit on here because you know, here's someone who came from Peru. She was talking about her shitty living conditions and how much she loves America and is so thankful that she's here and she's doing comedy and she really appreciates everything she has. She's worked very hard to get it. To be honest, I, I, I've been watching women and men doing their thing. And I always tell guys, when, even when I used to book bar shows, I used to have guys will never cancel on a show. No. They show up on time. They do their thing. Girls every week. I got my period. I don't think I can drive there. It's too far. I don't, I, sorry, I can make it. I got in a fight with my boyfriend. It's like everything gets in the middle. It's, it's not very professional how they've been taking it. And and now it seems that everybody wants girls because it's cool to have a girl. It's, it's open-minded. Women are the new shit. But it, they're, they're just thinking some of taking advantage of it or like just, you know, it's, it's, I think men work harder in this, and that's why there are more men in common. One of the main reasons. So from her experience, she thinks that maybe these women who are saying, woe is me, I can't get gigs, maybe it's because you're unreliable. Maybe it's because of things that you do. Maybe it's not like the patriarchy. Maybe that's not the reason why people don't think you're funny and want to hire you to work their club. I think that that's an interesting perspective. But notice how she said, men don't cancel on comedy shows. And John goes, no, men don't. <laughs> you that's how he met her. <laughs> he just canceled on a comedy show. He's that lazy piece of shit she's explaining. Yeah. It doesn't have to be all women. It could just be like lazy comedians. It's too far. Well, no, he went there. That's the worst part. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'll go all the way to Mexico. It's too far to walk home. <laughs> I'll go to Mexico and then not perform at my show. <laughs> so then right after that, she pretty much explains John to a T, and it leaves him speechless. Now, I'm not saying that John's listening or paying attention. Maybe. Anything's possible. But look at John's reaction after she explains him. And it happened to be the ones that complain about not getting enough stage time, appreciation. And I've never... I. I think it's not a good symptom when you feel like you're not getting good appreciation and you feel like everything is, a, is, is everybody's being wrong to you. Maybe it's something about you. Or everybody wants to fuck you, you know? <laughs> he just starts crying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't it seem like he was having a moment like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Maybe I do expect a little bit too much out of people sometimes. I doubt, I doubt he learned any lessons. He doesn't remember this conversation. Yeah. He's four beers in at this point. Yes, unfortunately. I don't know. What was your take on Luz, Bri? I, you know what? At first I was like, it's just another diversity comedian, you know, one yep. of many that, you know, you've seen. By 10 minutes in, I, I liked her. By the end, I loved her. By the end, <laughs> I, same thing here. I went through the same, like, uh, roller coaster ride because at first I couldn't stand either one of them. And I'm more <laughs> mad at John for like putting her down. And then when I found out that she's actually doing well 
and she has a fan base and a following. She even talks about because of these types of views where she's like, hey, you know, not everything is because of uh, capitalism and, you know, yeah. there's, there's good things that you can just that you can make opportunities for yourself. She mentions that she has her biggest following in Texas. She used mm. to make jokes about Texas, like, oh, Texas, what a bunch of assholes. She's like, actually, they're like the best people there. They, they're great. They love me. They love right. what I do. Kind of ruins the whole painting the picture of all these racists who can't She can't her. wait to end this interview because she has to drive to San Diego to do a set right after yeah. this. Right. Talks about that. Yeah, she talks about that. She goes, it's going to be four hours, could be five and a half, depending on traffic. <laughs> I got I to gotta end yeah, there this. There was a great deal of talk that went into that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I got to get out of this interview. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to hear her jokes. You know, she's charming. Yep. It's, are her jokes funny? So, but I liked her. John thought she was hilarious. Mm. So, if he even remembers oh, it. A very drug <laughs> John thought she was hilarious. Uh, this clip I just <laughs> called uh, You Go Girl. Like, no, you are making, putting yourself in the situation. People put themselves in the situation, honestly. If you go on a on the hotel, hotel room of a famous comic and hit yourself in your face, you might have to think that that was the least that was going to happen to you. If I go with it, I'm thinking, okay, this guy is going to have sex. Why are you going to that room? Why are you putting yourself in those situations? Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's one of stuttering John's comedy influences. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can steal the jokes after 50 years. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Safe harbor. <laughs> Safe harbor. Uh, so, yeah, she's she's literally saying, because she's a big fan of Louis C.K., she's like, why are you throwing pity parties for yourselves? You put yourself in this situation where you're going back to a famous comedian's hotel room. You're lucky all he did was jerk off at a plant. <laughs> Wait, I think that was Harvey Weinstein <laughs> yeah. who did that. I'm confusing my Me too people. So John's answer to uh, all of that after she goes through, and it was actually really well said, well thought out. You know, people make their own lot in life, and you should stop blaming these outside forces. You just have to make it on your own and do everything that you can. And John's reaction to all of that was this. <laughs> no, I, I, I find you so charming. I'm telling you. Get ready for it. You're going to be a big star. I know it. Oh, God. oh thank you, John. Hopefully, hey, hopefully I'll tell you this, Luz. Almost everybody I had on my stand-up shows, like, you know, when I used to have a Stuttering John Friends commentar, almost every single one of them, Jim Norton. You know Jim Norton? Yeah, of course. I know Jim. Yeah, he was on my first comedy tour. Like, he's one, like, he's one of the best comics ever. You know, I've... I mean, I have all these great comics, Jim Florentine and Greg Fitzsimmons. And, oh, God, and I think credit for Greg now, Fitzsimmons. Uh, have you heard of Modi? <laughs> Holy shit. You can't take credit He's for other for... people's careers. Oh, Jim Norton, Jim Florentine, Fitzdog. Fitz They're all because of John, apparently. Yeah. Now lose. As soon as you get famous, I'm going to say I discovered you. Right. So after that, this was... I didn't clip it because it goes on too long, but it's so awkward. He starts telling her how he knows talent when he sees it. And he goes, and and you got it. Yeah. And then he tells a story about how this one time someone told him that he had it. Oh, right. And how yeah. important that was to him. Trying to explain to her that, like, this is a big deal that I'm telling you this right now. And yeah. she's going, okay, well, I got a gig. So he told this story before, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Could you imagine being that pompous where you're like, just so you know, you got the keys to Hollywood because I'm handing them over to you. Yeah, right. I know talent when I see it because I don't see it every day when I look in the mirror. <laughs> right. I haven't seen talent in weeks. You're the opposite of me, talented. <laughs> oh, it's so awkward. It's so bad. All right, a couple more clips real quick. This is John talking about more of the Stuttering John and Friends tour. And I have some questions about this. Uh, Modi <laughs> on Instagram, M-O-D-I. <clears throat> now, that guy... He would always say to me, John, everybody on the Stuttering John and Friends tour has become famous. You, Artie, everybody, except me. All right, so this guy Modi, according to John, 
is complaining to John, like, why aren't I famous when everyone else? So he's saying that first off, Artie Lang wasn't famous until people saw him on the Stuttering John and Friends comedy tour. They were famous before the tour existed. Artie Lang was famous long before he ever went on Howard Stern. Right. He was in movies on Mad TV. I don't know what he's talking about. Tour had nothing to do with it. Didn't Jim Norton tour with Dice, too? Was that was that, that uh, was his big break, yeah. Because that he, was his big break, right? He so not, for Dice. The, not the starting John comedy tour. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was starting John. <laughs> he opened for Dice, and then Dice <laughs> brought him on to Opie and Anthony, and that's how he met those guys. That's that's now. If John had that story, he would never shut up about it. I guarantee you that. Yeah. So first off, he's trying to say that his tour is what made him famous because Modi goes, how come everyone on your tour becomes famous? Like, you're famous, Artie's famous. Like, well, both those people are, are famous for other reasons than Suttering John's comedy tour. <laughs> we can all agree on that. But also, there's no way Modi would say something like this, yeah. right? When am I going to get famous, John? You <laughs> promised. What a fucking weird thing to Why say. Why did I jerk you off? You said I'd get famous. <laughs> But literally, what John just said is that he's famous as a stand-up comic, which is the opposite of the truth. John is famous as a stand-up comic? That's what he just said. He's like, oh, yeah, you know the Southern John and Friends comedy tour. I- I'm famous now. Artie's famous now. It's one of his better jokes, actually. <laughs> that, that would be a good joke. And Artie took an Uber, and I was driving it. <laughs> All right. At the very end, Fuck. he's talking about he's got a great guest lined up for next weekend. On beer on the balcony. It should be happening right now, actually. And uh, he starts name dropping. First, and the way he name drops is so icky to me. I've been, uh, and even, you know, I've been Instagramming with Andrew Dice Clay, who's a friend of mine, and, you know, uh, you know, and Lisa Lampanelli, who's a friend of mine. Mm, drop! <laughs> you better get your hopes up. He's been Instagramming with Dice. Instagramming. Yeah. Does that sound like someone who's a close friend of yours? You're Instagramming with them? I liked all his photos. Yeah. I put an at mention about him and a photo I uploaded. Okay. That's neat. It's that and, and the amount of money that he makes. Like, I've, like, I'm not that type of person, but any chance he gets... If he will drop a large sum as to how much he could get, or how much he's going to get, or how much he did get. Oh, I remember like when he's very the, like money focused. Oh, when the pandemic is. hit, remember he was talking about that gig in Japan that was going to pay him. I think it was ten grand, maybe it was oh, fifteen. Yeah. Ten grand is a number he likes to use a lot for some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> talking about his money is in his like top five go to. It's Howard Stern's an asshole. Jay Leno is amazing. And how much money he gets. Yeah. And you've pointed this out before. Yeah. But that that Japanese show that he was gonna have though, like Spinal Tap is big in Japan, but not Stuttering John. No. Like there's certain things that do get over to Japan. <laughs> Stuttering John is not one of them. Like, there's no way someone's hiring him to do a stand up <laughs> gig over there. <laughs> Doesn't even make sense. I pay you ten thousand yen, John San. <laughs> <laughs> Come to Japan. <laughs> Maybe it, maybe it was the currency that he wasn't understanding so much. Didn't understand, <laughs> didn't understand how that works. Oh, I love it. Um, we're going to bring on Brandon from Shitty Song of the Week in a little bit. No. And we're going to play uh, Opie songs. We got the yeah. Opie parody song contest going. But real quick, I want to address what happened last week on Who Are These Podcasts. Mm. We had Beer on the Balcony. Stuttering John was talking to this comedian, Luz. Yeah, she was from Peru. She was great. So I decided to check out her stand up a little bit. And I thought this was really funny because in her stand up, she talks about guys who want to go hiking as a date. And it's so funny because this is obviously coincidental. She doesn't know that Stuttering John is literally Uh, trying to get Elisa Giordano to go out with him hiking as a date. But Luz is pretty funny. And and, uh, I thought this was a good bit. But dating. Do you know what's a date like nowadays, guys? Men take you on hikes. <laughs> That's right, men take you to exercise. What? <laughs> this guy said to me, hey, Luz, have you ever been on a hike? <laughs> I said, yes, every day in my country to get water. <laughs> So pretty good, pretty fun. Yeah. And we had Brian Johnson on last time, mm-hmm. 
And Brian's such a great guy. He mm-hmm. goes on Tell Him Steve Day, which is a huge show. And the very first thing you hear, hey, check me out on Who Are These Podcasts. And then he goes on Would You Kindly with Eric Nagel. And uh, they talk about, you know, doing Who Are These Podcasts, talk about stuttering John. And I had pulled together, if you're not checking us out on YouTube, we're, uh, we're adding a video element to the show now. If you go on YouTube, you can see the whole segment we did on stuttering John along with all the video clips of John from Beer on the Balcony. And so I put that together and put it up on YouTube, and, and Brian saw that. And uh, I thought Carl um, named the – I saw on YouTube, you know, he puts up clips, and he named it perfectly. It's like stuttering John tries to big-time a successful comic, <laughs> and it just nails it. It nails it because he's so – condescending yeah and he's so unaware like i mean if you're going to interview this lady why yes, don't you look in very like, unaware why don't you look into her like why don't you like get it's... some background yeah so that introduces the topic of and eric nagel says you know opie and anthony they were able to get together with other comedians and just riff and they could make it work and they had great segments doing that and now everyone thinks they can come unprepared to their show <clears throat> jen and carol and it's just going to be fun and entertaining because they're just so witty and their personalities yeah. are just so great. And Eric Nagel goes on to explain that John can't do that. John needs to do a little bit of research and some prep work to do a show properly yeah. as he proved while trying to interview Luz. And John's not one of those people. He sits down, yeah. oh, we'll just sit down. We're going to shoot the shit. He doesn't research anything, which has been heavily documented on that program. Um, he doesn't know... The majority of, of what's going on in the world, other than he'll see a headline on like MSNBC or whatever things he's following on Twitter, he'll see that. And I pointed out uh, the last time I was on there where John learns a new word, and then all of a sudden that word is being overused you all the time, so he can come off like he's smart, like he has an extensive that, vocabulary. Sycophant? sycophant was the word at the time. You fucking sycophant. So they got these guys had a lot of fun yeah. breaking down Senator John. I thought this was a pretty good analogy. He's pretty much Fredo without I mean, even Fredo was smarter than him and knew how to pull the scams <laughs> off. He's Fredo with no family. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been whacked by now, but he has no family. He's Fredo with no family, which is a brilliant take from Brian. Um, and then E Rock decides to talk to me directly. And Croach, if you're going to give me a message on your show, mm. I will listen and I will take note. Producer Chris, write some notes down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I got to say this to Carl. When you were doing all the Opie stuff, it was interesting. It's still interesting. Um, but you get to a point where you just not even feeling bad for Opie at all, but you just like, you can't like this can't just keep going on like <laughs> this is eventually going to get boring you know and for a while it was like anytime an opie clip would come up you're like all right i get it but it was kind of running its course and then every now and then there would be some great gems where it brings it right back but the stuttering john review that they've been doing probably almost solid for a year now Never gets old. It never does. It's the gift yeah. that keeps on giving. Yeah. It's, it's never, ever boring. It's never. Um, it's, it's the part I look forward to the most. Me too. It's so, it's fascinating. And I've noticed it's bringing together people that me not normally get together. <laughs> Stuttering John makes for some strange bedfellows. Yeah. Everybody feels better after <laughs> listening to it. Yes. That is so correct. And he's right about that. You know, there's ebbs and flows with Patrick Michael and Opie. Yeah. And Suttering John has just been on this trajectory. Oh, <laughs> well. his downward spiral yeah. has just been. <laughs> yeah. well, maybe my show has been on a well, trajectory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he goes down. We're heading up. It's pretty amazing. Uh, so one more clip from uh, Would You Kindly. And I thought that Eric just did a great job of breaking down Centering John, he brings up something that we don't talk about enough on the show, but actually, Crows, you've alluded to this fact from mm. time to time. He thinks he has game. Yeah. You know, and it's He's such ca- an asshole. Yeah, he has yeah. no self recognition about the world around him or how he presents himself to the world. Like, he thinks he's suave and debonair, and, and he has this weird elitism mentality. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. The elitism is something we don't pick up on enough, but I yeah. think that it comes through when he talks to like Spectrum yeah. on the phone. I have a podcast I'm talking to millions of people. You got to get oh, my yeah. internet fixed. 
And when he feels like he's the bigger man, he'll big time people like we saw with Luz. Yeah. He's got this weird because he, he's hung around with, with elites mm-hmm. for 10 years straight on the Tonight Show. It was nothing but A and B list celebrities coming through those doors yeah. forced to say hi to John. Yeah. And if yeah. they didn't, he took no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure notes. Long-term notes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, imagine how you'd feel if you were getting punched all the time and finally it let up for a second and you had an opportunity to possibly punch back. Who are you sticking up for in this? <laughs> That's why it's interesting. It's that, that what they're talking about. He's like, Robert Smigel said hi to me, but yeah. Triumph never did. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so he's very upset about it. You know, he's the only guy who would play the do you know who I was card. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. So this is interesting. Somebody sent this in to me. This is the fourth episode ever of a show. Maybe it's episode three of the Stuttering John show. Going back to May of 2018. Wow. And obviously there's a huge difference in how he talks. Yeah. So this is four years ago and his speech is very different, but this is just hilarious. Then uh, I got I was brought to the house brought to the hospital in an ambulance the other day for massive dehydration, and um, when they got me into the hospital and they did all the blood work and and stuff, they said they found no food, no water, just alcohol. <laughs> Hilarious! Yeah. Oh, you almost died from drinking yourself to death. Yeah, you drank your at at fifty something years old. You drank yourself into the hospital to get your stomach pumped to save your life. But it only gets worse. Oh boy, it only gets worse. So first, he's going to explain how this even happened. Oh no, we've all been there. And oh, yeah. it was because I had nothing in the fridge, and I hung out at the pub, my favorite pub, Pickwick Pub, on Sunday and a Monday. In the Monday, and I drank my beer. And uh, let's just say that I didn't need anything, and I I don't know. I every time I got up, I was dizzy, and I couldn't I couldn't stand up for more than like five seconds. So I lied in my bed. I tried to watch some of the Yankee game on my computer, and then I was supposed to pick up my youngest son, and I told my ex I couldn't. I told I explained to her what's going on, oh. and because she still loves me. She called 911, and the ambulance came. First of all, he said he lied in his bed. I don't lie. I don't like to lie. (laughs) So this guy had a responsibility to pick up his son, decided to go on on a two-day bender. Yeah. He's on a 48-hour bender here at the Pickwick Pub, which serves food. Order a basket of curly fries. Yeah. Like are you, are you that poor? Like, what's the deal? It's the world's fault. Why? Nothing in my fridge. You have nothing in his fridge. Yeah. So what go, else is he going to do? Go buy some shit and put it in your fridge. What else could he possibly yeah. do? So what's great? And then and then his wife has to be like, well, I'm going to call EMS to, to save you. Yeah. You're not doing well. He's like, oh, okay. Well, and what would have happened if he didn't have responsibility to pick his son up that night? Yeah, he'd be dead, and we'd be without five years of content. Correct. I'd be fucking working in marketing right now. Yeah, Thank geez. God Paris for Susanna. I, well, I, I mean, it, it, all right. I, I know I speculate. I throw it all the time that he doesn't see his kids anymore, and I'm just making that up. Sure. I have no fucking idea. It's all speculation. That's a really funny and possibly true. But my God, if the if the ex like if you got to call the ex wife and be like, honey, I am too drunk to go pick up the kid like I'm supposed to, like the court has ordered me to do. Yeah, like. You're done. You're done seeing yes. your kids, and like, uh, that's a red flag for the, for the good of the kids. I on, mean, on a Monday evening, yeah, on a Monday yeah, evening, yeah, yeah. he's watching the Yankees game, and he can't get out of bed because he's falling over. I'm too drunk to even get out of bed, let alone drive a car, let alone, like I said, do my court obligated fucking pickup duties. Like, yeah, that shit. That, like, uh, I don't know much about the court system, but I know that they don't like that. They're and, not down with that. Shit. And Croge, only stuttering John Melendez would be complaining about the people who came to his apartment to save his life. Oh. Only Suttering John would have the gall no. to do this. That's, that's why we love yeah, him. Yeah, maybe they were pissed they had to haul my freaking fat ass down a freaking two flights of stairs. But there was this Asian dude who was nice, and then this big white freaking, you know, Dolph Lundgren type who said nothing. I kept thanking him, and he wouldn't even say, you're welcome. But whatever, they got me to the hospital, so I can't complain. 
But you just did. You did. You literally just yeah. complained. I don't even know you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> he can't help himself. Like hanging out with my dad. And uh, Dolph Lundgren is a man of few words. I mean, let's come <laughs> yeah. on. Let's not throw his name into this. Yeah. We love Dolph. Maybe the guy's a little bit annoyed that he got called from the firehouse. He was probably cooking chili or playing poker. I know yeah. what they do yeah. there. Yeah, it's yeah. two things. He's probably a little bit annoyed that he had to come and rescue a 50-year-old who drank himself almost to death. Yeah, yeah. that would annoy me. That's a little bit. It's like, yeah. dude, I got shit fucking burning on the stove yeah, right now. called 911 for this? <laughs> I had pocket queens. Ah. <laughs> when they called 911. I had pocket queens. <laughs> it's fucked up. It's one thing when you see people that are like in college and they're they're kind of just testing the limits and you know yeah. they go crazy one night they end up whatever sure but like to be and this guy's like forty something years into his alcohol or maybe career. maybe if you're pledging like they force you to like continue to drink shots yeah. is he pledging for the Pickwick sorority <laughs> it's, it's crazy it, it's like he's never experienced alcohol before like I I couldn't believe it I drank for two yeah. days with no food. <laughs> Who could have thought? Yeah. <laughs> Who knew that would have been bad? Yeah. He says it like he slipped on a banana peel. Like, oh, clumsy yeah. me. Oops. And how did that happen? And on the tail of that point, his close friends are at the Pickwick pub. Yeah. How did this happen? Yeah. Well, because they always see him that drunk. Oh. Okay. <laughs> be, would be my guess. Yeah. But good news, guys. He learned something from it, and he decided he's going to start living a healthier life oh, because of it. Good. So now I am taking, my, you know... Better care of myself. Bought a bunch of Gatorades. I have Gatorades and orange juice and water every day, so I don't anticipate that happening again. So he didn't say, I'm going to stop drinking all day long for days straight. He goes, I got Gatorade. I should be good. Electrolytes should be fine going forward. In case you're worried about me. This is the guy that's like, I'm going to lose 100 pounds. And then he has broccoli one time. And he's like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Coors is making a special product for me with electrolytes. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Then one more clip from this show. Just because it's so funny. This is something that he's been talking about since we started documenting him on this show. Yeah. Going back many years now. And he still hasn't pulled this off. Um, I'm sorry about not doing the podcast in a while. I've been working on getting the... Um, the uh, system where I can take phone calls because I think that would be a much more uh, entertaining podcast. Yeah, if you were talking less and other people were talking more, yes, that would be more entertaining. He's been talking about some system to take phone calls for years. It still hasn't happened. Dude, you're in the wrong century. <laughs> yes, you don't need a system to take voicemails or phone calls. But the dude is literally on the internet yes. talking about how he needs a telegraph signal to communicate. I mean, what the, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. It's almost like he's a dumb idiot. Oh, my God. All right. Let's get him out of the way because, Croge, we have important business to get to. I know it mm. feels like feels like we've done it all, but we yeah. have not. No, we have not. Stuttering John has decided that he knows all about copyright law. Oh, good. Which is really funny. Yeah. He starts off his latest beer on the balcony with uh, with this. This is great. And uh, as you can see, the banner. This is a uh, this show is copy copywritten by me, and it's behind a paywall. So, so that's how it works. Now, without further ado. All right, so he's got a banner running across the bottom that says copyright, Stuttering John podcast. And none of the capitalization is correct. It's all over the fucking place. Of course, John Hello. wrote it. Yeah, that's how that works. And he goes, first off, he says it was copywritten. Yeah. It's yeah. copyrighted. Yeah. And then he goes, and I put the banner on here, so this is copyrighted, so you can't use it. That's how that works. Well, no, that's not how that works. Yeah. That, that's so, that. John, you're dealing with an adult. I'm an adult man. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. I know how <laughs> copyright works. You're the one who doesn't. Yeah. In fact, I even sent that video clip to an attorney I'm friends with. And I just wrote, hey, just real quick, does this, is this how this works? And the response was, nope. <laughs> <laughs> not nope. A, not even That close. legal terminology. <laughs> no, that's how that works. So he brings on the great Doug Stanhope. Great guest, by the way. Congrats, yeah. John. Like I say, guys should subscribe to Beer on the Balcony. This is an infomercial yeah. for Beer on the Balcony. Doug Stanhope. Very good comedian. Yeah. And when he comes on, the first thing he does is correct John. 
I'm I'm honored to call him a friend. Ladies and gentlemen, Doug Stanhope. How Good are you? Good morning. Good morning. And it's copywritten, not uh, copyrighted, not copywritten. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I was trying to do everything at once because it's the first time I'm actually using these banners because, you know, even though this is behind a paywall, these idiots post it, you know, and, and yeah. I'm getting sick of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that gl that grammar cluster fuck of a banner just runs the whole time? It does. It's, oh, my God. No, it's great, though. It, it's great, Crows, because at a certain point, he does turn it off. Yeah. Because he feels like, all right, that's run enough now. They get the points. That's all I need to do to legally make this a copyrighted material. Yeah, it'll sink in there. <laughs> yeah, it's so fucking funny. And not only is the, the capitalization is a mess, the punctuation is a mess, too. Yeah. There's uh, fucking miscellaneous it's periods disaster. strewn about. It's written that is a crayon. Yeah, it's a fucking disaster <laughs> of a sentence. It is something else. All right. Oh let's, let's listen to John try to compliment Doug Stanhope. Now, I don't know Doug Stanhope super well, but I'm a big fan of his. Yeah. I love his comedy. And I've heard him on lots of shows, and I've seen him do stand-up. I get the sense that Doug's not one of these guys who needs people praising him all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's one of these guys that he's pretty comfortable in what he does. He's got his he, – he's a unique talent. He's got his shtick. He's got his voice. And John complimenting him is awkward for everyone if John could even talk, <laughs> which, of course, he cannot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you are a great comic. And you know what? So many comics, like – you know, they look up to you. I mean, I have, like, like, like I mean, it's, it, I mean, uh, I mean, even on your Wikipedia, they compare your style to Bill Burr and Bill Hicks. <laughs> even his Wikipedia oh. says that he's a good comedian. Can wow. you believe it? Oh, my God. You Can know what? What's more polite is saying, fuck you, dude. <laughs> What a weird thing to say. They compare you, and it has to be two bills, I guess, for some reason. Like, well, yeah, B Bill Burr, Bill Hicks. I understand why both of those yeah. are, are used in sure. this for whatever reason. Oh, just the Wikipedia thing. Doug Stanhope is not impressed by what's written on his wiki page. Yeah. No, uh, Doug Stanhope, born March 25th. Oh, reading it to him. Was yesterday. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why I'm drinking water today. <laughs> Is an American stand up comedian, author, political activist, and podcast host. His stand material favors caustic and often obscene observations of life and the style of Bill Hicks and Bill Burr while he delivers while consuming alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love, cool. you know, why I love that? I'll tell you, Doug, because you're one of the ones like me, like I'll drink on stage. Don't compare yourself to Doug Stanhope just because you both drink on stage. Oh, my fucking God. You know, we're just like each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, there's there's this porn star who smokes cigarettes after sex. I'm just like that porn star. Oh, I also yeah. like oh a cigarette God. after sex. <laughs> I can't fucking believe I just watched him read the Wikipedia summary to the guy's face. Well, it's almost like he knew that we made fun of him for not doing any research on lose. <laughs> so he's like, I'm going to do all my research on Doug Stano. I'll do it fresh on the spot. <laughs> he reads his birthday. Hey, that was yesterday. He's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> what are I, we doing? You can't even fucking imagine. <laughs> remember that time I remembered your birthday? <laughs> so then John has some crazy story about almost hooking up with a chick when he was married. Which is, I, I, I want to get your genuine reaction to those guys. Yeah. But I just couldn't wait to get out and, and get a little strange, if you will. You know, it was just like, oh, come on, man. I mean, I, you know, I turned down Crystal Bernard from Wings, the hot blonde on Wings. Oh, yeah. Because cause I was a guest star on that show. And, and she brought me back to the dressing room. She's like, what's a cute guy like you doing married? And I, I could have. I, I was contemplating, but my wife happened to be in the, like in the green room with my kid who was a year old, and I'm like, nah, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> do you have children, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> children are great, dude. John's story was I could have fucked this hot chick. There were just a couple of problems with it. Yeah. A, I'm married. That's not a problem. Yeah. B, my wife was in the room next door. And C, my one-year-old was with my wife in the room next door. Super annoying. <laughs> yeah. Cock-blocking kids. <laughs> oh, my Bunch God. of cock-blocks, these fucking kids. <laughs> Do you have kids, Doug? Or are you actually getting laid? What's going on? Are they cock-blockers? 
Oh my god. I could have fucked a hot chick from that TV show because she smiled at me. If my kid wasn't behind a hollow wooden door right outside there. <laughs> what a weird fucking oh my god. humble brag that is. Also, oh my god. getting back to the show prep, how does he not know Doug Stanhope doesn't have kids? Yeah, that's like... I mean, that's a major... pretty... That's a thing that you would know about Doug Stanhope. Yeah. He hasn't gotten that far. Oh, <laughs> no, obviously <God>. not. <laughs> Oh, my fucking God. I just have a few more from this beer on the balcony, and then I have some other things that I want yeah. to talk about from this week. But John, as we know, has had issues with his internet connection from time to time. Yeah, even you though know? he's a big shot. I don't know if Juan's paying the Spectrum bills. I don't know what's going on with yeah. that. But that doesn't stop John from accusing other people of, sh- of sh- having shitty internet. <laughs> You're freezing up a lot, and I don't know. I am, or because... You are. I'm not the one who's freezing up. You're the one who's freezing up. <laughs> See, John, the way this works is that on his end, you're freezing up. And on your end, he's freezing up. And he's like, no, I'm not the one who's freezing up. You're the one who's freezing up. You're fucking this all up. So now John's forced to kill time because oh, good. Doug's <laughs> going to reconnect and move to a different room. Good, 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 good. And I love that when we talk about stuttering John and we talk about like even Opie going like, I run laps around this guy as a podcaster. He's not a, he's not a podcaster. He's not a broadcaster. Yeah. He's not good at this type of thing. And that's why we love John. He's so bad oh, God. at this. Yeah. And this is just one of those perfect examples of that. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess this uh, will. That was it. <laughs> he turned up his copyright Here, banner. P- pick a card. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Oh he didn't have anything he could have talked to the chat or asked Benny Loco what's up or something. Nothing but trolls. Just staring at his own reflection in the screen. Singing do 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 songs. All right, so God. this is going back to a regular episode during the week. So, yeah. John, this is legal for... Oh, no, did I just say that? Oh, This is legal it. for me to play because it's not behind a paywall because that's how that works. Because that's how it works, yeah. Fucking idiot. We've all learned that now. Oh, okay. This is 10 minutes into the show. All right. And this is what happens. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's see. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> John, that's 16 seconds long of you going, ah. You're not good at this. You shouldn't do a live show. But it never gets old. Oh, I love it. He, he's I love not, it. He'll never learn. He's not what you would call a born entertainer. No. Just doesn't have it in him. There's not an ounce of charisma in this guy. No. I was going back. I was watching the old Tonight Show stuff when he was on the Tonight Show. Yeah. And they did a bit when his movie One Too Many came out. Mm-hmm. And they had this guy, Ross the Intern. I and, saw that, yeah. Okay, yeah, you watched yeah, that yeah. too. So they had Ross the intern go to the premiere of One Too Many. Yeah. And the running gag from this bit on The Tonight Show was watching people leave before the movie had ended. Yeah, yeah. So Ross the intern's just standing out in the lobby, and people are walking out. As soon as the movie started, hey, where are you guys going? They're like, oh, uh, we're just going into the car for a second. They're like, everyone's like trying to sneak out. And then even John leaves his own movie. Yeah, yeah. Before it's over. But it, my point was, I'm sorry, I got lost in why that was funny. My point was, <laughs> even back then, John on The Tonight Show is such an ancillary character. Like, he didn't have any charisma. He just sat there. And they're like, so we went and saw John's movie. And he's talking to Ross, the intern, this character on yeah. the show. And they're just looking at John. John's going, oh, yeah, yeah. Can you believe this idiot made a movie? <laughs> yeah, you know. And he's just like, er. He didn't, he did nothing. <laughs> so let's get into behind the scenes. Everyone likes behind the scenes yes. stuff. Yes. You know? And that's why we're doing this live stream now with Who Are These Podcasts. You can watch us actually record the show. See how the sausage is made. If you're a Patreon member on Supercast, you can log in. Actually, I should mention, not just watch the show live, I leave it up there. So if you want to go back and watch us do this at any point, you can go back and watch this. Oh, you can see how the fudge is packed. You can see (laughs) (laughs) how the slide whistle works. Not the saying, but okay. So uh, this is John talking about behind the scenes He's going to D.C. 
and he just needs to get some press credentials. Um, I'm going to D.C. in April. I actually was on the phone with uh, the press department in D.C. I had to make a couple of phone calls. First, I was on the phone with print. Then I was on the phone with um, uh, the Senate's office. Then they gave me a number for um, TV and radio. So I have yeah. to give them a call today <laughs> or tomorrow. Uh, so I will, I will certainly, uh, um, but I will be there in April. Gonzo is going to meet me there and help me out. Mexicali Maggie, thanks for the five bucks, John. I don't get paid until April. Sorry. So cheap. Love the show. Look, anything helps and no one's has to do it. Type me, but I do appreciate it because I do have a lot of money to spend in when I go to D.C. Fat Chance, M.G. Daniel. If I have to put up a crew, if I have to get, you know, at a hotel, the Amtrak's not too much. But I also got to get, the, yeah, I got to get a crew, the hotel, the flight. You know, it all adds up. Kimberly Glons, Chris Derrickson. I'd like to get press credentials, though. Jackie Hobson. He's no different than a TV evangelist, except for he doesn't make money. Yeah. Right? And he's, he's begging for the most basic of shit. Like, literally, there was a person on there who just gave her five, gave him five bucks and said, I'm really sorry. This is all I have. Like, These are the people who should not be donating money yeah. to Stuttering John. If five bucks is like, I didn't get paid yet. This is all the money that I have. Yeah. Yeah. Like, John shouldn't be grifting from these people. It's not yeah. a good look. I know. Mexicali Maggie's going to have to switch to a cheaper baloney. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a failure. Yeah. This whole trip to DC. He's talking about like, it's going to be expensive. I got to get a crew together. I got to do this. I got to do that. It's like, maybe have a business model first. Well, we still want him to have the trip. I mean, oh, I do. Okay. Well, right. I want this to happen. And I hope he has a trip. If, if any of this is to be believed, which I think all of it is very suspect. <laughs> so it, it, again, if we're taking him at his word, he's booked the flight without having a place to stay or knowing how he's going to get around town. He right. just knows some guy is going to meet him there. Right. And he also... A guy named Gonzo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it doesn't <right>. go well. <laughs> and it it sounds like, and again, uh, you know, taking him at his word, that he called up the Senate and pretended to be a print journalist? <laughs> yeah. Is that what we just heard? Yeah. He's a newspaper columnist? Apparently. And now... He's going to call the TV and radio division. They just are giving him phone numbers to call, which he, you know, he'll get to eventually, I guess. Yeah, today or tomorrow. So is he going to pretend to be a TV and radio journalist? Does he think that just anybody on YouTube is going to get credentials and access to, to Senate events or something? How does how does he think any of this works? I don't know, but I'm very much looking forward to seeing the uh, end product yeah. from all of this. And I hope we get a lot of behind-the-scenes material. You know what I mean? I hope so. I'd be surprised if we do, but we will see. All right, so then he brings on his guest, Tony Michaels. And Tony Michaels is a guy who's never been on a show before, mm. but <laughs> you're going to be surprised. Super liberal. Ah. He has a guest on who's really into liberal politics. Speaking of uh, brainless people who wear red hats, um, you know, there's a seven-hour gap in between the call log at the White House, but you know there's there's about a seven-hour gap between between the Cheeto Dust mobster's ears. Um, that's what I call that's what I call <laughs> Donald Trump. Did everyone get that joke? Damn. Did he say there's a seven-hour gap between his ears? Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't like a seven f- inch gap or like wouldn't it be like a a measurement of distance rather than time well einstein did say that time <laughs> and space are related <laughs> Carl, so. all right let's hear that one again yeah from this uh hilarious but, jokester but picture quantum mechanics while you're here okay <laughs> about a seven hour gap between between the cheeto dust mobster's ears um that's what i call that's what i call <laughs> donald trump so um, I, I like I like the video that they did yesterday. I, I take it that you liked it too. Yeah, I'm, you know, I, you, you know, I discovered those guys. Did, did you know that? <laughs> All right, so now John's taking credit <laughs> for the Midas Touch Brothers. I discovered them. He guys. said that he discovered them. So I went ahead and I went to their wiki page, Midas Touch. Yeah. Uh, a control find for the word stuttering and John nowhere yeah. to be found. Oh, yeah. not on the page at all. Like, Are you saying whoever wrote that wiki page doesn't realize that John discovered them? That stuttering John is trying to big time someone? Because <laughs> I, I won't stand for that, Carl. So what's funny is that even though he discovered Midas Touch, 
John's not on their network. This guy is. <laughs> I, I, oh, I no feel, shit. I feel that John's a little bit bitter about it. I mean, they have a billion shows on their network, although they haven't asked me. You're on the network. <laughs> I, I am. So we, we recently partnered with Midas Touch. Uh, we do a two-hour show every single weekday. All right. Yeah, he sounds a little better there. Yeah, he goes, I discovered that without even on the network. This guy does a show five days a week. And he uses their Facebook feed. So he goes through the Midas Touch Brothers. And I just want to break down, because this is political talk, I want to show what level of political discourse we're at with these people. And look, at I'm not trying to turn this into left versus right, Democrats versus Republicans. None of that is going on here. I just want to show, these people happen to be Democrats, happen to be liberal, but I just want to show how dumb they are when it comes to politics and it starts with them talking about this don't say gay bill in Florida, which, you know, we all know about. And this guy is very excited that they won the messaging on this bill. The Democrats did. We see the Democrats are horrible at messaging, right? Yep. But the one thing, the one thing that Republicans in Florida are absolutely pissed off about, about the bill that they just signed. They signed the bill. They don't put it in the law. That's right. The reason why they're mad, like I posted, did you see Ron Perlman's video where he was, he basically called the DeSantis a POS? So I posted that on TikTok uh, on my account to spread it around a bit to show everyone uh, what, what Ron DeSantis really is. And the one comment I got was, oh, it doesn't say don't say gay in the bill. Like they're so mad the Democrats won the messaging on that, right? Okay. So... It's true. It doesn't say don't say gay in the bill. You could also easily say don't groom children bill. You know, basically it's like children five to seven years old. Like, don't talk about sexual intercourse in any way. You know, they don't need to hear about this shit. Don't sexualize children is the whole point of this in school anyway. So he just said, he goes, yeah, we got away. The Democrats did with calling the don't say gay bill, which fucks everybody up. Because it makes it sound like it's something different than what it actually is. And we've won the messaging strategy. And then they play this from Ron Perlman and don't understand what he just said. This is Ron Perlman uh, talking about uh, uh, this is his open letter to Ron DeSantis. Yes, it's hilarious. And true, by the way. Good morning, Governor DeSantis. Ron here. Um. Don't say gay. <laughs> Don't say as the first two words in a sentence spoken by a political leader of a state in the United States of America. Don't say. Don't fucking say, you fucking Nazi pig. <laughs> say. First Amendment. Read about it. Then run for office. You piece of shit. Oh, it's it's so fantastic. <laughs> spot, spot on Ron was about Ron DeSantis, wasn't he? Yeah, oh, no, I, I, I'm i so happy that you uh, told me to play that because, I mean, that, that's awesome. <laughs> and it's, like, you know, I love because I love how people will enlighten me. Like, that's a great point. Don't say, I mean, right. you know. I mean that is the. I mean that's going against the First Amendment. That's right. All, all these right wing loons is all they care about is protecting the Second Amendment. They can give a frog fat ass about the first one, I guess. So John got confused in his own argument. Did you hear that? Yeah. It's it's not that don't say gay bill. The Democrats created that, and then they're like, "Hey, you signed that bill into law. Don't say gay. That's against the First Amendment." Like dude, that's not what it is. Like, did you lose track of your argument on this one? Are you that yeah. stupid? Like, that's the level of political discourse on these shows that Suttering John and this retard is doing. And I don't know who's watching this shit. Well, the, if you're into politics, you can't watch this shit. You, you would be like, okay, these people are idiots. The, the fact that they play this video and the video is just one guy calling another guy a prick. Yeah. And re I mean, using like monosyllabic words. And then they're like, that was enlightening. That was enlightening. Yeah. I learned from that video. I've never heard one guy call another guy a prick like that before. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> really? It's, it's really funny because after that, John goes on to explain a debate he's having at his pub, Scotland Yard, that he hangs oh, out at. Boy. And I always love when people want to introduce how smart they were in an argument at a bar. 
to someone else. So he goes, yeah, you know, I'm talking to these these idiots at the bar, and they think that Will Smith's Oscar should be taken away. And and I'm like, oh, do you think Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame? Oh, you do? Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Am I right? Am I right? He's talking to this guy like their buddy's like, see? I got over on those guys at the pub. I'm so oh smart. God. Fucking idiots. Oh, fuck. Uh, and he ends that with conservatives don't care about the First Amendment. Right, that's why Rumble exists and every other fucking alternative platform that they've all been kicked off of. All right. So uh, let's go to another episode. And this is John getting trolled, which is always one of my favorite things. Um, Baby Yoda, thanks for the two bucks. Uh, uh, no, you know, and then I get, a, you know, you know, a horrible troll. You know, it's, it's oh, I love the trolls. Do you like the trolls, John? I love the trolls. Nah, you know, it's just, you know, when they say stuff about my transgender kid, it's it's oh, I see. So it's, they, it's, they, they, when they go after kids, they're no longer a troll. They're an asshole. And assholes yeah. need to be need, need to be yeah. uh, uh, let out of the building with their head opening the door. I, I so, want to go, but it's cowardice because they right. do it anonymously. If that idiot mm -hmm. would do it to my face, right? You know what I mean? Well, go let me tell you something. My, let me tell you something about the Chris Walk Will Smith. Go thing. to one of my gigs and do it to my face, and then we'll see how how tough you are. Right? John's inviting people to confront him. He does it all the time. This is going to happen at some point. Someone's going to confront him, and he's going to play the victim. Yeah. John, you've been asking people to punch you out at the pub, at your comedy shows. He's also inviting people to his gigs, which is a good idea. <laughs> that is a good idea, actually. <laughs> and <laughs> Just tell him at the door you're there to punch me. I mean, see me. <laughs> Are you plus one? <laughs> this poor guy, the whole time, he's like, okay, but what I want to talk about is, Okay, but what I really want... <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, but let's move on to... Like, he's he's trying to somehow steer this into, like, some sort of human conversation, kind of, Well, right? you saw that John got distracted by the chat. Yeah. And he starts reading. He's not reading out loud. And he goes, oh, oh, it's a troll. And then he immediately goes to... They're talking about my trans kid. Let me read you the comment, because I went to the video and I looked at the comment that he was reading when this happened. Yeah. It's from hot single Vietnamese teacher. Ooh, she's single? <laughs> and it says... <laughs> I think this slap was a CIA psyop to distract people from the fact that there are U.S. biological labs in Ukraine. John reads that and says, oh, you're talking about my kids, my transgender kid. He loves to play the transgender card to make himself the victim, even when the person who was commenting had nothing to do with his kid or transgender or anything. First off, wasn't that your story on last week's Creep Off? Yes. <laughs> That's what he was reading. That said, okay, it's 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 wild, it's and he wild. gets he gets so set off and angry, and, and and like I said, this guy's like trying to at least okay, but let's you know this gets funnier oh, because um, Carla H gives him a super chat. Ooh. Yeah, check this out. Carla H, thanks for the two bucks. Have you ever been attacked by an audience member? I I have never, <laughs> you know, and I made mistakes, you know, on stage. I mean, like I guess you know, I, for people who aren't watching. Oh. There was a, a time when we were doing the show and the Discord was photoshopping me in a lot of different ways. Oh. And this is the female version of me oh that Carla H is using. Oh my God. As their, uh, as their avatar. Have you ever been attacked by an audience member? I, I have oh. never. You know, and I made mistakes, you know, on stage. I mean, like, I guess the, <laughs> I guess the biggest one, Tony, that I've always yeah. been embarrassed about, I asked a woman once. You know, how many months pregnant she was and she wasn't pregnant. Oh, fuck, buddy. Oh, my God, man. That's the one thing you don't do. No, it's the one thing he does do. He's an idiot. <laughs> I think that's, I think that's the that's biggest laugh for that one, too. All right. So John compares himself to Will Smith. But he says that unlike Will Smith, he actually has restraint. Oh, and he can prove it with this example. The, th the funny thing about Centering John is that we've been watching him pretty closely for a couple of years now. And so most of the stories he tells I've heard before. Yeah. But every now and again, he brings one out that's brand new that we've never heard before. Howard mm. Stern, while he was my boss, mm -hmm. told me to abort <laughs> my child. Because really? I wasn't fit to be a father. Oh, my God. Now, I'll tell you, it took every ounce of my being to not get up and freaking punch the pelican in the face for saying that. Oh, bitch, bitch, bitch. <laughs> I 
I wish he would bring that up more often. It's yeah. such a horrible thing that happened. Did that really happened. I'm surprised you never said that before. That's wild. Every ounce of my being not to abort that. <laughs> And then after he says that, he talks about getting Chris Rock on the show as a guest. Good luck with that, John. If you get Chris Rock on the show, I'd be very impressed. <laughs> well, Chris Rock's tickets are going for thousands of dollars yes. now. I'm sure he'd be happy to go in front of a dozen people. On yeah, I'm sure he needs to promote it to Stuttering yeah, John. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. All right. So then they talk about what Chris Rock should have done. Oh. No, no, no. I'm sorry. That's how I labeled it here. I believe this is what they think Will Smith should have done. This is interesting. This is an angle I will tell you I have not heard. I've heard a lot of people comment on this situation. I have not heard this angle. Really? If Will Smith, because he ruined his whole reputation now. Right, right. Really? If if he would have just, like John Fugel said, said on this show, if he would have just, like, you know, you know, grabbed the mic and said, mm-hmm. and said Chris, uh, my wife suffers from alopecia. I'm sure right. you didn't know that, but... <laughs> It was wrong. I wish you'd take it back. And honey, I love you. Right. He would have been a hero. Oh, yeah. Well, or he would have said something like, you know, my wife suffers from alopecia and there's a, many people around the world that do. And it's an insensitive joke. I don't think you should tell it. I think you should apologize to the world, Chris. And if you apologize, I think the world should accept your apology. And sat back down and then Chris Rock, Chris Rock could have... You know, oh, he would have apologized. Well, said, well, and he would have he would have riffed on it, and he would have made it he would have made it lighthearted, good hearted, and he would have made it funny too because it's Chris Rock. These people are fucking idiots. Oh, yeah. wow. Will Smith should have ran up there, grabbed the mic out of his hand, and said that joke hurts people's feelings, and you should, as a comedian, never hurt anyone's feelings. <laughs> How give a dare shout you. out? Oh, hey, honey. <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> and then Chris Rock would have said, "I need to realize I was hurting people's feelings, yes. <laughs> and I promise I will never do that again." Yeah. That's I don't know what came over me just now. Chris Rock didn't even write that joke. No, it was handed to him. It's not even a joke. It's not even a good joke. It wasn't even a good joke. These fucking idiots. Have you heard that take before? No. You should have grabbed the mic out of his hand and explained to him why that's not a funny joke. Could you imagine if at comedy shows that actually happened? But not just like insulting people. Just like people come up and just be like, the reason why that joke didn't land is uh, you need to like wait another beat before you tell the Oh, thank you, audience member. Great. Yeah. Can everyone else give me notes after the show, not during it? Chris, this guy wants to I've come written down my feelings on this paper <laughs> about... Fucking idiot. So John's been getting trolled this entire show, and then Benny Loco, his moderator, finally shows up just to get reprimanded. Uh, Benny Loco, where you been? Thanks for the 10 bucks. If you're here and you haven't had the thumbs up, what the heck you waiting for? I could have used you today there, Benny. I've been getting <laughs> troll after troll. They're really loving me. So wait. It costs 10 bucks to be his moderator? <laughs> Benny Loco yeah. has to work for him and give him $10, and she still gets scolded for How does this work? <laughs> How the fuck does that work? Thanks for the 10 bucks. You're fired. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. What a scam he is running over it is, there. It is something else. I have to give him credit for it. All right, so we've been goofing on the fact that John's going to go to D.C., and even if he gets these press credentials, you know, the print one, the other two. Yeah. Let's say that he gets there and he gets in front of, like, Mitch McConnell. Oh, yeah, press conference. You know, and he, he gets to finally ask Mitch McConnell these questions. And, all right, listen, we don't have Fred. We don't have Jackie. We don't have Howard writing these jokes. That's right. But do you think for a second, Crows, that these aren't going to be just as funny as the jokes that he would ask celebrities back when he was on the Howard Stern show? Get ready to hold your sides oh boy. as he tells you this is a, a little tease of some of the jokes oh, that are going to come out wait. with Mitch McConnell. Well, I want to ask, you know, Mitch McConnell, all questions that revolve around a turtle. Like, like Mitch, <laughs> you know, when you masturbate, is that called turtle waxing? Uh, Mitch, um, is this whole thing between you and... You know, between you and Nancy Pelosi, is that like a shell game you're playing there? <laughs> it's going to be all like, you know, Mitch, you know, why don't you come out of your shell and say something nice about, you know, Joe Biden? You know, I'm just going to be all about turtles. Is this whole thing, is it everything going on in, in politics now kind of like the tortoise in the hair? It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be all turtle jokes. And I'll see how long. That he it'll take him to finally realize I'm freaking turtling him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
I am not a fan of Mitch McConnell or career politicians in general. I guarantee Mitch McConnell is way smarter than Stuttering John and will not fall for any of this horse shit. He thinks he's going to play out over seven or eight questions, and then eventually he's going to be like, hey, wait a second. <laughs> and just one more thing. <laughs> I know. Does he think he's going to get like a sit down interview? Like a yeah, 30 minute like 60 thing minutes. With these folks? Yeah, like, yeah. He's, he's going to be on 60 yeah. minutes with Mitch McConnell. Right, right. Yeah, those folks do that like once or twice a year, if, if at all. I mean, it, that shit is. Uh, this guy's. Hold on, on a second. Mind. He's got more turtle jokes. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Okay. <laughs> I know you thought that he probably blew his wand there. No, he's got more. He can win me over. Oh, man. Mitch, if you fall over, can you get back up? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like the turtle jokes. I like, yeah. I like it. I like it. So when, when are you doing this? Are you into tour? tort? I mean, tortoise reform. <laughs> tortoise reform. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you gotta have, you gotta have tortoise reform. How would you? Uh... Yeah. No, it's gonna be all turtle jokes. I like turtles. <laughs> <laughs> this poor Tony Michaels guy has to sit there and listen to these and be like, oh yeah, no, that's that's also good. Yep, yep. that's a pretty good one right there. If you look closely, you can see in his eyes him questioning life itself. Yes, he, correct. Like, He's like, we, him and I agree on things? That can't be good. You know, I get here. I could sit here for 27 more minutes or I could kill myself. And it's looking pretty Although, right now. I got to say, John gave me some good ideas for the roast of Vinnie Paulino. Ooh. All pizza jokes. Oh, there you go. All pizza jokes. You know, Vinnie's girlfriend in high school was a pizza face. Not because she had zits, because she was a pizza. Oh! Actually, I might use that. <laughs> that's that's, yeah, that's actually not, not too bad. bad. All right. The last clip that I have from Stuttering John is he tries to tell both this Tony Michaels guy and the Army Major Richard Ojeda. <laughs> A Norm McDonald joke. Oh, boy. Now, what, what we know about Stuttering John is that he fancies himself a comic. He does for some reason. Right. And he gets very offended if you say he's not a professional yeah. comic. Like, yeah. That's what he does. He's a comic. He tours the, the world, tours <laughs> the country. He tells jokes for a living. So I, I have a feeling that this Norm McDonald joke is going to go off without a hitch. He's going to just nail it. And it's not a hard It reminds for... me of the... The, and it's not a politically correct joke, but Norm McDonald does this great joke, and I'll just share it with you. And, yeah. you know, I love Norm, and he, he wasn't always a politically uh, uh, correct. So just, you know, this is, don't quote me on this, but this was his joke. It was so funny because he goes, he goes, so, so a guy walks into a, a store and he goes, hey, do you have any Polish sausage? And then the guy goes, are you Polish? And and he goes, why would you think that? Because I want Polish sausage. So if I ask for, um, it, it, you know, if I ask for some Irish soda bread, does that mean I'm Irish? You know, you know, if I ask for some Swedish meatballs, does does that mean I'm Swedish? If I ask for some Italian, uh, if I ask for some Polish, I know. If I ask for some Italian um, sausage. <laughs> Does that make me Italian? And then the guy behind the counter goes, no, it's because you're at a hardware store. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I can't do it justice, but no, it's Norm. No, you, you know, just, um, it, it, right. <laughs> My uncle who molested us on a weekly basis was told better jokes. <laughs> and Suttery John, and I liked him more. Can you call that a cock, Carl? He was more pleasant to be around <laughs> than Suttering John Melendez. Holy shit. Is he just going to choke on his own tongue eventually? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Look he has way. so much suffocating words out of his, 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 his mouth. He's a it's, living Yosemite Sam. Oh, it's bad. It's so bad. <laughs> Speaking of guys that people like to fuck with. <laughs> I want to point out that there's someone who has been messaging with Stuttering John, and their name is Crow's Gas Station, which is always fun to me. So here's just a quick clip from uh, John addressing Crow's Gas Station. 
Uh, Crow's Gas Station, thanks for the five bucks. Hey, John, finally got rid of some of my family heirlooms so I can finally help you with your DC trip. Keep up the good work. Sorry for being so stingy. Anything anything helps. I, You know, I got to hire a crew and everything else out there. So I'm, uh, you know, I, it's because it, I got I to gotta get a hotel. By the way, hotels in D.C. are freaking expensive, Glenn. Some of them are. The nice ones are. <laughs> I don't need to say the nice one. If you can give me a recommendation, you know, just text it to me of, like, of one that's... I'll put you up in my guest room, John. How about that? That'd be awesome. How far are you from D.C.? Uh, I'm right outside of D.C. Oh, that would be awesome, Glenn. That, that would freaking help me a lot because I don't know how much I'm going to have to pay for the crew. Eric, do you think that was a real invitation? I think that was fake. That's the same thing as when someone says, yeah, come on over. You know, you just you just don't. You right. Just, you don't take him up on that. Yes, I, I got the I've sense been, that he was not ready for Johnny to be like, oh, my God, really? Yeah, you're close to D.C.? Yeah, all right. Well, I'll be there tomorrow. Like, oh, well, no, oh, shit. I should have said that. What is the time? What is the timeline of when he started talking about the big trip? To, we're talking years now, right? I think it was I mean, June, as as, June of last year was when he first introduced this concept that he was going to do this. Oh, okay. I thought it was much longer than that. <laughs> it's, I thought it's, had, it's a long it's, time. It seems longer, but, I mean, you would think that – um uh, that what? How hard could it possibly be to scrounge up enough money for plane fare and uh, do this? And, and and what is the goal here? He wants to go talk to Republicans and give them shit. Eric, there's been so many obstacles in his way. First off, it turns out that people in Congress don't work every day of the week. They get weeks off from time to time. That fucked John up because originally back in June he was planning this. He was going to go to D.C. in August. Now, I'm a guy who pays very little attention to politicians, and I even know that everything is closed for all of August. It's been that way my entire life. Like, that's their month off. And John didn't even realize. He's like, they're not even going to be there in August. Now what am I going to do? Oh, it's, 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 a, it's a huge setback. I, I, I got I to I got regroup. <laughs> yeah, he's still regrouping from that because now apparently he's going in April. What's funny, too, is that he goes, I can't tell anyone when I'm going in April. I want it to be a surprise. Somebody looked up their schedule. They're only in session for one week in April. So it's like that's when John would be there if he's paying attention, of yeah. course. Wouldn't be that difficult to figure out. But God, I yeah. want to talk about what was going on with the latest beer on the balcony. Stuttering John brings on his buddy Grillo. But before he does that, he has to once again school us on how copyright law works, yeah. which is always good. This podcast video is copyrighted any unauthorized use without the express consent of the stuttering john podcast is strictly prohibited uh and that could be taken off now uh and we go back to the chat room here doesn't it sound like he's talking to a producer all right we can get rid of that banner now we'll go back to the chat. <laughs> yeah. he's doing this himself yeah, yeah. he's, yeah, he's, he he's doing stream the same thing that i'm doing like you control that yourself and we'll switch the view back to all three of us looking at uh stuttering john all right can all right we, very can we get good some more drinks in here <laughs> <laughs> there is no producer that's the problem here. everything what what why does he think it's such an important thing to do that? Like that's ever stopped anybody from ever doing anything that's of taking point. someone's material. No one that, that no one's ever been sued. No one it has well, never happened. It just actually some just asshole. happened and Brendan Chow oh, did just sued unique, but yeah. Uh, oh <laughs> uh, well. Well it's funny because Eric, and I'm I'm sorry to jump all over you on that, because people no, are right. telling me that I've got the copyright law all fucked up, that I'm wrong about this. That oh, okay. Stuttering John saying that, all right, this is copyrighted is, I guess, how you copyright something. I, it, who knows? But the point is that John still doesn't understand how fair use works. So either way, it doesn't make a fucking bit of a difference who owns the copyright on anything because we can use clips of it when we're goofing on him, that's how fair use works, John. It doesn't matter how many times you show that banner that says we need express written consent from Major League Baseball or whatever the fuck you stole that from. 
I, I, does he think I'm going to request permission? John, is it right. cool if I just use this part where Grillo looks like an idiot and you laugh at him? Can I, can I play that part of it? Or how does that you work? You should just ask. Say, hey. <laughs> I I'm should. Gonna, I, I'm just going to assume that a no reply is yes. So uh, <laughs> yeah. can, I, yeah. can yeah. I use this? Good idea. I'll, I'll tweet at him because he has me blocked. He'll never see it. And I'll be like, your, uh, your honor. <laughs> Did everything I One pinky up for yes. <laughs> oh, that's a yes. That's another yes. It's another yes. All right. So he brings on his buddy Steve Grillo, who was an intern on the Howard Stern show, and they've yet to shut up about it. And so Grillo comes on. He wasn't feeling good. And he explains why he feels better now. And John can totally relate to this. Well, you said you weren't feeling good today. Uh, you know what? A shot of vodka would do you real good. I was going to say that to you, Steve. I always feel better after I have a few beers. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that, you know. Yeah. So John's point is like, yeah, I'm hungover every day, and then I start drinking again, and then I'm fine. Grillo goes, well, no, actually, I was working yesterday, and it was so dusty there that I didn't feel good. Like, Grillo is actually a grip on a TV show, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. He actually has a job. He's not like John. Okay. He does stuff. So he's explaining like, yeah, you know, we went to the set or wherever they were shooting this and it was all dusty and he didn't feel good. And so he got up and he had a shot of vodka and now he feels better. And John's like, oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's the fucking key to salvation yeah. right there is just keep drinking. Yeah. I, did you see his face light up? <laughs> yeah. Like I yeah. knew it. Someone's finally <laughs> buying into my t- 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 type of thinking. T- t- welcome to the, welcome to the club. <laughs> so now John asks possibly the worst question ever and then figures out a way to follow that up with an even worse question. I uh, made myself some soup and had a shot and all of a sudden, boom, I'm back. What kind of soup? <laughs> Ramen. <laughs> oh, chicken or beef? No, pork. Oh, pork, pork, ramen. Yeah, they have a lot of different flavors now. They have spicy chicken. Like, <laughs> I like ramen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. John likes dorm food? I didn't know that. Bologna, ramen. Wow. Hey, follow me for more <laughs> tips. <laughs> Macaroni and cheese is really a big hit around here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good combination oh, of fuck. flavors. That- Hey, I, 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 I was listening to b- b- Block Party, and they, 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 they kind of just run with these crazy t- tangents. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of question is that? What kind of soup did you have? I had Robin. Oh, yeah, what flavor, Robin? John, who fucking cares? What's the difference here? Why would any of this matter? I'm trying to find a hole in his story. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you didn't even have Robin, did you? All right, you got me. <laughs> one more thing. Just one more thing. <laughs> Oh, and poor fucking Grillo is so poor. He's excited about spicy chicken ramen. Yeah, they got new flavors. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. God damn it. All right, Eric, you, sir, are a radio veteran. I don't want to say a radio legend. I'm going to leave that to the likes of <laughs> stuttering John Melendez and Steve Grillo. And you really get a sense for how talented they are. With their, their back and forth, you can tell they're just very comfortable being on air and having an on air conversation. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess, right? What? What happened? What do you mean? I don't know. <laughs> With the show, yeah, that's what you're talking about, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, Ooh. in Grillo's defense, He's stoned out of his mind, and this is a waste of his time. In centering John's defense, he's an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> He's really bad at having a conversation. He doesn't know where he is. <laughs> I mean, this this isn't a job for him. It's obvious that the guys who are on the Howard Stern Show, and they talk about how, oh, my God, we had the best times. Everything was going great. We'll get into clips of that. The Stern Show was the best when we were on it. You guys were good on the Howard Stern Show because they – goofed on you like you were usually the butt of the joke they brought you into the studio and said john what is this that i'm hearing you're you're doing comedy shows you're taking all the money whoa no that's not true or grillo would come in i oh, didn't get my potato right you know oh what did i do you know, that's what they did and now they're like we're radio legends you're obviously not you're not good at this you can't host a show 
I am so distracted by the shape of his body. It's not <laughs> supposed to be square like that. He looks like a fucking <laughs> looks like a fucking Lego. It's very odd how how boxed off it is. It almost looked like it looks like his head is on one of those things that you put at like a theme park. Uh, of like a cowboy or some shit, <laughs> you yeah, know, like, just to make it very, it's very cartoon, strange. cartoon dimensions to it. Yeah, like I mean, the head shape is exaggerated. Yeah, his see, look at uh, Grillo's shoulders; they yeah. slope down like a human. John <laughs> looks like a goddamn. I don't know what that is. For those of you who can't see this, John looks like shit. <laughs> oh, thank you for fuck. Whenever you articulate when, that better than Eric could. <laughs> yeah, I, whenever I see on Reddit, you guys show pictures of him and his skin is like ash. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck, man? I'm like, this man's he's gonna die. It's not good. So now, John and Grill are talking about the fact that they could be promoting the fact that Grill is on his show. And he would just need a link that people could then watch the show. And this is very confusing to John. He doesn't understand how this works. I did send you a link. Well, you sent me nothing. You sent me a link to get into StreamYard. Yeah, that's the link. Yeah, for me. What if people that I know want to tune in? Oh. Money? Oh, okay. Yeah, like, like I was going to put it on Twitter and, and Facebook and Instagram. Listen to me starting drawing. Well, send it to you now? Send it to me now. I'll tweet. Yeah, I'll put it out there. I'm sorry. I, I misunderstood. Okay. Yeah. Here, I'll get you the link. No, I wanted to tweet it so people can tune in and watch. No, I understand. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand now. The chill about John's immediately on the offensive, yeah. too. I did send you yeah. a link. It's like, no, no, no. That's I'm not made of links. <laughs> John's like, John's like I, I, this is just a conversation. I'm not even showing this to anybody. I just want to say hi. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a soup conversation we're having. What do you mean? I I'm just want to. I just want to hear about what soup you are eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's let's listen to two boomers try to figure out how to share a link. This is the kind of shit that I think uh, our buddy Croge lives for. Is this because this isn't a show? This is embarrassing. You shouldn't be doing this on a show. All right. Uh, now, now I, I, I got to email this to you. I guess. Well, tax it to me because it's, it's easier. I can copy it and then post it on whatever. Well, I don't know if I can get on your text here. Text you. Let me see if I can, if oh, I can pull I you up. All right. Yeah, I can copy and did. Send me a did. Oh, no, let me see if I can get you here. I'm Steve kind Grilla. of overwhelmed. Steve Gorilla. Oh. No, I don't have you on this one. So I, I'm going to email to you, all right? That's fine. I can copy and paste it off my email. All right. Hold on. Oh. Yeah. All right, because I, I have tons to talk to you about, but hold on. Let me just okay. do this first. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. All right. I'm going to send it to your PC, and then you you take that, and you send it back to me, and then I'll send it to your Mac, and you text it to me. I'll copy it <laughs> and text it to you. You click on that thing, and when it opens, you send it to your friends. It's It's so confusing. Does Grill not get email on his phone? He's like, well, if you text me, then I'll have it on my phone. Well, I, or I could email it to you. Yeah, but, you know, I need it on my phone. Like, what, what are you guys talking about? So fast forward 15 minutes. 15 minutes after this conversation, they're still confused about this link. So, um, no, he's not sharing the link. Uh, he wouldn't do that. But I, here's the deal. You know, Did you send me what I can send people to go? Okay, there it is. All right, so right. we're gonna copy this, and then I gotta give it to him. Oh, you haven't given it to him yet? No, I didn't even know. It, I, I, I'm trying not to. I, I'm trying to ignore my phone. Hold Just on. email it to him. Don't put it on Twitter. I got it. I got it. So this guy's a you know you know this guy's full, full of shit. Just a troll. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> what did you? I I was completely blown away the day that you know Miss America came out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a grill. Transitions what a there. Transition. What a transition. <laughs> yeah, yeah d- take a picture of your phone. Yeah, let me talk about Miss America. <laughs> so Grillo's transition from that is I was blown away and then he forgot what he was talking about. Oh, the day Miss America came out. Because apparently Howard Stern's second book, Miss America, was dedicated to Grillo and the other interns. And Grillo goes, John, were you jealous about that? And John's like, well, no, you guys were making no money, and Howard felt bad. I had a salary. 
we didn't feel bad about that at all. That was like, <laughs> that was like, so he didn't have to pay you guys. He just put put you in the book. Girl's like, oh, oh, <laughs> okay. He just found out about it. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, <laughs> you're right. That is why he did that. I was blown away. I thought he liked me. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not what it was. Eric, I know that when you broadcast your show, you're in a room above your garage. That is the real room. You do not use a green screen. When we're watching you, we're seeing you in your natural habitat. Of course. Of course. Now, what you're missing out on when you do that is great green screen humor, which Stuttering <laughs> Job is the best at. Oh, that's right. Wait, I'm not on the balcony, Steve. Hold on a yeah. second. Hold on. Hey, hold on. Let me just walk downstairs and get to the balcony. All right. There we go. There you go. <laughs> See, it's so funny because he didn't actually go out on the balcony. He just yeah. changed out the image behind him on the green screen. Really cute. And Look then that's like he was somewhere be. different in his apartment. It's good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I've gotten more techy. I'm really techy. Hey, you're going to love God. this next joke. Now I'm back in my living room again. Oh, watch out. Now I'm in and the I alley. Love the, <laughs> I love how the fucking balcony, it looks the outside of like some poverty house. It, just, it, looks, like a, it looks like shit. I mean, if you're gonna, <laughs> if you're gonna have a nice, if you're gonna have a nice backdrop of the LA skyline, at least have a nice backdrop of your, you know, I mean, now you don't want to see the underside, of, you don't want to see your fucking gutter helmet on there. What the fuck? <laughs> All right, so now John asks Grillo about a recent date that Grillo had, but he doesn't actually care. He doesn't listen to a word that Grillo says. He just quickly starts talking about his date because John just wants to talk about John. That's why he's such a great interviewer. Because he's like, all right, you go for a second. And then when, when I see you're done talking, I'm going to talk for a while. I had, a, I had a similar date. I had a date that was arguing with me about the Bible. Like, you know, all, all about God and how God is against same-sex marriage and all this stuff. And then, like, after all this Bible talk, she says to me, I have the best boobs. You want to see him? Yeah. <laughs> First oh. off, John goofs on Jackie for selling his jokes too hard. John's the worst at this. He always lets you know when he thinks you should be laughing. Like he changes out the background to his bucket. He's like, <laughs> Oh, is that my cue? Yeah. And then people are like, Oh yeah. Okay. It's really funny, John. Yeah. And, and Grillo is over supporting too. If you oh, could yeah. just see the reaction of him, he's like selling the fuck out oh, of yeah. it. No, Gr Grill is playing yeah, no. along, which he shouldn't be at this point. He should yeah, realize yeah. he's more talented than John. Since I, you know, I'm always uh, gun shy when you play John talking about a girl because I'm still traumatized by the last time I did this because I was on the episode when John said, "Yeah, I'm working up a good batch of uh, cum." <laughs> Eric, I was just getting over that. <laughs> you know what I that feel was, bad about that? Uh, that affected me. That was to, oh yeah, I gotta give you a good bunch of batch of gum i feel bad because brandon from drew and mike reached out to me looking for that clip and i couldn't find it. i didn't label it correctly <laughs> on my computer because the batch clip is a very important clip in watp history now <laughs> and i couldn't that, find it, it when it was needed it affected people it was like comment after comment and reddit about like <sighs> uh, and people were seriously saying yeah this is this is terrible i'm drawing the line here yeah, it's it's gross to think about John with a female, A, and then to think about him with his batch at a female. <laughs> oh, I'd rather talk and, about and gay just, sex with mafia guys. Yeah, can we get back blockbuster. to that? Uh, yeah. Working up a big batch of cum. Uh, it's all one word. Batch of cum. Batch of cum. <laughs> it's going to be his new restaurant. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. All right. So... John talks about his day. Oh, she's talking about the Bible. He goes, yeah, my day was the same thing. Grillo said nothing about a Bible or anything. My day was the same thing. Talking about the Bible the whole time. And then she, she's like, check out my tits. Like, all right, well, you just wanted to tell that story. Obviously, it made no sense. So then John wants to ask Grillo a question. And watch how bad he is. I can't emphasize this enough. John is terrible at broadcasting. He worked with Jay Leno 
for 10 years. He worked with Howard Stern for 14 years. These are guys who are great at broadcasting, could interview people. This is stuttering John and everything he learned from that. So, uh, Steve, you and I have, uh, okay, you have said this on the show. Well, hold on, hold on. Chauncey oh. Hayden has said that Howard once got a scores uh, dancer pregnant and then bought her a car so she would get an abortion. Have you ever heard that? All right. So he didn't know what he was going to ask. Finally yeah. got it out. And Grillo gives this long, meandering answer. John gets very confused what they're even talking about. There is nonstop confusion going on during the answer because he brought up Chauncey. And Chauncey lives in Ireland now with his baby mama. And it's a whole thing. Wait, Steve, but did he tell you the story about the about the about the stripper? Oh, yeah. Well, not a, uh, he told me the story about the daughter, which I got the real story, which is even more interesting. How what? He, was, he was married and how he found out he had the daughter. The, the, the girl sent him pictures to the house of the baby being born. Like, Quinn. Wait. And then that's his wife. Oh, he goes, his wife said, Honey, you got a, a letter from Ireland. And he, she, he goes, Well, open it up. And it was, oh, Here's your here's your daughter. And it was like, Crowning. What are you talking about? about? He got Who? pregnant. Chauncey. Who? Oh, I'm not talking about Chauncey. I'm talking about Howard. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What a great conversation these two John, are having. John. John thought he was talk. He was about to hear some revelation about Howard's child being born. Correct from a stripper. Yeah, he's like, whoa, uh, this is a scoop we're getting right now. You know, why doesn't Howard Stern have these people killed? <laughs> I mean, what a what a what a bunch of fucking miscreants. No one would even all investigate these, it. He would get away with that these, very easily. Just, no one would miss these kill people. these people. Yeah. These people need to be. Could have been anyone. <laughs> what are they doing? Why God, these people get these, these fucking sick fucks. Why I make don't a even billion like dollars if you're not gonna whack assholes? Just yeah. what's just the point? Kill, kill these people. They need to die. What's interesting so about gross. this clip is that he's Grill is actually telling a very interesting story about Chauncey Hayden, a guy who, who was a character on the Howard Stern show, and. Because John's not following the conversation, he goes, well, I don't care about that. What about Howard Stern? It's like, this could have been an interesting conversation. I know. I wanted to hear the end of it. <laughs> it was actually like, whoa, what the fuck happened? Yeah. He went to visit him in Ireland. He was forced to move to Ireland because that's where this <laughs> kid lives. It's this whole fucking thing. And he's like, ah, I don't care about that. Did uh, did John <laughs> force the stripper to have an abortion or not? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, God. I don't know if that's as exciting as what you were going for, but fair enough. So... John talks about when Adam Carolla was on the Howard Stern show. Now, if you're not familiar with this, when Jackie left the show, they were auditioning different comedians to come in and take over the Jackie chair. And eventually Artie Lang was the person who was hired to take over in the Jackie chair. And we all know that that was radio gold for 10 years with, with Artie Lang. But Adam Carolla was one of the guys who auditioned to be in the Jackie chair and apparently Adam Kroll didn't treat John with as much respect as John would like to be treated with when he was doing the show. No, yeah. I know. I know. I, that's how I felt about Adam Kroll. Cause when they were sitting in, you know, the Jackie chair. Yeah. You know, I, I was going in there talking and then Adam goes, shut up, shut up. You shut up. I'm talking. I'm like, fuck oh. you. Who the yeah. fuck yeah. are you? <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Adam Crow. Who the fuck are you? Well, Just, he has his own radio show in the second largest market in the U.S. He has a morning show in L.A. He turned down the job on Howard Stern because he had a better gig lined up. He's been on TV shows. He's been on the radio forever. He's an extremely right. successful podcaster, much more so than you. And I think he might ask something like, who the fuck is Cedric John would be my guess. I kind of wish that Howard, I wish he would have jumped in and who knows, maybe he did said, yeah, I told him to say that to you. <laughs> right. If you talk, that's, that's <laughs> the first, the first prerequisite of this job is to tell you to shut the fuck up every time you talk. Yeah. Or maybe Adam was trusting his instincts, which Adam has very good instincts. Somebody <laughs> Jack is near a microphone. Like, shut the fuck up. Don't. 
Don't do it. <laughs> the adults are in here talking and making jokes. Stop fucking us up. <sighs> so that's funny whenever John's like, oh, who the fuck does Adam Carolla think he is? Like, John, I mean, look how it played out. What are you talking about? Oh, no. All right. So now they talk about, because John's always trying to get the rumor mill going. When he has a guy like Grillo on, they want to talk about different rumors that are going on with the Howard Stern universe. The problem is, is that both of these guys have been off the Howard Stern show for close to 20 years. So it's hard to bring up shit that's more recent than that. All right. And, now, um, you know, I did want to ask you about this because there's been rumors that Howard cheated on Beth and was with Marcy Turk, according to Monique. I think she's the one who broke the story or could it have been Chauncey on this show? I don't remember. Is that true? Wow. Uh, well, I can't say it's true because I just the first time I'm hearing about it. So <laughs> these people have never met Marcy Turk. They don't even they wouldn't even recognize her if she walked past them in the grocery store. They didn't work there when Marcy Turk worked there. They don't know anything about this. They don't have friends who work there anymore. Why are they talking about this? Did you hear about this rumor? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't heard about it. Is it true? How, how the fuck would I fucking know? Right, I just told you. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> why, why would he possibly God know damn. the answer to that? It boggles my mind that they sit there and try to rehash old shit of old rumors that even if they were true, even if everything he asked were true, no one gives a shit about any of this. This is all just a personal vendetta by this fucking moron. Yeah, you know what? That's a very good point because there are shows like Radio Gunk who are still talking about this shit with Howard Stern. The rest of us don't give a fuck anymore. Like Howard Stern is not an interesting celebrity anymore. He's kind of fallen off the radar. D did Howard Stern cheat on his wife B Beth in 2012? Who gives a fuck? Why, Maybe, why would probably, I possibly care? Yeah. Who gives a fuck? But the guy probably. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Yeah. He fucked a goat. Yeah. He fucked a goat. So you, what? You can tell me he fucked Ralph. His stylist. And I'd be like, all right, well, if I knew that 15 years ago, we'd have some fun with <laughs> this, that. But yeah, this doesn't matter. No one gives a shit. Now, all right, Eric, I know you have a, a hard out. Let me play you them talking about how amazing the Howard Stern show was when they were on the Howard Stern show. Aha. Uh -huh. Of course. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. The trolls are out at, out in full force today. Oh, you know what? You, here's the deal. They, all the trolls go... That's all they got. That's all they can do is talk about the Howard Stern show. They have nothing else going on. You know, shut up. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're talking. We're talking. We're running. I have no problem with it. Look, you know, as time do. goes on, it 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 becomes more apparent that the years from, you know, from those years that that we were on up until the. Up until he went to series, those that was the golden age of the show. Oh God. It becomes more and more apparent oh. that what I remember is the best thing that happened. Yep. My memories are what was great. If Steve Grillo is a has been doing this so long, why is his microphone over here? <laughs> he it's like, pointed the he wrong sounds direction. Like shit. <laughs> he sounds like shit. He's he sounds like shit. He looks like shit. He's just not talking. I know. To it. He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Jesus. God, these two. Fuck you. Go do something. All right, Eric. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today, buddy. It's always great to talk to you, and uh, you kind of kind of filling in last minute with us too. So. Thank you very hey, much. Anytime, anytime I'm invited, I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. The Eric Zane Show. People can go to, is it ericzaneshow.com? Uh, ericzaneshow.com brought to you by Johnson's Carpet One, Carl. That's right. And what do they sponsor? <laughs> what does Johnson's Carpet One sponsor on your show? Uh, they are official show carpet. Um, <laughs> if you, if you want to have carpet in your house like mine in the room above my attic, you can get it from Johnson's Carpet One. You know what you should wow. have? You should have a carpet cam. Like a camera you can turn on that just shows the carpet. Yeah. Hey, let's go to the carpet cam. Let's see what's going on. Oh, recently vacuumed carpet cam. Uh, still time if you're uh, uh, hard up against it for tax time coming up April 18th. Tag accounting. Uh, accounting and tax services, Carl. There you go. There's a lot of people working 80-hour weeks right now at tag accounting who are going, fuck you, Eric Zane. We're not looking for new <laughs> clients right now. 
Are you kidding me? I got a fucking week until April 15th, yep. and you're telling people to sign up with us now? No. <laughs> yeah, We're what, good. What's your beef with tag? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm actually excited, excited about the fucking baseball season starting. I'd like to watch an inning, if possible. I don't want to be working yes, nonstop. Yes. Fuck uh. that. Fuck that shit. Do taxes. <laughs> All right, Eric. Thanks so much All for right, coming love on, you guys. buddy. Thank you. See you, buddy. And Eric Zane's also on Patreon. Check him out. Patreon.com slash The Eric Zane Show. Who knows? Something similar to that, I'm sure. I have a couple more things from Stuttering John that I think are funny. So first off, after that show with Grillo, he comes on his show on Tuesday and talks about what a great show it was for the Patreon, but also explains that his Patreon numbers are down. But great beer on the balcony with Steven Gunga Ding. Grillo, which was a lot of fun. I think everybody enjoyed it. All all my Patreon members. Unfortunately, we lost a few this month. But, you know, we'll see how I'll deal with that. First off, it sounds like they died. We lost yeah. a few. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was, it was a hard-fought battle. We yeah. lost a few, but we came out on the other side. So he goes, we'll see how I'll deal with that. Yeah. Does he know where they live? Well, it's interesting because I see everything through the prism of him talking to me about our lawsuit. Oh, okay. And I could be totally off on this. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I've been playing clips of his Patreon shows, and he goes, and now people aren't on my Patreon anymore, I'm wondering if he's going to try to link these things together and say, I did have 37 people supporting, now I have 33. Mm -hmm. So those four people, that $20 a month is what I'm suing Carl for. This makes sense. Are, are and I wouldn't be surprised. Down too? <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if the numbers I just threw out there are real. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it could be 37 out of 33, and he's going, I don't know what I'm going to do about this, but heads are going to roll. Watch out. Yeah. This is a big problem that we're having. Yeah, you fuck with my silver bullets. <laughs> His Patreon numbers are down. <laughs> oh, what an asshole. And then somebody uh, tipped me off to this. This is going back to February of 2020. I might have, I think I played this on the show before, but it's it's worth revisiting because John's talking about copyright law and how his show is copyrighted and we aren't allowed to play it. Well, back in 2020, John had this YouTube channel that he was trying to get people to check out, and it had a lot of Howard Stern content on it. And Royce and Mersh from Revenge of the Sis brought this up. I don't, you know what he's doing? This is hilarious. He uploaded, he uploaded a clip of him. From the Stern show, he uploaded a he uploaded a clip from him. From the Stern show, copied the entire video, put it on his channel, and then in the description it says "Copyright Stuttering John Podcast." But that's that's not how it works. It's not how it works. He can't be this dumb, right? I'll answer that. Hey, Mark. He. No way. He. He got an entire video. Of the E Show. Of the E Show. An entire video of the E Show. John, this is from Howard Howard Stern TV, which I know for a fact. I know for a fact he doesn't own. Yeah, that's true. John does not own Howard Stern TV. And just putting his copyright on it does not make it so that it's his property. But he's still very confused with how all of that works. That's like labeling your lunch when you go to school. That's how he sees it, I think. <laughs> yeah. Can't touch this. You know who needs shit handed to him to make a good show? Benji. Sick of that. I do not want to be dragged into this lawsuit, Carl. Speaking of sycophant, there's a fun little sign that came over from Dave from Canada, who always does a nice job. That dude is the best. He's the best. Sycophant. (laughs) Sycophant. Perfect. (laughs) Perfect leg. Nailed it. Nailed it. And uh, I also want to play this real quick. This is from D Bone who is the curator of the Centering John Tapes team. This comes out from November 27, 2018, on the Centering John podcast, back when he had Royce as his co-host. And John explains 
that he could have hooked up with these chicks at Pickwick, but he just smelled really bad. <laughs> this is coming from John, not like Royce or someone just like, well, I mean, there's a problem there. Yeah, you know, Don, it was so embarrassing last night. <laughs> I hung out with Royce. Right. That wasn't the embarrassing part. <laughs> At my favorite pub, uh, Pickwick's Pub, in beautiful Woodland Hills. And I actually got two girls' phone numbers. But nice. at one point, one of the girls says that she moved over. This wasn't the girl I was hitting on. I was hitting on this girl, April. The other one, Jenna, moved over. But really, to talk to this other guy. And she, I said, why'd you move over? She said, because I smelt. Now, here is, <laughs> but here, right. but here is the truth. Like what? Though. No, he, like like ass. I think she said. Okay, but here's the truth. I it stop. is because I wear these sneakers that I wear if I'm doing any heavy lifting or if I'm driving for Royce when he needs a driver because you know his, See, it's my fault. All of his <laughs> all of his employees all of his employees have DUIs, so if he needs someone. How to do you not have a DUI? Let's talk so, about that. Yeah, so if he needs somebody, I will do Royce the favor, but. The truth is... But he cops want some low-hanging fruit. Yeah, but the truth <laughs> is, um, I so these sneakers smell, and mm-hmm. I was happened to wear them because they slip on easy. I hate time, so today I have my Converse on. The so chat literally says, I stunk like shit because of my feet, which I feel like is not a good reason to smell bad. <laughs> That's a really I mean, bad reason. This is classic chat. He's got to have eight reasons for shit. Yeah. And why do you need special se- sneakers to drive somebody? Why, and why do your sneakers smell that bad? Well, What's going on there? I just like to imagine that the Pickwick pub, right above his favorite bar stool, there's just like a discolored yellow spot on the ceiling <laughs> yeah. from the stink light. Is he smoking here? Nope. No, he's never <laughs> smoked a cigarette here. a cloud? <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that? Someone's like, yeah, this chick, they wanted to walk away from you because you smelled so bad. I'm like, well, yeah, of course. I was wearing those sneakers. Oh, the, the converse yeah. again. Because I was driving. Yes. And I had to wear those shoes. John, yeah. you'd smell better if you wore them around your neck. You <laughs> asshole. <laughs> if they had tied those shoes together, like when you throw them over the telephone line, <laughs> he just wore them around his neck. Well, that's where he, he found would them. smell better. <laughs> so I have a special treat for us today, gentlemen. There was a Monday edition of Beer on the Balcony. But that's copyrighted. It is copyrighted. As we will soon find out. (laughs) How are you? I know I don't usually do a show today, but I wanted to to do a special show on a Monday. Why not? And I'll even call it Beer on the Balcony. (laughs) Okay, John. (laughs) It's official. Although this one is not behind the paywall. But this podcast video is copyrighted. Any unauthorized use without the express consent of the Suttering John podcast is strictly prohibited. Thank you. I thought the whole copyright thing was based on his behind a paywall, and that's why I couldn't use it. So he's getting confused with his own bullshit now. He's like, all right, well, this one is available on YouTube, but it's still copyrighted, Carl. Well, that's what, what early alcohol onset type. <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> freaking Alzheimer's does do. I was surprised. So this is a Monday. Normally, he does shows on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. What are the chances he also drinks beer on his days off? Oh. I was really surprised by that. Like, it's a Monday, and he's able to do beer on the balcony? He's a pro. I thought he was just drinking on Saturdays. Like, you know, when you do what he's you love. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Never work a day in your Never. life. He took that too literally. Never work a day in your life. <laughs> You're nailing it, John. <laughs> So I want to point out the amazing thing about this episode is that it has been taken down because John has decided that, that he should quit the business. That he was getting trolled because of the special guest that he brings on to do the show with him. He explains why he's doing a Monday beer on the balcony. And now, uh, why, why you you know you're probably asking John why do a, a show today? Like why, I, you know why? Well. <laughs> It's very simple. It's like he rehearsed that bit <laughs> and still did it all wrong. Because you know he like had it written down. You're probably thinking, why are you a podcast? No, Dude. why are you podcasting on a Monday? Dude, he sounds like an 80s wrestler that they gave a microphone to. Just yeah. didn't remember the yeah. stuff. <laughs> and you, hope, hope, uh, I will get uh, you. Captain Lou Albano. <laughs> you think you're mean, Gene? Why you? You know you're probably asking John why do a, 
a show today. Like, why? I, you know, why? <laughs> well, it's very simple. You're probably thinking, dur, 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 dur. if you're like me, you're probably thinking, dur, 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 dur. <laughs> you know what? I got to tell you, now I want to know why. He really <laughs> did sell me on it. I when would like to know now. I was taking it for granted that there was a Monday beer on the balcony. I should really be asking myself, why? What is bringing this special treat into our lives? I, the county health why? inspector. You, you know, you're probably asking John, why do a, a show today? Like, why? I, you know, why? Well, it's very simple. Uh, <laughs> I'm good friends with Monique from Radio Gunk. Not anymore. And I have to say, I was admiring her shows on YouTube. And I called her. And she's very hard to get a hold of. I mean, I had, a, I had an easier time getting a hold of Donald Trump on Air Force One than I did getting a hold of Monique. What but season? I think she does a great <laughs> job. Any Stern fan or form or ex-Stern fan should should go to Radio Gunk, watch her shows, listen to her show. She does a damn good job. Her and Arm and whoever else. There's the link if you want to donate. PayPal.me slash John Melendez, Inc. So I wanted to catch up with Monique to just, you know, get her get her thoughts on the current Stern show and the th- her thoughts on the characters of, of the past. Can what? I translate what just happened? Yeah. He goes, why am I doing it on a Monday? Because I'm working around Monique's schedule, yeah. who's been big timing me for months now. She's harder to get a hold of than the present. It's because she doesn't like you, John. It's That's so, why people are hard to get a hold of. This show is so hard to watch and concentrate at the same time because I keep <laughs> looking at his fucking mustache and I'm like, what is going on with his upper lip? Is that like just for men? Just for fucking drunks? Just what the <laughs> fuck is that on his lip? It's like it's like he tried to color it. I don't know. He's Jesus. a handsome guy. I'm not going to make fun of his appearance, Vinny. I'm, what a look! What a good looking guy he is. Had a hair on him. <laughs> had a hair. And those stink lines. <laughs> I just love this idea that Monique, the host of Radio Gunk, is hard to get a hold of. I'm guessing if you're someone she wants to talk to, she just answers the phone. Throw it out there as a possibility. Well, John's problem is too many people have his number. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he shows up on the caller ID. That's why it's so hard to get a hold of people. He wasn't on uh, President Trump's caller ID. All right. John, for some reason... Cannot stop shoving his hands in front of the camera. I don't like this. You're you gonna, know I you're don't gonna like watch this, this video. You know I don't I put like this, this together just for you. There's the Venmo link if you want to donate through the Venmo <laughs> app right there. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> wash your fucking hands, John. Just wash your hands before you do a show. You're doing a show on the internet. It's so gross. I mean, his nails are so green that like you could see through the green screen on them. Like it's just so disgusting. <laughs> what is the fuck is under his nails? It was up uh, it's, mom's ass from two episodes ago. It's his fucking ass and fucking shit and cat litter. And baloney. <laughs> I'm sure there's baloney under that. You don't have to wash your hands. Just don't shove your fingers directly in front of the camera. Yeah, not a good look. No, that's, that's just, he really not, does need to wash his hands, Carl. <laughs> All right, well, if you want to give him more tough love than I want to do, then I, I guess that, uh, that's understandable. All right, so now we do bring Do you remember on... when we used to laugh about how on the Stern Show they'd have to like yell at people about their hygiene? Yeah. Look at this fucking guy. He didn't learn. <laughs> he wasn't picking up what they were putting down Holy on the shit. Stern show. He's so disgusting. I mean, he looks good, but other than that. So now they're complaining about Howard Stern. Ugh. And this is funny because John says shit and you're just like, wait, you can't say it. John, you can't say that. Other people can say that, but you can't. And it's just not funny. I mean, someone's got someone's to let them know, hey, no. it's not funny. No. All right. So he's talking about Howard Stern. And how unfunny Howard Stern is these is he, days. Is he the tooth? <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you see that his tooth's fucked up again? Oh, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Look at this fucking monster. <laughs> the transformation is complete. <laughs> Andy, Andy was worried he was turning into a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those days are over. <laughs> yeah, and it's just not funny. I mean, someone's got to... 
Someone's got to let him know. Hey, no, it's not funny. No. Wow. Yeah. I can't look at him, man. I don't like doing the show where we're looking at him. I know. I know. It's it's very difficult. They get into this conversation about how John started. Well, Chrissy Mayer started this whole dabbler subculture that we have now. It's a subculture at this point. There's a subreddit. There's a subculture. And uh, everyone should be very proud of this. I will admit that sometimes it's really funny because I am always blown away by how obsessed some people are with you. I really am. I mean, you have an entire Reddit dedicated to called Dabblers Anonymous. Which yeah, and I know I'm good looking, Monique. I understand the infatuation, but... You know. <laughs> but the dabblers thing always kills me because it's like for one thing that you said one time on one show that has become exactly who you are. <laughs> it has become exactly who you are. The dabbler. Very well put, Monique. Yeah. Not often am I complimenting Monique, but she's spot on with this one. Not just one thing he said, one bitch fit he had. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He threw a fit about it. Yes. And has been accusing our friend Chrissy of editing that to make him look bad. Right, right. And we played this. I was on Chrissy's show on Monday on the wet spot on Compound, and we played this, and we're talking about it a little bit. And keep in mind, I was at least eight beers in, and I didn't even want to do that show. And I was like, oh, fuck, I got to do this show. So just to make this clear, he's talking about when he did Chrissy's show. Yeah. His his video froze, so it's just his image. Sure. And she asked him about Trump, and what that means for comedy, because it was back when mm-hmm. Trump was the mm-hmm. president. And then John's like, what are we going to talk about Trump the whole time? She's like, well, I thought because, you know, you're a comic, you'd have a, a take on this. You know, I, I thought you dabbled in comedy. Took offense to that. Oh, I remember. Took offense to that. And keep in mind, I was at least eight beers in, and I didn't even want to do that show. And I was like, oh, fuck, I got to do this show. Susan, and then what are you doing to yourself? You eight fucking beers, and then you go on a show. What is yeah, wrong with you? A lot. But... <laughs> But the other thing, Monique, is that that show, um, first of all, I was returning a favor, which is why I did it. But she edited out the whole 10 minutes where we were arguing about politics and she was actually sounding really stupid, saying that COVID is no worse than the common cold. And, and, and I'm having that argument. That all gets cut out, and then it goes right into the dabbler thing. So it, it's such a load of horseshit. All right. So we talked about this with Chrissy, obviously. That original video is still up. This was not edited in any way. And I love John's excuse that he drank eight beers before the show. I only had eight. <laughs> I know. And he didn't even want to do the show. The poor he guy. He was doing a favor. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to say this to John. When you do someone's show, whether you want to or not, you're doing the show. So be good at it. And don't be blackout drunk. Oh. Or just I'm not blackout. Or just don't complain about it Chris, later. I'm not blackout. What was the first thing again? <laughs> it's, this is the worst excuse possible. Is well, yeah, of course I was terrible on her show. I was blackout drunk. And I didn't even want to do it. I was wearing those sneakers. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, was smelling distracted my feet. by the smell. <laughs> I smelled my feet yeah. the whole time. No NG. It was tough. All right, so then John addresses... The things that come out of his mouth that never phase him. It just comes out, and it's honest, where where she goes, what's wrong with you? He goes, a lot. But he never (laughs) stops to realize that, yeah, there is a lot. Yeah. But it still comes out. It's amazing. There's like no one behind the wheel there. Well, it's funny because uh, I'm going to bring Shuli in if he's ready to go. Shuli, you there, buddy? Mr. Shuli! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> What's up, everybody? What's happening, buddy? Shuli Egar, the Shuli Show. So we're in the midst of talking about this beer on the balcony with Monique from Radio Gunk. And oh, I see big guests are showing up now, huh? <laughs> well, he had to reschedule it around her schedule in order to get Monique on, which is funny. And now he's taking the episode down. Because he thinks that Monique was trolling the entire episode. And I even went to the Radio Gunk forum. She's in there going, I don't know what happened. I don't know why he's upset with me. She was trolling me, alluding to the fact that I drink too much. Well, uh, bringing up Dabbler's Anonymous, the subreddit and stuff. Now, she's wearing it. This is what they were talking about in Radio Gunk. I don't know if this is true or not. She's wearing a Depeche Mode hat. And I think John thought afterwards that that was a Dabbler's Anonymous hat. <laughs> that it was D-A. <laughs> D A. I don't know. That's what people are saying. It sounds crazy to me. 
I mean, his his biggest wet dream right now should be if they have merch based on him. <laughs> yes! Uh, any kind of merch. Right. He could get a percentage of that or something. Lean into it, dude. What do you? Why do you fight so hard? It's never going to go away. Well, it's actually funny because they were talking about Dabblers Anonymous and how big that's gotten. And I think it was Monique who goes, I should make a t-shirt. And like literally like a light bulb overhead. Like, oh my gosh, I can be capitalizing on all this too. I should really get yeah. in on it. How can I create some sort of income based on other people's uh, skill and ability? Uh, another another Radio Gunk original. <laughs> exactly. Uh-huh. Oh God, I, I have some things on here. We'll get into it right now. I, the reason why I wanted Shuli to come on is because they start talking about Shuli and the fact that Shuli finally came out and said, John, you want me? You got me. Let's go. Come on my show. You've been throwing it out there for a while with all of this. Oh, you know, Shuli, he won't even talk to me. So then he's finally talking like, a lot of shit. He's always, uh, I got something. I'm, yep. I'm trying to be a nice guy, but I got something that, that, you know, he knows I know. I don't know if you but folks he, know. He's Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> And not the pretend kind either. Born in Israel. <laughs> Watch out for Not this just guy. on TV. He's full <laughs> Jew all the time. So John just had an epiphany. And Shuli, I, I want you to see this. I messaged Shuli to see, did you see this yet? Yeah. And so I'm like, all right, cool. I want to show him. I wanted to see this here first. No. Yeah. I, I, you know, I had an epiphany, if you will, and said, John, just why? Like, you know, I had that guy, um, you know, the lawyer, you know, uh, Vinny, the lawyer, who yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. you know, he was working with uh, Shuli, and he's like, John, you know, Shuli wants to challenge you to, a, you know, like a fencing match or something. A I duel? Go, yeah, a duel. <laughs> I go, I go, no offense, Vince, but I don't punch down. Like, like, you know, for me, he's just like, it, it ain't, you know, it's just not worth it. Like, you know, w- w- I mean, to elevate his fame, I mean, like, you know, come on. <laughs> <laughs> if I, by the way, if I ever, if I ever come to you, Carl, and say I need you to get me John or Monique to help elevate my fame, <laughs> shoot me in the fucking head, dude, because it's over. Yeah, just go get a job at a Foot Locker at that point. Like you know, show business isn't for you if you're looking for John you, and Monique to help he- you out. The way he's describing this, you would think I was chasing him down <laughs> for years. You would think I was DMing this fucking loser, calling him a pussy. Right. You would think I was the one ambushing him uh, with qu- dumb questions. It All I did was respond. This was all you're doing for years. For years, you you kept poking at me, kept poking at me. So now you got me, and now you have this epiphany. And now he has an you, epiphany. Yeah, you're and, doing and me a favor. Does Police, he know that epiphany bro. is not a bra- a beer brand? Does he know? I, that? I had two epiphanies <laughs> and a cause, <laughs> and I realized. <laughs> I'll take two epiphany PAs, please. <laughs> this was after Monique said she had to go on her forum and beg everyone not to be upset with her for going on John's show. Because anywhere they're talking about the Howard Stern show, anywhere on the internet, they're all bashing stuttering John Melendez. Mm. So yeah. even Monique yeah, he, is like, oh, geez, do I have to go on this guy's show? Fuck, I don't want to be on this either. Well, Monique, you don't have to. But if you want to make it better, eight beers. Yeah. But I want to point I- out... That for some reason he said that there was going to be like a fencing match or something like they're trying to the pretend fuck? this is something it's not. No, it's a roast battle. Like if you guys want to have this out, Shuli said, that. "Let's do it. Let's go." It's not even that because God forbid I ask him to write something funny. I'm not going to put him on the spot like that and actually come <laughs> up with material. What what I am saying is he doesn't have the money to pay all... Adam Hunter for this. <laughs> right. right? You got all this shit you you want to say. Come on my show and say it to my face. Let's let's go. Let's have this out once and for all. Uh, that was my epiphany. I'm going to shut this fucking douchebag up. Invite him on my show. Because literally, Shuli was trying to take the high road. The first time he came on our show, we didn't talk about stuttering John. He's just you like, asked you know me to, and yeah. I and I turned it down. You did. I said I I said I don't want, you know, I don't need this. I don't I don't want it. He's he's insignificant on so many levels. And then after a while, I'm just like, man, what would happen if I actually responded to this fucking idiot? He backed down in the second. As soon as you respond, he's like, yeah, you know what? I've I've seen the error of my ways. I will no longer yeah. fuck with people <laughs> who are willing to fuck with me back. But if he does want to do a fencing duel, I will do it just for the outfit. <laughs> That'd be funny, too. 
<laughs> All right, it doesn't stop there, Sheely. Let's see what else John has to say. So, like, of course he's going to pick a fight with me because, no offense, but I'm actually famous. <laughs> I mean, let me pause again just to point out, John is the one who started the fight with Shuley. Not the other way around. And now John's trying to pretend this guy's just fuck with me just to like get all my fame credits. And can I just clarify something that neither of us are famous, John? So just <laughs> let it go. I know. This whole idea that Shuley's a nobody. Yeah, but you're a loser. <laughs> Who are I mean, you to you're worse than, than a nobody. Like you, you, <laughs> you're the laughing you know. stock. You're a low cow. Yeah. It's worse than being a nobody. Yeah. You're famous for being a loser. It's the nobody versus it's... the has been <laughs> in a fancy right. match to the death. <laughs> I mean, if you gave me my choice of nicknames, uh, I think I would pick Whack Pack Whisperer over Hero of the Stupid. <laughs> what, right. what denotes skill? We're, we're getting to that. <laughs> so, like, of course he's going to pick a fight with me because, no offense, but I'm actually famous. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, and I'm not here to trash him, like, because I just said it, I don't want, I had an opinion on trash, but I'm, I'm just saying, I, I don't know because I never listened to the show. Did he do anything that had that was significant on like I don't even I have no idea. <laughs> he was the rack pack whack pack wrangler. So now you have stuttering John, who always talks about all this inside baseball with Howard Stern. He knows everything that's going on there behind the scenes. You have a guy named Shuley who's been on there for 50 years. Like, what did this guy even do on there? I don't even know. What was he up to? Doesn't sound like all of a sudden he's got this blind spot on Howard Stern. You know what's so funny to think about? Like, say John had stayed and didn't go to the Tonight Show and Shuley ended up there. At some point, a few years into this, they would put Shuley in charge of interviewing John at least once a week. <laughs> just to see what he's doing back there. What do you know with high pitch? Go over to John's apartment, see what's going on over there. Right. He, John would have ended up being a whack packer had he stayed. The the stuttering John Craftacular would have been like the biggest bit <laughs> of 2008. I said if he didn't burn so many bridges over there, he'd be the most popular whack packer on the show today. <laughs> I mean, how could you stay away from, from him and 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 her, this Monique, I, I just got to bring this up. You know, when I, when I died of my personality, yeah, when I left the show, she immediately sent me a direct message on Instagram. Hey, would love to get you on the show, hear your side of things. Now, I know this fucking message board, uh, you know, goes out of their way to fucking shit on me, right? Like they'll, they'll tag me and shit where it's like, they, I think they had, uh, a, the worst of Shuli, and I think there've been like four episodes at like three hours a clip. So I'm I'm providing tons of content for these people, right? Yeah. And she messages me and goes, "Hey, we'd love to have you on and hear your side thing." And I write her back and I go, "I was under the impression that you hate me." And <laughs> right. she writes back. And she writes back, oh, no, hate is just reserved for family. That isn't real. That we're just doing shtick. And, and I just wrote back, go fuck yourself. I would respect you more if you stayed true to who you are and, and wrote me and said you suck. They begged me to come on just like they begged Brent and Scott and all these people from the show. And the reality of it is they're trying to be this Stern fan network Reddit thing on there. Yeah. And it's it's so fucking tiny. There's such a handful of fucking losers on there, led by this idiot. And again, I I give you open door. You want to come on my show, Monique? You come on my show. I don't do you a favor because I'm actually famous. <laughs> you know, Shuli, that's a lot of tough talk coming from a guy who's not on Beer on the Balcony. Okay, <laughs> that's, okay. A good point. that's right. I mean, Opie was on Beer on the Balcony. Got to be a bit, bit, pretty big name to get on there. Yeah, you have to be famous to be on Beer on the Balcony. Grillo was on there. Yep. <laughs> All right. That what, a weird guy from Virginia. <laughs> let's watch them try to figure. Oh, right, his buddy, <laughs> his buddy Danny. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. went to school with. Let's um let's talk about them trying to figure out what Shuley's contributions were. You know hockey puck Shuley. To the Howard Stern show. Now <laughs> keep in mind, nice guys, this is Monique is the biggest Howard Stern fan to ever exist. She she runs the the Howard Stern forum. And then Stuttering John is the biggest insider to ever exist with Howard Stern. Right. And I don't know if you know this, but Stuttering John was friends with Howard. Howard invited him over to his house. And he, and liked, he wow. gave him some popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> he, he liked John more than he liked Baba Booey. I, I, listen, I don't know if that's true or not, 
John's told me that a couple of times, so let's see if they can figure well, this yeah, out. yeah, he always gets rid of the people he likes and keeps the people he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect sense. You know, yeah. the fact that he, he, they pay Gary Delabate enough money to buy a mansion in Connecticut, and when John says, I'm going to make more money in L.A., they're like, all right, see ya. I live in sunny Calabasas. <laughs> Stuttering John math on display. But has he done anything that was airworthy? Like, is there any bit? That he mm. did that you could say, oh, that was a great bit, you know, by Shuli. I mean, I, I can't, I, uh, I can't, I can't help you there. I, don't I mean, know. I don't know, but I, that, that's why I'm like, you know, I'm not, in, you know, I'm not going to punch down. All right. So he doesn't know if there's any bit that Shuli's ever done from the Howard Stern show that he would know about. And Monique is like, yeah, I don't know either. I've, I've never, I, who, Shuli who? What, what are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, she, she, she is the biggest barnacle attached to that fucking show that, that rides whatever fucking coattails, whatever. We hate the show, so we're going to talk about it every single day, every minute of the day. If you hate something, stay the fuck away from it, you mental patients. In or 20, the fuck? 20, in 20 fucking 22, being the biggest fan of the Howard Stern show is basically the equivalent of being like the biggest fan of the rotary phone none of it fucking matters <laughs> right. lady none yeah, of it we've matters. all moved on it's better without us yes. yeah how many times are you gonna sit there and go it's just not the same show anymore no it's not it's not it's not it's move not the good. fuck on with right. your life do something productive provide for society you fucking barnacles attached to the ss stern you love it you love the show you can't go a day without listening to it you need it you're super fans. Deal with it. When Shuli had an ongoing saga with Brent about Brent swinging, and Brent would come in and talk about swinging with his wife, and then Shuli would come in and fuck with him, I guarantee Monique was talking about that nonstop on Radio Gunk, and now she's going, yeah, I don't know what Shuli did. Every single time there's a whack pack or tan mom, underdog lady, I pitched Eric, Bigfoot, anytime. Shuli's in the studio talking with them, doing the impressions, and here's Monique going, yeah, I don't know what he did. I have no idea. You ever hear the bit about me moving to Alabama, you (laughs) fucking dummy? That was a a pretty good bit. (laughs) Yeah, you really sold that one. It's still still going. A little past the post office at this point. (laughs) (laughs) So to your point, Shuli, because I feel like some of the things that you're talking about, I could be accused of with all of the stuttering John uh, podcasting that I do uh, watch. Nah, and curate. You're, one, you're one of the good ones. You're one <laughs> of the good people. ones, Carl. You know that. Yeah, Carl's not a fan of anyone. Like, you can't <laughs> call Carl exactly. for sure. I barely listen to the creep off. So, this <laughs> is a perfect example of Monique not understanding what she's up to. Listen, you know what? There's. There's bizarrely almost podcasts dedicated to hating on you, which I find I know that. I know. shocking like, and amazing. I, I there's like three imagine, of them. I can't even imagine mining enough content from what you do to <laughs> generate a whole show. I mean, you can't. That's what you do, Monique. You all you do is talk about Howard Stern show on your show. She's like, I can't believe people make fun of Stuttering John all the time. Why? Why She's is that obviously so not good at mining material. If you obviously can't get not. a whole show out of this she should have a, a green screen and the background should be a padded fucking room they're insane <laughs> they, yes. they they are delusional Julie, this is all I, you are about is hate and commenting on other people's work what don't you understand before you came on i did 20 minutes on amy schumer with howard stern i would never sit here and be like i don't know you can just make fun of howard stern all day it's like yeah there's a lot to make fun of there that was just one segment of, of one episode from there's, this week there's the nose <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's and, that. And there's the, the, the lack of humor. He doesn't go out and anymore. I, got, I don't know if you heard about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and by the way, you're not the only one. I guarantee you the writers are sitting there during that interview rolling their eyes at the same thing you are. I mean, it's oh, just yeah. like. <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty obvious at this point. Nobody can sit through that and be like, that was great. Except for Amy Schumer. So mm-hmm. this is so disappointing because Suttering John has finally decided to take my advice. See, I don't care about. See, that's the thing, Moni. Like that to me is funny. Like I, I mean that. It's like when my green screen, like you know, uh, uh, when it fell. That's that to me is funny. It's like when the co- when when there was a few cockroaches and I fucking freaked out. That's funny. Dude, like, we I, did a it, whole we did a whole segment on your green screen. Oh. You had a wow. whole segment on his green screen falling down? Well, then maybe you can understand how you could do like a whole episode about the Suttering John yeah. show. 
Maybe you get yeah, it then. It, it's no wonder your shit podcast is nowhere on the fucking charts ever. <laughs> and nobody listens to it because you're doing a fucking thing on his green screen. Be smart. Do it like Carl. Do <laughs> 10 minutes and then you move on to the next fuck up that he made. Well, we made fun of Radio Gunk. And Monique immediately messaged me and just like, oh, you're just doing this to get the fame from our show. And, oh you know, never reach God. out to us. I'm just like, what, what are you talking about? We talked about Radio Gunk one Didn't week you and then moved on. anything from that interview before you make fun of someone you have to let them know in advance? Right. I should have let her know. Here are the jokes I'm going to make about you. I hope you're okay with these. You called her before we did the segment, right? I, oh, shit. I forgot. Oh, too fucking bad. <laughs> Dude, she Shuley. might be crazier than him. Shuley. She might be nuttier than him. Amy Schumer literally said that before she tells a joke about someone, she asks their permission and tells them what the joke is going to be ahead of time. I mean, nothing helps comedy like that. <laughs> Let yeah. me tell you something. It's always good to know what the punchline is before it happens. They'll get a genuine reaction. Hey, sir, when I'm doing crowd work, I'm like, sir, you look, uh, you're, are you Polish? Okay. I'm going to do a joke about you guys losing the recipe to ice. Is that okay? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Hey, I heard your submarines don't work too well. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> after uh, John asks if Howard talks to his kids. All right. So he's trying to get the inside scoop from Monique. He's like, Do you, does Howard still talk to his kids anymore? And Monique is answering this question. And then John He's has, asking Monique this question. Yes. He's asking Monique if Howard talks to his kids. If Howard talks to Howard's kids, his three daughters. Okay. This is this is like watching someone having a conversation with a shopping cart. Okay. <laughs> You're just like, these people are insane. Well, and the funny part is that Monique is speculating. She doesn't know anyone on the inside. No one wants to talk to her, obviously. And John's speculating. And they're not even talking about the shows anymore. They're talking about like the relationship with inside a family, which is the opposite of what anyone should be doing. And then so Monique answers this question and starts to give all this information, and then John cuts her off. And um, but Ashley is a nurse, apparently, and Emily just sings really weird kind of Jewish music on her YouTube channel. I don't I know, know what she yeah, does. I, I would never go after his kids. I mean, you know, that's always to me. They didn't choose to be in the spotlight, just like my kids didn't. Absolutely. I think it's really, really it, it takes a really horrible person to go after kids who never ever want me go after because i i chose to be in the spotlight but not my kids because they have no interest in being in the spotlight we heard you (laughs) john you're the one who asked the fucking question just to go on this fucking rant about don't talk about my kids again every time not to mention and not to mention, he's he's confiding this in someone who just talks shit about the guy's kids, yeah. you know, and he's going, I could never do that. You just sat there and laughed at her saying that. W- and by the way, how psychotic is it that you know what his kids do for a living? Yeah. Like, how fucking insane are you that that you sit here and act like you hate this guy? Well, his one daughter is a things- nurse at Senior Side Eye and she works the 4 p.m. shift. Yeah, it was weird, it's, right? It's 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 beyond it's it's up there with bobo showing up at the hospital with yeah. gifts on the birth of his kid it's it's that psychotic well it's interesting too because if you picked up on that she goes well the one daughter's putting these youtube videos out and john goes yeah yeah i know so wait so of course is john obsessed with kids now cuz i thought that we weren't supposed to be obsessed with people's kids who didn't choose to be famous that's that's the lesson i've been learning over the years but well, if you can read between John's statement is what he's saying is, I would never go after anyone's kids right now on this show. Right. It yes. will happen at some <laughs> it point. Happen. It has happened. It will happen again. You go after everyone for everything. So don't act like you're fucking, you know, Gandhi sitting over there turning the other cheek or whatever the fuck you're trying to preach now. Yeah, well, John, you know, Carl is someone's kid also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, My mom doesn't like what you've been saying about me lately. <laughs> I'm pretty sure MIT got involved with Carl. <laughs> so I give credit to Monique here because after John goes on his predictable rant about talking about people's kids, Monique actually brings up a pretty good point. He didn't care about Kathy Lee Gifford's kids, who he wished AIDS on when they got older. He didn't care about anybody's kids. You know, everybody was, was fair game. Everybody. Interesting point. I didn't even. Yeah, I didn't even know that. You know, I got to turn off. Hold on, let me turn off the FaceTime. The okay. rolls have started. 
I tell you, it's so funny. Is it? You know, they do they do their best, Monique. They probably do. <laughs> Hold Is on, that what's me... going on now? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I I didn't turn my phone off, so I got to now I got to delete. I got to just turn this <laughs> off. Uh, <laughs> How hard you see, they're it? gonna keep calling. You can't figure it uh, out. This is this is what gets them off, you know. Hold on, I gotta figure out. I how to swear do to this. God, yeah, I would laugh at him, but somebody did this to me during uh, the creep off. Let's see. I, yeah, but you I know were, there's a way because I did it once, <laughs> where I was able to just stop it. Oh, you have to stop. Yeah, oh, you turn about the noise that comes out of your. Yeah, it's literally he goes. He goes. I can't figure out how to stop it. I did it once, but I can't figure it out out now. So. Monique explains to him, like, you just can't have your devices on during the show, Davi. It's that easy. Goddamn credit one bank every time I start a live show. <laughs> Where I was able to just stop it. Oh, you have to stop. Oh, you're talking about the noise that comes out of your Mac? Yeah. Or you have, or you have to keep that off, like, always. Like, yeah. It doesn't even, if you have the pop-up, who cares? But just get rid of the noise. Yeah. Okay. Well, now it's gone. I just, mm-hmm. I just, uh. But this is what the, 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 Monique, this is my life. They do I told the trolls it's to so call funny. me later. Like, God, how obsessed are you? <laughs> These trolls, don't they know I'm busy? Yeah. Does not know I'm on the balcony with my beers? He's not even on a balcony. You no. expect him to fucking turn a ringer off? I mean, give me a break. Yeah, what were we thinking? So the beginning of that is great because Monique says, you know, Howard didn't play by those rules. And Vinny and I were just talking about this before you came on, Sheely. When Howard came into the Rochester market, we had Brother Weeze was the number one morning guy. And Brother Weeze had like a mentally handicapped daughter, right? Or Correct. Yeah. And Howard or Howard went after it so hard. It was brutal. Yeah. And of I I would think that would be off limits, but it worked. <laughs> I mean, Certainly nothing back it. then was off limits for him because it all it all, you know, brought attention and eyes and ears on on him and what he was doing. And at that point in time, that was the way he rolled. He was he was a younger guy and that's the way he worked. And, you know, we can all sit here in Monday morning quarterback and say, yeah, that's fucked up. But at the time, nobody was like. That's fucked up. They're like, yeah, go go get him. Go after him. Talk about man cow's dead dad. Talk about this, that, and the other thing. Nothing was off limits until it comes back to you. And then and then that's when things, you know, I remember when ONA started yeah. going off about his kids, and that's when shit got real. And it's My like, vagina. look, man, listen, <laughs> you, you can't you can't play the game and expect other people not to, you know try and play it the same way you do. All right. So now let's fast forward to John addressing some of the trolls that we have come to love here on uh, who are these podcasts? Oh, he answered That's his what phone. I get money. It's like this. Fucking- <laughs> yeah, to the phone. Oh, hey, Cardiff. Hey, what's up? Can you, uh, can <laughs> let, you me address, <laughs> let me address, let me address my trolls. Hello. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> That's what I don't get money. It's like this fucking lunatics. Like, like like Sal or whatever, Cardi, like they, you know, like, Sal. I don't know if you saw this guy. He's tweeting out, "John is my Lord and Savior." Every fucking day. Is that the one who was going to cut off like his penis or his finger? Yeah, he was yeah, cutting okay. off. But thanks to my moderators, they figured out it was, he was using pictures that he was finding, like you know, of on course, Google you Images. Had to, you had to know that that's what was going on. <laughs> What fucking lunatic would do things like that? You know, it's a shtick. And so everybody kind of gets it at some point. But you you went through a long phase of, you know, fighting with these people so that they would they would get a response out of you. I like how it's pre- I like how it's presented like it's over. Like the fight is ended, <laughs> right. the war is over. The next thing he said was, no, but they talk about me first. Like, like, that's the next <laughs> thing out of his mouth. I like that he says his moderators were, were the ones who figured out the CLD didn't actually like him. It wasn't John, his moderator. So, by the way, I think this guy's going a little bit, you know, he's leaning into it a little bit too much. And What a Mo- crack team he's got. And then Monique goes, there. we all eventually figure out Santa isn't real, John. We're glad you finally yeah. caught up to us. Now we're all on the same page. His yeah, the, guy, the, guy with the, the guy with the chipped tooth chugging cores is like, yeah, that one went over my head somehow. <laughs> <laughs> his cell D dropped his big bomb yet. His Not yet. Shell. Not yet. We're mm, still waiting I can't on wait. that. Mm, mm-hmm. I can't wait. So the reason why this show happened is because they just did an episode on Radio Gunk about Fred Norris. And John goes, how could you do a show about Fred and I have you on there? I got all these great tidbits. Oh my! You got to hear what I have to say about Fred. So the very first question that comes in about Fred on this show, and it couldn't be answered in a more stuttering John-like fashion than how John <laughs> answers this question. 
Ouch. Okay, here comes the question of my friend. John, who was the better on, on stage as a guitarist? You or Fred? Me by far. Of course. <laughs> who was the better guitarist? Me by far. It's not even up for debates. Why, why wouldn't you reach out to me to comment about myself during the Fred special? <laughs> yeah, I could have told you I'm a better guitarist than him. Could you imagine taking a fucking <laughs> black light to the neck of his guitar right now? <laughs> oh, God. Could you just imagine? Or his actual what- neck. <laughs> <laughs> Might be able to clean his fingernails out Ugh. from those guitar strings if he'd play it every now and again. Now I'm curious. Did did anyone hear the Fred thing? Are they shitting on Fred now too? Like, oh, of course. I, I imagine Fred's untouchable. Like he he he's done no wrong. Oh no! What Monique was saying was that Fred doesn't even show up anymore. He doesn't talk on mic. He barely plays drops. Like he's just completely yeah. It's done. called collecting a paycheck, Monique. Yeah. You should look into it. I, Robin is also collecting a paycheck. It's very similar to uh, getting a government check, but you earn it. It's very similar. Yeah, exactly. So then, for some reason, they have to start bashing Fred's band, King Norris. And Monique says, yeah, you know, Grillo said that Fred's Fred's band was really good. Grillo said he went to one of the shows. And John has to interrupt that, of course. This is a lot of projecting, by the way. Howard and I and Beth and Susanna, and we went to see Fred in Howard's limo. And he was... It was so bad and horrendous. And Fred would never face the stage. He would turn his back to the stage. Or he so has his head afraid. down constantly. He's so afraid. This is, the, this is the emoji. He's so afraid of his like. Look, Fred is so uncomfortable in his own skin. I'm telling you right now. He's always been that way. He, he can't stand himself. Well, that's a lot of projecting going on right there. Wow. He, I mean, looks... he can't stand John. I know that. <laughs> yeah, that's um, why he wasn't I've, facing out, out I've, to the I've ground. Had, that's, you know, I, uh, where you pause this picture of him is just disturbing. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. He it's, looks it's like just disturbing. fucking Vincent D'Onofrio in Men in Black. When, like <laughs> Edgar's wearing the human suit. Look at that fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Sugar water. I need sugar water. For energy. Um, so he's talking about seeing... Fred's band over 20 years ago. This is yeah. probably the 90s. And yeah. he's talking about how, oh, yeah, his band. And he's shitting all over him. I don't know. I've seen local bands hundreds of times. I couldn't tell you how good a band was that I saw in 2001 or 1999. <laughs> Wouldn't you just be like, I mean, yeah, Fred's could, good. You, he's yeah. fine. Yeah. Listen, I, I over the 15 years, I've gone to many King Norris shows to cover it for the news. And, and at times I would just go if I had an open weekend or something. I was in town and, and, and they were, I would go see the show. Their shows are fine. They're not, you know, <laughs> right. it's, I, I don't know what you're expecting. It's at a bar. They're a bar band and they did a great job. And Fred was talking the whole time on mic, telling stories. In fact, Howard made a whole thing out of it once on the show where he would play Fred talking to the audience in between songs and goofing on him about it. So I guarantee you this is either all made up in his head or he was so disgusted to see John there (laughs) that he just fucking ignored him from the stage the whole night. Probably. You you know that he was saying to Howard, look at look at Fred. He's not looking at the crowd. If I was up there, I'd be looking at the crowd. Oh, yeah. I'd be doing this completely different. That's what he's doing. Of course. Yeah. He's, yeah. He'd be fleecing the crowd. Uh, uh, next song, uh, <laughs> you get to pick it if you Venmo me uh, $30 right now. All right. I have one more clip. And this is interesting because Stuttering John talks about this great song parody that he made about Fred changing his name to Eric. And he's, <laughs> oh, no. he shoehorns in a slight to Shuli on this one for some reason. <laughs> I thought he doesn't punch down. <laughs> I know, right? All of a sudden, when you're not there, oh. it's fine. He doesn't want to be in front of you punching down. Okay. Rules I told you, I told you, Monique, that, um, it, you know, when we found out that he legally changed his name to Eric. Eric. <laughs> I did. I did this great song parody because unlike uh, some of the people, I actually wrote bits on the show. Yes. And I did a do, song parody. Do, 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 uh, and it was to Eminem's, you know, my name is. Yeah. And I pulled clips of Fred and it was, M, my name is Fred. My name is Eric. And it was him, you know, you know, and then it'd be Fred Norris. And I gave that to Fred. He played it once or twice. Howard loved it. And he then it disappeared. It. Oh, well, I'm sure the fans were outraged then, right? They were probably calling in, where's that amazing song parody? 
My name By the is. Way, I, it sounds terrible. I love I love the VH1 behind the music <laughs> breakdown of yeah. copy and pasting Fred and Eric in a song. Like what you describe, my eight year old daughter could make on Adobe Audition right now. He's sitting here like he just fucking like he just wrote a masterpiece. Well, the uh, creativity, Shuli, is what you got to realize. I mean, it's really what the fans have been asking for years. They're going, "Where is Gilbert? Where is the Fred Eric Eminem song?" That's yes. all anybody's yeah. wanting. That's all anyone's been talking about. Marcy Turk out here. I can't hear Senator John's amazing song parodies anymore. What's going on? And you know why it disappeared after the first play? Because you walked out of the room and they go, this is fucking terrible. We played <laughs> yeah. it once. Don't ever play it again. Oh, boy. All right. Shuli, I want to thank you so much for coming out and checking this out with us. I thought uh, I just thought it was interesting that John all of a sudden has this epiphany and no longer wants to fight with people, even though he's been fucking with you for years now. 20 bucks, I get him out of his epiphany by uh, in two weeks. I like to handle things through the court systems at this point. Yeah. I've moved on. Yeah. Does he have you blocked well, on Twitter, Shuley? He blocked me on Twitter, but that's okay. I, I got his buddy Tommy and I are corresponding, and so we're going to be setting something up pretty oh, soon. Oh, so that should be interesting. Tommy from MSCS? That's right. Oh, shit. I got to reach out to him. I was messaging with him, too. And I, I totally dropped the ball on that. He's an interesting yeah, character. Yeah. We- I have a fun treat for us today because uh, our buddy Stut Joe was down in Florida this week mm. doing a live stand-up show, and a person who went to his show recorded it. Finally! And wants to talk to us Thank about God! Yeah. Purple. Oh, yeah. How's your mic testing, sounding? Testing, testing. Hey, hey, sound great. Yeah, nice what time. happened was the um, the webcam mic was picking up instead. Whatever. <laughs> Here's the deal, it's Purple. All in the past. Here's Nobody the even deal. needs to know. <laughs> so Purple is a uh, proud supporter of Who Are These Podcasts. He's the guy who sends all the cat pics to Vic. Nice. It's his claim to fame. And he lives down in, and he lives down in Florida. <laughs> And John was at the black box, and uh, you went to his show. I did, and it was by far the worst 30 minutes I've ever sat through. <laughs> so he doesn't even do 45 or an hour? No, barely. Wasn't he the headliner? Well, there was an opener, Steve Zimmerman. He did a movie, I think, called Taps or something. He was decent. Okay. He got the crowd all warmed up. Nice. Made a lot of jokes about how empty the theater was, which (laughs) I don't think John liked very much because he took an extra five minutes even getting out on the stage. I have that. Can I play the beginning of your audio here? Please. This is funny because just he trips right out of the gate. You know, like John just can knock out of his own way. How many people do you think were there watching this show? Uh, so the peak was 15 during Steve Zimmerman. <laughs> and three people left when John appeared on stage. <laughs> <laughs> How much were tickets? I need to know. Uh, so tickets when I bought them were $20. And then they started giving away free tickets if you bought a bar card. I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> tickets were free eventually. All right, so this is uh, introducing Stuttering John and him making his way to the stage. But well, yeah, without further ado, um, you know him, I think, from the uh, writer and producer from the Jay Leno show, the Howard Stern show. Uh, give it up for Stuttering John Melendez, guys. <laughs> A smattering. <laughs> start playing music because they're like, where the fuck is this guy? It'd be so great if he came out with half of a ham sandwich because he needed energy. <laughs> or if he came out with two cores. Yeah, of course he did. Oh, there he is. Hold on, do I turn this That was a hell of an intro. I got this intro is leading him freaking to the back. How we doing? Hope this shit we do this whole show from my car. <laughs> Man, I really packed it in today. Give it up, everybody. Let's let you drink. I'm guessing you didn't go on his podcast the next day and say, ah, we could have done better with yeah. the top dudes. I'm guessing you thought this was an amazing show that he did. I crushed it. So he came up with two cores lights in his hands, purple? 
Yeah, he came out with two cores lights, and I didn't I didn't have time to clip it, but he finished them within like fifteen minutes. <laughs> <Wow>. and, <laughs> and I he just kept taking swigs from the empty one that he still had in his hand. <laughs> Well, he's got OCD, why. you see, so <laughs> he has to drink the beer and then pretend he's drinking it for another three times, <laughs> put it down, right. two more, put it down one. I can tell by the look at this crowd, I'm going to need four more coins. <laughs> like, <laughs> you well, know. He, sig- he signaled to the bartender eventually to get him another beer, but she didn't. She just ignored <laughs> him. <laughs> Your credit's no good here, yeah. sir. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he hit his limit before the show even started. So let me ask you this, because uh, I have not seen Centering John do stand up live. Does he wait for an applause break to take a sip from his beer, or how does that work? Uh, well, there's barely any applause to begin with, so he just <laughs> drinks whenever, really. Does whenever he yell skull? Oh, he did yell skull. Oh, I forgot to did. clip that. But when he finished his second beer, he looked at the bartender and went skull, and nothing <laughs> happened. <laughs> So I will say that you sent me the entire 35 minute clip and I think I might want to turn this into a bonus show or something. I mean, the audio is not great, but we can decipher what's going on on here. Are there any timestamps though, purple that you want us to go into and check out? Uh, yeah, I sent, um, I sent a text file of the timestamps on discord. You um, did. I don't know. Yes. Can you look at those and tell me where do you want me to go on here? So that uh, uh, sure. From yeah. six minutes to six sixteen, there's his first belly rub joke, and it was disgusting. <laughs> okay. Like a fucking butt plug, you know what I mean? No, it's like you know, like I'm short. My whole thing is short and barrel shaped on top. Was short with skinny little legs and barrel shaped. My, my whole family's built to go over Niagara Falls. Our family photo looks like Donkey Kong. <laughs> and my wife was such a hippie. She was like, she was she was nine months pregnant and she insisted upon wearing a belly button ring. She started to look like a freaking hand grenade. You know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She started to look like a hand grenade. You know what I'm saying? Like just yeah, add with did, the punchline. Yeah. Hand grenades have uh, rings on them. Yes, I know what you're saying. <laughs> It, um, I should have I should have realized it didn't translate very well to audio, but for that entire bit, he pulls up his shirt yep. all the way to his nipples and just starts rubbing his belly. Yeah. And his pants are fairly well down. You can see, like, way too much. I don't want to know any of this. Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty <laughs> aggressive. Just you need time. To you need to bomb it. <laughs> Do you want some personal time off? Yeah. Come At back and... End. June oh, God. at the, <laughs> at the very end when he does his second belly rub, mm. uh, the squeegee joke. Oh, I yeah. legitimately had my head head in my hands just <laughs> holding vomit. <laughs> we all know the squeegee joke because he jerks off onto his stomach Ugh. and then uses his underpants elastic to squeegee it down yeah. into his but since we're, pubic mound. Since we're, <laughs> since we're on the vomit train, let's go to his fake orgasm bit. It's from 10.05 to 11.17. I can't wait. I'm so excited about yeah. those. Yeah, you're taking the bar out a couple of these. No, but it's true. And I swear to God, now it's getting the point of Scott. Now, I don't know about you. I know you got a girlfriend. When I'm having sex, I start getting tired. Right? Like, you start getting tired. I, because you can't keep up when you're young, you know? You know, and I started getting tired, and I swear on my life, I faked an orgasm. And ladies, we have no business, and men cannot fake orgasms. You ladies have plenty of practice, you know? We don't. You know, and there I am. So, I'm in her name's Marissa, and I'm having sex, I'm like, oh my God, I'm fucking so I just go, uh, 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 uh. she goes, you didn't come. Uh, I go, yeah, I did. She goes, that again. And this is the problem. Now I'm faking orgasms. Like if we do a role reversal now, I'm faking the orgasm and she sneaks out the middle of the night and never calls me again. I don't think that was because you couldn't come. I think it's because you're... A raging alcoholic. Am I gonna start feeling bad for this guy? That was how she, much time did we just spend? It was almost a, it was over a minute. What we just listened to, and he's still building to like a joke. I guess 
He's like, get it? I was faking the orgasm. And then 30 seconds later, because I was the one faking the orgasm. <laughs> get it? Like, yes. Just like, no, just like no joke in there. And if I didn't know the history of this guy, I'd think he's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be right. <laughs> She's sneaking out like the audience here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got a keen eye for people sneaking out. <laughs> I witness it every weekend. <laughs> I mean, he's out of practice. He hasn't had a, a show that didn't get canceled all year. This is the first time on stage in 2022. I legitimately thought he would cancel. When it got to the four-minute mark and he hadn't gone up on a stage yet, I thought he was just going to book, book it out the back door and never return. Did you see that he the show the night before was canceled? He's supposed to play at a different black box in Florida. And oh, yeah, the Boca black box. The um, Boca actually... black box. Did you see what people were saying about that? Because I happen to follow the uh, subreddit a little bit. Uh, no, I haven't. So apparently well, he was promoting this show. And then, oh, you know what? I have the clip of him talking about why it got canceled. And um, let me see if I can find that real quick. Because it's pretty funny. Yeah, this is him. Uh, this is him lying about why the gig was canceled. I have my gig tomorrow at the Lake Park Black Box. Anybody in Florida, please come down and see are there more than 10 people who live in florida i guess i didn't get the memo <laughs> great stuttering john on stage i was supposed to do last night on 420 at the boca black box but uh the weed company only wanted open micers not a professional comic uh, uh like myself so that's why the owner who i'm very tight with was trying to get me on the bill but they're like we only want open micers no no pros that's never happened in the history of comedy clubs. <laughs> they only want open micers. So the reason why everyone knows he's lying is because they went to the website and there was a Grateful Dead cover band playing that night. So it was 420. He goes, I was supposed to be booked to do a comedy show. They probably sold no tickets. They went, shit, we got to do something. It's 420. Yeah. Let's get a Grateful Dead cover band in here and at least get 30 people to come hang out with us and smoke weed. <laughs> How pathetic is that? Well, that's the worst excuse I've ever heard. They're supposed to be all open micers. And and they didn't want someone professional like right. me. Yeah, I mean, I was running an open mic at the comedy club last night, and Anthony Jeselnik showed up, yeah. and I was like, no professional, only amateur bullshit. Get out of here. But I brought 100 people with me. Get the fuck out of here. And never come back again, you asshole. Oh, John. And where is he broadcasting this from? A medical tent? Oh, there's. now that you bring that up, actually, Hell Sparks makes fun of him because uh hell is also wondering where the fuck john is um so uh by the way uh congratulations i hear any day now your appeal will get you out of a belgian um pow prison is that where you're being held currently um, that's scott the engineer's house oh right, right i had no idea that uh he did his whole entire house like the prison cell in the jean claude van damme movie <laughs> <laughs> All right, so once again, John has to mooch off his friends and stay with Scott the Engineer. He can't just get a hotel room. Yeah. He's not playing gigs where they'll put him up. Because honestly, I happen to know people who work at the comedy club here in Rochester. And when comedians come to town, they put them up. Yeah. That's how that works. And John can't even get that in his rider. <laughs> Can I get three course lights? You get two. And we're not giving you a hotel room. <laughs> Skull. <laughs> All I wanted was to. That's how I negotiate. <laughs> uh, sorry, Purple. I've been ignoring you, and you have so much to, to talk about here. Well, I was just going to make a comment. If you hear a lot of outrageous laughing in the clips, that's Scott. He's one of the 12 in the audience. Uh, okay. That's nice of him. You sure he's not just, like, coughing from having smoked cigarettes for 68 years? He might be it doing might that It might sound like well. laughing, but it's not. Uh, what else do you want to play from this uh, this comedy show? Uh, well, we got a Glory Days recap from yes. 1546 to 1720. I steal clogs. I used to be on the Howard Stern show. That's where I work with my buddy Scott the Engineer over there. We know! <laughs> That's why we're here! <laughs> the <laughs> intro <laughs> with that. <laughs> yeah, I know! <laughs> And that was like, the, the, by the way, you know him from the Howard Stern Show? Hey, everybody, I used to work on the Howard Stern Show. <laughs> okay. The Howard Stern Show? Yeah, I used to ask fucked up questions. Scotty used to edit those interviews. Like, like I asked the Dolly Ron, and the people go up to you and say hello, Dolly. 
Oh my God, they got nothing. <laughs> yeah. Good. That was his first example. I asked the Dalai Lama. People go up to you and ask, hello, Dolly, or say, hello, Dolly. Be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Fred, write that one. It's not as bad. Uh, let's see. I asked. Uh... <laughs> let's see. What's in the news today? Yeah. <laughs> you guys didn't like that one? All right. Well, let's see. What else? Whoa. <laughs> ah, this is so bad. This is so uncomfortable. I'm not even there. And I'm uncomfortable. And I can yeah. pause it whenever I want. <laughs> uh, I mean, oh, I asked Johnny Cash if his condoms were black. I got I got What did you do with the money? I asked Ringo Sarr what he did with the money. He said, No, no. What did you do with the money, John? <laughs> That's the question we're asking. <laughs> what money? I said, The money your mom gave me for singing lessons. <laughs> I, uh, I got strangled by Lou Reed for asking him if he still. You know what I feel bad about when we first did the Stuttering John podcast years ago? I started off the show by saying, I like Stuttering John, and that was the example I gave was the Ringo Starr thing. I'm like, look, he, he had some really funny bits. Here's one of them. If I had known that in 2022, that's the middle of his fucking stand-up act, I never would have given him credit for it. It's like, oh, he's giving himself credit for it? Okay, that's fine. Then, then he gets it. He's doing 30 minutes, and part of that is saying, remember when I said yeah. this on the radio 20 years ago, 40 years ago? And four of it was getting to the stage. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Remember when the lowest form of conversation, I might want to add. And judging by his grin, he does. I got punched in the nose by Raquel Welch for asking her of a drooping in. I think she hit me with the left one. I asked O.J. Simpson if he would sign my knife. And coincidentally, he already had his own. Best response I ever got, Scotty, if you can remember, his best response I ever got was Joan Rivers, an old friend. You know, this is how great she was. They, you know, she rested these. When I was skipping a beat, I said, Joan, do you think ugly people should be allowed to have children? She said, no, and I told your parents that. <laughs> Wow, this is it's sad. It is very sad. Because the laughter is nervous laughter. Yeah. <laughs> nervous he, laughter yeah. on the inside. Is he going to pull out a gun and <laughs> can kill himself? <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy is smoking. <laughs> Stutter and John doing stand-up. Now, you went and saw Billy Joel recently. I did. Did he, uh, in between songs, was he like, uh, you know, remember I wrote For the Longest Time? Yeah. Have you heard of that one? Maybe it sounds a little something like this. <laughs> <laughs> or no, he doesn't even play it. He's just like, remember, I wrote that. <laughs> yeah, right. He starts songs naming songs it. that yeah. he wrote. <laughs> what the fuck is he doing? Oh, uh, he really amps up the awkward crowd forced interactions. In one of the clips, uh, starts at 2016 to 22, 17. He forces the crowd to yell. He oh. won't continue until they st they make it seem like there's more people here. Grand story, prank. Pretty much worse than in pants. Like I said, I got a Puerto Rican dad, Danish mom, and my dad was so cheap. Thank you. We got two people on board. See, this is like a, this is like midway through a set where we're gonna get everyone in jail for the powerful last twenty minutes of this. Can I get bloody sandwiches for everyone in the room, please? We need some edgy. Now I know we only have twelve people. Let's make it seem like. So, if I say my father... There's literally more people watching us on YouTube right now, which is an unlisted <laughs> yeah. video than there were at this comedy show. <laughs> he's going to make people say how, how cheap was he? Yes. Is that what he's doing? I think so, yeah. You ready for it, Andy? They're, how, they're not... The, whole, the 15 people that are there are not Jews from the Catskills, okay? <laughs> they don't know what to do. They're not doing your show for you. So cheap is what we all have come together. And you say, how cheap was he? The right side of the room, Scotty, you know how to do this. <laughs> when she sits around the house. Stop me if you heard this one, guys. <laughs> but how cheap was he? Thank you, Scott. My father was so cheap. How cheap was he? Why is he alone here? How cheap was he? 
This went from bad to worse. <laughs> <laughs> Purple, this is a good clip. Yeah. My father was so cheap. How cheap was he? He was so cheap, his idea of a trust fund was just to get nothing trust me. Oh my God, I've heard that too on his fucking podcast. All right. Uh, what did he say? I couldn't hear it. His dad was so cheap. His trust fund was, you'll get nothing, trust me. Oh, right. That, that's from the book. It's in the right? book. Okay. It's from his podcast. Uh, yeah, he says it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This guy doesn't need more media outlets. All He's right. He's got too much. He's oversaturated. Ready, audience? <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> Orange and glad I didn't say banana. <laughs> <laughs> Holy the shit! Fuck is he Purple, doing? was that you yelling at the very end there, or was that Scott the engineer next to you? Uh, I had to yell because okay, I go. felt a little bit bad. But he wouldn't end the show until I know. I felt it. bad too. Like, how oh, cheap was he? All right. I'm I in. just want to get this shit over with, man. I gotta go home. <laughs> I'm not getting off stage until you say it. Purple, what was the audience like there? Were they Howard Stern fans? Were they dabblers? Like, what, what did you see when you looked around? They had to be Howard Stern fans. No yeah. one besides me was under the age of 50. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And That's I stuck out like a fourth thumb. I'm surprised he didn't call upon me. Well, yeah, you're purple. <laughs> 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 that is what a sore thumb looks like. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to play from his stand-up? Uh, just one more. The last the infamous squeegee joke. Okay, good. Um, yeah. 3148 to 3420, uh, well, 42. It's my favorite joke. I want to end with this. Because, you know. That should have gotten an applause break. Yeah. All right, I want to. Yeah! <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> you just hear all the cars start up in the parking lot. <laughs> all three cars. <laughs> you know, you've been great. Uh, I'd say crowd, but it's not. It's more like uh, I, I don't know. Group, yeah, group. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God! How does he not have a joke for that? How does he not have a joke for when it's an empty comedy club? <laughs> yeah. He should have a joke ready to go for that. This is probably the whole thing in, 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 in you know in the band of war or the Doom Brothers. You know what I mean? The whole section. So, one. Uh, oh, uh, 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 what's your name, sir? <laughs> yeah. What? Gary. Gary. By the way, after I'll hang out at the bar. We'll have a beer if you want to take pictures or talk. You can hang out with Scott. He's a great guy. Don't volunteer. What? Don't volunteer. Oh my God. Okay. Well, then maybe Scott will want to put us in the next game. For people who aren't Howard Stern fans, Scott the Engineer was never allowed in the studio. He's not a good ad liver. John and, and Scott, neither of them should have a microphone in front of their faces. Right. He's he was like a black hole. Yeah, they goofed on him how <laughs> yeah. unfunny he was, right. how unentertaining he was. That was like his bit. Yeah. And now John's putting him on the fucking spot during his comedy <laughs> show. Like, John, abort, abort. What are you what are you doing? <laughs> okay. Scott, when you jerk off, do you prepare? Do I prepare? Yes. Trey Peacock would tell you you should get a crew sock <laughs> for your ejaculate. <laughs> With what, like Kleenex? Nothing. Okay, I might be sir, but when you jerk off, do you prepare? No. See, a lot of guys, uh, sir, do you prepare? Can uh, someone answer this question correctly, please? I'm, so that my punchline works. I'm officially back to not feeling bad for him. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> He's so bad at this. All right, how about you, sir? All right, ma'am, how about you? Would you yeah. jerk off? Yeah. Is anyone here? It sucks out loud. Does anyone here grab a box of Kleenex? Anyone? A lot of guys use the Kleenex. Right? Now, here's the thing. I'm going to give you an invention of what I do. Kleenex does not work. You try and wipe that it's because he's been saving that batch yeah. all day, that's why. <laughs> this goes around and around and nothing gets picked up. This is what I do. I'll be alone in bed and I'm just in my underwear. You know, I'm very spontaneous, which as all us guys know is another is another word for lazy. Yeah. And, you know, there I am, just in my underwear, and I start jerking off. Hold on in case the black guy's here. I start jerking off. Oh. And then I splooge all over my 
stomach. So then what I do is I take my underwear. Why is this taking so long? Yeah, no, this, this is, is the lamest this. bit, and he's built it up into a three-minute setup for this payoff. So let me give you a little bit of a visual of what he's doing. As soon as he said, my stomach, he pulled up his polo shirt all the way up to his stomach, and then he yanked his underwear all the way up to his chest. I've seen this bit, yeah. And it's... <laughs> I, 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 it was, it was like looking at Medusa's head. I was petrified just staring <laughs> at this monster of just a man. Just so you know, just so you know, Purple, this is how Carrot Top started. Yeah. Okay. He was like, all right, what can I use? I got my underpants and my shirt. And then eventually he's like, what if I bring a whole trunk full of props? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's giving himself a Melvin on stage. Yes. <laughs> this. And I squeeze <laughs> everything now. Right into my pubes. <laughs> Two hours later, my pubes dry. It looks like Don King's head. Good night, everybody. <laughs> what a fucking closer. Drive safe. <laughs> what, a, what a closer. You always want to add to thunderous applause. Well done, yeah. Sean. With a, with a dated reference to Don King. Can we go back to talking about scooping shit out of the toilet? Because yeah. that, that was Please. so gross just now. Yeah. All the, all the women, which, by the way, they looked like they were dragged there. Yes, they were. All they the were. women in that audience were horrified at what he was doing on yeah. stage. And by the end, I could see one gagging. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, Purple, I will tell you, everyone in the Discord is saying that you are now king of the dabblers. Well done, sir. We've been waiting for this to happen, for someone to show up. So amazing. And record the day a set. reckoning has come. This is worse than I thought it was going to be, and I've seen a set before. It's pretty much what I thought it would be. He's so <laughs> awkward. I thought he would be well rehearsed and at least get through his thing. Instead, it's like, what about you, sir? Do you use Kleenex? No. Okay. How about you over there? Uh, the server. Uh, uh, when you're done serving those drinks, can come over here. I got a question about Kleenex. I'm like, Jesus, just get to the point. <laughs> just get to the point. <laughs> All right. Purple, thank you so much for doing that. Anything else you want to add uh, from your experience? Uh, I did you talk to him afterwards? Did you get an, uh, you get an autograph or anything? I got an autograph, yes. obviously not autographed in my direct name. I will probably be giving it out at the live show because I will be going. Yes! Hey! hey! We'll see Purple in Nashville. And I got a photograph of him and Scott, the engineer, and he put his hand on my shoulder, and it may or may not have left a mark. <laughs> <laughs> so look for the guy with a yellow shoulder named Purple <laughs> when you're in Nashville. Oh, I, I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the show. When I got there about 30 minutes early just so I could see all the people trickle in, and two pe two teenagers just came in randomly, yeah. and, they, and the lady at the front desk tried to hard sell them Stuttering John tickets, and they legit said to her, who? Yep. Yeah. Sounds about right. They're like, where's the had... Grateful Dead concert? Oh, that was to get the other black box? Fuck. It was so bad. And ever as soon as the set ended, within two minutes, Everyone except me, Stuttering John, and Scott the Engineer was out of the theater. Of course. So just you guys got to hang out and shoot the shit afterwards. Chew, chew the shit. Yeah. He seemed very bitter about everyone being gone. I would imagine. Purple, that's uh, fine reporting, sir. Our field reporter, Purple. You're the best. Field dabbler uh, <laughs> says goodbye. Next week... <laughs> We'll be talking to Purple from Ukraine to get the latest on uh, everything happening there. Yakov Smirnov. <laughs> from one said. war zone to another. All right, Purple, thanks, buddy. Great work, my friend. Thanks. See ya. Great show, Carl. Hey, thanks, man. That's pretty good. All right. Pretty good. <laughs> wow, that was fun. All right, so I got a bunch more segments from Stuttering John's show on Thursday. He's at Scott's house. He had his gig canceled, but he's got Hell Sparks on for the entire time. And he starts off the show by talking about he took an airplane into uh, Miami and there was a guy next to him on the airplane. They didn't care for it first, but then he started talking to him. And this guy is uh, in the marijuana trade. And this piqued John's interest. He's got some advice for us here. Anyway, he works for a weed firm. He's out in Florida for 420. He tells me to buy a stock that he thinks is going to go up because they're going to get bought out. Marimed, M-A-R-I-M-E-D. Don't sue me. He said, 
um, you know, do your own, do your own research. So I went and bought some. Joy Hine, GG by the sea. So Chad goes, the guy told me to do some research, and I didn't. I just bought it immediately <laughs> because I like weed, so of course that's going to make money. And then he tells people on his show yeah. about this. He's done no research. He doesn't know anything about it. He just randomly talked to this guy. The guy said, keep it a secret, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guy must have really taken a shining to John because John offered him a ride to his hotel room. But I ended up offering a guy to drive him to his ho- to his hotel. Kimberly Glans from Kent, Ohio. I, and then he went to get his bag. I go, just meet me at the car rental. Uh, and then he never showed up. So <laughs> so hopefully I'll hook up with him when we're back in L.A. He's a really nice dude. <laughs> the guy ghosted him in between baggage claim and the rental car place. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's like, oh, shit, how do I get away from him? Yeah, yeah just going to go shit in the bathroom. I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> I just got my period. I'll be right back. <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the ride. I saw him hanging off landing gear of a departing <laughs> flight. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> the guy was out of there like it was Afghanistan <laughs> in 2021. Move, move. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, of course, John, at the beginning of the show, the first over 20 minutes, he's reading names. And thankfully, somebody finally fucking calls him out for this. Catherine DiFilippo. Roderick Berry. Uh, Kelly Shafron. And I should mention, so John Decker, who gave him the super chat here for one ninety nine, says, I'm looking to hire you. And right before this, John's like, oh, yeah, sweet. All right, DM me. Uh, and and let's let's talk about it. He doesn't say what it's for or anything. It could be house painting. He's like, all right, yeah. This isn't it. a super chat. It's a rate quote. $1.99. <laughs> <$1.99. laughs> uh, John Decker, well, this is exciting. You read a list of names. Yeah, yeah, it is exciting. Lisa Harrell, I like to do that in the beginning because I, I appreciate the people that appreciate me, dummy. Um, <laughs> I mean, do I have to explain why that's fucking hilarious? <laughs> this guy just offered to give him money, and then he goes, Oh, so what are you just going to read a list of names? He's like, Well, yeah, you idiot. That's how people do shows. It's not how you're supposed to do shows, John. It's actually really boring for everyone. So then John starts talking about his uh, his DC trip, and it turns out it might suck. <laughs> <laughs> go figure. John finally admits it might suck. Also, go to the Venmo, which is right up here, and then hold the phone up because, as you know, my DC trip is happening. And you know, I said to some, I think it was Joni, somebody was like, because I said if I get the interviews, they're going to go up first on on Patreon or onto YouTube for only the members. And she said, you know, it better not be if. Well, the truth of the matter is, even when I was doing the Stuttering John interviews on Howard Stern, there was never a guarantee that I would get anything. Now, I am tenacious, that's for damn sure, but there's never a guarantee. So I'll do my best. Believe me, I'll lie. I'll do anything I can (laughs) to... Try and get the interview. I used to say I was from Kevorkian television, where every interview was a suicide. (laughs) Tell that one on stage. But, uh, yes, I used to wear ABC sweatshirts to make it appear that I was from ABC. Should be ABD. Making bullshit with the best (laughs) Always be dabbling. (laughs) I love that John's already kind of hedging his bet here. He's like, now, just so you guys know, just because we... I doubt he has a film crew yet. He hasn't talked about it. Just because we have a film crew, we're going to be in D.C. That's where all the politicians are. I might come back with nothing. Just (laughs) throwing it out there as a possibility. There is a chance I come back with absolutely nothing to show for this. It's going to be John with a selfie stick getting shot by a rubber bullet. You think a selfie stick's in his budget? (laughs) (laughs) I do like the idea of him getting shot by a rubber bullet. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's funny. All right. I'm just going to bounce around here. Because there's uh, there's a lot to talk about. Like, so Hale's on the show, and I want you to pay close attention to John's eyeballs. John's not paying attention to Hale. John has one job to do, one job: pay attention to your guest and have a conversation with said guest. And John is not paying attention. I came in one week, and everybody was like, "Oh, like, <laughs> like what happened?" And he goes, "Well." Gilbert was here last week and he wasn't having a great time. Something else was like, he was just, it just wasn't flying the set. He was kind of bombing or whatever, but he had to be on stage for 45 minutes. 
So he just laid down on the floor and talked about the room. Just like, wait, wait, wait. I missed that. Why did he wait? I don't, he was just bombing because he didn't, the crowds weren't having him. Whatever. It didn't matter. But he had to be on stage for 45 minutes to get paid. He didn't have to be funny. Nobody can put that in a contract. So no. he would. And then he oversells that. Yeah. You see that? You see that transformation from, wait, what are you talking about? He's like, what? Like yeah. Gilbert. <laughs> the floor. <laughs> you don't say. Uh, so this is John talking about how he takes care of Scott the engineer because people were giving him grief for not getting a hotel room like most comedians would and staying with Scott. So he's got a reason. Need a blank. That's some idiot on Twitter. I post a picture of Scott and I, oh, can you stop? Taking advantage of Scott. I'm like, I text the guy, go, um, um, I paid. I paid for dinner, you dumb schmuck. And I got Scotty a gig, too, a paying gig. You dumb. Why do you put air quotes around paying gig? Yeah. You know, one of those paying gigs. <laughs> What's he going to get? Give him a blowjob? What is he Cold DJing for Applebee's coupons? <laughs> <laughs> Quote unquote. You paying. try to get a free appetizer for a night's worth yeah. of work. <laughs> it seems like he's trying to be really quiet too. Oh like, yeah, Scott's sleeping during this. Oh, that's great. <laughs> John, if you get those fucking dogs barking, yeah. you're the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, well. Sleeping right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually some foreshadowing for my next clip, producer Chris. <laughs> Paula Bradley, I take care of my friends. Okay? You know? Scott lets me stay here two nights. I, I repay him. him. Off. I take him out to dinner, and I get him a gig that's paying him more than you know than any any two nights at a very high class hotel in Florida. Trust me. You're right. My mom. Okay, so John's all proud of himself that he's gotten Scott the engineer some type of paying gig that's paying him all this kind of money, and that's what yeah. justifies him yeah. staying with them. So a gig then, that he can't get himself. Right. For some reason, Scott the Engineer has no idea how to get himself gigs, but yeah. John can help him out. Yeah. And um, so let's do the math. 15 people were at your show. That's $300. Mm-hmm. How much does it cost to stay in a hotel? Probably about that <laughs> for a couple <laughs> nights. Yeah. It's like, it's so ridiculous. Well, he also Let's bragged about taking him out for dinner. Yeah. The night before, and he posted this on Instagram. There's a photo of John and Scott at this shitty restaurant, and somebody wrote, <laughs> Long John Fingernails. <laughs> Which made me laugh really hard. <laughs> Such a funny, funny thing to say. All right, so then Hale's on the show with them, and Scott wakes up. And Scott gets up, and John's all excited to show Haley as another friend in life. So watch this. I, I, just, watch I hope that Scott just like sits up behind him like Frankenstein. I, wa- <laughs> <laughs> I want you to watch for how awkward John is trying to like give Scott a hug or show that they're friends yeah. to Hal. And then it gets even funnier at the very end of this clip. Only stuttering John would do this during the show. That's great. Oh, here he is. Hey, Hal, say hi to... Uh, hey, Scott, say hi to Hal. This is Hal Sparks. Hal? Yeah. Oh, Hal. Hal. Hey. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Looking good, Scott. Nice to see you. My dog loves you. I know. It's a, I'm, I'm beloved by animals uh, with four and two legs. We'll see with John. Uh, th- thank you for having him as a guest, and uh, we apologize for his behavior ahead of time. <laughs> exactly. There oh, there what's a puppy? Is. Look at that puppy. <laughs> Look at it, puppy. Yeah. What's Look happening, puppy? I love this dog. That's a cute dog. What's it? What's it? What's her name? Winston. Winston. Winston Salem. Winston Salem. That's oh, okay, sure, absolutely. <laughs> after the after the witch trial that I'm sure he is. Oh, there's like, a tobacco he's, theme going on here. He, he's a wit. He's a witch spotter. Oh, I got you. Okay. That. Hey, buddy. I got the money for you. Oh, that's not. What are you doing? <laughs> but what is this business going on? Yeah, Anyways, everybody says hi to the dog. Well, um, yeah. All right. Well, no, I got I got Scott a gig. That's the kind of guy I am now. All yeah. right. Oh, Look man. at that. A paying gig. Get out of here. Yeah. With a broom and everything. I'm a good friend now. <laughs> that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> right. You're a mensch. That's why you sleep on the porch. I'm a man. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. is just like, what are you doing? Yeah. I got you that money, by the way. He's like, I don't care. I got you the money, Scott. Hell, did you see what a great guy I am just now? Just 
Yeah, you're the best. Hale's politics are insufferable, but he's such a breath of fresh air I on this show. Yes, like, I agree. When you put him next to Stuttering John, you're like, Hell Sparks is brilliant. Compared to John. Right. Yes, correct. This is John doing his daily affirmations in the mirror. You old, wrinkly, prune-looking scumbag. All right, and now this is John <laughs> being a prick to one of his fans. Now, I don't know with the number of fans that John has that he should be, like, pissing them off or being a douchebag to them. <laughs> Seems like a bad idea, but just look look at the way he talks down to this person. Shorty one. Wonder why John was in on Tuesday. Hope all was well. Well, I did warn everyone, Shorty one. I was on a plane at 6 a.m. flying to Miami, which I landed at 2 p.m. Eastern time, so I couldn't do a show. Thank you, Mark. Suddenly show he off. knows how to figure out the fucking time zones. See, guys, this is the way it works. There's Eastern time and there's Western time. <laughs> He's got it all figured out. la di da What an asshole. All right. So now he's uh, asking for stars on Facebook, Oof. which they make you read this script because Opie does it too. And it sounds so pathetic. <laughs> but there's a reason why John needs you to give him stars on Facebook, obviously. Um, and for all you people on Facebook during this broadcast, you can support my page by sending stars, a digital gift that helps me earn money. And I am, I am going to have to get a hotel room in D.C., which will go for like 300 a night. <laughs> well, okay. yeah, it's a business expense, John. <laughs> You got to stay at the place where you're doing business at three in the night. It's kind of sad that he brings that up, isn't yeah. it? I'm not going to be able to buy Scott a four piece at KFC <laughs> and sleep in his driveway. <laughs> like, seriously, why would you bring that up as if like that's a lot of money? It can't. It can't be a lot of money even to. I guess it is. Yeah, on the heels of saying, "I got your be. money," right? I know he's so proud of himself, and then immediately give me stars on Facebook, which I've done the yeah. research on. It's a dollar a star. Yeah. How many stars is he going to get from the seven people watching him on Facebook that he can I, afford this hotel? I know you didn't believe that I would get it, but I got it. So this is John. Oh, and that's interesting, too, because if you remember, he was going to stay at Glenn Kirshner's place. I guess that fell through. Yeah. Remember when he had Glenn on? He's like, oh, you live in D.C.? Can I crash at your place? Glenn's like, yeah, sure. I'm sure there was a text. Right. Oh, by the way, I forgot. I have family yeah, in. Yeah. I'm out of town. <laughs> Wait, what week are you coming here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All of those weeks. I'm busy, actually. Well, where are they going to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> I can sleep on the porch. I can sleep. Whatever. It's fine. Um, this is John recounting a time when he met Don Rickles at The Tonight Show. Just to show you how delusional this retard is. You guys know Don Rickles, right? Yeah. Do you know what he's known for? Busting balls. Yeah. John's not sure if Don was being truthful with him or not. Just nonstop on fire. Then he comes in and and uh, and he's getting, he's sitting in the makeup chair. I come up to him and say, hey, Don, you know, I'm a big fan. He goes, hey, listen to me. You're funnier than Jay. You're funnier than Kevin. You should do more talk, and Jay wants to keep you down. Don't let him do that. I watch every single night. Just hear what I'm saying. You got to talk more. You hear what I'm saying, Paul? I go, uh, 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 Mr. Rickles, my name is John. He goes, whatever. You just got to talk more. <laughs> I don't, still to this day, don't know if he was messing me, with me, and I'll never know. You don't? <laughs> you think he was having a heart to heart with you, John? Like, let me give you some career. I know I've been busting everyone's balls here, but let me give you some career advice real quick. What a fucking moron. The joke was Paul. Yeah. That was the joke. <laughs> I think you're great. You got a lot of talent, kid. All right, Paul. Thanks. Good talk yeah. to you. Oh, I'm John. Yeah. That's the joke. He didn't get it then. He still doesn't get it now. <laughs> and he's talking about, like, Don Rickles gave me some really good career advice odds. Holy shit. I know this, this goes without explaining. I'm just still yeah, dumbfounded. Right, right. It's just we just witnessed that. John wants to believe that he's funnier than Jay Leno. Yes. If, you, if someone wants to believe something hard enough, you can convince them that it's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. You know. I got, uh, I got a couple more here because John tells this Viagra joke. Now, this joke is also on a T-shirt that he sells. And I know that because Vinny had to buy one of these T-shirts <laughs> for a consequence. It's up. It's up in the other studio at the creep off. So it's a curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking John can't stop himself from telling the same jokes over and over again in his book, at his live show, on his podcast, in his merch store, 
everywhere with these jokes. Uh, Lacey Carter, we don't need any more testosterone. Testosterone, all we need is more Viagra. Come on. Support the, the inventor of Viagra. I hear he lived a very hard life. Nancy Cox. You can tell I love doing this, don't you? Jamie Steele. Uh, you got to love what you're doing. Else, why do it? Well, some people work jobs so they can pay their Wi-Fi bills. Some people work jobs they don't even enjoy so they can pay Wi-Fi. So they can stay it's, in a hotel. Stay in a hotel. Not in somebody's <laughs> screen porch. Dog house. <laughs> Have a working <laughs> oven on Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons why you might want to work a job that actually pays you money, and he's so proud of himself after that. New sneakers. That's such a bad joke. Yeah. He lived a hard life, yeah. the guy who invented Viagra. Yeah. And he's so proud of himself. He's like, yeah, you guys see how much fun I'm having <laughs> over here? No one else is. I'm glad you're having fun, John. It's probably it's, not it's, even his. It's like when... Probably uh, not. You, if you have like a friend that's telling an anecdote that you've heard three or four yeah. times... Or like your wife or your husband or somebody that's just like, oh, I told this at work and now I'm telling you and now I'm telling this guy that didn't hear it. But your <laughs> husband is standing there yeah. listening to it again. And you're like, I got to fucking hear this joke again about the f- guy that invented Viagra. Lived a hard had a life. hard life. Yeah. Did you hear that, Chris? <laughs> the guy who invented Viagra yeah. lived a hard life. I have fun, guys. Just, I, we have fun after here. After you've heard it <laughs> twice, you're like, oh my God, this again? Have you heard it once? Yeah. It's like, that's not a good joke. Right. Why is it a t shirt? Say something funny that hasn't been heard a million times already. Everybody's heard it. Um, this is interesting because somebody asks Hale if he's ever been on Joe Rogan. And Hale says, yeah, I did do Joe Rogan a while back. He goes, the thing that I don't have in common with Joe Rogan is Joe's into drugs, and I don't do drugs. You know, Hale Sparks is a straight-edge guy. And this was kind of interesting. But it's like a shortcut to those ideas. Or it creates, uh, you know, certain biochemistry where you're you're more apt to lean one direction than you might have naturally. Do you know who would agree with you? All three of my kids, they don't, uh, you know, they don't drink, smoke, or do anything. Gee, I wonder (laughs) why. I wonder why your kids have seen that alcohol is bad. I wonder how that came about. Ever since they saw their father on that billboard. (laughs) (laughs) They were raised by a cautionary tale. You know. It's not like Joe Rogan forces drugs down your throat if you do the show. (laughs) You want to come on the show and do acid for three weeks? (laughs) Yes, sure. (laughs) Why not? You should. I have um, something that I want to start doing is Stuttering John flashback because people in the subreddit are posting like things from last year or two years ago. Mm. And this is such a great video clip. It's when Hockey Puck told John that all those trolls who were calling his phone and masking it as someone else, Hockey Puck told him, hey, if you pick up on them, they have to pay for every minute oh, that's great. that they're on the phone. Yeah, and yeah. John thought he was getting over on these people because he believed it for some reason. <laughs> so he left his phone on, and the phone just keeps ringing, and John thinks that he's getting over on the trolls. This is so funny. Oh, good, good, good. I was instructed how to deal with the trolls that call me. Love it. There, there we go. Let you do it like this here. Yeah, yeah, see, now, yeah. There we go. There we go. Yeah, just answer the phone when they call now. They got to pay for every minute. (laughs) Thank you, my old moderator, for giving me that little piece of intel. Just answer it. Answer it. They got to pay now. They can't hang up. And if I don't hang up, they're paying for every minute. Love it. Thank you, Sean, for that intel. He's so fucking proud of himself, yeah. too. God, he is so stupid. Yeah. Oh, good. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Love it. There you go. There you go. I'll just keep answering, bro. You keep paying. You keep paying. I'll keep answering. Don't worry about it. Love it. It's not ruining or it's derailing my show in any way. Hey, I love it. I'll just say, hey, hello. How are you? How are you doing? Thank you. John, Thanks if you sue someone money. twice, they have to pay twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> so just do the same. Nikki B, when they call you to do the same. Just answer it. They have to pay for it. Oh, oh, now they're calling from a different number. I love it. I love it. Keep it up. See, this little service that they do, it, it costs bucks. Does it? It costs money. Bucks? Every time I answer, 
It cost him even more. That, uh, yeah, I didn't notice. Sean had to tell me, and I appreciated it. So, Nikki, do the same thing. Mom, do the same thing. Pick it, answer it, and just put the phone down. Who cares? I don't mind the calls. I don't care if my phone rings. I entertain it. I just got to answer it. <laughs> yeah, keep on spending your money. I don't really care. He's so fucking what a stupid. Fucking idiot. He does look like Donkey Kong. <laughs> Come on, you all got to laugh. Yes, we are. Uh, yeah, we're, we're all laughing at you. I'm at for you. The site Not with so they you. can call me. And if I answer, then they got to pay more. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, so Nikki B, when you get the call, mom, when you get the calls, poor mom, just mom. answer it and then put the phone down. Let them pay for it. As the great Reggie Jackson once said, <laughs> they don't boo nobodies. Right now, I've received about 20 calls. <laughs> Each call, according to my former moderator, yeah. cost them, I think, 10 bucks. <laughs> okay. They just spent about $400 to call me. <laughs> so stupid. Why? Because they're trying to disrupt the show. But they're not. Yeah, I they're disrupt my show. Because yeah. <laughs> I know that they're spending their money on me. And there's no show. <laughs> and When's the last time money anybody on paid me, money to make a phone call? It's with me. It's not a doesn't thing. exist. They have an infatuation. So they have an obsession with me. What about when he calls his mom? <laughs> mom, it's me. <laughs> Fine she with me. puts the phone down. Hey, what a troll. Time before I bring in the great host and one of my favorite guests, uh, Zev Shalev. I'll say one more time. I'll be a Pickwick pub every day. In oh, Woodland Hills. Every day. Know. Why don't you come to my face and troll me? Come on, I dare you. Come right in my face. Like Robert Conrad <laughs> used to dare you to knock the battery off his shoulder. You come I in my you. face and I'll use my underpants come to squeeze you off. Fuck me. <laughs> don't think about doing anything that's violent. Because it'll be about 20 or 30 people at the pub who'll jump on your ass like that. Oh, yeah. I thought you were tough. Cool, but yeah. good luck yeah. with that. I doubt you'll come. Because you're fucking cowards. I'll show you. <laughs> what a little lunatic. Or I'll get a standing ovation from everyone else. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Thank you for beating down that asshole. Oh, my gosh. So I, I like going back down memory lane because so much has happened in the last two, three, four years that uh, keep posting those old videos that we forget about with Senator Rito. I forget how stupid he has always been sometimes. <laughs>